last full final 2023. One of my favorite rendezvous in the calendar. We are here indeed in the Roller Arena, a place that has already welcomed some great moments of Counter-Strike. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. As I said, we are here at Blast Bowl Final. I'm Maniac. I'll accompany you during this show. And I have one of my favorite people with me. Just kidding. Jacob, how's it going? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You know, up until that point where you just called me one of your favorite people, I, I didn't see that coming, to be honest. I do appreciate the shirt. I appreciate the little detail shirt to the uh, to the code. That's a good one. That's okay. a good one. Uh, but enough of style. Let's talk about Counter-Strike. We have eight teams present here in Copenhagen. A nice little menu on the cards. We have some sexy matchups coming up as well. These teams are going to be divided in two groups, of course. It's us going to be the two first days of competition. We kick things off with Group A. There's a little bit of a phase versus NIP as a first match. Cloud9 versus Navi then. Ooh, the storylines, they ride themselves. And then we have Group B, of course. Vitality, Heroic, Complexity, Astralis. Jacob, any of these matchups that uh, speak to you? Yeah, there's a lot of Danish presence in, in Group B, right? Being in Royal Arena, it's a very important event to Astralis and Heroic. I'm sure we'll dive into that later. But for the Danes, it's going to be tough to, to qualify from this group. It's a stacked one. Definitely, it is stacked. It's not only about a trophy. It's not only about the Royal Arena, but of course, the World Final. We are searching, looking for our last team that is going to join us in our Abu Dhabi with the likes of Navi and Smiles as well, G2 Phase, Heroic and Vitality, of course. To get there, we have to go through a schedule. Today is pretty packed in terms of Counter-Strike. We're closing the day with Astralis versus Complexity, preceded by Heroic versus Vitality, Grudge Match, of course. Cloud9, Navi, a whole lot to go on. And first phase versus NIP. But before we dive into the nitty gritty, before we dive into the meat and the potatoes of Counter-Strike, we welcome Casper Rugge Du joining us at the broadcast. Welcome, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, it is a pleasure. You flew in this morning, right? You told us you were up as early as I am in general. Yeah, when you have two kids, like <laughs> you're used to this hour, but it, today was a little bit earlier. Yeah, today was earlier. We're happy to have you here. Um, listen, I don't want to trip you in. Usually we'll welcome you with, hey, how's it going with your team? And how's it going with OG? How's it going? We're in a, <laughs> a rough, a rough uh, spot at the moment, as you might have seen. Next uh, left for G2, and we, we benched Fasher like one week ago. So right now we are fielding three players. Is this the moment where, as a coach, you earn your paycheck? Is that the moment where you have to you know, really hit your head against the wall trying to figure out solutions for the future? Yeah, of course. Like We didn't hit it uh, home last time, back in July, when we created the, the current roster. So next time it has to be perfect. Well, you still found a way to, to get here, right? You've been playing in, at this tournament uh, a lot of times and, and have a lot of experience. How disappointed are you not to be here as a coach and, and more so with, uh, with the two of us? Yeah, like also as a Dane, you have this like uh, home field advantage. You feel mm -hmm. like everything is just bigger when you play at home. So obviously I would have loved to be here, but yeah, it's a tough competition. And these eight teams here, they're like super good. Definitely. Well, we love to have you here. Of course, we're going to bring in your coach expertise on all of these matchups and topics as well. One of them being roster changes, uncertainties, where our team's mm. going. We are in a pretty hectic moment, if you will, when it comes to Counter-Strike. And the first name that comes to mind and, and where I want to get your opinion first is Astralis. How do, you, how do you approach a tournament like this when you have a group of people that have been working together for a while, arguably are peaking in terms of level, but then we know we have, we have kind of the shadow of changes coming over. How do you handle it as a team? I think it can go two ways, right? You can play maybe, you know, this like last dance, like having the, the pressure off your shoulders, like whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. Or it can backfire completely and you crash and burn. And when you are like kind of the home team, you really hope for the first option of the two. From a coach perspective, right? You, you've probably been involved in teams that on, on paper were death coming into a tournament. Is it harder to set up a team? Is it harder to motivate the team? Or is, does it depend on, on the characters of the players? I would say if it was like just a normal group stage anywhere else but here, I think it would probably have been harder to motivate themselves. But they also know that if they get into the arena, every one of the fans, they know them here. Mm. So there would be a big motivation factor, that's for sure. I think one of the dangers that we also have as well is that we talk about a team needing to be a unity, right? It has to be more than just five players. Sometimes you have to play for each other. In the case of Astralis, there is a little bit of questioning going around as to who is going to leave the spot for. We have Yabi, we have Stone, we have a whole lot of noise out there of people joining. And then you technically have three players who are fighting for two spots. So how do you make sure that this, this unity doesn't dissolve and people, people become selfish? How do you maintain some sort of coherence in a roster with, with a situation like this? <laughs> That's a very good question. I think the, the management and performance staff around them, they need to do a, a good job to, to keep everyone in check, do like uh, individual checkups, maybe even on the days to see, okay, where's the head at? Remember, it's just one game, it's just one event, like whatever happens after this event, 
it will happen, right? So you just right. need to do your best and maybe earn your spot here. Like this is the best pr platform to peak perform and show the world that you're able to do it. You know the players, you know the team, you've been competing against them. Do you think they have what it takes in order to, to put all the noise aside and, and actually go in here and perform? Uh, I probably have bigger bigger hopes for uh, for Heroic because okay. they come like full without pressure. It's kind of the last dance also for Cadian. They've been teasing it on social media too. And I think the guys they brought in is like a very dangerous cocktail for teams to handle. You have Siphon like full aim kit, just hitting everything. <laughs> and you have Dupri who revitalized himself after uh, after Vitality coming in with something to prove. So I, I have had uh, high, high expectations for them. And I love that you introduced this topic. This is where I wanted to go next. Of course, Jacob, I want to have your thought on mm. it too. We know this isn't a team as the proper sense of being a team. It's more like a ragtag bunch of players being put together now sure. trying their very best. But we, we get that feeling that on a given day, this can be a very slippery team to play against. So do you think they can ruin people's party? They can they can poop on people's party here in Copenhagen? I think so. I think Casper said it pretty well. There's a lot of dangerous potential within Heroic, especially when you consider the two players they brought in, in Dupuis and in Siphon. Players that thrive on the chaos, players that doesn't necessarily need the comfort and the structure that Kadian have had with his former iterations of Heroic. And I will say, you know, you look at that lineup and, and I'm thinking to myself as well, if they can produce a result right here, yeah, we know Kadian is not going to stay. He's probably going somewhere else, but could the remaining of the four players stick together with a new in-game leader and then build up something here and, and get experience together. I'm not necessarily sure that Heroic is a complete dead lineup for now. No, I, I get what you mean, but there is going to be some level of awkwardness. As in, hey, sure. by the way, Kadian, so, uh, yeah, you know, remember when we removed you? Ah, never mind about it. You know, let's just focus on the Counter-Strike. We laugh about it, but there is a real reality behind it. You're the coach, you're behind them. How do you make sure that they approach the game in the right mentality and just kind of put everything in the pocket for the time being? I think the strength will be that, again, that they can come in and play whatever style they want. Yeah. Right, they already have uh, the three players from the previous iteration that played this like very high reaction CS. Now you put Kadian in when you don't even have to respect the rotations you had before, now you can give it even crazier. Mm. So I expect like full fireworks from these guys. How dangerous do you think this is for Vitality? Opening I up against Heroic, and you can break my heart because I'm ready, so <laughs> to hit me. I have high expectations. I think they can be the real like underdog in this tournament. That's okay. for sure. Yeah. Oh god damn, strong words. I, I I would have thought they would just be journeymen, right? Play a couple games and then leave. Do you think there's a world in which we see heroic later down the road? Maybe like a Friday appearance? I think so. I think so. I, I don't think it's completely out of the possibilities, but it's gonna be tough. And I think the first game against Vitality mm. will give us a lot of those answers. Yeah, and you're talking about Vitality, of course, a team that had a whole lot of headlines out there, losing Majisk wasn't easy at all. Uh, irreplaceable of a player, I think that's how we tout him. But the general consensus seems to be that Mezzi has more to offer than meets the eye. So, Rugga, what's your take on Mezzi? What's, what are your expectations on this pair already? I think he's been one of the <laughs> one of the ones to get in the last couple of transfer windows. I know a lot of teams have tried, so everyone has had his eye out for him for a very long time. He has this like high skill ceiling, even though he played like plays with weird movement keys. Mm. It's kind of whatever, but <laughs> but he has this like high no skill judgment. ceiling that everyone like everyone when they watch him first eye is like this is a very 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 good player. So skill wise, he can definitely be there. But the experience part, not being a major winner like. Uh, Magisk is obviously, it will be a downgrade at least for the short term. It's always fun when, you know, experts and coaches and other players respect the player like Messi and they think he's so goddamn good where the fans are having a tough time picking up on, on how good he actually is, right? Because I agree, Magisk is irreplaceable. He has so much to offer to a team. But if you were to pick one player out there, I think Messi is a pretty good replacement. If you can't get the guy behind me right here saying Rob's coming into Vitality, then Messi is probably the second best option. So I think Vitality has done very, very well. well. These are strong words, of course, but this is going to be music for the future. Vitality here we coming up only later what we have on the docket is a little bit of phase versus nip we're going to take a quick breather three minute break and when we come back these gentlemen and i will dissect this first match we'll see you around
you guys are on a huge win streak right now, but does this play into your mind at all coming in as not just the clear favorites, but holding a record, trying to push as far as you can in CS2? Yeah, I mean, winning streaks uh, is, uh, you know, something uncommon, I would say. Uh, I mean, obviously, the NIP winning streak in CSGO is something that's never going to happen. That was different times. Yeah. Uh, and in here, it's much more competitive. And uh, obviously, it's it's uh, with each game, it's just going to get more and more difficult because people are going to be more ready for, for what we're having. And uh, we just need to adapt a little bit, not go too far from, from what's working. So it's, it's really just, uh, you know, uh, getting more and more difficult. Do you think this event is harder than others because there's so many new lineups and changes going on as well? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good and a bad thing because, you know, uh, we're just the same team. Uh, we're, we have the same lineup. We're just uh, progressing with uh, like each day of practice, which we haven't had that, that much because of the travel days and, and so on. Uh, but at the same time, new teams, they can have uh, as what they call honeymoons and, uh, you know, they can be great at the start, but at the same time, they're not as structured as, as we are. So it's, uh, it's really hard to say. The biggest uh, difficulty here is you never know what to expect from them and uh, what to like how to get ready for that. World. Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Maniac. I'm right there. Phase on top of the world. Uh, when it comes to CS2, it is not really debatable. Incredible 15 series streak currently. That does involve online games. We're sure. just going to put it out there in terms of uh, honesty to the viewers. But I will just ask you this very simple, Rucker. Do you think people are afraid to play Phase right now? Have, do they already have a fear factor in them? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think some of the guys have been been very good at diving into CS2 very early, finding the tricks, and by a few people, I, I mean at least Rob's, like everything <laughs> he does, you can also watch his streams, his small clips, you can see it in pro games. He's been one of the first like to really embrace the game and find these like new things that gives him an advantage. So you never know when you play, like what is happening next. One thing is Rob's doing that as an individual from his team, right? But, but it also reflects in the rest of the team. He can teach them so much coming into practice. He's prepared. He knows all the new tricks and, and know all the new ways of approaching the game. And I think you can see that in the way FaZe are playing and they kept to the DNA, right? This team that whenever they're down, whenever the game looks like it's slipping out of their hands, they always find a way back just like we saw in CSGO. So they have this new energy to them. They have new flame right. appreciated by CS2, but still the same old face DNA. And they remain, I guess, they're not unbeatable in the sense of no, they've no. had moments of doubts in games. I mean, we've watched this very matchup yes. at CAC in Shanghai. It was a 7 billion overtime between an IP and FaZe. But it feels like they're getting to this point where teams are trying to overplay and overcompensate in order to beat them. You're a coach. You've been behind teams that's been in this position. What are the words you're using for NIP right now to make sure that they are not overcompensating? That whenever they have these opportunities, they just close them. How to not get into your own head? It's very difficult, right? But I think a lot of it comes from the game plan, that you have a couple of ideas on how you want to like try and at least tame the, the beasts. It can be like in, in terms of like set rounds, if you know the rotations a little bit, how do you want to manipulate them? Like moving the right piece to the wrong area at the, mm. at the right time, right? So that could be one of the things, but also that there's literally no pressure on, on this team, right? You, they, they have all the, uh, the pressure on them, like FaZe, they just came out of like a million wins in, the, in a row, so everything right. is on them, right? You just need to show your... I was just about to say, right, because we, we did see the game at, at CSC and NIP were playing with a stand and they still pushed FaZe to a point where I would argue NIP should have won that game a, a couple of times before FaZe ended up winning in the seventh overtime or whatever that was. So if you're NIP right now, you have first-hand experience playing FaZe just a week ago, you did it with a stand and you pushed them all the way to the pressure point. So if you're NIP right, right now, you go in, no pressure, but you already showed yourself that you can compete with FaZe. And this is where it gets really interesting because I agree with you, with no pressure on and a stand -in, they did put FaZe under pressure. Yeah. They did, there's no way we can say about that but now it's a different perspective you have mm -hmm. alex coming in you have a new leader and there is hopefully hopefully a sense of long term i think we've been quite frustrated with nip for quite a while with this revolving door of player coming in and out and now we're hoping that they're starting to have a vision but is it too early for them to already think structure like this should they still embrace the chaotic sort of mindset or do you start already working towards a long-term structure I think the danger would be today to come out and try and play perfect Elixirs. If, mm, right. if they do that, I think they'll have a big problem with FaZe. So they need to keep some of the naive young gunning, running around shooting, but have at least a couple of rounds where they know the start to finish. Because if they come out and want to outplay them, 
I don't think it will happen. In reality, they've had five days of practice with Alex, so I agree with yes. you coming into this tournament expecting to play picture-perfect Counter-Strike. It's not going to happen. If anything, this will be a learning experience for NIP. This is a team that is not necessarily built to win this event. They are looking at the major. They are looking at the start of next season. All right, That's all right. they need to peak, right? So yes, I hear you. In, in terms of this games, I would love to build up the hype saying NIP can win this and they should win this, but in reality, they're not ready for that just yet. So let's see the early signs. Let's see if they can build up an identity because that's one of my main issues with NIP. We've seen this team come in and out of tournaments for two years. They have had no identity whatsoever. You never know what to expect apart from nothing. Right, listen, uh, if you are looking for silver linings or possibilities, I guess Rez is the name you mentioned for NIP. I love this adage, like, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame yeah. on you, the other way around. Fool me 10 times when it comes to Rez, but I'm still ready to believe. I'm still ready to believe he can put numbers out in CS2, he's been great. Is that an asset we can rely on, Jacob? Uh, no, you can't rely on him, but, but okay. he's been around for a long, long time, and I, I understand why you have that feeling, because you've probably seen it as well, Raga. He has tournaments where he pops up. He's a, an insane individual, but there's just no consistency to the way he's playing. Well, listen, I've heard in the house that that some of the talents are ready to put some money on uh, NIP. I mean, I mean money, of course, metaphorically, okay. uh, ready to put their money where their mouth is. I think Henry and Anders might have just lost the plot. In fact, the creamy bears, the yeah. only one going for NIP. Care to uh, comment on that decision, Jacob? What do you think their uh, thought process is? I just feel sorry for Henry. He has to put up <laughs> with, with Anders and all his shenanigans. So uh, yeah, th in my world, there's there's not a way where NIP are favorites in this game, to be completely honest. Well, you know what? I think it's only fair that we give the defendants a right to explain themselves. Uh, creamy bears, Anders and Henry G. What the hell is going on through your mind? Please elaborate. Um, okay, it was my idea, Anders. I made the executive decision. <laughs> I, I know you form. had good reasoning though, Henry. Like, can you lay out like the, the thoughts behind? Like, it must be some deep analysis Listen, that you made. Listen, we've got to commentate their opening game at CAC last yeah. week, right? How many rounds was that? 53 rounds. And I knew up 11 to 5. It was the best of one. We the phase, They've got to lose at some point, right? And yeah, they, they, this is it. This is what I'm saying. This was a stand in. This is now NIP fully gassed up. They've now got their Spanish in game leader, Alex, his first debut for NIP, of course. Sure, they've got five days of practice, but this is where players like Convict thrive. And the chaos, when he's let off the leash, Anders, he can have maximum impact. That's a brilliant PR statement. I feel yeah. like you, that's you've got you've got to, you know a secondary career maybe you know writing PR for teams like this is yeah. why we Give are going to do once. in spite of all the odds we're going to be doing just fine. I mean they must surely lose at some point. Phase there's something to that, but whether it's going to be today or not, I guess we'll, we'll find out once we get into the game. I. I think it's going to be exciting if that happens here. Convict is one of those players that really changed the game. I mean, if the if all the stars align here, it could work out. But um, who knows what this NIP will even look hey, like with Alex right he, now? He's going to need a bit of backup here as well. Like the desk are dead on. Like if Reds turns up, like he can turn up in a hell of a fashion. It can be very exciting. It can be very explosive. But it's inconsistent. When he does turn up, though, it's a great show. It's a spectacle, Anders. And hopefully that's the Reds that turns up today because he's got to work it out for him today against FaZe. Uh, undoubtedly, the, the world's number one team right now with maybe the the best player in CS2 right now in the form of Rops, who's in career best form. He has been looking so deadly, and they have this characteristic. We saw it in uh, in China as well, where you know, even if they're down, even if they have a bad start, which they have all the time, yep. they just fight their way back anyway. Which is it makes for really I, interesting counter to watch. But my God, I mean, I it got must to be frustrating. Interview a lot of the players, including Rob, yesterday, and it's just like. If you could imagine if you could just win a pistol, imagine you could actually just get a good start. Like, FaZe would be actually unstoppable. They're already on a 15 0 win streak in series. Um, that's always recovering the 0 5 deficit. It seems like every single game is so arduous and labored. It's exciting, it's impressive, but surely. At some point, some of these games have to get a bit easier for them. But uh, I think this is a great match, Bandits. I think this is uh, becoming a bit of an El Clasico to open up each tournament. FaZe versus NIP. El Clasico. And NIP okay. has like a different lineup every single outing. <laughs> just, to, like, just to spice things up. And uh, they FaZe see if they can lose. It's, it's, it's quite, a, quite an impressive and exciting system, I would say. I mean, if you keep swapping out your uh, your in-game leader on an NIP side, yeah. like, it'd be very hard for FaZe to know what's happening. Like, they can't even use the last game as a reference. They're like, it's, oh, it's, it's a really good point. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of that this tournament, ladies and gentlemen. But welcome to the Royal Arena, the opening game here at Blast Premier Full Finals 2023. FaZe versus NIP in a best of three. No best of one nonsense here. And we're going to be kicking things off on Vertigo Anders. Who would have thought? What a great testing ground. I like Vertigo. I'm, I'm all on board now. I used to hate it, but I've changed hate. my mind. I think it, yeah, yeah, I know you don't like that. It's I don't like that word. word. 
I used to strongly dislike it, Henry, but, <laughs> uh, but I'm on board with it now. I think it's exciting. We do have FaZe starting on the CT side with NIP on the T side. I expect that there's going to be a flash for the entry. Or they're just going to walk it up the stairs. That's very dangerous. Someone could have already been waiting. Twist is here. He's got the right idea. Rares on the other side with the P250. Not quite hitting the headshot, but at least they're pushing them back. And here come the grenades to follow it up. Good, strong start. It's head trick with the headshot to take down Twist. Do they have to commit the Anders? They've still got plenty of time here. They've got the opening frag and make it a second. Estac confirms the kill on towards Rops. And that's the bomb side wide open here. Flank coming through and Carrigan will hold them at bay for now. The plant's not actually coming through, but headshots are. Carrigan finding a couple, but now the three versus one. And unfortunately, they know exactly where Rain is. He might find this kill, but still up against it now with barely any points of health. And coming up the steps, uh, it's just a matter of time before he gives this one up, you would have to say. Yeah, there should be no opportunity here. They shouldn't even give him one. As long as they stay hidden back here, I don't think Rain's going to be able to run this deep. And they're set up in a great position. They're going to both peek him at the same time. So, yeah, unless he hit just perfect clean headshots, it's not going to happen. Rez will take him down and NIP to take the pistol. Well, there it is. The rough start for FaZe. We knew As that was going to happen. That wasn't even that wasn't even a question. <laughs> like, they, would they ever win a pistol round? You're going to see a hell of a team, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> but it will be NIP actually doing, doing a pretty good job there. It was quite disciplined. They managed to get the opening frag. They went in together. Good trade potential, even with Carrigan getting a double kill on the B-bomb site. It was a pretty comprehensive victory. Now it is the opening game of the tournament. There are going to be a few issues here. So looks like there's just a sound issue, maybe. Twist headset just getting sorted. If you're just joining us, welcome. Let's Day blame one. Twist for it. He can't defend himself. He can't hear what we're saying anyway. So I think we, you know, just put well, the blame on him. I, I guess it's good to get out of the way in the first round of a best. Yeah, game, that's right? true. Like it's super early days here. Give it a chance to just kind of break things down. What's going on? And uh, yeah, this is the opening Group A upper bracket game. And uh, kind of the the system is: win two games, you through to the playoffs. Lose two games, uh, you're going home. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. Uh, this, yeah. Anyone can figure. Even we can figure it out, Henry. So uh, you know, I appreciate that. I do like the approach that they had in IP for that pistol round. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Like walk up all the way until contact, and then then they don't second guess themselves. They just follow through. Even like you said, they could have maybe fallen back if they really wanted to after the initial kill, but they just said, you know, let's not make it complicated. Let's just keep going. Yeah, it sometimes it's for the best. And they were aware of the flanks as well. Like, that could have all fallen apart. They weren't uh, controlling the connector down towards bridge. Maybe Rain gets a chance to get more than one there. But unfortunately for him, the damage is already done. To be honest as well, if you're playing with Alex, you've only been playing for five days. Why would you try and make it complicated? Like, I feel like this should be what NIP no, leaning exactly. towards, right? Like, just make it easy. They've got some great talent in the squad, right? Like, some hard hitters. Like, Alex, um, say what you will about his time within the team. In terms of fragging potential for an in-game leader, he's up there. He's in the conversation sure, yeah. with the better ones for sure like certainly uh, under the radar in terms of what he brings to a team in terms of fragging capabilities and new ideas mobby star riders were always a tactically impressive team they always made a dent to interesting events like pro league for example and yeah like who knows it looks like the morale is high over there they've got a pistol round victory under their belt the creamy bears have picked them to win it's, <laughs> it's all looking good to be honest we're going to look like geniuses, Henry, if it works out. I think, we already, I think everyone's already scared. They, they know <laughs> the game we're playing, and we, we've seen some things. We've commentated most events now, and we know. Uh, yeah, Counter-Strike doesn't care about the script, doesn't care about the favorites. Anything can and will happen. That overtime game that they had on Ancient was so ridiculous. I mean, that was. Jacob said it on the on the desk before we get into it. NIP should have won that game. And that's oh, absolutely. True. They were 11-5 up, right? Yeah. Um, it was Ancient best of one. And it was just when it was like all the variables came together. It was like we said, Rez looked amazing. Config was hitting absolutely everything towards middle on Ancient. Yeah. And uh, they just couldn't close out the game. And of course, uh, they were there essentially as a mixed team. They didn't even have Alex there. It was a bit of a mess in terms of the roster. And we are going to see a four spy on this second round, Anders, oh. from FaZe on the CT side you don't see this too often in cs2 can cost you your economy going forward but it's early on and they're going for the desert eagles pretty much across the board of a rob's mp9 here going to set up three players towards the a ramp and the ak patrolling that position in the hands of reds and that economy on the ct side is everything right now yeah. it seems to be like if you're going to lose a game that's where it happens oh no here we go and shot through the smoke rain picks it up that's pretty ridiculous so look, out, get started. look out for the smoke tech here. They've got eight cheese. So they won't be blowing those open what? and cracking skulls. Rez goes down through the smoke as well as Rain continues to dominate here. That's a five versus three. They have to just give up the ghost towards the A ramp at this point, and they've lost control. They have to go back towards B, hope for the best here, but guess who's waiting? It's another Deagle Master. Twists waiting at the B steps. 
Significant damage, and he's got a bit of utility to hold him at bay here. Good smoke to just to block them off. And there's the fact that they're spotted so early, really uncomfortable, right? You, you want to sneak a little bit closer, you want to get there a little bit earlier, perhaps. 50 seconds on the clock right now. Deep grenade, but it's all for show at the moment. They need the kills, and they're getting them! Twists with a headshot as Tag goes down. And now it's just Config and Alex left. Two versus five here. Crawling back towards the A-bomb <laughs> It's not looking great, is it? Yeah, literally limping over. They haven't even scratched the defense as Rain... Hungry for a couple more. He could hear them throwing the utility, and he lines both of them up. Almost the perfect round there from Rain. He gets himself a hat trick. All headshots, of course. Takes Config down to 18 points of health as well. It looks like they've done enough here. Phase with the calculated risk, Anders. In the second round, the force buy, as you mentioned, it's it can be a scary prospect on the CT side, especially if you lose that round. You're left with not real much in terms of the loss bonus, and it might be difficult to even bring out the AWP, but yeah. it's a bit of a gamble, one that pays off significantly for FaZe there. Beautiful shots coming from Rain. How did he find so many through the smoke? Um, some fortunate frags. I'll give him that. You have, to, <laughs> you have to say that, Anders. You do have to say that. Oh, it's great. How did he find them? He just shot them through the, like, you know, that you just have to, you just have to will it into existence sometimes, don't yeah. you? Yeah, and it's, it's a beautiful thing, and it will have to be a force by back and response here, of course, NIP. Looking to break serve if possible. As S-Tag trying to best the Molotov at the start, just take a tick of damage, and here we go again. Desert Eagles towards the A ramp, this time not looking quite as strong. It's going to be opening damage towards Rez, 24 points of health, as they boost up and try their luck over towards B. Yeah, classic exile position. Yeah, true. That um, I've probably many players have used, but I can't remember a Cloud9 game where I didn't see exile try to do this boost at least a couple of times. So my brain, at least, that's kind of how it works out. Yeah, they'd love to get some revenge, get the Deagles in action, get some some kills back against FaZe in this one. Although, you know, a little bit more tricky perhaps sometimes on the T side. If the CTs are not fighting. Oh, look at that. Rain is. Didn't have to be that aggressive. I like Brokey's position because you can just fall back, but Brokey yeah. coming back into it will find one shot there, and the smoke will make it a little bit hard to get any kind of a refrack on him. So, still a four versus four here. Sneak into the middle is Config. And talk about aim. He's going to be top of the list for this game to be looking at. Oh, I say that. I'm going to curse him. Carrigan just comes charging him with the Hamas and will yeah. take him down. That wasn't his best work. The deal can uh, get out of hand sometimes. 30 seconds remaining, four versus three. Still a slither of hope for an IP, I suppose. If they can get the bomb down, maybe they can do something with this. It's Carrigan, though, defending with Twist. They've got a strong setup. Another smoker's deployed towards the mount for the bomb site. I was going to say that should be the frag for Carrigan, but makes things a little bit more uncomfortable. Twist still patrolling with the Galil, and he looks very comfortable indeed. He's trying to deny the plant. Doesn't have to overcommit to the frag here. Just keep applying that pressure. The double kill comes through. You never know. Alex, good effort there, but the force buy does not work out for an IP. It's going to be 2-1 in favor of FaZe, and presumably the eco up next with no bomb being planted. That round actually got a little bit closer than I was expecting. If, yeah, if sure. Alex finds that kill, he probably has the bomb plant, and it gets into a really interesting one versus one. But all in the past now, FaZe still just chugging along here, and NIP, no bomb plant. Not that it would have necessarily you know, pushed them into a full-on buy or anything here, but uh, you know, it's always good to get a little bit more cash if you can. They got a single flashbang on Alex, so I guess we'll see if they have some sort of a trick up their sleeves here. But otherwise, I expect it's going to be a, a bit of an easier round coming up for FaZe. It's a shame that the hopes and dreams of the Creamy Bears only lasted for one round. <laughs> we, were, we were flying high. We were, we were feeling so good. We got a lot. I feel like we, we did get a lot out of it. Like, we were celebrating for that one round. So. <laughs> yeah, the champagne was uh, prematurely ordered. But uh, we'll see. Maybe there's a chance of the Glock Sanders. Maybe because they've actually got some decent control in terms of territory. But Robert and Carrigan mowing them down here. You can see them chomping at the bit, looking to get involved, get themselves sliced the eco action. <laughs> and it will be a pretty clean sweep from FaZe. What a downfall for the predictions. Maybe there's a chance for the Glocks. Like, that's now, <laughs> that's now what we're resting our hopes on. <laughs> Could it well, be? I liked, I liked the, the positional control. They had managed to get towards the construction area. There was a kill, but uh, you're right. It's looking quite good for FaZe. We said they struggled to get a good start. And after losing the Pistol Landers, they're now 3 1 up on their opponent's map pick. So, uh, with New Cup next, no one seems to touch FaZe on New whatsoever these days, to be honest with you. No, yeah, that's kind of gonna a must be a, win on Vertigo. That's going to be really, really tough, I think. Like, they, they might be the best. Especially with a brand new in game leader you're playing. Oh, and the smoke is uh, okay. it's not landed. That, that's not gone well at all. 
I think Rez had a couple of stinkers with smokes at the previous event as well, if I remember correctly. Don't want to call him out, but just a rough one to watch. You need that smoke to deny the CT vision. Yeah, you want to be landing those. Some basic stuff, but... Um... Yeah, the fact it's just lingering there as well, <laughs> like a bad smell. Just, <laughs> yeah, God, just get rid of it. There, that's the smoke they like. Um, but that grenade actually doesn't do too much. That one certainly does, though. Takes Alex down to 59. So you can see, like, NIP, oof, don't look completely comfortable here. Just up a couple of grenades and now taking significant damage, being sprayed down through smoke. They need to find some fix and return here. That will do nicely. Rez brings it back to a 4-4. Four and four. Great use of the new grenade dynamic there for the phase side, blowing up that smoke and just instantly peeking behind it. You could tell Hetrick was not ready for it. I think people still make that mistake on the on both sides of the map, really. They just expect for the smokes to stay where they are. That's obviously not the case here. Rain very, very exposed. Oh, this is dangerous. Twist comes charging in and Rain with a double spray down. That makes it possible suddenly. Rops now in a one versus two, but if there's anyone you want left here, certainly is Rops. He smoked off really early on though. That's actually a really brilliant smoke and a Molotov behind it. He can't push through, he's just waiting. Bomb is gonna get planted on the other side. We'll see if he's gonna try for it. We'll just throw it deep in with that grenade. Doesn't try and blow up in the smoke. Oh. Instant kill on to s -tag and It's a one versus one with Config on the other side, Rops. Not quite sure where to look. Yeah, he thought maybe Config could walk through that smoke, but he's still just waiting for it. Out in the open, instant headshot. And you see, ready for the high five immediately is Config. It's NIP back on the board. Well, there we have it. Great attempt from Rops, I have to say. Played it very well. Good initial kill. HE right on the planter. Brings it down to the one versus one. Config, though, realizing he'd have to use brute force to close that one out. There was Carrigan. I thought this could be enough for that opening frag. They were doing so much damage through the smoke. There was uh, missed utility from NIP at the start, but Rez making up for things here. He was the one that missed through the smoke. Manages to get a couple of lovely headshots here. And... It's Rops ah, unable to close out the one versus one. So NIP back on the board, a much needed round there. Money should be a bit of a question mark as well. You see some concessions having to be made as Twist will be down to the MP9. Speaking of which, he's pushed the B steps. Trying to get one of those aggressive, advantageous positions. It can be very hard to deal with, especially that close range MP9. A ramp looks a little more calm and controlled here for an IP. This time, good progress made. Speaking of progress, there's Twist finding that first kill with the MP9. Five on four. Classic position for the MP9 being up there. It's very hard to clear out if you're NIP. Some more bangs coming through, but Brokey playing like a beacon on that A bomb side, looking for a fight, looking for more than one. He's relentless. Hasn't even reloaded yet. He gets the dink, or maybe it was Rain in the back line on Hetrick. But either way, Brokey doing more than enough in that one. Three versus one against Config. At least he's in an interesting position to the center of the map. The bomb, though, is down on the A ramp, so they kind of know where he has to end up on the map. The only question is where he goes in the next 50 seconds or so. Yeah, his options are quite limited, and he's not going to lie to you. Uh, he's got a lot of territory to claim. Recover the bomb, find three kills. In terms of the, the finances, it's not looking amazing. Might just be better off saving the AK-47 here as uh, we hit the 30-second mark. Just hoping a CT will overstep the mark, but... It's phase back to their winning ways here. It's going to be 4 to 2. This could have been such a pivotal round for NIP. If they would have won it, they would have collapsed the phase economy. It would have been right. a, a very, very different first half for them. But phase, they kind of get to skate on by on this one. Yeah, well, the, the adjustment to the setup there, like knowing that they had a slightly weaker B setup, let's get close range. Let's try and fight for that first pick. And a default, you're going to have one player. This time it was S tag working towards the B steps and just trying to deny CT pressure or vision. Unfortunately, he gets met by the MP9, and that was enough for them to have a very strong A defense at that point. They completely shut down the B side of the map. And uh, it looks like NIP will be saving at least an AK-47 here because money will be extremely tight going forward. Uh, so we have a look at the replay. And this is beautiful from uh, Broke. He said like a turret <laughs> on top of the bomb site here. It's willing to take these fights. He delays his third kill as long as possible as well. I think got dinked by his teammate uh, in the process. But still, it is going to be a very nice setup. And here we go. It's going to be the first tactical timeout now. Neo, officially the coach of phase now. Officially, yeah, it's good. They were, you know, happy with what he brought. I um, mean, it wasn't bad, was it? Like, what a showing for your first couple of events. Yeah. Trophies in the bag. Power on through. You're going to struggle to find anyone with more experience anyway than Neo, aren't you? Like, he's been in the game yeah. for such a long, long time. So, I suppose it does make sense. But yeah, you're right. The results kind of do speak for themselves at the moment. So, 4-2 to two, the scoreline. Heading in around number 7.
Again, if you are, you know, one of the new viewers to CS2, if you're not familiar with the MR12 format, it, it's all, it spirals way quicker than you think, right? You don't have as much time to adjust if you're on the NIP side, you're, you're falling behind a little bit here. Those adjustments have to come pretty quickly. Yeah, it's a very good point. But this is uh, full speed ahead for FaZe at this stage, Anders. There is a chance that NIP causes some damage, though. Config is absolutely deadly in these sort of scenarios. This is where he thrives. As he is dead in the first few encounters there, you can see he's trying to take matters into his own hands. Uh, my point was, like, when he's just told to go kill, that's when he actually is yes. the most impressive. That's uh, his natural play style. But it is going to be an absolute massacre here as we see them mowed down one by one as they try and recover the AK-47. Not going to happen, I'm afraid. And it looks like that AK will be up for grabs on the CT side. It's a very impressive round there. Crisis averted, as I said. The Danger Man config with the AK, but unable to do anything with it. There's a... Devious, a cunning plan, you might even say, from FaZe to just put rain on the A ramp and having shooting people through the smoke relentlessly. I mean, yeah. That's hard to deal with. I'm not going to lie. All right, this one was a little bit of a spray down at the end. But yeah, the first kill just exploded config right out the gate. So that's that's just very frustrating. And it, it's, a, it's really a classic dilemma on the T side of Vertigo. When you can't control the A ramp, you just... Like th there aren't that many options left. Everything else is going to feel really telegraphed. You have to win that fight at some point, or at least push them back. Um, I'm sure Alex is well aware that that's something that, you know, a, a problem they need to solve, and pretty soon as well. 5-2 to two the scoreline. A little bit of a round loss bonus here. Nice grenade from S-Tag. That could have set him up for a kill there on Twists. Yeah, he's done a good job of applying that pressure based on the utility on the CT side that incendiary is deployed relatively early. But looks like we're coordinating ourselves back towards that A ramp. In terms of the AWP, we, we haven't seen one on either side yet, Anders. Brokey just uh, staying with the AK-47, doing a great job. Like we said, that turret position he was playing is looking very sharp today. Good utility, though, from FaZe. Denying access towards Sean in its rain, just making sure they know someone's behind that smoke. Just can't walk through it. Has to be the execution. They've got a couple of smokes here. Know most teams are smoking up towards the elevators right now and Molotoving towards boost. So we'll see if that's going to be the case. It's an interesting use of just sort of slightly tapping through the smoke. I haven't seen that too much. It's obviously a well-known mechanic, but I'm just saying like most pro players haven't really used it that much. Harrigan flashed in and he kept <laughs> on going. It's Brokey on the double assist. They're actually the triple assist because Rain got a kill on the other side too. That's an amazing trade he, if you're on the phase side. They could feel them setting up right. They had full control of the B side of the map. They felt comfortable. And uh, just before they execute, that's when you coordinate the flash attack there. And Carrigan, why not go for two? Like, uh, you've already found the first kill. You can see they're discombobulated. And now there's only 13 seconds remaining. A, a plan would be ideal. This round is still salvageable. A broken put his life on the line here, trying to deny the plan. He won't be able to do that, but he gets a penultimate frag. Should be a done deal here, unless the in-game leader goes above and beyond for an IP. Not going to be the case. And a comfortable round to close things out. What a great call from Phaser Anders. The fact that they could just feel the pressure mounting towards the A round, the execution potential was there, and they just shut it all down. Beautiful set piece on the flashbang. Carrigan double spray down. Nothing too flashy, but it gets the job done. Yeah, and I think really playing to Carrigan's strength in some sense. Like, I think he, he really can be that rumble-tumbled kind of player sometimes. Yeah. Like, he is the guy to pick he up the max the kills, like that. but, yeah. like, these are the most impactful kills of the round. Like, look 100%. at the timing. Like, sure, he could have got one and fell back then, but a two-for-one in that sort of scenario, and you've caught them mid-execution. Yeah, Alex knows he's been bested there. Well, here we go, and there's another partial buy, and NIP, this is getting out of control now. As you mentioned, MR12. And uh, at this point, not looking like they'll be picking this round up unless they make the Tech 9 sing. That's a great opening frag. Need a lot more where that came from. But they want to just pump the brakes or build some more momentum here on the A side of the map. They've managed to recover at least one weapon. Or have they? I don't think it's been retrieved. Did it get blown away? I think maybe, yes. Was that one of the HE? Oh, it's all the way back there. Up on the high ground next to the cone. Okay, well, they'll just have to make do with the little they have. You can see Red has been left to maybe go on a, a scavenger hunt. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. That would have made a bit of a difference if they could have picked up that gun. Speaking of weapons, three AKs currently on the CT side, which is a huge bonus, obviously. And Brokey finally has the AWP out. So, you know, for, good point. for fans of that, it's good. You know, we like to see that. I personally just enjoy watching him play with the AWP, even though in CS2 it's been, you know, less dramatic for most all players, but maybe um, with the new patches that's changed. Uh, yeah, apparently a lot of a lot of players are telling me it's in their head, you know, like the Orb is uh, actually fixed now. But uh, here we go. 
It will be rain through the smoke. <laughs> wicked ways, as you mentioned, through the smoke as uh, we think it's uh, three versus one. Just S tag remaining here. It's going to be seven to three unless he does something unthinkable here in the B bomb site. S tag now. Don't have a whole lot to work with. It's currently one and eight. And that's a lovely little shot. Will that do anything for him? Unfortunately, the bomb is down, Anders, and so is Brokey. One versus Ten one. Seconds. Yeah, that's a good point. With that flashbang there, I don't think he can recover and plant. Yeah, there's no way. So just staying alive here, that's all Rain has to do. Doesn't need to take the fight. Round over. Nice shots, though. Really good shots. Even picks up the AWP. But uh, yeah, what a... What a nasty way to win a round if we're ready to walk away saying you can't, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Oh, horrible That's, feeling. Just didn't even give him a chance. Uh, it was a nice nice attempt there. NIP, though, they had the five on four Anders and they managed to bring it down to one versus one, but sure, yeah. too little, too late, I'm afraid. It doesn't really have a huge knock on effect in terms of the finances because, yeah, it, it has been a, a ton of CT rounds built up. I guess, as you mentioned, they do get the head trick AWP. Uh, we've got a couple more rounds here to go, so maybe that's enough. Seven to two. First game, here a blast of four finals. Well, you did warn, even though you picked against FaZe here, you did say, I mean, if they have a good start, imagine yeah. the kind of team imagine. that they're going to be. Well, they're having a good start right now. And they're not letting go at the moment. S-Tag trying to get that opening immediate return from Twist with a double kill there. Taking down Alex halfway through the half wall, and it is going to be a three versus five to start this round with. Not exactly what you want to see. I mean, yeah, that, that's a fair statement. It's certainly not ideal, but not impossible to recover. Head trick, like we said, the AWP. He's got that gap in towards the scaffolding position. Doesn't quite connect the shot, I'm afraid. Brokey, defensive line. Just making sure no one can jump up to the effort. It's scaffolding, and it's a simple conversion. Smoke down as well. Perfect CS, to be honest with you, Anders. Can't ask for much more than this. As we enter a five versus one. Oh, yeah. Spotted as well. Everything working out. Yeah, did they? Yeah, they surely did. Config. They have the right idea. He's still pretty clean with that. But again, the time is the real factor here, though. One versus five. If you had, you know, a minute and 20 seconds, it's a bit different. But with, you know, about 40 seconds, <laughs> you're just, it's, it's too much. Yeah. I think that that's all you really have to say about this one. He can give us a bit of an aim display, though, Anders. He can deny some AK-47s in the hands of the CTs, potentially. I guess that's the most compelling storyline I've got for you in round number 10. Oh, I'm going to be found oh, out that Rob's had enough. Sends him packing. This is the pick of NIP as well. We've got Nuke up next. Um, unfortunately, all jokes aside and prediction banter, whatever you want to call it, uh, unless you're winning Vertigo, I would say it's a bit of a death sentence here for NIP. Um, if you don't win Vertigo. It, yeah, it, it really feels that way. Um, wow, what a beginning here. That a ramp has been a really big problem that NIP has not been able to solve yet. They, they really have a hard time getting past Rain over on that side of the map. And unfortunately, when that's the case, everything else that you're going to try to do, right? Even if you try and go, oh, we're going to go back and do like a B-split from middle. It's going to seem so obvious because the CTs will call it in the first 10 seconds around. They're going to say, oh, there's nobody the A-ramp be prepared at least you know yeah um so just nip have to solve that somehow second time out used a chance for uh for the coaching staff to get involved yeah an sos beacon at this point and we uh we don't really have much to speak of another partial buy two rounds for the name but bear in mind and as you and i have commentated a lot of cs2 now yes. nine three score lines eight fours it's recoverable. Like, it, it, it feels yes. like CS2, uh, say what you want about the, the economy in general. Like, it does allow for these huge score lines to be reversed as Rops continues to apply pressure. This time, a bit of aggression towards middle. Pushes down towards that ladder room and manages to get the opening frag. No problem whatsoever. Hedrick getting burnt alive. Alex's head has been spotted, but Twitch maybe oversteps the market. Gets himself in an uncomfortable spot, taking heavy damage as he calls some backup. Leaves around the corner, and he does get away with it just about. Good grenade. And he softens up Convict slightly, and he's managed to get himself towards the top of the ramp. There's so many people to be bomb side for FaZe. Almost a little bit fortunate that NIP didn't push forward in that moment, because I think they would have run into a bit of an army there. They kind of have to go B now. The fact that Rob's pushed forward. Think of how unlikely that would have been in CSGO, but he really is a different player in CS2. He's so yeah. aggressive, way more than we were used to seeing back then. 
It's kind of exciting because he obviously has the skills for it. Confit gets taken down at the start here. Trying to still pressure into the B-bomb side. They really want to have a go at it here, but unless they get the next couple of kills going their way, and the grenades oh. are so good. What a lineup. Even the accidental jump for Broke, he's not going to lose them the round. How many accidental jumps is he going to have in the last couple of months? Stop jumping with your mouse wheel or get a new mouse. Yeah, I don't know, I know what his deal is. It keeps happening. I, I, we've casted like three moments yep. this month that's happened to him. Um, he, he absolutely owns the round, though. He couldn't have played any better, Anders. Uh, the positioning, the shots he lands, even with the jump, uh, he manages to make it look easy. Brokey is in impeccable form right now. Uh, rifles, AWP, you name it. And even with this crazy jump, like, just see if you're not aware, it's got like a mouse wheel bug. Like, I don't know what mouse he uses, but like some, some of them uh, will automatically just uh, roll back on you if it's not in the perfect position. And that's what a lot of the players use as their jump bug. So, uh, can happen, will happen, and does happen to Brokey quite a lot. And uh, we're going to go into the final round of this first half as Brokey continues to dominate, opening frag through the smoke. Of course, they've taken so much damage, Anders. Oh, oh, this is absolutely devastating for an IP on the opening map of the tournament. And they're using that same HE, Phasar, to yeah. blow open the smoke. You can see the T's are walking up the ramp and suddenly... You know, they think they're in cover, and it's just gone in front of them. And it, it, it's called them a couple of times now. It's a really good little play coming out from the CT side. Rain here. Off angle if I've ever seen one. Just standing there, and Hetrick was not ready for it. Conflict's going to get one in return. Actually gets a double. It's not bad at all. Makes it a two versus three. He does go down eventually. It's broke. He's able to find him with the AWP. He doesn't get that flick in. It's Estag instead. This round is still on, and this round is absolutely critical if you're on the NIP side. You need it so badly. Yeah, I think that's more than fair to say at this stage. A lot working against him, though. Alex, 10 points of health. Bomb yet to be planted. That smoke is dissipating by the second. It's Carrigan, though. Sneaky. Through the smoke, finds a low HP player, and I think we might be done here. Estag does pull one back, but takes severe damage on Roots, and there we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be phased with an impressive lead here. The opening map of the tournament, you're watching Blast Premier Full Finals. It's going to be phased, leading 10 to 2. If I don't say my girlfriend, she'll be mad. Something about them creeps me out. You should try it when you come to Holland. So one thing people don't know about me, it's... Uh, no, I was semi-professional in handball. I have to choose CSGO or handball. And at this time, I was better in CSGO, so I chose the CSGO. I did professional Taekwondo until 14 years old, and I was a Ukrainian champion. One thing about myself that people wouldn't know, maybe I love joint juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like any kind of dressing, only ketchup. But any other than that, I would never take uh, on my sandwich or anything like that. Every time when we go to places and stuff like that, my teammates are also after me and how come and stuff like that. I am uh, deathly afraid of like bugs and spiders and all that. Something about them creeps me out. Every time I come home from an event, I eat a uh, frikandel special because I love it so much. It's like a sausage with, uh, with mayonnaise, some curry and some onions on it, but it's uh, so delicious. You should try it when you come to Holland. Maybe that I'm pretty good at uh, pool. <laughs> That's maybe the only thing. I think I've challenged a couple of good players that I know at least that they're good and I've beaten them. So yeah, I think I'm definitely up there. <laughs> I'm a lot taller than I look. And also my voice is a bit deeper than people perceive as well. I think I have a baby face and people don't really expect my voice as well. Six foot tall, 183 centimeters. <laughs> I can solve a Rubik's Cube in less than a minute. I have a bunny at home. His name is Mochi. He's just chewing my cables all the time. I have to replace everything. <laughs> Three things I cannot live without is uh, water, food, and internet. Pick my phone first. I mean, my bed, I love sleeping in a bed, but I mean, I can sleep anywhere usually, but a bed and clothes. <laughs> I'm gonna say my girlfriend, a pet, and uh, the last thing is gonna be a bubble tea. Mango bubble tea. <laughs> my friends, my family, and the last one would be, I don't know, McDonald's. Food, money, and my family. You kind of need some of those things to live, you know, to make sure you keep on going. Three things I can't live without. If I don't say my girlfriend, she will be mad.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Royal Arena, day one. And we're here with absolute domination from FaZe Anders. 10th two, their opponent's pick doesn't look good for the international roster of NIP. No, it doesn't. Not at the moment. They lost some really critical rounds where they could have reset the FaZe economy, but they never really managed to. And FaZe just had a perfect, almost perfect first half here. 10 to 2 in their favor. Um, in terms of the kills, it's actually, NIP did do something. They weren't just completely missing, but Rain was killing people through smoke left and right, and Twist on the other side was anchoring the B bomb side and playing really well. So there was just no real way for NIP to break through. We'll see if they can do better now that they're on the CT side. It's Head Trick starting us up with a nice pistol kill. He got the first kill in the first half as well. Yeah. They managed to get the pistol under their belt. It was the second round force by from phase where things started to go wrong for them. So looking for back-to-back -back pistols if possible. Nice opening pick, taking down Rain, who's currently at 15 frags. As we'll continue with the A-side assault here. It's Ross leading the charge. Twist to open things up. Carrigan chimes in, and they've got the man advantage. All of a sudden, blinking, you miss it. It's a three-on-one, and Essa tag. Well, he's in a, a world of trouble here, Anders, with not really much to speak of in terms of utility. Got 100 HP, I suppose, with three kills to find and a bomb to defuse. And he's been spotted, and they're all fighting him. That's maybe a little bit aggressive. Uh, the kit is right down there in front of him, so at least he has a, a sliver of chance here. Maybe it could be done. But Carrigan's patiently waiting. Brokey's on the other side. Once he swings wide, good headshot. He knows where Brokey is. Can he find the kill? The one versus three. He's almost got it. Low on bullets. Has to reload in the middle of it. He's tapped the bomb once, and Brokey. I think he might have outplayed him here. Now he's got no chance. He's gonna try and do that underhand flash, and it's not gonna work out. What an attempt from S Tang. That is actually really, really cool. But he just had no chance. He was in a one versus three. I really like the attempt. Great effort there. If one of those last couple of bullets in the USP connected the head, it would have been a glorious clutch. A great way to potentially come back into this game. But it will be FaZe winning the second half pistol. 11-2 to two has to be the force by from NIP. The reasons you can probably imagine. As this one has officially spiraled out of control. Lose this round and you're already at map points in the second round of the second half. Let's tag with a bit more cash. He gets the MP9 out. And we have to do something... Unbelievable here to stand a chance. He sits behind the wooden boards for now. It's a good position, but one that's commonly checked. Ooh, and he just sees the gun barrel. He does go for it. And Confit's there to help him up. They got a flashbang lined up for it. It's a great idea. That actually was a good plan for NIP, but unfortunately, Carrigan getting the blind spray down onto S Tank. So didn't quite work out. But they had the right the right combination at any rate to make that one work. Still a fighting chance here. Is, oh, I was going to say Rops okay. might be able to slip the nets, but it's going to be a couple of frags here. These four spies on the CT side seem to be working out tremendously well today. Four on two. Rain and Carrigan trying to slow things down here, see if they can bring this one back to life. I don't think there's a chance now. Carrigan out of position, but he has got the bomb. Maybe he can get it planted here. Sneak around there. Hetrick's in the perfect position. A little bit of a burst coming out, and they will secure the round. So it's not much of a lifeline, but if, if they were going to stay in the game, then this was the round that they had to win. So then now at least they can, you know, probably roll a couple of rounds behind this, start to get a little bit more into it. Yeah, uh, they've got to do fend off the, the force by, presumably that's coming through this round. But uh, yeah, as long as they can do that, it should be absolutely fine. Some beautiful shots here the Desert Eagle. Uh, it was that MP9 of S-Tag that was trying to open things up. Managed to get the open frag. Carrigan with no plant either, so it uh, doesn't get the extra cash bonus for the squad. Uh, that is a massive round, and uh, NIP will have to convert this follow-up to stand a chance of the comeback here. It's a good start. In round number 15, his head trick will find the initial kill. Carrigan trying to sneak up towards the scaffolding, denied control, and the early frag comes in. It should be smooth sailing here. Strong incendiary will flush Brokey out of position. And just to avoid danger, though, and uh, doesn't take too much damage. Rain back here with the deagle. He was lights out on the other side of the ramp when they were on the CT side. Ready? Trying to see if he could use that smoke blow up against them, but um, not able to find anything just yet. Although it is kind of close. But yeah, this should be NIP's round. This should be a round where they can where they can relax a little bit more. And maybe even the next one. So at that point, you know, 11 to 5, there is... It's a chance that they can that, have a, a, that bit, was of, the, a bit of a the, comeback. That was the scoreline back at CAC. It was 11-5 yeah. uh, in NIP's favor. And then all of a sudden, it went to 53 rounds. Oh, so, uh, the phone. 
We'll see what can be done. You're right, there's a nice opening frag, at least towards this B side of the map here. Maybe there's something to be said if they can find one more of those headshots. And there it is, delivered by Brokey. Finds the head of the in-game leader. Bomb to be planted here, down to a two-on-two. -two. Still a heavy advantage for NIP, but the shots they're heading right now, this could be enough, Anders. And there it is, another one is delivered. Beautiful shots from Brokey. <laughs> I can't believe it. Is Hetrick, do you see? Did he, he's just on the other side. I think he's he's left the building. Oh, dear. Oh, what's happened? Oh, that is so tough. What, what's this? What this went on? Did he just disconnect? Was, Did he just peace out? Is he just yeah. like, you know what? God interfered this, with the round Henry. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, I think okay. Uh, jokes aside, yeah, he did crash. I was like, yeah. did, did he jump off the side of the building? Like, what's what's happened here? So the kill that broke he got before he killed it, like the 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 one on the bomb side. That's just a raw pre fire, right? Like, yeah, he just, he just Ferrari peaked him. I can't believe it. What a way to finish the round. He just like and probably he, the map. He, he said like, oh, he's on the other side of the map. He's got no chance here. Oh no, he's he's literally disconnected. Yeah. All right then. So of course, technical pause. Oh, that's unfortunate. Some hollow fist bumps there, uh, as you're right. Giving up that round pretty much suggests this this map is over. There's still another map to be played, but unfortunately, Anders, it's Nuke, and I would say FaZe are one of the most feared teams on that particular map right now. Yes. Um, so it's going to be an uphill struggle, to say the very least, as uh, we wait for the final player to connect, I believe it's Hedrick, that got removed from that difficult scenario. And to be honest, like, it was winnable. Had he been there on the rotations, they were both, what, sub-20 points of health? So it's really unfortunate for an IP. Well, listen, while we are... Oh, we're getting back into it. Oh, right away. It's good times. Technical pause is over. They fixed it quickly at the very least, but um, yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, like, Nuke is... Especially with Rain playing as well as he is right now, and he's typically playing that yard position on the CT side. Like, it's going to be... It's going to probably be a slaughter out there. I would have loved to see an IP with a chance to warm back up into it. It looked like that round was going to be it, but the Deagle shots and I guess the... The, the disconnect, unfortunately, just, you know, too much for NIP to handle at the end of it. A P90 on Twist. Um, so, anything like I interviewed a few players yesterday, Alex, and I was told by more than one that the P90 is going to be meta in the future. Shut up. Nope, I'm not kidding you. I am, I've been told with good authority that the P90 will be a viable weapon in the future of CS2. You're going to see it more often. So my time as a pro has finally come, Henry. I've been waiting for this for a long, long time. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, Convict's got a deagle as well. They're fighting for their lives on this map, right? 12 to 3 map point for FaZe. My, oh my. These desert eagles have been brutal. Some say maybe a little bit overpowered in CS2. Um, well, you've been you've been comparing to the source deep, and that's say, that's something. That is, yeah, that's a bold statement in itself. Um, but yeah, it's certainly in the same league. Like it, it's kind of unbelievable how crisp it looks on some of these tabs. There's another one. S tag finds rain as the P90 finally doing something, and it will be NIP back on their feet for now. Good round to pick up. Not all is lost. They managed to answer back here. They might as well just post as many rounds as possible, Anders, to try and get warmed up into the series and uh, make the scoreline more competitive. Still every chance. I'm this calling, goes to overtime. Like, it's their map pick. I'm calling and, it now. They're going to get to, like, 10 or 11 rounds, and, and then that would be lose. fine. That would be okay. Like, at least you, you knew you had a chance. You were in the conversation. Like, there, you had them sweating at one point. Yeah, and I guess especially for the NIP project as a whole, right? NIP probably coming into this tournament with, you know, obviously dreams of doing as best as they possibly can, but you, you're thinking as well, long term, we're trying to build something here with, sure. with Alex coming into it. So, yeah, if they can make it back from a 12th Yeah, line, you've, you've got to manage the expectations, right? Yes. It's, it's literally the first game of a new in-game leader. Yeah. Um, the team kind of, let's be honest, in turmoil the last few months. Like, they can't seem to find their identity. Hampers in, hampers out. Um, it it yeah. seems like they don't, they're not really sure. It really has been a mess, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, like, in comes, terms of coming in and realistically beating FaZe, like, sure, they almost did it as CAC, but they did lose in overtime. And now this is FaZe with a pretty decent start um, and looking decent today. Like, the whole squad is, is turned up in buckets and spades, you have to say. Uh, that does it all end here? That's the question. It's Config, who has been sharp on this B bomb side. Lots of damage. Great positioning here. Mows them down. Alex will chime in for one as well, so should be enough here. I said that with baited breath. Rops is fighting back, but it's now just going to be rain. 18 points of valve. A deagle. Five bullets in the magazine. Possible to close it out here, but very unlikely. <laughs> that deagle. Yeah, I know. The deagle's ridiculous, isn't it? 
It does make you nervous, but uh, they're going to go check. I think uh, they're going to have a hard time. Oh, there we go. Actually, I thought they were going to lose at least one there. Looked like they weren't looking for him at all in that position, but good job. They will survive. There's some laughter coming out, Alex, having a decent time at the end of it. Um, some good flashbacks against Config. He almost couldn't see anything for the entire fight there. Yeah, but his positioning was just so well thought out. He had such a, a great powerful position. As soon as he spots one, they're lining up for him. His damage output is ridiculous there and uh, holds them off just long enough for his teammate Alex to chime in as well. As we go 12 to 5, presumably that's the eco for phase there. So yeah, this is, uh, this is absolutely fine. If NIP can slowly but surely just close that gap, make things a little bit more uncomfortable for FaZe, that, that would do wonders going into map number two but uh for now a little mid excursion for phase clan trying to see if they can trade out a couple of kills if possible very defensive hold though great positioning once again config lining himself up a few kills here takes some damage on brew but takes all that aggro away allowing his in-game leader to shine here should be able to get the final frag as well nothing too spectacular but a nice sequence all the same yeah, it's good to see Alex feeling good about it. He was looking very stressed earlier on. I mean, again, like a lot of weight in his shoulders, even if it's early days. Uh, just nice to see him individually get a chance to just, just play the game, have some fun with the weapons, you know? Yeah, this is uh, about as easy as it gets. P250s, no Kevlar. You've got an AK in hand, a Gatling gun. He's mowing them down. No! Nice! Oh, no! Nice! Ah, he's enjoying himself. As we get into round 19, and uh, they should be like six more rounds on the CT side. It's certainly not impossible. Oh, it could be done. It could definitely be done, but we'll see. They have to get through this rush first. Oh my god, Kerrigan with the <laughs> MAC-10 just absolutely blowing them up. That's a double kill to open it with. Now, they're going to get two in return, but still, that could have spiraled out of control really fast. But I like this from Config. This could be the round-winning move right here. Grenade should do it. And it will. And that's a problem because it takes away some of the attention. Now, if they get the kill and they will onto Alex, suddenly Config's position is not nearly as cool anymore. Well, Config, what have you got for us? It's map point, phase in the two versus one. It looks like we're all said and done. Robs will wow. confirm it and it will be phase clan with a, a dominating performance there on their opponent's pit of vertigo. The, the ace was completely locked down, Anders. Round after round, it was the ramp that was shut down time and time again. Yeah, it really was. What a victory for FaZe, and um, well, we're going to have a little bit of a breakdown from the desk. Job done for FaZe on this map one. In spite of a little bit of a resurgence towards the very end where we saw a couple of NIP players being activated, it did look like a day in the office where we get FaZe in control. Yeah, it looked like uh, coming out to try and play perfect CS from NIP. It was a little bit too slow, a little bit too predictable, too many mid rounds where FaZe is probably the best in the world. So, yeah, rough day of the office. I love how FaZe came out being aggressive on that CT side as well. We saw Rain, we saw Kerrigan, they were relentlessly fighting in the beginning of the round. And as you said, it, it felt like NIP could never really dive into what they had planned coming into the game. You probably know it as a coach as well. You put on a game plan, you want to get into the mid-round scenarios. But if you're already being obstructed before you get to that point, it's going to be tough for a team like NIP. So the aggressiveness coming out for FaZe in the beginning, to me, was sort of like defining the game. Yeah, I mean, we can we can dive into probably Rain's profile quite quickly. He had a banger of a game. We see more than 100 ADR. And I always consider this to be a huge alarm sign when Rain is being allowed to get all of these multi-kills. So do you think NIP approached it the wrong way? Do you think they, they allowed him a little bit too much of these multi-kill moments where he just ran away with the game? I think it was a little bit too slow, like coming okay. up against FaZe. I'll probably have speed it up a little bit just so they don't have the, the, the pace of the game in their hands, right? To maybe get them a little bit out of their comfort zone and then maybe later they will like regroup and, and find out what's happening. But here it felt like they were they had the upper hand from winning the second round from there. It was like uh, just let's just put it out there. Vertigo, the choice. I, I personally was surprised. We know FaZe yeah. is, is kind of introducing Vertigo back into their rotation. It's not a map they're supposed to be that strong, but in hindsight, and I and IP going for Vertigo, was it not just doomed from the very beginning in, in terms of being cornered in this mid-round? To be fair, I think it's impossible to tell given Alex is, is new into NIP. You bring in a new in-game leader, you have five days of practice. We don't know how much they've been focusing on Vertigo. We don't know the results on Vertigo either, right? So we can expect NIP's map pool to change a little bit with Alex coming into it. So I guess if there ever was a time to, to bring it out, it would be in the first game here where the consequences of losing is not all doom and gloom, I guess. 
Yeah, okay, I, I see where you're going. I appreciate that. Uh, we talk about Rain. Another player we can bring into the spotlight is Twist. In the green room, you had relatively strong words. You said he might be a little bit underrated. Maybe his impact is always felt. Was that the case here again? Yeah, I think like these like all of a sudden he kills two even if like having a bad game it always feels like it's the two two kills that swings a half you know maybe it's in the money break around maybe it's like on a retake or in a disadvantage and then the team like picks up from there so I think he he goes under the radar even if you can say that about Twist but at least like for me he's like one of the best players in the world of being like this uh, sleeper. I feel like he's the opposite of what we sometimes describe to Prius, you know, a guy that if he gets off to a good start, you know he'll dominate throughout the entire game, whereas if he's off to a bad start, sometimes he goes missing. Whereas for Twist, as you said, he can be asleep for the entire game, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's gonna show up with the, a couple of kills. Now, in this game, obviously, it wasn't needed. Face were in control from start to finish, but he did have some impact, and he, he did help to the win. Right, now, we know Face is a little bit of a complicated situation, not only with the whole Game Square uh, kind of conundrum, but with Twist being maybe in, maybe out. Yeah. There's a whole lot of rumors out there. We get the experience here. We get to see them, watch them play. It feels like the atmosphere is really good. It's really positive. So that in itself is a good sign. Even though if the future is uncertain, it feels like they're able to just hone in on the tournament. That what's, what's at stake right now, the game right now? Yeah, like they, they, like they look like the best team in the world, right? And when you have that feeling, even if you feel like something is maybe like happening in a month, maybe a week from now, you still feel that you can win anything, right? And when you have that feeling entering a server, I don't, I don't think they think too much about anything else. Mm. Winning solves everything, Matthew. That's, that's the way it works in. in you want to bring like a T-shirt, maybe? We like could, winning we solves could sell everything. It, we could be merchandising. Mm. It. I, I think that's also part of the case, right? Obviously, we don't know exactly what's going on with Face, but as you said, the mood seems to be great. We also observed them before they went into the server, all laughs, all smiles, and as I said, winning solves everything. As long as you're winning, there's no issues. Right. Just flip the switch, uh, switch rather very quickly. Any silver linings for NIP? Any calls for hope for, for, for Esperance if you're an IP fan? Did you see anything that would garner your, your happiness and motivation in this first map? I mean, if anything, Config, we, we have to give him right. some, some credit for at least playing a, a decent game. We spoke about it in the green room as well. You, you want him to be activated. You want him to be in the center of the map. You want to unleash him. And I think he in, in CS2 so far for NIP, he's had a, a couple of good tournaments. He was all right at CAC as well. Had a couple of cool moments in this game. And I guess Config is one of those players with the new iteration of NIP, bringing in S-Attack, bringing in Alex, will have to step up and find some sort of consistency. Yeah, of course, like you have you have Res and Config that's kind of the similar type of, maybe not player role-wise, but where they are like impact-wise. Mm. Mm. That they both have these like big upswings, but also the swings down, right? And if they solve that with bringing, I think this guy a little bit more into also on the T side, not being on his own island, I think they, mm. they have the pieces, right? But it needs to, to soon click also to find right. the, not the similarities 24-7 between the two. Well, we are, we are very much at the very beginning of a long run for NIP, of course, rebuilding a structure, new IJ Alex coming in the first map, didn't go their way. Vertigo was a little bit of a disappointment, but they still have a fight in the game. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dissect Nuke the next map.
after a strong start on the first map phase, is looking to extend their winning streak to 16 here in Copenhagen. They're in the lead 1-0 to zero against NIP and moving on to Nuke. Now, Roga, I'm, I'm going to pick your brain. I have the luxury of having you with us currently. Phase, huge pedigree on Nuke, one of the strongest team out there on that very map. If you are DJL right now, what would be the priority for your team moving on to a game versus phase on Nuke? I'll probably think about not being too scared. I feel like they need to come out and show who they are, like come out and play the style that they have been preparing for. As I said, maybe not go too perfect, that every round needs to be scripted down to the last second, but at least come out and try and take the timings, try and, and abuse the rotations a little bit, because if they come out now and want to play slow pace, they want to like have the right finishes at the right time, I think FaZe is still too experienced, too good, and will shut it down. But let's throw in a little bit of X Factor, a little bit of like gimmicks here and there, break the smoke wall at one point and try and peek them the other way, like something like this, at least to, to swing it a little bit, so they're not fully in, <laughs> in FaZe's uh, own yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a deal with the devil in a sense, because I agree with you, if you look isolated at this game, if, if they want to stand a chance of winning on Nuke, NIP haven't won a game on Nuke in 117 days, right? You're going up against Face Clan as well, you got to throw out the strat book, you got to unleash config, unleash West, play a little bit out of the book, but Again, if you're preparing right now to, to build in Alex, you know, to learn how to approach the game, you know, to fit in as a tech as well, you want to take this as a learning experience. You want to stick to your guts, you want to stick to your game plan and see how far away you are so you can sort of measure yourself up against a team like FaZe. So you're kind of, you know, trying to make a, a deal with the devil mm -hmm. in the sense that if you want to win this specific map right here, right now, maybe throw it out, maybe do a little bit more loose style, but also you have a major qualifier coming up in, in a couple of months now and that's where you want to peak. So how much time are you going to waste at these big tournaments? Yeah, I agree with you. Listen, I think these are two different different horizon, two different perspectives to keep in mind. Mm. One is getting ready for the major eventually and build a game book. The other one is let's try and make that giant bleed, right? And yeah. and I recall the ends of, of Snappy in CAC with, with the lineup that was that had a stand-in, that had a whole lot of uncertainty as well. And with a couple of these good calls, like the, the, the inside crunch from Ramp and some of these moments, it was possible for them to make FaZe suffer and make FaZe doubt. But how do you make sure that you keep the balance between being a little bit crazy but still keeping your principles, right? Play the good Counter-Strike. How do you find that balance? I think it's it's quite up there in modern CS. Like, you cannot come out and play perfect CS from the first minute anymore. Like, teams have gotten so good, so mm. much anti strat so many, like, game plans for specific styles. So I think it's actually out there. That's how a lot of teams are playing, even, like, the guys behind us now. I know Kerrigan loves to, to play mind tricks. So I think it's here. It's just a matter of having the balls to actually do it here now. You wanted to see some pace on Vertigo, I want to see it on Nuke. I think it's a, a bit of an old notion that you can play fast on the T side of Nuke. You can definitely be aggressive towards inside. As you said, the quick smoke wall outside and, and try to force on some pressure towards FaZe Clan in that regard. So when NIP gets to the T side, I want to see them play fast. I want to see if they can rattle out FaZe just a little bit. And then maybe you can fall back on your default. You can fall back on what you prepared coming into the tournament. But you got to do something to, to put the game up in the air, sort of. Who do you imagine to be the weak link for FaZe Clan? Again, you're building a sort of a game plan for, for NIP because we know they don't have a game plan per se. Sure. I think viewers have to realize that they're, they're not coming here ready. They have a bunch of days of practice and that's it. They're moving on with, with very limited pre-plan and sort of ideas on how to play rounds. But what is your target? Who could be a target? For me, it's always been the inside, bomb side defense for FaZe Clan that's been a All little right. bit, you know, not bad by no means, but it can be rattled, you know. I feel like Rain outside, the way they play outside in general, he's so strong. Uh, very good at taking the fights, very good at, at keeping information, giving it to his teammates. Robs on ramp, obviously a no-brainer, one of the best players to, to play that position. So if you want to try to find a weak link in face, it's, it's probably the inner bomb side. It's probably the end of bomb side, or try to abuse the fact that uh, yours truly robs behind you here. He also leaves ramp a lot. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's maybe one thing. If they somehow can manipulate that he then starts uh, rotating lower, maybe they have a chance. Yes. Yeah. And I love that you mention it, because I agree. It, it could be sometimes a double edged sword, because Robs takes a whole lot of liberty and freedom in how he plays that ramp position. But do we expect NIP to already be ready to exploit that, to ready to create this moment? Because you know, it from a coach perspective, it's not just, hey guys, I'm going to throw two smokes outside and hopefully Rops is going to move. You need to have some sort of punch to your fake, some sort of punch to your activity. Is, it, is there a world in which NIP is, is ready to put this kind of shenanigans on the server? I think so, but uh, also oh, remember okay. that uh, that Robs also rewatches his previous games and he's not uh, he's not stupid, so he also knows his tendencies himself. Like 
I think that's what makes him such a great player, that one game he can leave ramp every single time, and now he knows the next time, maybe he puts Brokey there, or he stays there like 10, 15 seconds even more, even pushes to find a gap. So I think it's not going to be so easy, but I think <laughs> they have to do something, right? Because they need to try and manipulate a little bit. Yeah, I was just about to say, I feel like Rups is, is one of the harder players out there to anticipate, because whenever you watch him play, he's so proactive, and, and it feels like he's always one step ahead, right? So as you said, one game he does one thing, another one another, and I think Rups right mm. now is not feeling any pressure whatsoever playing in IP, so it's probably going to be another field day for him. Can you maybe exploit Rain's tendency to fight you? Is that, is that be something? Because we know he's very aggressive, that's in his DNA. Maybe can you use some of your aimers for an IP to go out there and take him out? I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of config, you know, head to head with Rain in Yard, at least I hope so. And we did see config play well on, on Vertigo, so maybe that's an opening as well. But I also do think Rain is very good at, at balancing that act. You know, we see him being aggressive once in a while, and the next two rounds he'll just hide left side warehouse and, and do absolutely nothing. So it's, it's tough to, to catch off a uh, face, I would say, on the wrong foot. We are trying to build a narrative here where NIP have a chance, but the sad, harsh reality might just be that FaZe are looking towards streak 16 right here. Anders, Henry, you guys are ready to cast us on that second map. Is there a world? Are we being too realistic? Are we being pessimistic? I try to hope, I try to dream, but we don't have much to work on here. Ever the romantic there, Maniac, I'm afraid it does look like a 2-0, I have to say, and is uh, with Nuke and all the variables and situation they went through there, it doesn't sound good for an IP. It's going to take a bit of a miracle, but uh, one that's that has some potential, right? He's right, if Reds, if Config come online and just bring a brutal game onto the server, they've got a CT start, uh, you never know. It doesn't look good, but uh, all they can do is give it their best shot here, and the second map between FaZe and NIP is underway. Yeah, you know, if I had to say some of these, I would say individually, and I think they kind of show up on that first map. They just, they lost both the pistol rounds. They, they never really got the economy off ground. FaZe had money throughout the whole show. Like, I think, I think there is a way here, but yeah, obviously FaZe just, uh, they haven't been stopped yet in CS2. So we'll see if anyone's going to be able to, maybe this is uh, going to be NIP today on Nuke. I certainly would be a bit of a surprise. This would be probably the harder map to win against FaZe on, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Say there is at least a chance here. Rain out in the yard he was the superstar on that opening map and he's actually got a bit of a good chance here but this tag will take him down not bad the flashbang nearly set it up for rain to get the kill there well there it is an opening kill a response though and a decent one from phase they take control of the ramp room so right now sure they've got a disadvantage next objective will be to try and get the bomb planted if possible but head trick with those jewelies patrols a squeaky door they have a standoff right now it's ropped holding towards that position as well as it will be phase Repositioning and uh, coordinating the troops over towards the lobby. Back towards up we go. There's Julie's either side right now. And it should be complete lockdown from Config. Oh, that's a strong headshot to begin with. He's not shying away from the fight either. Twists will go with the kill. And Rob's actually just... Hedrick not even checking the corner. That's maybe a little bit careless. 40 seconds. And it is a three versus three. Gotta be careful. Alex nearly gets taken down. That's 95 damage oh, up the ladder. No. I can't believe it. Kerrigan to get the kill on S-Tag. That should have never happened. And now the bomb is going to be planted. They might have given this one away here in IP. I think you might be right there with the headshot that's already wounded Alex down to 5.12. That might be enough as we will see them attempt this retake here, but there's nothing to be done now. Rez will have just the outside control. He's towards main entrance. There's no way he can defuse this bomb. Uh, maybe just uh, holding on to the Kevlar at this stage, Anders, because it's absolutely over. It was looking so good wow. for a while there. I appeared the opening couple of kills, but then Carrigan flying up that ladder steals the hopes and dreams away, and it will be another pistol in favor of FaZe here on the T side of their map. It's going to be 1 0. That didn't need to happen. There was totally five different ways that NIP could have made different decisions individually and as a team to make sure they held on to that kind of a lead. So a bit unfortunate, I've got to say. S tag giving them the opening kill here, but Carrigan's position. I thought they were going to rotate around it in a different way, but they actually use it as a, a, bit, a bit of a backstab. And surprisingly, that worked out for a kill. So, phase off yeah. to a good start. Very good start, and we won't see the same four spy that we saw on Vertigo. It's going to be the full eco here for an IP. So, an outside stack, though, to be honest with you, might be a little bit tricky to negate. we are going to see a, a little bit of a swing in the garage, but so much damage from these Galils. Blink and you miss it as we That's go up to round. zero. That's a very quick round, Anders. You're dead on, and uh, it will be phase to give nothing away whatsoever. Uh, take on the rifles, though, for an IP. It's going to be a compromised round. You certainly won't have the, the sniper in the form of the AWP. You're not going to have kits, perhaps, and maybe not even helmets, uh, which makes uh, 
bit of a problem going forward, considering up against the majority of players with Galils, as we hear. Twists and Co. gunning them down. Uh, here come the M4s, though. As expected, you can see there's only two players of helmets here. I mean, so these Galils are extra potent. And uh, in terms of the kits, I don't think we have a single one. Outside smoke's deployed early. And uh, that third smoke coming in as well. So maybe just going for a very basic approach here of four players down towards Secret, one patrolling towards Squeaky Door. Yeah, the lack of utility here really a, a sign of worry for NIP in this kind of a round. Going to be FaZe making their way across down to see if they can maybe fight Hat Trick. I think he's well aware that someone is going on, so he's going to be falling back. He's still the only one down here, so... A lot on his shoulders. If they want to try and win this round, they need a strong headshot. There we go. Rain goes down instantly. That's everything that he could have wanted. Gonna just back off into the site. And he can call in for some rotation coming down from the ramp as well. Well, well, well. Opening frag. A beautiful one from Hedrick. Good discipline just to peel off the, the angle. Buy some more time. Call for the backup. It's clear it's gonna be a lower side attack here. Alex, good damage towards Brokey, but not quite enough for the frag. But Rops. Patrolling the vents, he's at least cool that no one's actually rotated down towards that position, so maybe they come towards upper Aranders. It's a nice call and one that may pay dividends. Yeah, they set it up really well, but good little setup for config though. I do like the change of pace here for FaZe, but they still might not be able to break through. I think NIP have realized what's going on, and it is just Carrigan left. One versus five on this one. Good spray! Oh my god, that's a great double kill. He's gonna get the bomb behind it as well. That's way more than he should have been able to get. Sets it up for a flashbang. He's picked up the M4. Oh. He maybe could have had that third one. Oh man, I wanted to see Kerrigan follow through on that. That would have been sick. Oh, well done though. NIP with a solid hold. Uh, giving up outside at the very beginning. Allowing players down towards secret. Head trick though, playing it perfectly. Manages to find the kill, deny the plant. Force him towards upper. Big smiles all round. And... Uh, yeah, great effort from Carrigan. He's actually had some really impactful moments today. Yeah. Gets a double kill and the bomb planted. Keeps the money nice and strong for FaZe. Should be another buy available for them. Uh, but good read as well. Nice rotations towards upper and indeed lower. S-Tag finding the most important kills. Uh, his Carrigan's attempts though. Managed to get that bomb planted. Actually does have a bit of a knock-on effect. Keeps NIP very no! modest. And gives him extra cash on the FaZe side of things as Alex enjoying the first round. They've picked up on the CT side. They need to win Nuke here. Take us all the way to Mirage if possible. You have to assume that would really spur them on. If they could win you, oh, yeah. NIP are going to go into that third map thinking... And that's their sort of turf as well. Like, this, this lineup, Mirage, and Config playing, you just let them Hell off yes. the leash, just get stuck in. If they can take it to Mirage, they, they've got a real chance, but the stats don't look good for them. Faze just too good on Nuke. There's Rops. Okay. Working well. out that squeaky door. A couple of kills found already. Make it three anders. Difficult to even keep up with the action here. As there's only two players remaining for NIP, they have dropped like flies. Config, tucked in towards the CT vent of upper, maybe can salvage this one. He would need two kills at the very least to stand a chance. It's rain again with the headshot through the smoke. I don't know how much no. he saw, but yeah, he, he <laughs> did do it one more time. That's got to be something that's just frustrating for NIP at this point in time. But yeah, Rob sneaking through the squeak door and just, you know, you, you catch yourself for a minute there. Just you're unaware, you're not thinking about it and you're going to be dead. And I like this slowdown now from the phase side. Why risk it? Why not just wait and see if you can figure out exactly where NIP are? These last two remaining players on the A bomb side, that's where they're coming, but still, they're completely surrounded and ultimately taken down. Is that another accidental jump from Brokey Henry? Is that what I'm seeing? Potentially. Surely not. He loves it. He's always uh, hopping around. He's hopping mad as uh, we will see a, a beautifully timed little pin set towards upper. Not giving anything away, Brokey. This phenomenal timing there. As soon as Robs gets the aggro towards the heart, that's when he strikes. Manages to pick up, sure, a bit of a scrappy kill with the jump, but a guaranteed one as uh, FaZe played the round to perfection. Opening frags are plenty. Uh, leads them to a 3-1 scoreline, and I assume it's an eco as well as the finances have just been completely sabotaged on the... NIP side, Anders. We've got wow. a Deagle and USPs. That is it. NIP playing on hard mode today. Yes, yeah, this, <laughs> this is like nightmare mode now. Yeah. This is about as bad as it gets. Trying to see a bit of movement tech there from Twist. Doesn't quite nail it. It's fine. It's going to be dropping off some utility. Maybe a double Molotov from that position. <laughs> okay. Oh, you can see what they're going for. Okay, that's kind of sick. That yeah, is so it lands sick. on top, so you can do the double Molotov. So I assume on the bomb and side he floor, the he landed the Molotov upright. It's, it's the, like bottle a, flip. the bottle flip challenge. It's a classic meme. 
Um, he actually did it as well. I, I can't <laughs> believe it. That's a world first. On LAN as well. Forget about the game. That's, you know, no one's ever done that before, I think. I've never seen that. Let's see if it work, works out. There's a lovely setup. The double Molotovs in towards up from top of the heart. The bombsite floor opening frags and a nice swing for the CTs, but it's don't have the firepower to really do much about this. Config makes it exciting. Okay. Beautiful headshots found. Uh, won't be enough to win the round there, but certainly made things uncomfortable at the very least. Can we get the bottle flip in slow motion? I feel like that's... It's a new meta now, isn't it? It's, it's got to be. I guess on, on Ecos now, we could see how many flips you can get in a row. Per round, it's so you can set the record. Revolutionized the game in many yeah, ways. Yeah, that's kind of blown this my mind. It's going to be a divide. Like, this is going to be what happened after Bottle Flip and before, you know? That's where we're going to think about it. I can already it? feel it all over social media already. Everyone is like, look at this bottle. Look at this. Just look at it. <laughs> Sadly, we're denied in this round, but, um, you know, we'll try and mentally recover from that and just get back into talking about the game. Oh, right in his face, isn't it? Rops down to 39 behind. I can't believe it. Head trick out here. Good position and a good kill onto Brokey. They need it so badly, NIP. They, they need a real string of rounds. They haven't had that yet in this best of three. They haven't had anything really rolling their way, but now is the chance for it here. Although Rain sneaking out. That is such a good kill onto Head trick. Four versus four. Rez inviting himself to the yard, hoping to get a little bit of action out here. But he realizes that's being held by an AWP, so didn't really want to test that any further. So assertive from Rain here as well. He's making great progress on the map. Tucked himself in beneath heaven already. They might just wait for the CT reaction to come through. It will. Config active, as you might expect, towards main entrance. Pulls on back, and then Carragher's about to be sussed out as well. So it's down to Rain to try and salvage the round. It's a great opening frag, but surely overworked in his position. Can't quite connect the dots there towards the second kill of Config. Leaving Rops, unfortunately, pretty far removed from the scenario. In towards Ramprum, and he's got three kills to find. And he has maybe a, a five-second window before Config will be looking for the, the flank coming through. And there it is. It's going to be Config aware of this potential kill and taking him down. So, uh, very good work. CT's back on their feet here, Anders. Okay. It's, it's what they needed. Exactly. High fives are coming out. And, I mean, it, again, I think that the key here for NIP has to be to roll this on forward, get the economy on their side, and just, you know, maybe put FaZe for the first time in an uncomfortable position. If they can if they can get some of the money away there from the T side, that's going to make a big difference as well. So, Config, very nice round. Good opening kill from Head Trick, the AWP, paying dividends as we take a tactical timeout on the NIP side of things. DJL chiming in here. It's been a pretty stressful opening series for the Ninjas. First map of Vertigo. Their map pick. 13-6 in favor of FaZe. It's the first tournament where they're playing with new in-game leader, Alex. It's uh, been an interesting ride. A few roster changes here and there for the Ninjas. A few role changes. S-Tag off the bench. Hampus interesting now. ride, Henry. That's the most generous yeah. thing you could have uh, said, I know, think. Well, it's day one. I'm trying to be nice today. <laughs> Um, and yeah, Estag off the bench, Hampus removed his in-game leader. Um, more changes to come, so what we can kind of nice. gather. Like Alexi was on the lineup at one point, bro. Yeah, right. Like, if, device. To be honest, ever since device, it's yeah. just been a wild roller coaster for the NIP lineup. I, you'd want to give them, just give them even three months of just having the same lineup. It'd be sick, it'd be yeah. interesting. There's a lot of talent in this squad, and they're going to have to dig deeper than ever to recover this one. Through the flames we go, though. Carrigan more than willing to throw himself in towards the bomb site. This time it doesn't really work out though. It's going to be a solid A hold from NIP. Mowing them down with his AK 47. Salvage from their enemies. Should be a clean finish as well as Alex shuts down the other bomb site. He's fired up. Good. Get them like online. See. Yeah. He wants to make sure he drags everyone through the flames with him. And uh, that is very. Very good from NIP there. Bit of a classic round. round for Carrigan jumping through the loves it, know, doesn't the, he? The flames with the match. He really does love it, and I, I think it, it's one of the one of the things, one of the many things that make him an exciting player is his willingness to do this as the in-game leader and just you know trying to go for it. And it, uh, to be honest, it works often really well for him. So why not give it a shot here? This was too much though, and NIP will get another round four to three. Still in favor of FaZe here, but they are very low on money. The Eagles have been picked up a couple of them there. We saw on Vertigo what a difference it could make, but this one, it should be NIPs. I say it, you know, with a little bit of hesitation because those Deagles have been looking good, but you'd want to see NIP pick this one up. 
You would. If it all goes to plan, this game is back online. It was starting to look a little bit problematic. But, uh, yeah, this round looks like it's under control. Five versus three. Those Desert Eagles have been promiscuous, to say the very least, today, Anders. Yes. They've been finding some brutal headshots. But, uh, looks like they've been silenced here. Four to four. Looking very likely. It's S tag tugged behind the CT vent. Config patrolling from the rafters. <laughs> Rops is trying to engineer this kill from every different angle. You could see he already realized where S-Tag is, but didn't feel like he was going to get the repeat there. So 50 seconds on the clock and kind of a lot here still for NIP. Just to get, keep all the rifles alive. This is about the economy. Oh, Rez finding that one. Didn't get to say his name too much on the opening Good map, point. Rez. But no. We want to. Um, over at CAC, I think he had some very commendable maps. He did. Like, I feel like we, we had that very sort of, like, conversation, uh, that the usual monologue of when the threads going to arrive. Um, he actually had some very impressive performances. Uh, bear in mind, like, they were essentially a mixed team there. But, uh, we'll see. This is looking like it's, it's promising. This CT half is coming to life now. That's a few rounds in a row. They've tied things up a 4-4. Four to four. Alex is looking fired up. New in-game leader. Wants to make sure the morale stays high. Of his new team here. As you said, Rez getting the job done. M4 looking very confident in his hands right now. And uh, it's over to phase now to see if they've got a, a response for this solid defense we've seen. It feels like NIP at least have a real chance to prove something that now they have some money to work with. They have a little bit of a chance here. And that's in itself encouraging because on the first map, they really got wiped out. It was so scrappy that they never really stood a real chance. So it's nice to see. Config's playing well. He's 9-6 and six at the moment. And we'll see if they can continue this form into the next couple of rounds here. Tied up at 4-4. Four to four. And Config right on top. Rob's not quite ready for the fight, which is surprising. Robson playing really well in that position, but this time was just a little bit too much. Four versus five to start this one with, and Config's going to go down, though. Brokey with a good headshot. Well, well, well. We've got a four on four. Carrigan taking great space towards outside, but spotted by head trick. Okay. A comfortable kill. No problem whatsoever, to be honest with you. And uh, he'll continue to patrol ramp as well. So uh, this is looking very good for an IP. I I'm not sure there is anything FaZe can do with this one, Anders. They, they have, what, like zero... Grenades, really. Like, yeah, literally zero utility. And you've got a five on three, or four on three, to be fair, and it's rain. He has to find a kill down towards Secret. If he can do that, without a trade coming through, maybe there's a fighting chance here, but it doesn't look good. It all comes down to this frag, and it will be res there to get the better of it. Finding the AK-47 as well. Fancy a bit more. Oversteps the mark here. Trying to get that extra information, and uh, gets a little bit more than he bargained for. 35 seconds. Alex repositioning, using the off angle here. Just needs the one and done. That would be absolutely fine. He knows it as well. And that was the first, and his head stag with the second. Beautifully played. NIP will take the lead 5-4. to four. And you can see this is uh, it's looking promising, Anders. Against FaZe on Nuke, they're actually looking like they might be competitive now. I would say so, yeah. This is the big, big improvement from the first map. Again, I think it's it's really worth thinking about the first map in the context of the fact that they lost both the pistol rounds and, and just couldn't really ever reset the phase economy. Um, this is a different, you know, different adventure right now. I don't like Rez pushing in that two versus four. Um, I guess it's always like a balance of, you know, I think uh, I think Rugger said this in the desk, like he wants to see NIP not playing scared. Exactly. I so think that, that, that's maybe promising, right? Like that getting, side. That, okay. He's getting AK-47. He's hitting some shots. He just got like three eco frags in the round previous. He's feeling himself. Yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, we need him to play a little bit more on the front foot, to be honest with you. Good opening kill. Gets that AK. It was Alex to, to save the day there. Like I said, if he gets at least one round, will be secure. He had s -Tag behind him as well. Really solid hold with the smoke getting dropped. And look at that. That's some passion for you. I like that. That is something, though, um, that NIP has been missing in the past. I feel like the sort of most energetic player for, for forever, really, on this team has been Config, right? Yeah, He's true. That energy. So if Alex can try and match that, get them a little bit more fired up. Um, I, I think that's something that could really help out. Underestimated part of the game to have someone that can keep the energy flowing. It's a 5-4 to four scoreline. NIP with a round lead. It might not sound like a lot right now, but... I'm sure for the mental, it makes a difference here. A hat trick. Not realizing, but probably calling out, saying they could have got down. There is a chance, and I think they've already got res down below. Yeah. Catch anyone. Just the safety net, we'd call it at this point. Making sure that they can't scramble down towards lower. It is going to be a ramp pincer. 
So CT's one step ahead of it. Should be absolutely fine. There's always a chance. A good spiral. And we know how potent the Desert Eagles of phase are. And it looks like we've got an opening frag. Rain. He somehow gets past them. There's still going to be a solid hold here. It's Alex doing God's work with that AK-47, but can't fend off Rain. He's surrounded right now. This is the partial buy from FaZe, and they brought it back to a two versus two. Utility dropped towards the ramp, but the bomb is down as well in a very compromised position. Yeah. Both CTs defending it with the AWP, the M4 respectively as well. Uh, so this will be super difficult, especially now. That was the opportunity. If Carragher could have got that kill some way with the PG-50, you never know. Rain, though, still making the frags happen, Anders. He's done everything in this round. It's such a sick round from Rain. Three kills here. Oh! We have to do something, but Carrigan will find the headshot, and they get it back. Unbelievable. I, it's it's because Rez is in the jump position, and somehow he can't see Rain when he's up against that left-hand side yeah, of the hallway. It's, it's a bit of a, a red face for, for Rez there, I'm afraid, yeah. because he's... That's how S-Tag dies. Exactly. He's patrolling that position. Like you said, he's jump spotting it, and at the moment, he looks away. I think he just diverted his gaze for a few seconds. Rain sneaks through. He gets that opening pick, and then applies all this pressure to Alex, who, who is delivering. He was finding cook kills there, but... Rain continues to dominate here on Nuke and his Carrigan biding his time until he had the advantage with the P250. It's a massive round to give over. Config knows it as well. As we go 5-5, it's a partial victory for FaZe here. Hedrick taking matters into his own hands. Playing aggressive here towards that side with the AWP. Molotov though makes things uncomfortable, but he's not taking any damage for now. Missed flick, but it doesn't matter. Rez still here to pick up the kill. They're going to double nade against Hetrick. That did almost no damage. Where did the grenades go? He's down to 77. Now, they're very low on grenades on the NIP side. That was kind of the compromise here from losing that previous round. So that is a bit of an issue, especially with a minute left. But that opening could go a long way. s tag is going to be going down, and Carrigan will find the kill onto Hetrick from the silo position. Yeah, Hetrick is trying to retreat. Couldn't get out of the path of Carrigan. Mows him down from the silo position. And they've got a huge advantage now. T side of Nuka, four versus three. CTs spread very thin across the map here. They've just got no lower presence. They have to hedge their bets. Try and get in towards the upper bomb side. They've made the correct call here, but they need a frag. Need a bit of intel. Smoke down towards main. I know it's going to be an upper attack here. Rob's trolling towards secret. And we have got Twist with that bomb towards the hut position. They're actually doing a pretty stellar job so far. We go down to a two versus one, but Alex, nothing he can do, Anders, as uh, they continue to just trade out kills, utilizing that man advantage and eventually winning the round. Wow, yeah, that's the economy reset now for NIP. It's a very bad position to be in all of a sudden. I've got to say... They really, they, they couldn't afford to lose that round of rain. That, that previous one, that was devastating. This is a good setup. You like to see it, but they can't really escape the position once they're in it. This is the kill where things yeah. got very complicated for them. You can see they even made the correct call. They, they had the upper gamble going on the CT side, but that man advantage, so difficult to deal with. And now the final round, Anders, of this first half. It's going to be Desert Eagles, CZs, MP9s, Famuses, and the first kill comes in before we can even explain what the setup is. And it looks like NIP are done here on the CT side. 7-5 looking very likely indeed. Yeah, Config trying to fight his way back into it. He's stolen a FAMAS, or he's picked up a FAMAS. So, he could maybe do a little bit of damage with that one. Three versus four. Rain sneaking in behind. He's got the right idea. I think he heard the drop. He knows that someone's down here. Maybe more than one person, but he's going to be happy with just the one kill onto Rez. Okay, though. Look at this. Config's got the bomb. And no head now. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a beautiful way to close things out. FaZe continue to dominate on the T side if they do post that 7-5 scoreline. in there you could go anywhere you can split both sides but Ooh. hold on the fans have voted and this next round will have limited gravity but i believe they're still deadly accurate in the air so jumping is <laughs> you're gonna so. have a laser sight up there you can jump and look at this oh no he's so quick in there trying to look over the map oh look at it they're all airborne but they should be able to shoot there we go to free he doesn't even know he's getting shot from at all. He can get dropped. He thinks he's safe down there, but he's airborne above him. Dupree here to shut it down. It's so close. He missed a couple of shots, and now it's just S-Tag left.
He's coming in with a ridiculous flank. Is he really going to try and throw? This flashbang is going to go to the moon. That's not even... A it's too much. He's at the obelisk, getting one wall. That's trying to knife him. <laughs> it's just so good. And there's the stab. The best, the best time to do it. All right. This, <laughs> this one needs no explanation. <laughs> Amazing. Right in his ear. Uh, he's got no more voice. I, I don't know why he wants to take away hearing as well. He's inspired by it. Oh, it's great tasting. <laughs> why can't we have this every match? Smoother and simple. Send him up to our little booth next, Jason. Get him yeah, get him up here in the casting booth. Or you have him just blast that the entire time behind the other team. That could definitely put too. And he getting a kill. Final round of the first half in its Zoomer Madness. This one should benefit the Dream Team with all the snipers they've got down the list. We Gotta give you a shot here. No scope headshot through a smoke. That's and how it's done. Okay, they're all leaning back as well. Oh, they're having a great time. <laughs> Lounging on the stage, bunch no stress of, at all. Bunch of JDMs in here. That's exactly right. Oh, and now they're hunting for him. Rez put under pressure, it's another no scope. <laughs> oh, in God's name. Symbol's trying to no scope a little bit of his own. Getting hunted down by Sokka. Oh, it's Kirby instead getting the kill. So another round at the end. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You're back. It's map number two between FaZe and NIP. FaZe continue to look very strong here in the series with the heavy favorites. And Anders, I've just got a question for you there. We're looking back at some of those highlights of uh, Team Denmark versus the All-Stars. Um, it's a classic. Seemed like Jason has never been so much, had so much joy and glee ever in his life. Looked like the best game of all time. I the think most really fun anyone's ever himself. had. He's a man for the show matches. He loves a show match. He does love a show match. Well, here we go. A little bit of a show coming our way as well. Twists with the duelies Woo! and a double kill to follow. <laughs> it's so quick, Henry. It's unbelievably quick. The pistol round is over and done with. FaZe laughing their way into a second map victory right now. This has gone wrong for NIP. Yeah, I, I like the call. Like, why not? Let's go for the upper rush. Uh, unfortunately, that's what the duelies are designed to shut down. And there's a normally on top of the half up. Twist just a slight adjustment on that bombsite floor, and they get absolutely mauled here. Like lambs to the slaughter. It's NIP. They get absolutely nothing out of the pistol. It's going to be phase eight to five. No plan. Presumably nine to five now. They have to take the full eco here and bring out the rifles in the third. And there we have it. Brokey. Prime position. Like, you wanted to farm some cash. Isn't this the play you do actually want to be a little bit aggressive at this stage? We get a double. as $1,200 at least in the bag. It's so greedy, isn't it? Uh, but in the best possible way. Also, just kind of letting NIP know you. There's absolutely no respect whatsoever here. Like, we're just... We're hunting. We're having a great time. A little wicked smile on Rob's face. You never really want to see that, do you? Like, he's such no, a scary exactly. player already. <laughs> like, Don't let him get in his zone. And uh, it might be too late. As uh, FaZe... In touching distance now of the 2-0 on their CT campaign, the idyllic start. And uh, we'll see if NIP can scrape together enough to make this round work. He denied double digits at the very least. They've got two smokes. They've got the, all the smokes towards outside. The slightly deeper variation. I've got AK-47s across the board at the very least. Uh, it will have to be quite a basic approach. A rudimentary with the lack of utility they have. Yeah, it's going to come down to the that's fight. That's what we need. There we go. That's the that's what we're talking about. Good old fashioned headshot. Underrated in many ways. Yeah, absolutely. People forget about the headshots. They've been using those for generations. Oh, Carrigan. Going to pick up the M4. Rain can't use that anymore, so I guess it's better than leaving it on the ground. Yeah, Rob's thinking about whether or not he can bring his team back into this one. He's 
waiting for his internal clock better than anyone in the game at just, you know, being patient in these kind of moments. We'll see if it's going to be rewarded here. And he's got some backup out here as well. Oh, this is going to be... Nice Molotov timing for NIP, though. I think maybe Rops would have wanted to go for that, but now... Yeah, he still fancies his chances, though. He knows he needs to go big. And unfortunately, Alex is on top of him here. That's looking like a confirmed round for NIP. Mm -hmm. A must win, to be honest with you, as well. As they go five on two, like... Sure, it's not a done deal, as there is Brokey down towards lower. He's got an MP90. Might as well give it a good go. Twist and get a frag here. There's what? somehow a chance for them. He was midair, I thought. He was yeah. on the ladder. He was jumping off the ladder. I, you're not supposed to win that fight ever, but I think NIP have got a, a good position now. S-Tank had already snuck on there, so he knew that no one was going to be on the high ground. And they get the bomb planted, so... So I think they just try and contain the T-side here. Just make sure the round is as exp expensive as possible. It's worth probably a little bit frustrated there that he did present a sound cue. And uh, Brez simply finds him. A lot of damage inflicted there. Not much he can do. Just finding one more kill would be great. Calling for the back of his teammate here. It's a beautiful little setup. All things considered. Getting a lot out of a little at this point. But uh, can they both survive? Twist would do well in 12 points of health and the <laughs> large blast radius. Uh, I'm not sure if, you, if you're going to make it. Looks like he might be fine. I actually don't know. In CS2, back of the garret, I'm sure it'll take some damage, whether it's more than 12. There it is, 8. So now we know. Okay. Write it down. Memorize it. Twist certainly knew. Well, that would know. make sense. He probably plays a bit more CS than me. <laughs> probably I tested that. I, I, I don't really test that sort of thing out. No. That's fair, Henry. But now we all know. Yeah. Don't laugh. You don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nine to six. All right, then. It's a so, critical round for NIP. Oh, the, they all are really at this point, but that one more so than ever. They managed to make it work, but still a lot more to be done here. Rifles across the board, four phase still. It's Rops with the all. Bit of a specialist with the weapon as well, especially towards the ramp. It makes so much sense in this position. He's got the only kid as well, just to note that. That's quite a difficult buy here. There's no kid in play. Brokey this time opting for the secret position. The same Molotov to keep him at bay as they try to get some control towards that side. Yeah. Famous Henry G double smokes going down in the yeah, air. You do love to see that. And nobody blowing up the smokes either, so they get to walk clean past. It's a big benefit if you can only use two smokes out there instead of the three that you'd otherwise have to use. Roki, very committed to this position. The jump pass, but he's good for the double oh. kill. My god, he didn't have any backup down there, and still he picks it up. They are getting picked apart on this one. Just so everyone is confident. That was, Nobody on phase even worries about losing the fight. That was absolutely filthy Yeah, Roki. Like, just so calm, so collected, brutal aim, and just ducking and weaving, like tap dancing in front of them while they try and trade out the kill, but... It's perfectly played, and we've got a, a five on one, I'm afraid. S-Tag will be guaranteed at least one. And that gives them his position. So now, the question is, can he save the weapon? He has got 100 HP. No real reason to hunt him down if you're phased. Like, you know, there's, there's money available on the T side. Uh, your CT economy is pretty weak. This will be double digits confirmed. And they do start to coordinate around the map. They've got the bomb in their control, and it looks like he will be surviving this one. So, uh, yeah, that's all down to Brokey and Rain. Uh, real nice synergy towards outside. Beautiful shots and great confidence, as you mentioned, Anders. Yeah. S-Tag just living out the round. Going to be able to make it through that one at the very least. So, yeah, AK for the next one. Yes, indeed. Right. They had a pretty good T side, but we can also do it. Let's take pistol here and let's just grind what round by round. And play with no fear, boys. And play with communication. Like, we, we have to play like a face it puck. But if we if we talk to each other, it's gonna be all good. Just remember how we did in practice, like this. Well, well, well. Andy. That was during the break. Okay. Between the first and second half. So um, yeah, I think it's Carrigan coming in to. Hey, we... that that's pretty much what the analyst said. Yeah. Like I I, I don't think they put it in quite so many words, but playing like a face it pug, keeping it loose. They've got five days of prac under their belt, so you know what? They just need to play with the same sort of confidence and. <laughs> Wise words from Convict. Like, he's probably onto something there. They, they've got enough skill to win this sort of game. Um, but not looking too great right now. They, 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 it's difficult to play like a pug on new campus. It's, it's a very technical map, especially on that CT side. It's all about rotations, communication. You can't really make a one-man play 
uh, on the Sydney side of New can actually playing like outside I maybe have a chance to put on a bit of a show but you shouldn't be able to but yeah. I don't know the individuals on phase right now are, are making me kind of second guess that a little bit because I think just, you just need look so confident there's lots of op upper pops there lots of just opportunities to get bomb plants down trade out kills like I think that's gonna be your best port of call but it, it certainly pick your poison there's no correct answer here like you said I phase just look tremendous individually like how do you shut down the world's number one team on this crazy winning streak they're on right now? Looking to park up with 16 series wins in a row after taking this one 2-0. Like we said, the ramp is perfectly complemented by the Org as they get mowed down once again. It looks like Faye's got another comfortable round going in their favor. Four versus two Anders, and it's just so calm out there. They look very relaxed on the CT side. Yeah, I th there's nothing that NIP are offering them at the moment that's making them question whether or not they're going to be able to win individual fights or win the map and the game as a whole. They just, they're really at home right now. Rez getting double teamed. It's down to head trick. He's going to be found as well. You see how they're just walking in. They're just, yeah. they really are just individually coming up with, with every single kill they need. Rops with the double on the one side, twist the double on the other side. It's just, it's kind of, it's working out perfectly at the moment. I can't really, but this so this is the this is the phase you get if they get a strong start. If yeah. they're not down 0 and 5, Anders, this... We've been asking. Yeah, we wanted to see what that looks like. It took them 16 series to get there, but uh, this is what they look like if they get the ball rolling nice and early. This is brutal. 11 to 6, and it has to be the, the partial buy. I say that, actually fully invested. I, I guess uh, you're one round away from series points, so yeah, why not? Give it everything you've got. This is the, the debut game, at least on land, for Alex as the in-game leader for an IP. Not much is expected against FaZe, let's just be honest here. Like, yeah. no independence to win the series. Did they show up today? Difficult to say. I would say FaZe just like, looked extremely good. This is like championship form FaZe. Continuing the momentum, as you can see. Yes. Extremely confident. Got a nice buffer of rounds here. This is against the Force Buy as well. So this is quite significant that they're winning this so... So easily. There's nothing that's really being done in terms of the response. Molotov off. <laughs> Alex is taking a lot of damage as well. And uh, there it is, series point pretty much locked in. As FaZe absolutely dominate the lobby. And what a finish from Carrigan. Smiles all round. Yeah, they're having way too much of a good time on the on the FaZe side of they're, things. They're playing yeah. like the FaZe hit pug now. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> true. Flying up the ladders, pushing into all the lobby. It looks like it's job done here. Pack it up, because NIP are done. Wow. Well, um, I mean, I must say this is encouraging for FaZe to, to, to keep the streak going, right? That's obviously what they're looking for, just to don't, don't drop it at all. But um, NIP, I don't know. I would say individually, it they've looked okay, which I think is, is sure. you know, th that's something that, that I think is, is worth thinking about. But yeah, in an MR12 format, you lose the wrong rounds, you don't get the pistols. Even when it looks like you should be, they lost some, you know, some... They didn't have to look. Rounds. Yeah, they didn't have to look average today. They had to look their absolute best. Yeah. The standard chance against phase, like when you're coming in with five practice days under your belt, I just bear that in mind. But here we go. Not done just yet, it would seem. Reds with a double kill towards the upper bomb side. It's a tech nine doing the heavy lifting here. Who would have thought this is the round they actually start to look quite promising? Not out of the woods just yet, though. There's damage inflicted. There's rain from the lobby. Looking like he might be able to do something with this steel. It's four versus three. Config down to 16 points of health. The bomb only just planted as well. So as soon as the smokes dissipate, you never know. If rain can find his second kill towards the lobby, maybe they can close things out right here, right now. That's certainly what they're dreaming of. Rocks that smoke's lasting forever at the moment. He really wants to come through somehow, and he's going to find the kill on a res. Config back there, and S tag with the trade instantly, and I think Brokey's realizing that AWP, it's worth a little bit too much, and the bomb is too far ticked. So he's going to look for the exit instead. Oh my god, he actually got dinked, and they'll both go up to the bomb. What a way to finish a round. <laughs> but for NIP, that's what they wanted. Uh, yeah, more of that, please, Anders. If Reds could just rush up and get a double kill with the Tech 9 each and every round, they, they should be absolutely fine. But, You're asking uh, for a lot, Henry. Yeah, that's <laughs> the problem. That's not too sustainable. We'll have a look. He's actually from the main entrance. So a uh, nice little approach. You can see that that's good for a, one or two rounds per game, I would say. But uh, yeah, it's just a lifeline at this point. They need a life raft to survive this one on the T side of Nuke up against FaZe. But they managed to keep themselves in it for now. Still, of course, series points here. Would need five rounds in a row to get us to overtime. Stranger things have happened, even against FaZe. That is true. 
Although, you look at the fact that Brookie's got 16 kills and Twister's got 19. Yeah, just, doesn't look it's good. so intimidating, isn't it? And individually, they're just playing with absolutely no restrictions whatsoever, it feels like. But Rez is out in the yard again, and he's looking for just a little bit of action. The other four players playing towards the ramp, so it's a well-known position to play like this, especially if the ramp part of the push can, can create an opening. There is a way to crunch that B-bomb site effectively, but they haven't made up their minds yet. They've still got about a minute to figure it out. They're running a bit low on nades on the CT side as well. FaZe also running low on the money. If they can win this one in IP, maybe the next couple of steps will be a bit easier. Here we go then. Towards the ramp we go. The flashbang. Actually pretty effective there. Takes Brokey off the angle for just long enough for s to get the advantage for the initial duel, but... Speaking of advantage, that's going to be Rez losing it. Takes a bullet to the face outside. Not too much damage, though. Carrigan using this information that they can potentially get towards the lobby. That's significant. Should be the kill here for Alex. Just about gets it. And it's now going to be a four versus three. Towards that point, go. It's twisted the bend, and he's doing a great job so far. Lots of damage inflicted. Can Rob save the day? Apparently not. It's just going to be rain with low HP and a brutal finish there from Hedrick as he keeps the dream alive for an IP. That might actually cost him a, a couple of rounds here, FaZe, because I, I assume they're down to an eco at this stage. So there we have it, Anders. We're back. We've got we a game in our hands. I think again, Rez in that moment, even if he was not getting the kills, he kept three people occupied in the yard. Sure. Pretty nice close there from Hedrick as well. That M4A4 making a huge return in CS2 now with the new loadout system. It's got a bit more stopping power. I'm going to call it that with the 30 bullets. Enables those love it. three kills. And uh, looks like we've got a bit of an eco here. Uh, maybe a bit more than that. Rob's got the MP9. CZs, P250s. Uh, but essentially broke you just a USP as we keep things simple for an IP. Simple and clean, teamed up like this. I think it's it's what they need at the moment. They lost some really ugly rounds on Vertigo in exactly this kind of scenario where, the, you know, they, they should have been winning them and suddenly they run into rain, he gets a couple of headshots and it's all over. They really don't want to go out on nuke like that. So I like the team up effect here, trying to make sure um, that you can't bleed off too many players. You don't want to go out like this either. To the MP9. Yes, well, yeah, just don't, like, it's not. This is the sort of round, like, just when we're like you and I often build up the storyline. This is the sort of round that actually falls apart for them. Oh. Uh, but this looks okay. And they've got the lower control. It should be the opening frag. Brokey had no idea he was being wrapped on. But there is a chance. With Rob's in this kind of interesting position and Twist taking some aggro for him. You actually think maybe he can find maybe a couple of kills. At this point, they're not going to win the round. But there's the first. Not quite going to convert it. But uh, still, there was a moment there where things could have got a little bit more complicated for an IP. But they managed to start posting a nice consecutive string of rounds. This could be three in a row. And uh, maybe there's still some hope left here on the T side of Nuke. It was Vertigo that slipped out of their grasp to open things up here. And it's best of three, the opening game here at Blast Premier Full Finals. But uh, now just three rounds, Anders. Like, the money's pretty battered and bruised on the CT side. Like, this is where closing out these games is super tough because you're making so many compromises each and every round. There's always, yeah. like, missing utility, missing kits. You can see Rain with no utility after the initial smoke. Same story for Rops as well. Yeah, this is bare bones. So, uh, real chance. They give this one up and it goes to overtime. Oh, but it's a good start, isn't it? A lot of spray through. They're going to find Rain on the other side of Config. That's an important kill right there. And Rez manages to make his way all the way down. Carrigan, I think, is the only defender down on the lower part of the map at the moment. So, got to be really, really careful here. If he goes down, it's a very compromised to be bomb site. And I think NIP have called for a bit of a freeze. Saying, let's just see if there's going to be a reaction here. Rops, it's a very, very slight reaction. Just takes a peek into the yard and realizes at least still one T player there. Yeah, this is going to be on Carrigan, isn't it? Sets up for it. He's got the right idea. A little bit of damage onto him already, but he's going to call it out. He will actually escape. That's huge. This is actually a pretty decent play right now. He's buying some time for his teammate to try and make the rotation, although they're still quite far away. They're not really rushing to try and get there. Yeah, Twinkle Toes here, Carrigan. Managing to get the hell out of the solo door, and he's running the clock down, Anders. There, there is a chance he actually does quite a lot with this one. He's done very well. They have no idea where he's repositioned. He's surrounded, but if he times this well, you, you never know. He's got the 
Single door shut. Here comes the execution. Can he find multiple frags? That was the real chance there. He's going to be brokey on the response. So maybe he can deny this plan. It's getting all sorts of uncomfortable down towards lower. Looking to close out the game right here, right now. It's a two versus two with no bomb planted. He shouldn't be allowed to, but maybe he can. Brokey through the smoke. He tries to go for the no scope. Ten seconds left. The bomb being planted. Rob, he opens the door, and that's it. 60, or oh sorry, 13 to 9. It's <laughs> to pick it up. Unbelievable scenes, Henry. Unbelievable scenes. What a close as well. Carrigan is making things so uncomfortable down towards that lower bomb site. That's running the clock down lower and lower. And it's NIP. An admirable attempt, you have to say. The fact they came back and made the scoreline competitive at the very least here, given the circumstances, I think that's still a pretty solid showing on their first outing with Alex. NIP did enough just to get us on the edge of our seat towards the very end. We were a little bit unsure as to the proceedings, but FaZe do the job. That is a W to start their campaign here in Copenhagen. Raga, I'll come to you first. What do you make of that performance from FaZe Clan? Solid, I would say. Uh, even as the favorite starting T side of Nuke is never like ideal. So them taking the small uh, lead before halftime and then closing it on CT, solid. I would agree with that sentiment. You know, at no point in this game did I feel FaZe weren't in control. Commiserations to NIP, I think they did put up a, a better fight here. Nuke showed a bit of what we wanted to. We heard from the in-game clip as well, Config saying, let's play like a puck, let's let's go out there, communicate, let's make it tough for FaZe Clan. But overall, at no point in this game where I left with a feeling that FaZe weren't in control. And I have to give them props as well, because if you're FaZe Clan, you're starting um, your full final against a new roster, NIP. There is a risk of being a little complacent, right? You're in this incredible win streak. The world is basically your oyster. And I still felt like they were very disciplined and very strict with how they were playing. Is that something you felt from their game as well? Yeah, like they were on top of everything they wanted to do. It looked like when they made like small moves here and there, they were together. And then, yeah, it, it's, it ends with the last clip, right? Where, where Kerrigan gives the perfect communications to where the bomb gets planted. It's like a top solid tier. Perfect communication, solid team play. They had it all. But what we have is James standing by with Rain the victor. Rain, another win goes the way of FaZe and the streak continues. And I do want to just start by looking at that. How much is this entering your mind at some point about, okay, we're setting some records here, going into CS2 and this streak that you're running with? Yeah, I think we're just saying before every game, we no way we're going to win this game, you know? Uh, there's no way we're winning another game. So uh, it works out so far. So yeah, we've got to see how far it goes. And okay, you just talking to me off camera, you're saying okay, it got a little bit too close on Nuke. What do you make of this nip that you're going up against though? Do you, was it a team you still need to respect? Did they feel a bit off key? Like, how did it seem for you in the server? Well, they have a lot of great individuals. Uh, Config Rest, they can pop up any time, right? And Hedrick as well. So um, there's a lot of firepower there. I think they just need some more time with Alex. I think uh, they have a system he has to integrate, and it's going to take a time before they become the top team they can be. And for this whole event, there's a lot of new teams and new faces coming into it. What does it change for you guys? I don't think it changes that much for us. Uh, we just want to play our game, have fun, and uh, enjoy the game, you know? It's, uh, CS2 is going so good so far, and we just got to keep the ground going. It's definitely going well for you guys, that's for sure. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. I will say CS2 has been pretty good to FaZe Clan. That's an understatement in itself. Um, Jacob, FaZe is kind of this box of chocolate right now where you just get to pick which one you like and it's a different flavor every time. This time around it's Twist. Yeah, this time around it is Twist. He was not playing his best brand of Counter-Strike at the CAC, but this time around, at least in this game, he's been uh, hands down the, the best and most impactful player coming out from FaZe Clan. As you said, seems like every single player right now is feeling themselves regardless of, of may or may not happen to this roster, they are focused on, on what they're coming in here for, and that's to play good Counter-Strike, and that marks 16 wins in a row as well, which is not to be making showers at all. They keep going indeed. For NIP, let's just say the challenge was probably a little too strong, a little too early. What do you make of this first showing with Alex? Is there, can we have any kind of hope for the future of this lineup here in Copenhagen? They still have some games to play, they're not out at all. Do you see any silver lining? Yeah, of course, like now they have an official under the belt with Alex. They know a little bit what he expects of them in, in official games when there's pressure on. So obviously they have some things they could look back on. What did go, like what went well, what didn't go well. As you mentioned, the voice clip with Config, right? If that's the direction they feel like they, they were lacking in, mm. the, in the system, maybe they need to add in a little bit of the X Factor, as I also mentioned pregame. Alrighty, well, that is the set or the scene rather set for this first step here. We have FaZe who is moving on to the winner's match. Uh, this is going to be a little bit later, of course not today. They still are yet to find an opponent. And that is our task for the next few hours. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back in about three minutes, we have a beautiful grudge match between Cloud9 and Navi. A whole lot of history, a whole lot to talk about. And that's right after this break.
Actually, I don't think I, I need an in-game leader on this team. I don't care, they're both offers. It was very special to be a part of that team. I think if I was on that team, I'd be the water boy. I would just bring the water with electrolytes every day, you know? I think I answered this question a million times, and I think I always gave a different lineup. I would just put both Simple and Zaivu. I don't care, they're both offers, they're just both insane. Then I would put Robs as an anchor, let's say as an IGL, let's say Glaive. I could put myself in there, like being in the, somewhere there. <laughs> My role would be probably like to be entry together with IGL then have Robs as an anchor and then Simple and Zayu doing whatever they want to do. Say myself, Fallen, Fur, Twist and Stewie. Those are players that I enjoyed playing around. Uh, and I think a lot of them are super talented. Fallen, you know, he was a wise professor, in-game leader. And like I said, Fur, a player that I looked up to in terms of his play style and his personality and somewhat. And, you know, Twist, my fellow Canadian, uh, my good friend. And, you know, Stewie, him and I had a lot of good memories and I believe he was like one of the more smarter and intelligent players I ever played with and he taught me a lot about the game. So, yeah, he was a, that was a, those would be my, my five or my four, you know, I, I included myself in there, so. Who do I pick if I have unlimited money and I'm an owner? Myself, because I'm going to still playing, of course. Then I will take Simple with me. And then I will take Zaibu as the third guy, as a rifle, because I, I know that he likes to play with a rifle as well and then he's, we saw the clips with him. Then I will need an Igel. I will take Alexi, my teammate. And then uh, I need uh, hmm, one more guy, one more guy, one more guy. I will go with uh, yet right to the, the beginning of the concept whenever, whenever he was owning, like in the good lurker. Uh, number one and number two, it's uh, usually simple in Zaibu. Not sure which one of them would be the main op, but one of them would uh, be main op and one of them would be like a hybrid. I would put Carrigan as the IGL. I think number four as a uh, Kind of a support would be Perfecto, a player uh, similar to my role in, in Lurk. I'll put I'll put uh, Cobb there. <laughs> so if I had to, to make a roster and I had unlimited money, I would definitely go for Saibu and Simple, first of all, on the team. Even though they're both Orbas, I think that both of them still are really great rifles and probably the all-time best in CSGO. So I would have to pick those two for sure. I think I would go for Pops as well. I think he's a really good anchor and it's just very calm. Bimich, it's been a while since we've seen you on S-tier events. I know you had the RMR with one win, for example, but just what's the feeling for you to come back and be at an event like this with Cloud9? Of course, it's a great feeling to get back to the lands and, you know, this, these guys, Electronic Perfecto, we was playing like for two years, I think, and uh, it's it's perfect time, you know, to shine because it's CS2 right now and everything is great. I like it, very positive thinking. Now, I read on the HLTV interview you said on some maps you will be AWPing, but how much does this change for you being the IGL, AWPing, and, and how does it impact the team with the situation you have at the moment? Uh, it's okay, we're trying to build new structure in the team, and of course on some maps, uh, some players should uh, play on the AVP role, but um, we'll see how it works on this tournament, and we will check. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Now, for you, you're back with Electronic, who was also your secondary caller when it comes to Na'Vi. Did this all come back naturally, or has it been kind of a lot of rebuilding a system and how you want to play? How much can we expect of what you guys are used to? Uh, you know, like I said before, we're uh, building new, new structure, but uh, at the same time, we're trying to be like in Na'Vi. I'm the first IGL and Electronic helping me at the mid-round calls, so everything they, like feeling the same, but um, still the new structure because two new players and, of course, uh, one year without the Tier 1 stand, you know, we should build something perfect, I think. I like that. Build something perfect is definitely the goal. Now for you, you get Na'Vi in the opening game. It's like, um, like a dream scenario for the fans, that's for sure. But how does it feel for you? Because obviously it was Blade and Bit who were the ex-teammates. Is there any extra motivation to win? Is it anything special at all? 
I know in one moment it's uh, the first land for <laughs> big time for me and at the same time it's just Navi first match and of course it's uh, really interesting and I'm really motivated but I don't want to be hyped uh, about the match versus Navi I just want to think about our game new team and uh, our mood Bumic in the Cloud9 jersey. No, that I didn't have on my bingo card at the beginning of this year. That's a new surprise right there. And I think it's a beautiful example of what we sometimes refer to as a team of Counter-Strike needs balance and it needs coherence to work out Rogue. Because on paper, if you trade me, hey, is Shiro a better player than Bumic? Then of course, yes, he is a better player in, in isolation. But somehow we get the sense that this Cloud9 team might be even more dangerous now that Bumic is in it. Yeah, for sure. Like now you can get uh, <laughs> some of the pressure off ele electronic shoulders. You also saw in his end of Navi as well, it was not really, really great, right? Mm. Um, and him continuing that little bit dip in form in Cloud9. Now you get a real like dirty in-game leader that wants to do all the all the, all the the stuff that no one else wants yes. to do, right? Run and gun, create room, so electronic can pop off. So yeah, I have high, high expectations for this duo again. I'm, I'm curious, you know, this is not a, a move you make without, you know, raising the band, raising the expectations a little bit. Because yes, you get rid of Shiro as you said, in isolation, one of the best players out there in the world. And what you said right here with Boomage creating space, running around, can he do that when he's also playing the AWP? Is he going to, you know, give up some of that space creating in order to have the AWP? <laughs> or are we going to see a team that once again, I don't think we've seen it since Liquid, are going to go with fire rifles for most of the time on the T side? That could also be a way into it. So I have a lot of questions I want answered at this turn. Right, well, I think we can, we have time, so we can open the debate on okay. that. I'll put my opinion out there. I don't think Boomich should take the LWP that much. I think it mm -hmm. would be a huge mistake. I think on the T side, you can definitely b be viable with a five rifle here and there, maybe on choice, on occasions, an AWP. And on the CT side, you do it in, in moments where you have pre kind of built where you're going to have your AWP. Long term, I think everyone agrees that you're going to need an AWP to play in CS2. I don't think it's really a question. But short term, how much damage do you think this roster can do here in Copenhagen? It will definitely catch some people off guard because normally when you think of CIS, you're playing slow play style, you have an all-bowling mm. angle, punishing if someone wants to re-aggro. But here, I expect a little bit different. Now it's probably going to be a little bit more Wolfpack around Boomich with a couple of high fraggers behind him, just like cleaning up the, the floor. And I think that could, be, that could be a solution. But as we talked about, right, it feels a little short term because yes. once the other teams start picking up on it, the orb of the opponents will now see, okay, Field day. Let's go and go and find them. And here's the deal: the timing of this move, right? If it doesn't work out, Boomich even said it in his interview. We're gonna see how it's gonna work out. If it doesn't work out, if they realize we need an AWP player, what do you do then? Who's gonna get out of this lineup? Oh. Do you change leading into the major, into the armor? You have a very short time right now where you can make it work. But if it doesn't work for Cloud9, then they're in big, big trouble once more. So I see, uh, at least from my point of view, there's a lot of pressure on these mm -hmm. guys. There's a lot of pressure on Electronic to come back mm -hmm. to life. A lot of pressure on Boomage to at least be viable with the AWP. So I am very curious to see Cloud9 play. You know what? Let's open this Pandora box, right? Okay. Let's open the Jumanji game and let's have fun. Who is in danger? Who is in trouble if this isn't working out? And I'm just going to put it out there. I think Axile's position is getting weaker by the second. Not only do you lose, you just have to think in terms of dynamism and dynamics in this team, right? Now you have a Navi-centric core, ex-Navi-centric core, Boomich, Perfecto, Electronic. They've won together. They won here in 2021. Sure. They lifted the trophy in Copenhagen. They have their culture on how they play Counter-Strike. Axai lost Hero, his duo. He only has Hobbit to his side right now. He's not really delivering. Like I'm trying to, I'm not trying to make up drama, but look me in the eye and tell me he's he's not in danger performance-wise, the culture in the team right now. This is getting dicey. I mean, he's more in danger now than he's probably ever been, but you said something very interesting, and that's something I've picked up on as well. Electronic wasn't that great in Navi at the later stages either. We haven't seen the electronic as of two or three years ago. If you can guarantee me that electronic is going to thrive on this lineup and pick up the pace once more and be the top five rifler that we've always known him to be, then yes, Exile could be in trouble, but can you guarantee me that? You know, because we've seen it with a lot of players that once they go into the in-game leading role, they then return to the Star World, they're not quite the same player. I don't think there's a lot of good cases for it, at least. I yeah. think we have maybe had one through history and I can't even come up with the, the actual name, right? So it's a dangerous path to go down, but uh, yeah, it's going to be very curious. And, and I agree a little bit, like, it's for me, it's between 
is between Exile and, and Hobbit, right? Mm -hmm. And the obvious one sitting at the edge of the table is probably Hobbit. But again, who takes over his roles? And that's also another question to be asked if that's the case. And who do you bring in as an op player even? Like Shiro's out of the market. Who who do you have as an option right now? Is Symbol going to come out of retirement to join Cloud9 and you have ex-Navi all of a sudden being in Cloud9? <laughs> I, I don't know what's that's going what on That's what they've been trying to do. Yeah. They've been trying to rebuild Navi very slowly, just Apparently. step by step. No, I, I agree. I think it's a complicated conversation. I just think that Hobbit might just be better equipped to deal with these harsh positions yeah. that you know nobody really wants to play. The shadowy roles, it's very ungrateful. You don't get a whole lot of resources for you. I think Hobbit might be more equipped, but history is yet to be written. We are witnessing the first few steps of this roster. And speaking of new player, new rosters, we also have a Navi that is now fielding wonderful. I am low-key excited. I don't think losing Simple is ever going to be a positive in itself. And when you put it in context, it feels like this Navi might just be better off. I would agree with that sentiment. I think we've had that conversation before. At least we tried to channel the whole notion about could Navi be a better team without Simple taking up so much space and being the personality he is. I would argue the difference this time around is that Simple the past 12 months haven't been the same dominating player that we used to see. So his individual output on the server has not been up to par with what we expect for Simple. So if there ever was a time where you could make the case, make the argument that Wonderful and a Navi without Simple actually would work better as a unit, now would be the time. Yeah, I also think if you look like historically, right, when they win the major with Simple, if you take him out and put Wonderful in, they probably don't win. But I think right. the, things has changed a little bit since then, right? The, the players around Simple has changed. Mm. It's not the same culture, it's different like personalities, maybe a little bit more less outspoken than the previous Navi team. So who knows, maybe this elevates uh, some of the current ones even more. Definitely. I mean, Wonderful doesn't have to be better than Simple. He just has to fit in yeah. and he has to provide what Alexi B needs. And speaking of what Alexi B needs, he caught up with James ahead of this game, so let's hear what he had to say. Seems to be a bit of a running joke when it comes to you and rookie Orpers, but do you feel like you are the best man to, to break a new player in? I mean, I definitely do have some experience and I can always tell them uh, how it was with the others and I can I can see the pro progress differently. But I mean, obviously, it's, uh, it's not something that uh, I wish for every time, <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't mind it, honestly. Like, as long as there's five people that trust each other, that's the most important thing. I like that. Good answer. Okay, so what can we expect from this Navi now with Simple not being there and Wonderful coming in? How much of a change has there been to how you're going to come into the games? I think uh, it is a big change. Uh, that's obvious to say. I think if you change any player of that uh, caliber, there's going to be some issues when it comes to experience and really tight moments and like overall decision making. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's just the reality we have to face. and. It, I don't think we get too far if we just think about, oh, we don't have the experience, like we can't do anything about it. I just think we just um, need to try our best and need to do the things that we've been practicing on and hopefully we do them good here. And does it take away some of the pressure though? Because obviously when you have Simple with you, people's expectations and just even the Navi brand right was so much higher. Does this change? I mean, I think the pressure part, not so much, but just the fact that maybe people respect us less because you always have the fear factor in, in clutches. If uh, a player like Simple is alive, Zaibu is alive, you always know that they are capable of doing these sick highlights. So maybe we just need to prove ourselves so we get the respect. I like it, gain that respect back. That's a good way of doing it. Now going up against Cloud9 today, for you guys there's not too much history there, right? For Blade and Bit there is, we look at Boomage, Perfecto, Electronic. Is there anything you can tell you? Is there anything that there's something you can pinpoint that you can use to your advantage? Or is it not really matter? I don't think there's too much we can use to our advantage. I mean, yes, you could say that Blade kind of knows how they think because he's been working with Electronic and Boomage both as like a leader. And uh, at the end of the day, they also have a new light up, a new identity. Maybe they are doing some things the same way, but for sure there's something different when it comes to oping as well right now. Like, you don't really know. I mean, Boomage said on the interview he's the main oper, but you see double op sometimes and all these different, different kind of styles so yeah i mean for them i think it might be a bit personal you know like it al always when it comes to playing your ex-teammates especially if you played a long time but for me it's just uh, another day it kind of feels like playing the old navi and they just have a, have a different name but yeah mind games will be involved in this game of course a lot of grudge going into this Ruga, you have experience having Alexi be under your ranks and i would like to have your opinion on the following some of the critics towards Alexi B have been over the years that he gave maybe too much space to the superstar and doesn't really put his own philosophy into the game. 
who is Alexi B? Like, what is he going to provide to Navi now that he arguably has the reign? Like, who is he? What, what kind of strike does he want to play? I think he's gonna use his uh, right hand in jail a little bit more instead of maybe <laughs> always coping to, let's say, with simple coming with inputs mid round. It probably gives a little bit better view of how they want to play as a team. Maybe not so individualistic, but at least he's gonna control the mid rounds a lot more than he maybe previously have been doing. And I think it fits some of the players he has in the team. I think I am back in, uh, in Gamer Legion. It was a little bit the same, like someone micromanaging him a little bit, giving a little bit direction. Whereas if you put Electronic in that old role, he would probably be doing everything himself, right? So I think there are some things that point to this, this version could be with the Alexi B like uh, label finally, I'll say, I would say. There's two things I would like out of this move with Simple not being a Navi. And, and for once, we don't know if Simple is going to come back at any point, right? Blade said maybe, maybe not, we'll see. But one thing, an identity, a new identity, because when I look at these two lineups, when I look at this matchup as well, I feel like it's Navi, you know, behind me right here, playing against Navi, the new Navi, the international roster. There's more Navi in Cloud9 and their identity than there ever is in Navi right now. So they need to build up a new identity and maybe Alexi B could be the guy, you know, leading that charts. Second of all, you said his name, Emma. We all remember what he did at the Paris Major. We all remember how good he was playing for Gamer Legion. You bought him for a lot of money. You brought him into the lineup and expectations were high. We haven't seen that Emma just yet. If he can be unreal, if he can be, you know, fired up once more inside this Navi lineup, that would be a nice consequence, perhaps, of Simple no longer being here. Yeah, that is a topic that we definitely need to address. I'll just put it out there. Yes, playing with someone like Simple with the level of expectation and also the level of frustration is not something for everybody. Not everybody is equipped to deal with that kind of pressure and environment. Some people respond to it better. It felt, based on the images we were getting, that Ima struggled massively in this roster. Rugge, are we, are we seeing too much into this or could we realistically see a better Ima now? A Ima that's freed up, maybe lighter up on his feet. Could he provide more than he has in the Navi jersey before? I actually expect it, and it has nothing to do with simply being a, a good or a bad teammate, but it's just like the nature of teams, right? That some teams have superstars in certain roles where others like kind of leave it to the team, right? And I've always uh, looked at I am as being a player that stands out when the team plays like a team. Oh, and yeah. I think that was the case for Gamer Legion as well. Like when the team functions, he finds this like 5% here and there, and then he turns the games. Right, but isn't it too dangerous for us to provide this sort of excuse as in, oh, you know, you had Simple in your team, it wasn't that easy. Hmm. Of course, the atmosphere wasn't that great, so we didn't have the role. Are we being too lenient? Or is it not just part of being a player to be able to rise through these hard moments as well? Are we giving uh, Ime a free pass where we shouldn't? Or are we spot on the money with that sort of analysis? I think a bit of both. You know, I, I think we've seen the limitations of, of Ima. He wasn't able to do it in, in the first iteration of Navi. He wasn't able to do it under the leadership of, of Alexi B with Simple next term. And again, it's not, as you said, it's not necessarily about Simple being a good or bad teammate. Maybe he's getting more responsibilities within Navi as well now. So I think what we have learned about Ima is that there is limitations to his abilities. But I would argue now the excuse is gone. If he's not performing now under these new circumstances, the new iteration of Navi, then there's no more excuses left for him. So the pressure, I would argue, sorry, is even higher now on, on Ima than way before. Right, and you talk about pressure, and, and we know psychologically it can take two ways. Like You can either kind of struggle and go back into your shell, or you can explode and embrace this adrenaline. Rugged for a player like Wonderful, who's being very vocal about Simple is my idol, like Navi as a powerhouse of a team, now he puts the jersey on. How, how does that work mentally for him, to be able to sit in that, have the Navi jersey on him, represent this, this powerhouse he wanted to for so long? I think there'll definitely be some, uh, some unexpected nerves here the first couple of, guy of games because obviously you're not just going to sit in Simple's chair and feel like you're the boss from day one. Like You need to earn it as well. The teammates need to see it. The fans need to see it as well. And obviously his own expectations. I don't think he has the expectation of coming out banging 145 rating the first event, but Les can also do it here just to get into the things. There's one thing we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the guy on the screen right now in, in Blade. We praised him to be arguably the best coach in the world, at least up there. He's a guy who likes to build structure. He's a guy that demands a lot from his teammates. It's also a big test for him, right? There's no, as I said, there's not a lot of Navi left in Navi right now. So he will be the one to reinforce right. that identity, build up a new identity. And if there was any coach out there that I would put my money on, could do it, it would be Blade. Right, we have a little bit of time left. So very quickly, I'm gonna put you guys under the microscope. Quick prediction, because I think it's this game is very much up in the air. Who do you have winning? Uh, 
I actually have Cloud9 because I think uh, Navi gave them all the POC maps where you don't need an op. So I think that's a little bit stupid in, in hindsight. But uh, yeah, I go with the Cloud9 here. I was just about to say the video favors a little bit towards Cloud9, given that it's not op heavy, at least you don't need it. And coming into the game before I even saw the video, I have a feeling Cloud9 is going to come in and have this honeymoon period. So I'm going to stick with them. Holy hell, but as I was hoping to create a debate on the physical desk that isn't really here, but it turns out everyone is going with a Cloud9 quite here. So Henry G and do you guys defer it? Can you maybe create some drama out there? Give me something. Well, the creamy bears have kept it interesting. We've gone for Navi. Of course we have. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I put the submission in this morning. We went I for Navi. You, Henry. You fly yeah. the ship. Yeah, well, make sure we... I feel like it's a good choice here. The fact we've got the debut of Mr. Wonderful himself as well. I'm a huge fan of his sniping yes. and progression in the Counter-Strike scene. I think he's a real exciting prospect here. I think Navi are going to have a new lease of life, Anders. I feel like they're going to have to unshackle themselves and just play some loose and fun Counter-Strike today. I really hope so. This is such an interesting matchup. Um, obviously, you know, the sort of the potential personal rivalries, but also just, you know, you want to see this Cloud9 project work out well. The last one should have worked better than it did, but somehow it didn't. Now, boom, which is back. Well, yeah, just thinking back to the last roster mania, you looked up back on paper, it was Cloud9 and Na'Vi with the most exciting changes. So A few months later, both of them losing their star orpers. We got Shiro for Cloud9, simple for Na'Vi. Uh, what a difference, what three months makes. And yeah. uh, that was, they're two of the most exciting changes and all of roster mania so uh bizarre scenes there you're right it never really worked out for cloud nine this roster never came online and now boomage uh, being brought into the roster to orp of all things now i don't think that's gonna be a full-time replacement i think more changes are, are to come because this doesn't seem sustainable but uh, it's gonna be an absolute banger of a game here ladies and gentlemen as group a continues here in the royal arena last premier full finals 2023 we're kicking things off on anubis between cloud nine and navi Buckle up! This one is going to be a lot of fun. And Anubis, your favorite map, Henry. To Absolutely. Get started with, so that's exciting all of its own. It'll be Navi starting on the T side with Cloud9 on the CT side. So let's just see yeah. how this plays out. What have we got? A couple of smokes really on either side here. One of them already used in the middle. Some tentative shots coming out there from the USP, but no connection happening. So could be some good mid control here for Navi if they can power through. And just a note as well, Navi getting to start on there. The T side of their map pick, a lot of teams opt to start on the T side, to be honest with you, especially in the opening game of a tournament. You dictate the pace, control the map of the AK-47. It's a very T-sided affair. And for now, decent map control. A split looking very likely. A main control granted, but you can see there's electronic playing with the utility, drops the smoke just and gets contact here. And that's absolutely fine. You can see Navi... Had that ready, they, they can still continue to slow things down. The opening frag actually goes in their favor. It's Imma finding Hobbit. He was pushing outside of the bomb side over the B side of the map, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, he's sniping away at it here in the middle. They're going to find the kill on Electronic. It's Alexi with a double opening. Huge. That's the entire A defense wiped out, and the bomb is going to be following swiftly behind it, so... That couldn't have worked any better. A lot of movement from, from Cloud9 to try and find a, yeah. a kill here, but yeah, obviously just a perfect position for Alexi to capitalize on it. Yeah, I love that from Na'Vi. Very calm, great mid-round calling from Alexi there especially. They bait out the smoke into all that A side of the map. They wait for the CT reactions to come through, and they're granted it. As you mentioned, that push out of the B bomb site, waiting for that kill to come in their favor. And that point, Cloud9 have to keep reacting. They try and re-aggress, get to mid-control. Alexi B mows them down with the Glock as he continues to have an absolute rampage here in the opening round of the series. It's Boomage, though, the AWPA. Uh, you heard it here first. Will be at least picking up a couple of kills and adding to his bank account. That's going to help in the future as he certainly will be eco going forward now. It's going to be a pretty convincing finish for Na'Vi. It might be able to get his final kill. He absolutely will convert it. So uh, won't be the third frag for Boomage, but it's Alexi B doing most of the heavy lifting there. In more ways than one, he gets the frags and beautiful calls throughout that pistol. Yeah, and just to repeat again, what we saw it in the last game as well, the pistol rounds in MR12 just yeah, right. carry out a lot more weight. So... Could be significant. We'll see if they can find a way to upset the scenario here, Cloud9, or if they're going to play a little bit more straight. Um, we have been seeing a lot of teams try to sort of mess with the economy. There's a great risk when you're on the CD side to try and do it. I mean, FaZe uh, did do it successfully. I mean Right now, it's a brand new game, Anders. It's evolving every single tournament, every yes. single round. We're seeing different approaches, different methodologies deployed. Um, there's, there's nothing to suggest that a second round force by with the power of the Desert Eagle and CS2 can't be extremely viable. We just haven't seen that much of it. Today we did, and it worked out on both sides of the equation, but uh, that was earlier in the phase NIP game.
We'll see if this full eco for One Cloud9 flash. can do anything. Yeah, so just a pound sort of set up here, hoping you get a bit of contact towards middle. Flash out, swing with three players. Hope for the best, really. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look too good as uh, Alexi B will be molotoving them out of position as well. Smoke down towards the hut. Molly at the double doors. And that swing is looking more and more unlikely here. The bomb set up towards A. He's not even flashed. Legs to be confirmed. They're coming in towards him. He gets a reload in. He's got backup as well in the form of him. And there should be no problem here whatsoever. Clean sweep for Na'Vi as they go 2-0. But bear in mind, that was the full eco. So uh, rifles up next. And this is where the game really comes into its own. We'll see if Cloud9 can respond. Yeah, perfectly... Uh, I, you know, an acceptable choice to for Cloud9 to try and see if they could get that flashbang in there. But like you said, just very patient play from Alexi, making sure he wasn't going to get caught off guard by anything. And yeah, they handled the situation just fine. Third round will be a little bit more interesting. Oh, yes. A uh, bit of a bonus situation, if you will. Navi oh, yeah. not wasting any time as well with the early smoke towards the left-hand side of the obelisk. And that be bomb side smoke down towards dark as well. You can see the CTs feeling a lot of pressure that side of the map. Flashbang towards A main as well, just trying to remove any sort of control and vision towards the key choke points here. Smoke deployed on the CT side, feeling that pressure. It's going to be blown open. It's an absolutely woeful smoke, to be fair, as well. Yeah. It doesn't do too much for Cloud9. Axel flashed in, and it's a lot more than he bargained for. Bit with the opening frag as Navi looked great here in round number three. It's a strong start, there's no doubt about it. A lot of grenades being exchanged over here with the A-bomb site. Bit in the corner, but they're not checking it. Harvick going down for the smoke. That's on the other side of the map, I believe, and this is really uncomfortable. Uh, five, well, now four versus two, but not that that's really necessarily that much better here. Yeah. Navi in control of this round for sure. They might continue their pushing towards A just on the fact that they know they've landed a couple of bullets on electronic. He has to be alone in the A-bomb site here. Sure, he maybe gets one, maybe two more kills. He's a fantastic rifler, but uh, it's every chance you're going to trade him out as a way for Alexi B to get control of the camera room. Uh, 40 seconds remaining. Should be absolutely fine is the position you check every day of the week. Yeah. Free fire from Wonderful as he will be getting... He can even take his hand off the keyboard there. Very relaxed, very calm. 3-0 absolutely confirmed here. Perfecto. So nothing to do, nothing to say, and uh, it's going to be JL to drop him as well. So it's an idyllic star here for Na'Vi, who are looking revitalized here at the full finals. You're right. There was that smoke outside of the bomb, so it was really weird. I don't know what... It just Tragic like... smoke, Anders, yeah. I have to say. First one of the tournament. Yeah. Like, it just did nothing. If anything, this removed vision on the CT side allowed them to creep in on the baskets. Yeah, not, not what you're looking for. Yeah, and then when they came back to try and check out that position, they didn't check the corner. So a couple of a couple of hiccups early on, maybe for Cloud9. Like I said, Anders, I have no further information than anyone else, but it doesn't seem that like this Cloud9 roster will stay in this form as it is. I think they're they're cooking in the background. They're trying to work out who the AWP is going to be. Um, there's no other team that are suggesting a five-man rifle setup is the way forward. Even this team's not suggesting it is. They're using Boomich, not known to be an AWPer as the sniper for this event. And I think it'll be more of the case when they have the resources, everything's going well, he'll be picking up the orb. I don't think they'll be basing every single round um, it was very building around him on Boomich, right? Because I just, yeah. don't, I just don't see a world where he keeps up uh, with the likes of Wonderful, who is a world-class sniper. Yeah, the, and just in general, right? Like playing every other team in the world, like, you, you know, you, you, the level is so high for the top orb players that yeah. you, you, you can't just show up and say, I'll try it as like my, you know, part-time job. I'll see if I can get it rolling. Like, it's not going to gonna We've cut it. We've seen it plenty of times over the years. Yeah. It never really works out. It doesn't, unfortunately. It's a bit of a specialized role. Well, here we go. Round number four. And we got some more smokes in play. Four of them, in fact, for Cloud9. So, in theory, if Navi played really slow, which they, they've been a little bit careful in some of these rounds, maybe they can try and run the clock down low. That's what they're dreaming of at the moment. But they're still even a Mac 10 for Alexi, so I don't even know what... I mean, presumably... If you get down to about the 30 second mark, Alexi's gonna make the call anyway and just throw himself into the mix. Two smokes left for Cloud9 as Navi are off to a fantastic start on this map. They really are. Couldn't ask for much more here. First map of his best of three. Alexi, such a thorn in the side on a map like Anubis. Always applying that pressure. Always taking control, and speaking of which, it's a beautiful bit of damage there towards Axel, but Electronic will post the first frag, right? I'm not sure they better hold on to the bombs I hear. They can't recover the rifle. Excellent smokes being deployed as well as JL gets closer and closer. 
So next contact here. He might be caught off, and indeed he will be. Axel will find that second kill of the round. Still would give the advantage towards Na'Vi, though. Bear in mind, there is not much to speak of in terms of utility. Kevlar, as once again, we are finding pistol headshots here. Back and forth we go, two versus two. If Hobbit finds this kill, maybe we're cooking now. Wonderful to be tested here. First clutch for the new member of Na'Vi. Yeah, it's the right idea, but he isn't actually... Oh, he didn't check it for and He's still going to get the kill, just barely. Looks for the headshot, oh. and he's going to get it on Hobbit as well. That's a big clutch. He just saved Na'Vi. He absolutely did. It was looking so comfortable with Cloud9 there. Shot after shot, landing with the Desert Eagle. And there he is, Mr. Wonderful. Seals the deal with the AK-47. Cool as a cucumber as well. Looks very calm while pulling this one off. And there were some great shots coming in from Axile as well. It looked like there was enough there, Anders. It was yeah. actually looking quite promising. But uh, as you mentioned, didn't check for Axile. Baits him out with the bomb plant there. And then a beautiful shot to find Hobbit. That's going to raise morale here. Things are looking good for Na'Vi as it go up 4 and 0 on their map pick here. T-side is looking great. Yeah, that's absolutely huge. Wow, that is a bold move. He just ran in there, pulled out the Molotov. He's going to get punished for it, but um, some good grenades being exchanged back and forth here. I'm sure Cloud9 are dreaming of winning this round. This is their first sort of really strong buy round that's coming out. No boomer chop though, Anders. Yeah, <laughs> bring up a good point. Where is it? Is that, is that surprising to you? Are you? I mean, I want to see it, though. I want to see what it's made of. <laughs> well, that's bad. And, uh, well, yeah, it's not really the round or the start they're looking for. As you mentioned, CS2 economy is uh, pretty brutal. If you do have one of these very slow starts on the CT side, this can happen. But it actually got a nice advantage towards A main, but a good flashbang in response. Grants control back towards Na'Vi, even more so now. JL with the opening frag towards Hobbit. And the CT's trying to claim control. Out the A main position, three of them pushing out an aggressive maneuver, a flank coming in here, and there might be enough. Wonderful, the bomb needs to be very, very careful. Oh, this is actually pretty sick, or it could have been there. Boomich, I think may they maybe overstayed their welcome. I actually love the idea of doing that three man push out of the bomb site to try and catch the T's in the middle. Electronic still might be able to. Gonna get the kittle there, and I think the bomb is on the ground. Yeah, so. the bomb's in the water. I don't think there's a way to recover this. Especially it's, with only 20 seconds. Yeah, it's behind enemy lines here. You've got Electronic in a prime position. He's actually got full vision of the bomb as well. So to think of a world where they grab this back with Alexi B down to one point of health, yeah, I just don't think it's going to happen. Even if it does, there's no time to plan. With 10 seconds here, Cloud9 wow. have done enough. It will be their first round, and it took an aggressive maneuver towards A main. Perfecto will find the penultimate kill, and they've done enough to get it over the line. Alexi B with just one point of health there. And after losing the first... Frag. It was JL to find the five and four. Uh, it's the CTs taking matters into their own hands, Anders. And the push with three players does start to bear fruit. They've tried to do that same push a couple of times and they got punished uh, for it a couple of times as well. But this time it, it actually is beautiful. And the, the deep push into the middle. I mean, if you're on the T side, you can tell even if they did get a, at least one kill in return, it's a little bit too much. It's a little bit overpowering. That's such an interesting theory. This is more of what I expect from, from Boomich. We got the MP9 coming out in this round. Oh my god, wonderful! He's just pushed through the Molotov. He's practically dead already, and he didn't even get anything for it. That's a, that's a bit of a sacrifice. Down to 20 health. Just I guess if he got the kill, that would have been sick if he would have pushed to the middle there and, and actually picked it up. But um, yeah, almost dies instead. A jail getting spammed a little bit through. Yeah, they've taken a lot of damage here. Very confident little push there towards the double doors from Electronic. will find the opening frag this time, but Cloud9. First advantage they've had pretty much throughout this first half. It's Boomich on his signature weapon, not the AWP, that MP9. Truly. He is a, a master of the weapon. And it takes a lot of damage there from the incendiary. CT is looking very good here, very active, to be honest with you. Aware of the possible threats that are incoming. Good crossfire towards the B bomb site. Hobbit working in tandem with Perfecto to defend this dark position. Thing is, they have garnered a little bit of control here. He's let them in somewhat, but he times it beautifully. Should have the double kill here, and there it is. Delivered on all fronts. Maybe even finds Wonderful as well. Low HP does pull a kill back. The bomb has been dropped. Emma fighting for his life here, but 20 points of health, as you mentioned at the start. I don't think Wonderful can do anything with this. Oh, and the one versus three. I don't think the smoke even makes much of a difference here. Maybe catch a player mid-air, that'd be really cool, but 
Axile is playing it about as safe as you can. Just sitting up there and looking for the kill. He's going to get it easily. Okay. They could pick up the EWG for Boomage. We might get a shot at it still. I think they will. I, I think that's a great call, Anders. I think this will be the, the first time we see the Boomage AWP on LAN. Wouldn't it just be the most curious thing if it turns out he's really sick with it and he just like... Hey, he could be. It, no one knew. Like, for all of CSGO, right. they just had... No one had any idea. Well, I'm assuming it has been recovered. They took that one before. There's an opportunity to grab it. There it is. Boomage AWP is out and about. Um, it will be perfecto on the secondary AWP if they go into that sort of setup. You don't see too many of them in CS2, though. Uh, but there it is. 4 to 2, Cloud9. Finally, with the resources to bring out the famous or infamous, I suppose, Boomage AWP at this point, and he's going to be looking towards dark. It's a bit of an eco situation as well. We've got a wonderful AK-47, the hero AK in the hands of the rookie, working with these P250s. Some really, really important recovery work being done by Cloud9 at the start of this particular match. Because they were getting wiped out at the start of it. It was looking ugly, but... I like the recovery. Keep it up. And there's still plenty of Anubis left to be played. Well, Boomage got a little bit of damage on the bit, but... They got some mid control here. And that hero AK is making his way dangerously close. If they can get into the camera room here and get the right opening, then they can definitely get the bomb plant behind it as well. They are going to get heavily grenaded, though. And a push behind it. That's aggressive, but it's worked out. They've got rid of the AK and an electronic taken over. The middle part of the map. Oh my god, Alexi, how's he found the headshots? Yeah. I can't believe it. He is looking in some rare form today. It's so decisive and precise towards middle. Really enjoying his contributions to that P250. Not done yet either. If he keeps going and fights Boomage, that's the bomb side wide open. Now, Bit is being called in for. They gotta think about the clock here. If they wanna go for it now, 20 seconds, they're gonna have to just run in there. Again, Boomage Could work is alone. Out. If he misses the shot here, Anders, which is entirely possible, there it is. Um, there's a chance to get the bomb planted here. Maybe they can lose this round. Low on health. Ow! He's going to miss the shot. That would have been sick, though. Would have been an instant two versus two. Alexi on his own and was looking for the ace to try and pick up that round. Unlikely, Boomich with the USP instead are going to be taking the kill. So, Cloud9 with another one. A little bit close, though. That was against pretty much the full eco. There was... An AK-47 in the hands of Wonderful. That wasn't the problem, though. It was the P-250, the in-game leader, that caused the most chaos. Boomich with the missed shot there. Doesn't allow the bomb to get planted, so money should be absolutely fine going forward. Uh, it's the replay, though. Alexi, P-250, making it sing. Getting the job done here. Beautiful second kill towards Hobbit. That's ridiculous. If okay, Axel then. goes down there as well, he was, what, like 15 HP? That was a real chance. Yeah. But uh, smiles all around. Alexi knows he's playing very well right now. A real problem for Cloud9 to deal with. Chance for the coach to chime in here on both sides of the equation. It's the first time out used by Na'Vi. And they allow Cloud9 to accumulate a few rounds here. Yeah, and just doing the damage, getting the bomb planted. I mean, it, it all counts in the end. I, I think they should be quite happy regardless of, of losing that round. They're not too bad still. 4-3, to three, the scoreline. It is Alexi and Emma at the top of the board for the Navi side. Eight kills each. Well, here we go then. Early smokes deployed. On down towards the mid hut. As Navi enter a default stance here, waiting for initial CT aggression. This is how most rounds will begin. So we're down towards middle, dark. Watch for any order A main pushes. Try and gain control of the dark area. This is. Uh, the main objective of most teams here on the side of these gun rounds. Good Molotov. Nice and deep there. FX Hobbit. 30 points of damage and that sort of interaction is actually pretty decent. And it's him up. Getting towards B main here. Slight sound cue, but a lot of players like to treat this like a shooting gallery. Happy to take these one-on-one -on -one duels with the AK-47 and just seeing what's available to him. No one peeking for now. Yeah, you're right. He was just very openly saying if anyone wants a challenge, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm here for it. That's a bold move. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> he let go of one, didn't he? <laughs> well, they know someone's in Cord's Canal at least, but uh, that's fine. Trying to get control of that dark room. You can see they're being blocked out. The smoke after smoke. That's a really potent one, Anders. That's another one. 15 seconds. They can't afford to sit back and wait. 
They're going to get mowed down. They try and break through said smoke. You can see it costs them two players now. 30 seconds remaining. Scrambling towards the bomb side itself. It's perfecto. Just needs one frag here. One will do in this sort of scenario to secure the round. Yeah, he's looking for it. It's Boomich to get one instead, but Perfecto is dancing around the obelisk ever so smoothly. It's going to be wonderful to get the kill, and Electronic will close out the round. A double kill of his own, so it got close there. It did. But no bomb plant. Yeah, just uh, excellent utility utilization. I have to say there from Cloud9, is that last smoke so punishing towards the Darkroom? It was a very slow default with not too much pressure applied. You want to be yeah. trying to bait out those smokes as much as possibly can, but it was just Na'Vi with a very sort of tentative passive round here. And you can see those 35 seconds, they just have to blow the smoke open and it, it wasn't super effective. The smoke wasn't fully blown and yeah. they have to run through in towards Hobbit, just mowing them down. And uh, that's actually pretty comfortable in the end. Cloud9. A statement round there. They're looking to apply a bit of pressure here, Anders. Just against the partial buy. A great time to do it. They didn't have to give it away either. No flashbangs delivered here. And Hobbit continues to apply this aggressive position. It's going to be Hobbit with the first kill as well. We are going to see a double potentially come out. And there it is. Five on three. Cloud9 starting to look pretty deadly here. Really excited for me to see Hobbit get put into play. I really think he's one of those players that kind of tends to fly under the radar a little bit. Um, but fair enough. He can be. He can really be a solid player. Uh, yeah, dude, uh, major winner. Yeah, exactly. Came up under Seuss in many ways. Yeah, sure. At the time, wasn't clear where his career was going to end up going, but I would say he's made quite a lot out of it. Um, yeah, I think just overall. Like, uh, seems to, to be able to do almost anything you ask of him. It's really impressive. He's done enough this round, that's for sure. Two kills to his name. Five on two, as Wonderful and Alexi B try to piece together this rather precarious problem they found themselves in. Scout is connected. You don't see many scouts anymore, Anders. They like, seem to have uh, fallen out of fashion somewhat. Like, the scout used to be super prevalent in CSGO. I'm not sure if it's a loadout thing uh, on the CT side. You just don't see as many of them these days. That makes me sad. Yeah. Maybe we should start a campaign to get... Okay, there, there we go. <laughs> get Valve to buff the scout. Bring back the fully accurate jumping shots. Exactly. That's all it needs. Maybe lure Chris J back into the game sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that was there back in those, like MBK and Chris J, like the masters of the jumping scout. Yeah. Um... <laughs> a little bit of a ridiculous game mechanic, if I'm being honest, but obviously it yeah, was entertaining. Up, upon review, probably <laughs> for the best, that one was removed. Uh, uh, there's been so many strange areas here. We've had the overpowered Kriegs, the overpowered Revolvers, jumping Scouts. Uh, there's been some real interesting times in Counter-Strike in general. But uh, set 75 fast draw. <laughs> true, yep, yeah. Tech 9 being absolutely ridiculous, or when the, the game first came out, like the Glock on the T-side pistol was just like better than the USP, had one shot potential at yeah. range. So the, that was ridiculous as well. Like the combination of being a good AWPA with a, exactly. essentially like a, an SMG that you can yeah. just draw. Like if you miss the shot, it doesn't even really matter. You're like, I'm still, I'm still probably going to get at least kill. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's that's, there's been some wild moments in history. I, I, I think the game's pretty balanced right now. There's, there's nothing that really sticks out in that sort of sense. Like, there's a particular weapon that's super true. frustrating or not really true to the Counter-Strike DNA. Maybe the P90 is uh, The P90, yeah, that that could actually do it. There's it's rumors coming. brewing that the P90 is going to be a mainstay. Perhaps perhaps even a household name in the Counter-Strike Counter -Strike landscape as uh, we do see round number 10 underway, ladies and gentlemen. So opening map between Cloud9 and Na'Vi here. Wow. The loss between these two teams, though, as it's Electronic That's super sick. aggressive towards the top of middle. You don't see many aggressive flanks like this on a map like Anubis. It's actually very impressive they've got away with two kills. This has been one of the hardest problems to solve for almost all teams. There's the CT side of Anubis. Get, getting the CT aggression in, finding the information. They did it outside of A earlier. They had the three-man push into middle. This time they flashed their way through the middle to get the double kill on Navi. That's actually so cool. Cloud9 kind of bringing some real innovation to this game so far. I really appreciate that. Because I feel like that's... Sometimes Anubis can and be a bit hard to watch when you've just seen the CT just wait around. Electronic top fragging as well. Now that he's not that's in game like leading, like that, that's the most exciting thing. What like, a relief. Yeah, uh, speaking of that's the operative word, a relief of pressure, I think, for him, especially, but uh, still not out of the woods just yet. Sure, it's a five versus three, but the bomb has been planted. Navi, yeah, they can do something with this, so you can see that they're, they're trying to be 
a little bit more assertive at the start. Trying to blow open some smoke, see if they can find a frag, because a five on three retake is be super difficult to fend off here, especially if no grenades are being flanked, but wonderful. He's fending them off. Speaking of nades, there's still a Molotov on bit. That could be a huge grenade for this one. A five versus three here. This is really uncomfortable for Cloud9. They should be winning this round with that double kill at the start, but maybe not. Electronic's gonna get a kill there. Wonderful. Lands another shot, and he's ready down towards Dark. He gets the <laughs> shot on Electronic. What a round from the young sniper. Yeah. That's what he's brought in for, those sort of moments. If you haven't seen Wonderful play before, it's always a spectacle. He, he's such a great player. Like he's, he's a nice hybrid between like super aggressive when he has to be, hitting the shots that really matter in the kind of defensive lines. And he's got massive clutch potential as well. He's super calm in these sort of scenarios. They get a bit hectic. Uh, he always seems to deliver. And this was a recovery of five on three, Anders. It looked like there's yeah. no chance in the round, but here he is, Mr. Wonderful himself, just out positioning them. Gunning them down with the AWP and confirming another round on the board here. We're going to tie things up 5-5. Five to five. It's Cloud9 finally shut down. The finances reflecting it as well. It's Boomage down to just a CZ. Uh, the Orpa hasn't really shown as much. He hasn't had a bad showing by any stretch. But uh, yeah, last couple of rounds here. Who will be picking up round number six first? Time will tell. This is a full investment from Cloud9. Yeah, tied up game. Again, looks like they want to be a bit aggressive on the CT side, or at least they were thinking about it. Deep smoke there might just dissuade them ever so slightly. Bit making no secret of the fact that he's out here, and the Molotov actually will burn them a little bit. I think they were trying to establish a boost on the other side, and yeah. that's uh, that's now no longer a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no longer available. They take a lot of damage on route, and uh, yeah, this is looking quite comfortable now. But still, bear in mind, this is the force by. Rifles are there, and we've got Axar. He still has his smoke available. He throws it deep towards A main, though, so maybe it doesn't do too much for him. As Bit's already in front, they've got a smoke down towards the temple side. Navi, that is, and the A split's looking very likely at this point. Flashbang towards camera, and XCB to lead the charge in. And bear in mind, it's Axe up. It's 84 points of health behind the cake right now. Needs at least a frag to keep this round alive. It's wonderful with the trade here. No smoke towards heaven for now. They'll have to fend off the rotating CTs. But it looks quite comfortable. Na'Vi, now in the four versus four. Do Cloud9 even fancy this one? Yeah, I was going to say, might even think about saving it. It's just so unlikely that you're going to be able to break through. They have a Molotov and a kit on Hobbit, and not much more than that. If they get a kill right now, maybe it could be a different, but they're running out of time, and it, I would say, yeah, already just look for the exits if you can. AI predictions giving us 99% in favor of Na'Vi. AI prediction, and is that the future? It, is that what's happening now? It is. It's got to be, you know. We're, that's kind of that's kind of my thing. We're already here. I'm supposed to give the percentages. Going to go out on a limb and say it's not the open AI prediction. I think that's uh, a... <laughs> it's actually... Into a mess, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah, that's... Um, all right. The first glimpse to our future. When, the, when are the AI commentators being brought in? That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I mean, we already have the... You can do the, the, you know, the perfect voice stuff, right? Sure. And there's plenty of of material out there to, to sample our voices from. So it can't be long. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They've got like literally <laughs> thousands of maps to yeah. just take in seconds. To train it on. Yeah. That's I'm sure true. someone's working on it eventually. Put us oh, out, yeah. of, put a, out of a misery. I was going <laughs> to <Yeah. laughs> Just say, so, right, casters, <laughs> you are now surplus to requirements. Thank you for 10 years. Don't need, don't need you. You are now being replaced. Anyway, final round here. And uh, we'll see oh. if Wonderful can crack things open. Here towards the B side. He's actually got a nice bit of space here, applying that pressure, but there comes the utility and response, but Emma has slipped the net, as it were. Final round of this first half, Anders, and he's in a prime position to find the first frag, but Perfecto seems to be aware of the prospect, at least. It doesn't seem to matter as we find the double kill for Na'Vi. Sick movement from Emma. That's actually beautiful, the way that he took that part of the map. JL will clean up this one. Electronic and Boomich both going down to him. And Axel. With a flank, that would have been interesting if any teammates were still alive. Then it would have been a little bit more interesting, but I don't think this is going to happen now. It's Na'Vi with a good first half, all things considered here. Seven to five, not that bad. This message is brought to you by Blast. London, the jewel of England. At last, we're bringing a distinctly London feel to Counter-Strike. The sights. The sounds. Bingo, bango, bongo, bish, bash, bosh. And the pageantry. Nah.
sight. You should, you should come, you should come out. Come, come out. out. Nice! Nice, Igor. Thank you, and thank now, you, thank you. And now one deal on behind. Well, he's certainly feeling thank you after that one, Anders. That is a beautiful little clutch from Mr. Wonderful there. Enjoyed that one a lot. Some insight to the good vibes on their team speak there as well. Yeah. Uh, wunderbar from Wonderful, you might say, if you're oh, a German Oh, yes, caster, indeed, if you were. That, that would work on many levels. But uh, we are going to see the next half be delivered here in full force. It will be the CT side now for Na'Vi. Their man pick of Anubis. 7-5 scoreline here, as usual. Very important pistols, you might imagine. It's going to be Boomich, in-game leader, and Sniper Extraordinaire making his way towards middle. They've got decent control. Bombs towards T spawn on the B side of the map for now, but starting to reposition and make their way towards middle. I'm not without excitement for Cloud9. They did do some really cool stuff there on the CT side, so curious if they can find a way to have an impact now on the... T side of things as they are pushing the middle. They're going to be splitting the A bomb site. Bomb is in the middle. It's worth keeping an eye on just to make sure that they don't lose it somewhere strange in there. They can still change their minds, but yeah, they're going to go for it here. Bits with the opening kill taking down Exile. It's a start. Navi looking to win the pistol here. Bit with the double, but now Alexi. Oh, oh what a headshot. He spun around running out of bullets, but JL to the rescue just as Alexi was out of bullets at the USP. So good round, all things. The Dually is doing what you want them to do. Oh, absolutely. They've delivered on all fronts today in the phase game. They were looking remarkable on Nuke with the Dualies, and here once again they deliver on Anubis. It's going to be Alexi, though, with two more pivotal kills in the pistol round. Both pistols now in favor of Navi. Had a great start in the first half. But it's going to be much better than this as well as they deny the plant and uh, deny any real sort of fragging potential for Cloud9 as well. Great positioning from Alexi B. This second kill was absolutely brutal as he doesn't get the third but does significant damage. And there is going to be an eco called for Cloud9 here on their T side. No bomb planted means they will just be operating with the P250s and Glocks. That is about it. No utility and it's hoping they can find a couple of kills. 7 to 5 scoreline quickly becomes a lot more problematic when you lose the pistol. Sure. Um, you're going to be a little bit further behind earlier than you would want. Haven't had to say Perfecto's name all that much. He's got three kills. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's um, been a quiet showing from him. Electronic, it's great that he's stepping up. 15 kills. He's kind of picking up the slack where required, I suppose. That's the first kill, however. It does go in favor of Na'Vi. There's Imma. Taking the frag down, but uh, we'll see whether he can fall back now. 16 points of health. Rifles are out, preparing for the AKs in the third. A couple of MP9s in the mix as well. That's Bit and JL. They can play on the front lines here. Try and farm some cash if possible. Yeah, there's not that much danger on the other side. I mean, the, the Deagle's out there somewhere. They've already heard it ring out across the map, so they are aware that it's in play. But they don't feel particularly incentivized to do anything. They're just hanging around, waiting for it. Alexi with the FAMAS. Could get overwhelmed, but even then, there's yeah, a lot he, of back he's almost him. certainly going to get one. Maybe yeah. the trade comes through. That's fine. It's like he's done enough damage here. They're doing backflips in towards that dark room. It's wonderful. Close lines, a couple of them with the M4. Once they get the reload in, super ready to get stuck in on that third kill. But uh, there it is. It will be Cloud9 just posting one. Alexi B. Big smiles all round once again. This has been a pretty nice showing from Na'Vi, all things considered. Bear in mind, this is uh, the debut for both organizations. They like both losing their star or presenters. We lost Shiro for Cloud9 and Simple for Na'Vi. Like, unbelievable. Like, three months ago, uh, back at the four groups, we were just like, okay, this is the most exciting. Oh, these are two of the most exciting rosters on paper, right? This is this is it. This could be a new era of Counter-Strike with these uh, mammoth transfers coming through. But... Neva really lived up to expectations, and the following event, they've, they've gone. Yeah, and like we've been theorizing, could even be more changes to come. What if Simple just joins Cloud9? I okay. mean, it's not outside the realms of possibility. Like, they, they need an AWPer, right? They do need one. That could be quite an interesting turn of events. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, just throwing it out there. Again, we don't really know anything that you guys don't, um, but... Um, well, that's exactly what you would say. You're going to cover your ass. You're right, Henry. That is what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Just making it extra mysterious. <laughs> so, um, still quite quiet 
for now. We are going to have that 9-5 scoreline. Bear in mind, Cloud9 taking the second round eco, buying up on the third. Give this one up. They're now against double digits for Na'Vi. So, not a must-win round, but uh, certainly a welcomed one. It's a lovely opening pick. Electronic will find bits. And now they're actually going to commit toward the A side. The incendiary doesn't quite pop there. It wasn't to cross over toward the bomb site. Bombarding that camera position with bullets, but it's JL answering back. He manages to get a double. Maybe with a triple was available to him. It certainly was, but the flank looks too powerful now, and it will be perfected to get the double. How did the bomb end up in that awkward position? Why was it so far forward? I I almost want to ask for a replay that I just don't understand. Did any T players die anywhere near that? Am I just am I missing something? I'm not sure. I mean, I obviously am, but I <laughs> forgot this. Good round, I guess, for the for the Cloud9 side. Really awkward timing for Bitty. Got caught in the beginning of it. Uh, I think, you know, trying to throw a grenade. It was just, uh, you know, not the best timing for him. So it kind of started off a little bit weirdly. But um, yeah, like you said, good flank with the Galil coming in for the middle. Yeah, it, there was a real chance there. It looked like there were two kills from JL. Maybe they could fight their way back into it. This was the moment. It could almost fall apart there. So yeah, the bomb gets down. Um, but you could see, yeah, there wasn't a chance for the CT to capitalize upon it. That, that flank was a bit too much for them. But the bomb sprinting towards camera could have been there unraveling. Uh, here we go. Back into the action, though. CT still have a few guns in their arsenal. It's going to be JL going down quickly, though. Electronic with that opening frag. Bear in mind, it is the force by uh, some compromises to be made, of course. A bit down to the P250. Uh, Alexi B on the 5.7. And now a 5 on 4 as well. JL aggressive towards middle. One of the few rifles they had. Now gone missing. And a big question, I think, for Navi is whether or not they can they can play this CT side of Anubis well enough, because there are teams that are still struggling with that, finding it tricky. I would say Cloud9 came up with some really interesting takes on how to be aggressive on the CT sure. side, but not everyone can do yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a T-sided map, bear in it mind. Is. If they get five after losing the pistol, it's actually a pretty decent showing, to be honest yeah. with you. And yeah, they did have some impressive ideas. And uh, we'll see if they can capitalize upon their advantage here. This is an absolutely mammoth round. If they can pick this one up, it would be huge. We'll see if Axel can continue with this momentum he's found. Good pacing in towards the bomb site here. Perfecto with the pincer maneuver from the camera as well. Continues to find the advantage. Four versus two. And I think that might be enough there. The rifles have been dealt with. And now the only option is to save. Alexi B will tuck himself in behind those double doors and recover. One of the dropped M4s, but all they can do now is save. Gets his position up and rotates over towards his teammate. Well, there we have it, Anders. Cloud9. Very effective round there. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, I think Bit wanted to pick up the M4 that Wonderful had, and he just yeah. he couldn't do it in time. Like you said, he got crunched from the cam position. So it is what it is. It's going to be another round for Cloud9. So seven to nine. I think this is still a very, very open game. I, you know, for, for Navi, it's great winning the pistol in the second half, but. It's not enough to secure a victory just yet. They're going to have to really fight for this one. I'm very curious to see if they are going to bring in some ideas of their own. Well, this is the thing. The CT side, it's it's very difficult to operate on, especially like now the money's busted. Now now you're in trouble. It's uh, Alexi B managing to fight back and maybe save a little bit here in terms of the rifles. We'll see if that's going to be... That impactful going forward, it's enough to win the round. You won't force buy around this, Anders. You, you'll take the eco. Yeah. Um, but you're looking for boost now. We're looking for some gimmicks, like boosting behind some smokes, maybe in towards the B-bomb site. There are a few options here, and we'll see what they come up with. Lexi B positions the first rifle in towards that aforementioned camera position. Trying to fend off any sort of fast pacing in towards middle. For now, though, pretty default round, as you might expect. As Cloud9 just dissect the map, work out what they're up against, apply... Minimal pressure. Just bait out some initial utility. See if there's any sort of CT aggression coming through. First objective looks to be to get towards the A main position. Flashbang will be delivered. So that backside just wants to clear out these close range positions. Sure, he could swing it, drive it as a chance of CT's there. So you want to make sure you give nothing away here. Clear it effectively. Use the utility. And it's actually a bit of a three-man stack in towards the A side here. So... It's the USP of Bits who's just trying to suggest there's enough here that they should be dissuaded and go back and towards the A side. It doesn't look good for him. They've gained <laughs> a lot of control in towards B main and uh, with the grenade landing at his front door, I think he's done. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a hard job. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Axile might have been one of those looking at the radar type moments and looked like that's just a that's free That's very generous of you to give him that. <laughs> I think I, that was I'm, just a straight up miss, but I'm trying to maybe. be a bro. I'm trying to help. No, that's him, fair like, enough. You know, 
I think that was just uh, a rare spray that got out of hand. It happens, but uh, yeah, not his best moment. Doesn't cost him anything. It's fine. It's it's whatever. I guess that you know XCB saves the rifle. That is kind of significant for the economy on the CT side. Yeah, has got a kill. Has he? No, apparently not. Can't find the shot. One more bullet would have done it to find Boomich. Is I feel like sprays that get out of control is one of the ugliest feelings in Counter Strike. Oh yeah. As much as fun as it can be to get like you know the deagle one shots. But that feeling when you start to spray and you suddenly be like you're halfway through and you're like, and he oh, just no, yeah, this is I'm done. I'm cooked. It's not working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should kill me now. <laughs> like after this display, I, I should be taken down. And indeed, he was. It, it's it's the ones you think, oh, oh well, I can't miss this one. This is the guaranteed kill. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that's locked in. And that's when you kind of that's the danger zone. That's when you go for the crouch spray. You don't really line it up correctly. And uh, like I said, it happens to the best of us. It will be the tactical timeout. Navi. Starting to feel a bit of pressure now. Bear in mind, they do save a few rifles, though, so their money's actually pretty decent. Wonderful's had a good showing today. A couple of nice clutches, good impact in the chaotic situations. It's the first showing with their new young sniper within their ranks. Bear in mind, Ukrainian. He's 18 years old. Fits the bill. Upcoming star of Counter-Strike. Yeah, we've seen uh, you know, a glimmer of what he could do here, but there's definitely more to come. Um, yeah, definitely. Very exciting play to watch. But uh, like the, the panel we're talking about too, big shoes to fill. <laughs> that goes without saying, doesn't it? Yeah, that's totally fair. But uh, I think uh, a wise man once said, he just needs to play his own game, Anders. That's it's all easy he has to say, to yeah. but actually, he's, as long as he can play his own game. It's true though. No, it is true. And he's like, I don't think he's affected by pressure too much. He seems like super calm, like quite reserved at times, but yeah. it doesn't seem like he, he gets flustered too often, I'll be honest with you. Um, Castle a lot of his games. And uh, we'll see if he can continue to impress us. It's been a pretty decent showing with the rifles and the AWP. Nine to eight, one round in here. Cloud9 closed the gap here on their T side campaign. Another setup towards A, it seems. Three players will be on that side of the map. It's just Hobbit suggesting there could be some B side pressure here. Molotov towards Jail. Throwing the initial smoke open, and he's going to be full sending it. Wow. Flashbang from his teammate as well, but not quite enough. Imma will find the first kill, and then towards the A side we go. They've done enough to actually dissuade CTs from the initial defense. They've got an open bomb site. Yeah, I mean, there was already three people at A, and now yeah. more people have rotated over or B. Rather, that's a little bit, a little bit too quick, I think, on the trigger for the CT side of being that kind of a rotation. Three versus four now. The bomb is planted. This headshot's going to make a difference. It's electronic, good for the one, but they know exactly where he is. They're going to try to overwhelm him. They can't get him just yet. Electronic oh. with a massive triple headshot, and now it's a one versus one. Perfecto. Look at to see if he can clear this one up. A little bit of a smoke to try, but the bomb is way out wide. Way outside of the range of that smoke, and it's uncomfortable. He's got no idea where oh, Vector is. Spotted. Yeah. Electronic. He did enough in this one. I don't think Alexi could do anything here. He's going to try and just sit down, go for the full-on defuse. Oh, oh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, no. He can't find it. I don't believe it. Oh. Alexi able to get the full-on defuse after... The bomb was planted oh, in a really no. great position. That should have been their round. Oh, that's kind of awkward, actually. <laughs> Perfecto was like scratching his nose, basically AFK in the 1v1 because he saw Alexi B jump up off the bomb. Henry, you look physically uncomfortable. I'm just like, I, I feel bad for him because he's having such a quiet showing. And like, that was the yeah. round to really like kind of like tie things up and like shatter their economy. Electronics delivered this sort of performance here. And you've got all the information. Wasn't the best smoke on top of the bomb there. And he gets the info, but didn't reposition, didn't adjust. And there was a full defuse still available there. Comes down to like half a second. But Alexi B steals the round away, snatches it from Perfecto as it will be round number 19 underway here. Initial frag. Going in favor of Na'Vi, they'll maintain the advantage, courtesy of Wonderful. It's going to be a four on three now. Huge round here. Hobbit trying to make it happen, but uh, he's been found out as well. This was a more scrappy round from Cloud9. Looking a little discombobulated after giving up the previous 1v1. Electronic and Boomage remain. Not impossible for them to pick this one up, but it doesn't look great. The bomb's on the back of Electronic. Former in-game leader now working with Boomage. Hobbit is really aggressive in some yeah, of these rounds, right. like just powering through the smokes. If they hadn't thrown a grenade at him, I think he would have swung against Wonderful. I think he wanted to take that fight, just coming out of the smoke, but he got stopped prematurely, so didn't really get there. Great position to be in on the T side. This is kind of interesting. Okay, M Might be hard to read for the C, even if I, they have this massive advantage. I don't know. This, this one is actually 
it's kind of brewing up nicely. They, they've made the perfect call on the Cloud9 side. This is the only way they get a bomb plant down. And it's a plant in quite an advantageous position. They can plant for the CT side of the beach. There's a real chance. Like that Molotov might deny control from Wonderful. There's the, the bank side, bank side plant, the uh, beach side plant. I'm thinking of bloody overpass. Yeah, we're going to call it something. Uh, that's a rare bomb plant to see on this map, usually on the other side of the obelisk. There's a chance they win this, Anders. There is a chance. They have another Molotov even on Boomich. He's listening for the footsteps. Alexei, not quite aware of how much danger he's in. He's going to get picked off in transit. Molotov around the corner. This is actually quite doable. Two versus three. We'll see if that grenade's going to come into play. There's the Molotov set up on top of the bomb, and they're really running out of time now. The spray is good. Boomich gets the kill. No scope coming in from Wonderful, but it's down to a one versus one. The clock is out, and Wonderful, he gets the kill, but loses the round. Cloud9 with a two on four victory. It all comes together perfectly for Cloud9 there. How they win that round, I will never know. A four versus two, Boomage and Electronic displaying the experience there, Anders. Piece by piece, Ooh. managing to call a perfect round there at a huge deficit. It looked like they were done for, but I suppose it just makes up for the round they gave up previously in that one versus one where Electronic had to work so hard. They True. make sure they get this one over the line here. It was a labored round. You can see Wonderful, even after hitting the final shot there, just didn't have anything left. The time had gone, and JL can't believe they've given up that sort of an advantage there. Like I said, the only way they could have won it is that they went towards that beach position in CT spawn, bomb planted for the, the beach side, and once that was down, all bets are off. They had a real fighting chance there. They're right back into it. As we go 10 to 9, there is an orb saved, of course, but uh, an eco otherwise. This is actually kind of an interesting round. You don't see many of these. In CS2, like the one AWP and the full eco. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to be as viable as it was in CSGO. But uh, of course, it's almost saved from the previous round. So we'll see whether they can make the first killer reality. The Julie's significant damage. That's even better. Alexi B, he'll find electronic. Axel, yeah. Just stay alive out there. He's going to get the help from Hobbit. Bomb being interrupted. That's uncomfortable. Okay. Still a two versus two. And no bomb plant happening. Alexi snuck in somehow with a Mac 10. I don't even know how he got there, but he just showed up on the spot. And Hobbit can't really attempt another bomb plant until Axel gets there. They have to have a little bit more control. This is so Ooh, uncomfortable. Yes. The bomb being planted bravely towards A main. Wonderful, bear in mind. He's got the Kenflar, the AWP, but no further utility or defuse key here. It's him with the P250 who has to try and take the aggro. How does he duck and weave and avoid certain death and allow Wonderful a bit of wiggle room here? There's the first attempt. That's the opportunity for Wonderful to get out of the camera position. Nails the first shot. They've got a chance here, Anders. It's down to Axel. He's had a quiet showing so far, but this is looking like he's done more than enough. There'll be no further chance for success as Imo. Sure, he gets the kill, but like we said, no defuse kit. You can see Axel. He looks quite frustrated. In yeah. Fact. Like even though he wins the round, you can see like he's he's had a pretty poor showing by his standards. Like he has had a pretty underwhelming year, to be honest with you. Once considered to be the best rifler on the planet, and at this stage, um, just kind of middle of the pack, you know. Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree. I wish I could because I really am a fan of Exile's style and general. I think he's one of the he's a really, really smart player, but this Cloud9 project so far has nobody been working out for him. It, it, no. It's, it, it is disappointing because he really does have a, a lot of depth to him, but um, yeah, we are not seeing it yet. And yet that's a round one, but it's such an expensive round from, from Cloud9. That's You want to see They're more. just like trading blows, you know, yeah. because like, yeah, like Cloud9 win the round, but it's still a hollow victory. The fact that it comes down to that one versus one and it's a scrappy finish and Axel can't seem to hit the broadside of a barn. We are going to have some insight, though, with the team speak. Nice! Nice! Bro, nice, this, anyway. This, this what the perfect fuck is happening, bro? Nice, how, how does he kill me? Cool. Yeah, that was from the smoke defuse earlier. That's when <laughs> just their own reaction. I couldn't brilliant. believe it either. Like no. it was like it was more surreal, wasn't it? It was kind of just stay accepting his fate and diffusing in this smoke. I've got no other option. I have no information as to where you are, and still it works out for him. Like it was the perfect smoke, uh, without him knowing. That but, really uh, is the kind of diffuse you're just accepting your fate. You're like, oh, I probably yeah. lost this one. Whatever. Oh, Emma. I mean, you get that deep. I can understand why you want to keep going because you, in the back of your mind, you're thinking about to shoot someone in the back, but it turns out it's the other way. Game is tied up.
10 to 10 here. We have a real game on our hands. The first one, a FaZe versus game. Navi was a little bit different. It was a little bit one-sided. FaZe just look unstoppable. 16 in a row for them. But um, this is uh, a lot more even-handed at the moment. Well, well, well. It's looking like Cloud9 might have done enough here for the reverse sweep. Some impressive clutches. Electronic with uh, a star performance here, 20 frags to his name. Wonderful, it's been decent. He's actually top of the server. What a, yes. what a debut in the Na'Vi jersey. 22 kills to his name. But uh, they've been a bit unfortunate in some of these really tight situations. They've given up that four on two. I, I think that's the, the straw that broke the camel's back, Anders. I, I think they might, this game might be GG had they had won that round. But here we are. They find themselves in the back foot here, but that's a very important kill. Wonderful continues to deliver here. Oh, Almost taken dangerous. down there. Lucky to be alive as he gets a more defensive position here towards the cave. He's really sure that someone's hunting him down from that dark position, but see if he get another one as they cross over into the bomb site. If they want to go for the retake here, they do need something. Bit of a wall bang coming out, but Loving no one's planting on that side. That's it, yeah. Don't thing. see many of those these days. <laughs> you know, well, everyone's still learning everything <laughs> again, you know? It's a new game. People forgot how to throw smokes. It's all cool. Boomich here with the Galil, trying to use that cinder block in front of him. Not going to be getting more than the one there. Alexi with the trade-in. The retake is still being attempted here, but they're running out of players. One versus three at the end, I think, for Axile. And, um, well, it's going to be... It's going to be a good round for Cloud9. Boomich is loving it. He is. He's in the zone. Yeah, I'm really enjoying his passion right now. And he's telling everyone as well, just calm yourselves down. Relax. We've got this. All these uh, chaotic rounds, these tense moments are going in their favor, even with a, a missed smoke there. I think there was a smoke outside Dark Room. You can throw towards the, the temple itself and la can land on the roof. Uh, obviously having a bit of fun with it does happen. But uh, there's Boomage, very, very happy to pick that round up. And it's a significant one as well. You can see it has to be the partial buy here. Looking for map points on their opponent's pick. Cloud9, 11 to 10 up, up against the Desert Eagles here. M4 for Imma. 15 kills to his name, and uh, we'll be operating with the Hero M4 on the CT side towards B main. This was a 7-5 first half, and then Navi won the pistol on the second half, so they should have been in a really, really well, strong position to close this out. It goes back to that 4-on-2. They lost to uh, Boomich and Electronic. As soon as you get that round up, it was a tone shift on the server. Yeah, I think you're right, unfortunately. Emma goes down, so the rifle is lost. I don't even think anyone can really pick it up. I think you might be onto something. They they sent out a double flash to hook him up. Didn't really work out, though. That is the rifle offered over to Cloud9. As I said, they're working for map points here. It's 11 to 10, 5 on 4. And XCB is impressive with the pistol so far, but it won't be quite enough in round number 22 as we go through the motions here and find ourselves at the logical conclusion of a Cloud9 victory, at least in this round, as they posed 12 on the board. Just a case as to whether they can deny the exit frags here for Navi. Yeah, maybe, you know, steal a rifle, like it's that, down That's to... about as good as it, you don't need to hunt it. Like, if anything, you want to deny it. Like, you know that they're saving the M4s, you've got a rifle down towards main. As long as everyone just survives here, make sure that even if they do find a frag, they don't recover the rifle. Like, that's all you have to do. There, there's no hunting required at all. Nine with two chances after this to close out the map, avoid overtime. Well, our prediction game, Anders, the, the creamy bears are in the bin. So we went for Na'Vi on this one. We went against the grain. We chose Nip in the opening map. Yeah. Didn't work out for us. We chose Na'Vi here. Tr Doesn't look the good. Rebels. We were trying to believe. Swim up. We are trying to believe in uh, the romance and the storylines. Yeah. Hasn't worked out too well here, but there's still plenty more CS to be played here in the second series of the day. We've got four games to bring you. Here at the Blast Premier 4 Finals 2023, live from the Royal Arena in Copenhagen. We're actually inside the building already, Anders. Like, we're not in the arena itself, but we're in uh, kind of uh, the concourse, you know? Yeah. Setting up. Getting everyone getting kind of in the right zone, in the right feel of it. I'm sure the players, too, some of them have already played on that big stage, but um, yeah, that's It's vast, bro. We went out there last night just to walk around. Like, it always Crazy. takes your breath away of how big the arena is. It's going to be a lot of fun when the playoffs kick off, but. Uh, who will make it? I think five teams are debuting new lineups at this event. So <laughs> I know. it's kind of insane, to be honest with you. So it's wide open. That's wonderful. He does miss that first shot. Bear in mind, this is Matt Point, Anders. They can't afford to give anything further away because they need two rounds in a row to post overtime. 
They've given up the main control, but here's the smoke. You see Axel. He's ready for him, but he does take about 50 damage. He's still burning. What's going on? Down he goes. I'm not sure what happened there, Anders, but it doesn't work out for Axel at all. Bloody hell. Yeah, I... <laughs> it still feels to me like when you throw down the, the smoke inside the Molotov, it just takes an extra second than yeah, it would have been Yeah, that, that like, was rough. That was super unfortunate. Like, he threw the smoke. He had it prepped. It was ready for that moment. Yeah. And he throws it down, and I guess that's what you call you get CS2'd. I, it's, it does feel that way. Because in Goat, it felt like as soon as you just touched instant. the... It, yeah. Instant pop. But here, it's like an extra second and a half, and it's really uncomfortable. Well, here we go. Trying to get back into the round in spite of that early accident for Axile. It's going to be Electronic getting a good kill there. He couldn't quite follow it up, and I think that's the shutdown that they were looking for here. Navi, a step in the right direction to try and get it into overtime. 15 seconds on the clock, and they're just so far apart. Boom, we just have to run in, get a double kill upon the bomb, and I just don't think that's going to happen, so... Clock has run down on this one, and we are going to go all the rounds. Oh, absolutely. We wouldn't have it any other way, especially this sort of matchup as well. Bear in mind, this is Boomich, his debut on LAN, his team game leader for Cloud9 against his former organization, who are missing Na'Vi with Wonderful coming through. Uh, we've got another team speak clip for you, though. Let's see what's going on. Nice shot. Nice shot. Let's go. Let's fucking go, boys. Let's we go can overtime. still fucking go overtime easy. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Nice job, boys. We can still go overtime easy. And I agree. It's only a couple of rounds, Anders, and uh, hell yeah, both teams inexperienced here, both debuting with new lineups and uh, a compromised Cloud9. I think that's fair to say. Like they've lost their star or player, one of the world's best snipers, Shiro, and they've replaced him with Boomer, who's an absolute veteran, a legend of Counter Strike, but he's no sniper. We all know that, and yes. uh, he's coming in to fill that role. But so far, so good. It hasn't been a massive problem. They're a map point on their opponent's pick of Anubis. It's their first map of the tournament and uh, actually looking much better. Honestly, this is yeah. quite good in terms of uh, a Cloud9 showing. Like losing Shiro, so obviously it's going to be almost impossible to replace him. But unlocking Electronic has been wild. He's got 23 yeah, kills. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I guess that's the most significant takeaway from all of this. It's alleviating that pressure. Yeah. He's a, he's a fragger by nature. Let him off the leash and see the damage he can inflict. He's done an absolute tremendous job out there today. One of the... Yeah, one of the sickest in that sense. First time I remember seeing his name, he played a, a cobblestone game and got 75 kills on it. And I just remember thinking, this is... How many rounds of plays? I think it was like three overtime. <laughs> okay, I was going to still he's like, done that. I'm not even sure there's that many so kills available. Ridiculous. You have to like... kill all five every round. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember seeing that and I thought, okay, I, I have to check this out. Like, I have to know who this guy is. Like, that's so, so stupid. And it turned out... You know, a couple of years later, he was ready. He certainly was. Here we go. We're playing for overtime. Na'Vi, they really badly want this. They had the lead coming out of the first half. They were looking good. But Cloud9 are proven. They're really well prepped for this particular map. And it's exciting to see. Yeah, but it's a photo finish. Round number 24. I, I love this. There's a lot of storylines in this particular series. The first map, Cloud9 struggling to close things out. Time is of the essence. 40 seconds here. Alexi B working in tandem with Imma. They've got a nice little stack as well. M4's in position to shut down this assault in towards the B bomb site. But Hobbit cracking things open. Double kill on entry as the bomb is planted. He has got some absolutely cracking openings in this particular game. It's sick, isn't it? Boomich very low on health, but the bomb already planted here. They're going to get Boomich, but that's a really fast bomb plant. They are under pressure right now. Otherwise, Cloud9 will walk away with it. Electronic back in action. He's going to get another kill. Hobbit with the triple. And Electronic finding the last one. 25 kills, Henry. At the end for Electronic as Cloud9 will pick up the opening map. Oh, what a great map it was as well. Right down to the wire. All 24 rounds and everyone having to play their part in the comeback there. Cloud9 going down 7-5 to five in the first half. Na'Vi looked great, uh, but still wasn't quite enough there. And I have to say, it's that 4 on 2 that could come back to haunt them. We'll let the desk break it down what a clinical finish for cloud9 mm. on the very finish the photo and as henry g was tagging it along 13 to 11 beautiful last round this game delivered jacob that was a great game of counter strike between two teams that have so much history in between them obviously navi going up against a lot of their former teammates quality of the game up there i'd say you know i was a little bit um 
I guess, worried that we wouldn't see the best quality of Counter-Strike coming into it with Cloud9 without an AWPer, Navi with a new lineup, a new identity, but I think the quality of the game was great, the tension of the game was good, and then they execute in the very last round right yes. here, the composure coming out of Cloud9. I was listening into the comm, given I don't speak their language, it sounded cool, composed, and the execute and entering from Hoppet, spot on. Absolutely. We have the round history here, and I would like to have your opinion, your take on that spot of round, that streak of round that Cloud9 was able to put on the board on the CT side. We are Anubis, famously T-sided map right now, and still a whole lot of aggression, a whole lot of map eating away from Cloud9, being out there, taking risks. Do you think it was a plan at the very beginning, or do you think this was more an, uh, an adjustment as the game was going by? A bit of both. You know, I think if you want to have a good CT side on Anubis, you, you gotta be proactive. You gotta be able to to dare to play, sort of. And they didn't have the best start. We saw Navi get off to a good one, and then Cloud9 had to adjust a little bit. But I think it was part of the game plan that they wanted to test Navi. They wanted to apply pressure. And as you saw on that string around, it was working out beautifully well for Cloud9. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was very complicated for Navi to handle all of that aggression. They, they got time, they got flanked, they always had yeah. players behind them. And when you put five rounds, in a row on the CT side of Anubis, and of course, you put yourself in a good position. Um, one of the maestro architect of this great Cloud9 performance, Electronic. Yes. Once again delivering, and, and I'll just put it out there. I thought that with Boomish coming in, Electronic would take less entry duels. Turns out I'm wrong. He took eight entry duels in this game, won six out of eight. Is, is that something I can actually rely rely upon? Or is was this just a phenomenal Electronic? I hope so, Matcher. I hope that's Damn. the Electronic we're going to see for the future. Because I agree with you. Not necessarily sure how much he would be involved. Not necessarily sure if we would see the Electronic as of 2019 in Navi, where he was always playing the way he played in this game. But even some of the patterns, if you're going in and you're rewatching this game, maybe even download the demo and check out the way he's running in. He's being set up with flashes, set up with mm. utility, and they're using him in this position with the purpose of opening up the rounds. So yes, I very much hope we get to see more of this electronic because that's when he's at his absolute best. The best entry fragger in the game in CSGO ever. Maybe, maybe he can come back to that level in CS2. Yeah, this was a phenomenal map from electronic. Very much alive, very impactful in these late rounds. I've always love to see him play mm. in the last 20 to 30 seconds. He's got such an attitude on how to close these rounds. If we flip the script and we talk about wonderful just a little bit temperature check I think the numbers are right there he had a couple rather a uh, good clutch in this game as well what do you make of this first performance I think he had a good game to be completely honest I think he was a, a big part of the reason why Navi were able to pressure Cloud9 as much as they were in this game he wasn't afraid of taking duels either I think it was Henry at, at one point in the game got a bit surprised by how aggressive he was in the early rounds so as you said he was involved early he was involved in the mid of the rounds and he had a couple of good clutch attempts as well so overall if you isolate the performance of wonderful I think he passed with excellence. Yeah, this was a pretty good first map for Wonderful. Unfortunately, uh, Navi fall victim to Cloud9, who are now moving into the second map with a 1-0 lead. You talked about communication. This is, was something that very much impressed me. We were standing in front of them. It feels like everybody is chiming in right now in Cloud9. You had Perfecto, had a couple of words in, in freeze time. You had mm. Hobbit, who was coming in as well with a couple of ideas. Th this is a Cloud9 that seems very much alive. The energy, the energy, right? Because we've been observing Cloud9. We've been seeing them at certain tournaments where you could feel something is off. The energy isn't there. Not all the players are communicating. This time around, though, as you said, it felt like everything was smooth. Everyone was chiming in. And you can you can easily feel the vibe of a team. It's, it's such a, a vague word sometimes to say the vibe is good or the vibe is bad. But just by standing and observing, not understanding a single word of what they were saying, you could feel that the team was energized. They were in it to win it. And honestly, the way they played this game, beautiful. And they pull off the heist indeed, stealing away Anubis from Navi. And now it's Ancient coming up at Matt Workland. And I've already made a whole lot of success and splashes. We're going to take a quick three minute break and when we come back we're going to dissect this second map between Navi and Cloud9.
best case scenario for Cloud9 in the beginning of this series, of course, stealing away Anubis from the claws of Navi. We are now moving on to Ancient, a map that has been decidedly a pick for the ranks of Cloud9 for quite a while. We are talking about a CS2 record of four wins out of five maps played. They only fell victim to Face Clan. That's it. Are we gearing towards a 2-0? Do you think the difference has already been made for Cloud9 or is it still up in the air? It was a, a big step in, in that direction, yeah. I, I would argue that Cloud9, as of right now, are heavy favorites to win this game 2-0. Once you said it, Cloud9 liked to play Ancient. They played it a lot in CS2. Uh, only lost to FaZe, which is no shame at the time being. FaZe is up there with the best in the world, obviously. Whereas for Na'Vi, they haven't really played the map. They played it once in the past six months, I believe that is. Oh, sorry, in the last 100 days. Yes. Only lost it once. And last time they had a win on the map, Map is 98 days ago. So it's not a map that Alexi B has been working on a lot for Navi, nor the new iteration with Wonderful. So they're going in a bit in the dark against a team who loves to play Ancient. So yes, all the points, all the arrows right now are pointing in the direction of Cloud9. Yeah, and there is another problem that I think we need to address is where is Bit? I think that was a yeah. relatively discreet map number one. Um, obviously, we have a very small sample size of Navi and CS2, right? There is the whole Sydney with Blade happening. It's far from being ideal. Mm. but. On, in that tournament, rather, bit very much impressed me. I think a lot of people kind of remembered again, oh, holy hell, this is the bit that we, we know and love, like the headshot machine and all of that. And I maybe just, I made the mistake of assuming this is the bit we're about to see right now. And this was a very tempered, very average pedestrian first map. Can we hope for a revival? Can we hope to, for bit to come back online now with Wonderful as well? He has to, you know, it, it's as simple as that. I don't think you made a mistake expecting that. I think we, we should keep the bar relatively high for, for Bit knowing his history and, and how good of a Counter-Strike player he is. The thing is, with no simple on Navi, he's a win condition and he has to be a win condition. Sure, Wonderful came in and did well, but we're looking towards Bit, we're looking towards Emma. Those two, as a rifle core within Navi, they have to step it up. They have to match the output of Electronic, uh, Hoppy for that matter, and, and Exile on the, on the Cloud9 right. side. And, and so far, yeah, it's just one map from Bit, so let's not beat around the bush, it, it could still turn around very quickly, Definitely. but he's a massive win condition and when he's missing, then Navi is not going to win this game, simple as it is. I agree with you and, and I also think we like to romanticize this whole like simple is gone now and there is more yeah. space for other players and maybe the atmosphere is going to be a little bit greater, that's possible. Mm. But I think the flip side of that coin is some players will have to step up and kind of take that freedom, take the initiative and mm -hmm. say, listen Alexi B, like, this is what I like to do, this is what I want to do, set me up. Do you think Ime and Bit are already capable of doing that? Are they players that go to an XCB and say, listen, like this, these are the moves I like, like put me in this position, get me to these moments, to these scenarios. Are they capable of doing that or do they need the guidance to be put on these tracks to just go, Kill. I okay. think a, a bit of both, to be completely honest. I think they need a bit of guidance, and I think that's where Blake comes into the picture. He has to observe that, of course, has to be aware that if the star players in Bit and Immer is not, you know, taking enough initiative, if they're not trying to dominate or dictate the game as rifles, then he will have to step in and tell them what path to go down. I think Immer maybe have a bit of a trouble with that, and I think Bit the same. I've seen some of the vlogs from, from the Navi camp coming out, and, and Simple and Bit had a let's call it an interesting relationship, right? I think Simple sometimes was a bit harsh on Bit and, and maybe that was helping motivating him. Or maybe now Bit feels, you know, that there's no one to, to, to push me anymore. Maybe there's no one to, to point me in the right direction as Simple also tried to do. So again, we don't know. Uh, I think that's what we're about to learn here for, for Navi and, and Cloud9. But what I've seen so far, it, it does look like Cloud9 is a, a step ahead in that whole development right now. It does seem so. Do we uh, put too much on Blade's shoulders? Are we overburning him with mentoring, guiding players, tutoring players? I mean, I know the coach is supposed to do that, but to yeah. what extent does he need to be met by the players like halfway through? Like we can't just hope that he's going to be like a gardener with some little flowers and put water on them and let them grow. Like it has to be like a give and take, right? Yeah, there's a limitation to how much he can do if, if the player material is not willing to work with him, for sure. On the other hand, uh, I mean, that's why he's getting paid big money. He is the coach, <laughs> you know, he's getting paid to, to yeah. get the best out of the players. So, of course, it's a relationship, a work relationship where there's some give and take. I will argue, though, that if anyone can do it, it would be Blade. So, again, we spoke about it coming into the game. There's no more excuse for guys like Emma or Bit, for that matter, not performing when Simple is gone. So, it's just one map, it's just one game, mm. it's not going to define the rest of their career, the rest of the time in Na'Vi, but it's the early signs we're kind of pointing towards right now. Right, so let's imagine that we are looking for weaknesses in the Cloud9 camp. We are building our way towards a narrative of a third map. 
how much of a liability is Axel going to be on Ancient? Because we together, we have worked events, yeah. we have seen events where he was struggling on A side. We've seen Cloud9 making changes, switching up positions, allowing Electronic to be a bit more in the fight and Axel a bit more in the back, isolated on the A side. I've seen him struggle. The first map isn't really here. Do you think he could be a way in for Navi? Is he, is he a liability, an open door for the attack? Potentially, but we're playing Ancient and I think that's one of the few maps he's still great at. You know, if you dive into his stats, yes, they're taking a big hit. He's not the same player, but on Ancient, he's actually keeping up with his old self, at least occasionally. So I think had it been any other map than Ancient, it would have been a problem. It would have been a weakness. It could have been something that Navi would look towards and say, let's test him. Let's go in there straight from the get go. Let's put on some pressure and Axel, see if we can rattle him out. I don't think that's the case on Ancient. I still think he can hold up for himself. Well, I certainly hope he can. I think it's a very interesting topic, not just to harp on a player that is struggling. It, I, I take no pleasure in that, mm. but it is a fascinating topic to imagine Boss. a player who only a few years back, we don't have to go far too much. He was which hero in the top five players of HLT. He was up there. Some people even had the ludicrous statement of saying he was better than Nico. It was even out there. Yeah. Some, some of our colleagues okay, have been okay, out there okay. on that limb, right? People took risks. And the transition very recently in this new clan and Rossi has been hella complicated. How much is on his shoulders and how much is it on the team's shoulder to help him kind of get... I, I hate the term, but unlock what we know is here for Exile. It's not like we're just banking on a potential that we think can happen. We've seen him deliver. It is there. So, so what's the problem? What's the obstacle? Why are we not seeing the Exile that would make this team ever so terrorizing if he was reaching it. I think Exile is a player that needs a bit of comfort, and I don't think he's finding that comfort in Cloud9 as it is right now. Okay. I think so many things have changed around him. Shiro gone out of the lineup, the whole integration of Electronic, Perfecting coming into it as well. It's definitely taking a tool on him, but that's when you step up to the occasion. I'll also say, though, that every player in their career is going to have moments where it's not looking great. Exile, pretty much from the get-go, he went into Cloud9 and he established himself with the old Gambit that was there was. He's been stellar, he's been consistent, he's been performing week in, week out. This is the first time we see him struggle. And if he's going to have five, four, six months where he's not on top, but comes back to the level that we've seen before, that's just going to be the blink in an entire career. Mm. So I'm not willing to give up on Exile just yet. I think he's struggling right now. I think he's lost confidence, but I also firmly believe that he will be back. Well, he has your confidence and the team certainly is firing on all cylinders right now. They have stolen the first map. They're going on to their choice of Ancient. And my choice of casters is Henry G and Enders. Are you guys ready for the second map? I, I think so, Maniac. I'm more than ready. The first map was spectacular. It came right down to the wire. We had all 24 rounds and some very exciting moments. It's Cloud9 to take the first map, and we move on to Ancient now, Anders. Are you excited for map number two? I'm very excited. This was some really fantastic counter strike. I didn't really know what to expect, but we got we got exactly what we wanted here. All oh, the yeah. rounds happening on Anubis. It was Absolutely. exciting, wonderful. Uh, really stepped it up. Electronic unleashed. Now the Boomich is back. Yeah, what a what a great way to start the day. Amazing. I wouldn't have it any other way. And uh, bear in mind, it's Cloud9 picking up Na'Vi's pick of Anubis as well. So they've got some open runway here for a 2-0. You have to say they looked like the better tactical team. Uh, Na'Vi certainly had some great individual moments, but we were lacking some uh, input from Bits. He only picked up nine frags in that first map. And as uh, JL as well went MIA 11 and 15. Uh, Imma, uh, an okay performance of 16 frags. It was a uh, wonderful and Alexi B at the very top. Great showing for the debut for Wonderful. Like We can't ask for much more than that. But yes. where the rest of Na'Vi to get them over the line here on Ancient. Time will tell as the next map is ready to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. At the Blast Premier Four Finals, live in Copenhagen. Cloud9 taking on Na'Vi. And we'll get into the pistol round here with a lot of utility on the T side, and there's Two smokes, Molotovs, flashes, and five players heading in towards A. Heading in towards Bit, he's got the duallys, he's on his own here, and now that he's been discovered, it's a bit of a nightmare, surely. He gets a good headshot there, but he's running out of space, and Boomich will put him out of his misery. It's Imma, though, just getting the kill and putting out the smoke, so it actually might- Oh, no! I take it back! I was gonna say it's worked <laughs> out, but Perfecto finds him! What a dirty shot. Absolutely filthy. And there's plenty of time to work with here as well. Most of the utility has been expended. And we're going to have a three versus three. We've got a Molotov, a decoy, and a flash. Boomich with the decoy being delivered. Trying to bait out a bit of utility. I had a discussion yesterday on decoys with a few players. Alexi B was one of them. Oh, yeah? We were theorizing like, what the decoy could do in the future. Maps like Ancient, you could bait out grenades. Did he come up with a better, better version he of He didn't mine? really like the idea. 
It was more okay. my idea, but he, he humoured me. He don't wish for a second, and it's going to be Alexi B finding at least one towards the donut room here. 40 seconds remaining. Cloud9 recovering this round as they throw a brutal Molotov in towards the CT elbow. Bombs to be planted for sure, but can they survive with two players intact? Apparently oh. not. Great shot from JL. He just ran and shot, and Perfecto's in some trouble here. He doesn't have the accuracy. It's wonderful to take him down. Close pistol round to begin with, but it will be Navi to pick it up. Defuses. It's incoming imminently. I don't know if, in case you missed it, Henry, my idea for decoy was that, you know, if you just, once you- <laughs> Didn't miss it. <laughs> you hold down, you know, your, your mic button. You push the talk. Yeah, you record a little message and it just it plays in an area around the decoy. Yeah, I can't see a world where that could go wrong or be misused or abused. I'll be honest with you, it's a great idea, but- uh, I, have, I have faith in this. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna abuse it. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to you on that one. But uh, there it is, Navi. Winning the pistol, but bear in mind, the bomb got planted. Cloud9 did enough to bring out the Galils here. This is a very difficult round to fend off. Uh, you might even give the favor to the T side in some instances. We'll see what Navi can come up with. The initial deep smoke down towards the elbow. It's Boomish needs to be careful. He's got the bomb there. Some speculative shots, and I think that is running the same strap. They've got the same smokes. The woman execution, you're looking to smoke off Donut. CT spawn, Temple as well, perhaps. But uh, that's where Wonderful will be residing with the M4. And he's got a lot to work with here. Got some backup from CT Spawn in the form of Bits. And he's actually playing the default boxes here. They're in a prime position to shut this one down. AK boosted up and an instant headshot. That's not the Galil, so Bit just gets completely destroyed. Although, Alexi finds a kill on Electronic. That was in the middle, so part of the danger here. The retake's going to be a little bit easier now. Yeah, well, they've given themselves a nice open plan towards Donut as well. They didn't tuck it in behind the bomb site itself. They actually want to have a nice opportunity to spray it down through a potential smoke. It will be Boomage playing on the front line here, trying to find an advantage. You'll get at least one kill, but still a three on two deficit. Yeah, Axel is hearing them. They're not even checking it. That's surprising. They're still going to get the kill in return. Perfecto gets one there ready for oh. JL, but he still goes down. Perfecto having a bit of a hard time finding the multi kills. It's a really close round, but yeah. an expensive one as well, I suppose. Well, that's the thing with the bomb going down, the loss bonus accumulating. Uh, Cloud9 are going to buy again, Anders. The fact it came down to a one versus one, I can guarantee they'll be bringing it's out tempting. more of the same. Yeah, no, it comes down to that shadow as well. You can see JL, great job there in the one versus one. There, there was a moment where Perfecto maybe could have like booked it towards A main and survived. I think the timings, though, probably would have eluded him. I think he had to stay and fight as JL will come out on top of that one, continue the streak here. But as I mentioned i'm expecting another full buy from cloud nine here like more of the same uh glills a couple of ak's perhaps and yeah pretty much the same thing now do they run the same strat three times in a row anders <laughs> it would be a kind of a, a sick move from cloud nines to run it again i would actually really appreciate it and they're going to send four players outside of the map i think they're doing it again like why yeah. not we've had a couple of 1v1s it's the exact same strat <laughs> boomage <laughs> is uh sending out a message here to navi He's going to keep knocking on the door of the A-bomb site here. I mean, it is kind of sick, right? Yeah, I like it. It's the exact same strap. Exile boosted up once again. You're right. They are just completely mirroring everything. We'll see if Wonderful can stay alive for a little while longer here. The flashbang is good for his teammate there to set it up. So we'll get the kill on Hobbit at the very least. Bomb is being brought close. It's Boomish with a double opening, taking down Bit as well. And this creates a lot more space. And now they have to be worried now. They lost all uh, those rifles yeah, exactly. in the previous round. I, I think you might be better off to saving here. Like, it's not the, the most exciting approach, admittedly. Um, but if Ima, he certainly goes down here. If he doesn't check the close corner, yeah, now you have to save. So that was their only real attempt into the round. JL will find a frag, but still the situation remains. They'll have to just peel away off this one. And there it is, Anders. You haven't seen that in years. The same tactic deployed three rounds in a row, from the pistol to the second round to the third, and finally they break through, even with Wonderful staying alive as long as he did. Boomich hammering that A-bomb side. <laughs> yeah, well, it's working, <laughs> right? Like, sure, they, they've... They, they, they lost a couple of the rounds, but it comes down to 1v1s. They're getting the plant down each and every time. Yeah. So to Jess said, it's not the execution, it's just the close. And this time they close the round out beautifully. Um, but there are CTs that remain alive here. So not out of the woods just yet. Certainly wounds the economy on the CT side, but uh, a lot more has to be done. Boomich, he knew this strategy had legs to it. He gets the double kill upon entry. Smokes were down. You can see it's that deeper smoke towards Donut as well to eradicate the risk of the CT swinging through when you're planting the bomb. You have a lot yeah, more control. You can Molotov in front of that smoke and make sure there's no way they could deny the site itself. So presumably the force coming through for Na'Vi here. Very important round. If Na'Vi pick this one up, they're in a, a great start to Ancient.
and uh, the map will be recovered and the series is back on and give this one up there's gonna be two two of a full eco ahead of them nice positioning here with the mp9 he gets that first kill no problem there's significant damage to a second as well trying to find the rifle on the floor if possible and just providing some self-preservation with the smoke drop five on four great start for navi yeah, surprising that uh, they weren't able to at least get the refrag on them there, but uncomfortable right now for, for Cloud9, no doubt. Hobbit practically dead already. They have some time on their side. Let's go back to the air execution. Yeah, why not? Just keep running now. <laughs> Just do it again. The moment you stop presenting that tactic, that's when you lost the round. So uh, let's go. They're going to be walking out in the middle. Emma's all the way back there jumping with the Deagle. He's going to get the information. That's a lot of information. He spotted at least two, maybe three people there. They're going to set up a bit of a smoke bit. Grenade, they're going to walk right into it. That's some damage. Not as much as I thought it was going to be. So maybe a chance for a bomb plant, actually. This is getting a bit interesting. Cloud9 getting more out of this round already than I was expecting. Yeah, considering it was a 5 and 4 of Hobbit on 10 HP. And that's a great Molotov, I have to say. That might have secured the round. Even more than that, it's going to be a kill found, and now Alexi B holding the extremities. They'll still give us one a fighting chance. We've got the pistol. We might as well throw him in, but Electronic, he's had a decent showing today, showing that his fragging potential is still unbelievable as uh, he finds two crisp headshots there and confirms the round there uh, averts danger. As they were looking a little bit uncomfortable with their first kill coming in favor of Na'Vi with the MP9 towards middle, uh, but they'll recover the two rifles once again, and it will be tied up at 2-2. Electronic sealing the deal on the side of the map as they hunt for a 2-0 scoreline themselves. Cloud9 winners and Na'Vi will have to make do with just uh, a couple of saved weapons here, Anders. Yeah, it's the, it the kill at the start, but then also the fact that that jump from the from the jump spot from the middle, they just got so much information about where the T's were showing up, but sure. it didn't matter in the end. It turned out they, they just needed electronic to get a couple of kills, and that was it. But yeah, good strength out of Cloud9 to be able to uh, to recover that early loss. Tying up the game. And for Navi, this is really uncomfortable. Now, at least they saved some weapons, but that CT economy, we're hey, bringing it up. If JL's going to start showing us he can step up in these sort of scenarios, what a time to do so. He's got himself an AK-47. This is the sort of play you wanted to see. Yeah. Aggressive, trying to apply some pressure here. And yeah, that's not the kill, but it, it might force him into all this A execution once again. They're, they're loving this. Well, <laughs> on the Cloud9 side, it's that deeper smoke that will come through. And bear in mind, it's normally a 4-1 setup. They're not necessarily forcing the issue. What a calm headshot that is from Electronic. Takes a dink to the face. Still recovers the scenario, falls back. He's got the opening kill, and they will explode towards the state bomb side now. Hobbit using the grenade through the smoke here. He smells Immer on the other side towards that donut room. He's got the jewelies in hand, but bomb planted. You might just consider saving those rifles once again. And Hobbit... He's not going to let him get away here. He knows he's on the other side. Well, this is a lot of fun because normally the A bomb site is actually so undisturbed that the yeah. CTs will, will not even have anyone there. Sometimes you'll have a you know double mid 3B setup and nobody at the A bomb site, at least at the start of the round. But it's been hit over and over and over again. And Navi, they must be feeling frustrated now. Some tough uh, calls being that have to be made now on the Navi side. How do you deal with this? Because if you over-rotate and over-stack the A-bomb site, the rest of the map is so weak. That's um, probably not a, a good answer. Well, at least they'll save the, the two rifles once again. Navi, True. that is. Uh, it was looking good with the, the pistol victory, but now finding themselves in a world of trouble. That's going to be three rounds in a row for Cloud9 on their map pick. Uh, this A execution is looking way comfortable now. And the problem is you've conditioned them so hard. They've, that, they've not faked it once at all or anything, right? So you're just going to have to believe every time you see the execution, there's going to be something behind it. Sure. This is a caller's dream. You've had so much success with the strategy. And you start deploying those smokes down. It's a one-man execution. You can start faking it. You can start pulling players around the map. Yeah, that's great. I was going yeah, to say, you can do that with one person yep. outside. So, that's so not... this is a problem now. Yeah, it is. Well, presumably the timeout is to discuss this very issue to figure out how exactly do we yeah, do that. Yeah, like... It would be so baller of Boomage right now if he calls the same strap, but it's a fake. It's the same smokes yeah. with one player making their way out and uh, they go in towards B instead. That that would be so sick if he pulls that one off. If that's the call, time will tell that they've made some pretty audacious ones so far as that uh, play will resume here. Round number six, it's going to be 3-2 in favor of Cloud9, Na'Vi. Once again, Working with the saved rifles, a couple of AKs, but uh, they've got the orb, more importantly, for Wonderful. At 25 kills and regulation on Anubis. 
not going to be their A execution. I'm going to see those initial smokes. This is more of a B pincer setup right now. Three players towards the lanes. JL looking to get active here. Spots a couple. That's some, a little bit of spam damage there, but nothing really to report so far. Yeah, you got the right idea. I like the idea as well of trying to get an early kill on some of these rounds here if you're on the Navi side. Deny some of the control coming in. More damage through. It's not a devastating amount, but it's something. Hey, against, um, when you got the M4s in hands, getting players beneath 85 is actually pretty significant. Yeah. It means you get the one ding potential. So, uh, those little spams, they don't look like a lot, but, uh, they can have knock-on effect. It will be Hobbit, though, with the initial frag. Spotted is JL. He's in a lot of trouble now. The Molotov, thankfully, doesn't do too much damage, but it does deny control of Jaguar. Wonderful. We'll have to be tagged in. I think this would actually work out very well. He'll dodge the flash and almost certainly get this kill. Oh, no, it's actually going wrong for him. He might die here, and is down to five points of health. Might as well go for a kill now. Oh, my God. Pulls it back. And it looks like they're going to overlook Alexi B. He might be on for the double kill. Yeah, he's certainly thinking about it. Boomich has him in the corner, and a good headshot coming out. Still a three versus three. Bit now just showing up on the spot. It is going to be an A attack once again, even if it got there through a different route. And an important kill for Bit. 17 seconds on the clock here. They're going to go for the, straight for the bomb plant. Electronic just crossing his fingers and hoping that no one's going to challenge him. He might not be able to escape. Indeed, JL will show up. It's all on Axile. We said we were missing him a little bit on the first map. Didn't get a chance yeah. too much there as well. He kind of got edged out. So, an important round for Navi. Yeah, I haven't casted an exciting Axile round in in what feels like years. Like, that, that's the sort of scenario you think, okay, this is where he's going to show us what he's made of, right? Like, yeah. he's got the bomb down, three on one, he's not flashed in that opening little exchange. Like, oh, he just loses all the hype straight away. It's uh, kind of pretty out of control spray, doesn't connect the shots at all, and it will be a pretty glorious retake for Na'Vi in the end there, denying any sort of access in it's towards A. The bomb just about goes down. It's not an unheard of story, right, where you have a player that feels and looks really comfortable, but they get kind of taken out of their comfort zone through either roster changes or sure. just, you know, too, too many losses in a row, whatever the case may be, and then they're having a hard time readjusting. And now it's all, a whole new game, so there's even, you know, probably even more of that going on. Yeah. I'm with Pimp on this one, though. I'm not giving up on Axile yet either. All right. He's got a lot more to show, but... Um, hey, they've already got a map under their belt. 3-3 right now, everything's fine as Boomich continues to cause chaos in towards middle. That one's through the smoke, takes down Imma. What a great opening kill. I think it's going back to their bread and butter, Anders. Get an opening pick, execute in towards A. Boomich to throw the smokes. It's tried and tested at this point, and you can see it's a good adjustment. Realizing that vulnerability, they've got wonderful this time playing behind the big box. There's not much utility you can use to flash him out. You can flash him, then you can Molotov afterwards, oh. but now they might just consider their options. They don't have to commit towards A. Uh, they know the flanks are here. There's the flashbang. Takes him away for a second. There's the Molotov, but he's already got the opening frag. And Bit gets a kill at the same time. They wanted to test the young sniper, and they've realized it's not worth it. Alexi's still in an interesting position. He's surely going to realize what is coming and calling in for the teammates. Look at their kind of rotation coming out from Navi. They know what's happening here. They're in the right positions. Alexi should be getting this kill and he will. And he's trying oh. to go in down and what a touchdown. Boomich is absolutely dead. Well, there we have it. That was looking like uh, an easy round for Cloud9. Yeah. They had it under lock and key. They found a five on three situation, but... Continue with the pushing toward day, and now it's with just 20 seconds remaining. Perfecto hasn't had the strongest performance here today. A chance in this two versus one. The first kill is his. The bomb can be planted here. He's up against Wonderful. Another chance for the rookie to shine here. He's got a good understanding of the situation. Misses the shot, though. Perfecto does not. He delivers a brutal kill to close things out there, and it's Cloud9 bouncing back and around. It looks like they almost squandered their Anders. A five on three advantage comes down to the 1v1, but Perfecto delivering the goods when they need them most. Yeah, we had some criticism for him on the opening map, but that is one hell of a round. He had really no business winning that. Even after he gets, sure, he gets the first one for free. That's yeah. fine. That's what it is. But after that, the two on one, they could have played it a little bit more safely. They I, didn't I have to challenge him one wonderful, time. Wonderful, like, played it perfectly, though. He had the, the great position. Yeah. He knew exactly how he was going to win that round. All he had to do was hit the shot. 
And unfortunately for him, this time it didn't quite connect, and that's going to be a costly miss because now they're down to a full eco. Cloud9, 4-3 up, presumably 5-3 after this particular round. It's an assertive push coming in from Electronic, looking for that first frag, and he has found it. JL goes down with little to no resistance, and uh, that's just going to be the round in itself. The bomb will be planted momentarily, and there'll be zero chance of a retake. Best they can hope for, some exit kills and recover some rifles here. AI prediction coming through, Anders. He only ever comes in when it's like locked in. Like, yeah. Like, this is I, AI overlords now. Like, yeah, let, let's see your prediction when it's like a five versus four. And Henry said, oh, this one's definitely locked in. This this one's over. It should really take the cast of predictions into account. Yeah, exactly. We should say cast prediction, AI prediction, and we should like, battle it out. As soon I as make somebody say, this is an impossible round. Exactly. Wait for me to say that. Switches exactly. Oh. Okay, definitely winning it now. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can curse the AI prediction. All um, right. Yeah, it's a, it's a brave new world for us all, Henry. You know, we have to get used to it. I like how they're introducing it slowly. That's like the first AI feature. Just taking one responsibility away from the caster. Just a small one. Predicting the round outcome. Yeah. What's next? What are they going to take from us? I mean... In the next update. I'm sure we'll get, you know, sort of live AI strategy breakdown. Veto prediction. They're happening, yeah. Yeah, AI prediction of veto. That would be I'm pretty cool. Not gonna lie, I'm working... I'm a part of a company that's already making all this stuff, Henry. Okay, so you're part of the problem. You're kind of costing <laughs> Part of the budget. problem, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Electronic with a nice shot on Alexi, who's yeah. jumping on the other side. Always dangerous to jump in any game of Counter-Strike. Absolutely true, but it's... Uh, Equalizing frag at the very least. Instead of four and four, you'd give the, the favor to the T side, especially an ancient. Wonderful. Oh, this is an aggressive position. You can see that electronic is ready to pre-fire it as well. It's gonna come down to a insane reaction speed test for wonderful here. Doesn't quite pass the test, and so no scope's no better. And that's gonna be now a lot of responsibility lifted on towards JL's shoulders. Yeah, maybe too much. In fact, oh my god, I said it! And the spray down is immaculate. It's gonna be Boomich on his own. I can't believe it. He surely should have been traded by, if not the second and the third player in line, but he absolutely wrecked him. And now Boomich in route to the other side. He's gonna get the bomb plant here. Oh, you know what? I like it. There's a chance, Anders. My, my spidey sense is tingling. He's got a chance to reposition it. He's making a two on one quickly. But he finds one of the high HP players. This one's on. It's on. Let's go. He's ready for it. He's been out of tier one for quite a bit, but this would be one hell of a clutch. The flashbangs have been set up. He's got a good shot there. Taking down JL, and suddenly it's a one versus one. Oh, oh, yes, the headshot. What a round from Boomage. Oh, the boss man is back. That is absolutely beautiful. What a clutch. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile every single time. I told you, Anders, he gets that bomb planted. He had just enough time to reposition, bring it down to the two versus one, and he plays it to perfection. And it all started with this beautiful spray down from JL. You think that's round over. There's no way. But Boomich, as you said, he's come out back into tier one, and he delivers an absolutely insane, stunning clutch for Cloud9 as they continue the streak here. Here in Ancient. That is an absolute gut punch for Na'Vi. 6-3 down. Round number 10 is up next. And it's another tragic eco as it, it's the round that's given up. A three versus one. This, these are some really painful rounds for Na'Vi to lose. It's, it's heartbreaking. They've had so many chances. They lost the one to Perfecto. Now this one to Boomage. Those are back to, well, not quite bad, but they're one versus threes that they lose yeah. over and over again. Well, bear in mind, yeah, it's Na'Vi that's been feeling the brunt of that on Anubis. It was a four on two they gave up as well. Like that's what cost them the map eventually. And Lexi B, nice effort with the Deagle, yeah. but it's all in vain by the looks of things here. Very well handled, Cloud9. Just looking so confident, just really abusing this A bomb side time and time again. More than happy to go through the tight choke point of A main. And it's just wonderful here. He was fantastic on Anubis. Had a couple of interesting moments here on Ancient, but currently it's Boomage that's stealing the show, showing us that uh, the five rifle setup is super viable, it would seem. Yeah, and back hitting that A bomb side again, just, you know, just to remind Navi that that's always an option, that's always a danger in the back of their minds. My God, seven to three as we move into round number 11. We're getting close to the end of the half here. And it hasn't really been working. Wonderful's back with the AWP. 
He's had a couple of misses. He's also has a, a couple of really good rounds, but... He hasn't been able to make enough of a difference here. Nobody really has on the Navi side. Okay. Confidence from Immer. Doesn't fancy the... the ledge push. No real damage inflicted just yet. We are going to see the... They bust open that first smoke. A lot of damage inflicted now, and it is going to be converted. Emma will be dropped early on towards middle. Going to need that confidence now. Alexi B, good for a spray down, but he's traded out quickly and getting spammed oh. down. That's wonderful. 23 points of health. Has to drop the defensive smoke. One minute 10 remaining. If they go back towards B, which is looking likely, how does Wonderful even fend them off here? He'll be smoked out of position. Molotov as well. Sure, he may be able to get a kill or two, but he can't be aggressive with just 23 points of health to work with. And he needs backup. JL in two minds right now. You can see he's in CT spawn. Does he back him up? Did they just stack the A bomb site? I think that has to be the case. Wonderful's departing. And yeah, I think the round might be over. They're just going to go with the contact play in towards B. Yeah, which is this particular point in time is the perfect thing to do, right? Like, anything else might signal a little bit further, but by the time they hear the grenades, it's going to be way too late. And now we're just saying, we need these rifles for the for the next round. But anyway, we want to try and see if we can at least get four on the board. So that's what they're fighting for at the moment. This is shocking turn of events. Boomich top fragging with a 12 to 6 scoreline. How many He's kills did he get in that? He got four kills in that round. Did he get more? Um... I'm not sure. I think it was four. I think it was four as well. But either way, it's been <laughs> really impressive. And bear in mind, this is Na'Vi getting the pistol as well, Anders. They got the 2 0 start. They've only picked up one following gun round since then. So, uh, yeah, it's not been the best look. This is uh, all starting to fall apart for them. It is considered a T sided map, but not as much as Anubis. Bear that in mind. Like some yeah. people might even say it's pretty easy these days. Oh, they're really hunting for the remaining weapons here. I mean, why not? There's so much money on the T side that nothing is really lost. Even if they lose everything, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Maybe you give over some of the AKs and that could be a problem, but I mean, mostly they're going to be fine. Yeah, they should be. Like, it gives a little bit of extra cash to the CTs. Those three kills at $900, I suppose. Um, does take some money out of the pockets of Cloud9, but it's a well, final round coming up next regardless. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, 8-3. On their T-side campaign here of Ancient, looking to put this one to bed, 2-0. and zero. And uh, to be honest with you, it's looking like quite a compelling storyline because I don't see a way Na'Vi will answer back. They would need everything to go in their favor in the second half. They lost this final round. They need, of course, that pistol, the follow-up rounds, and then really need to turn it on here. It's the debut showing for Wonderful as the sniper being brought in to replace Simple. Done a great job so far, but 2-0. Uh, is looking likely here right now. Can he fend them off as they try to test the A bomb site once again? And Sammy connects. Yeah, important kill. Takes down Hobbit to begin with. Shadow advantage in this position is so ridiculous that yeah. he should be able to have the advanced warning. They really badly need to win this round here, Navi. 8-4, to four, though. I mean, it, there's still a game to be played. It's not going to be over. But, yeah, um, definitely. In MR12, like, we, we've seen so many comebacks. Ridiculous yeah. comebacks on this particular map as well. Good Molotov, though. It's bits can be flushed out. He does significant damage for being dropped into the grave. But it's him converting those shots. Nice grenade as well. That could have found a couple of kills, but it doesn't quite meet the mark as we get into the 45-second zone here. Final round of this first half now. And as you said, Na'Vi desperately need it. Got all the advantages they could ask for. Four versus three. Boom, it's under 13 points of health. And Axile, they're going to find a sharp shot towards the backtracks of the B bomb site. JL, I think, smartly not taking that fight. If he dies, the game is right back on, or the round is back on, and Alexi would be alone over there. So just why give him a chance? 18 seconds on the clock. It's going to be down to the wire, this one. They're really running it low. Wonderful with a good shot taking down Axile. A little bit of a spray. Perfecto goes down and Immer to close out the round. An 8-4 to four finish. Still very strong for Cloud9. No question about it. Wow. Kumba. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye. See you. What do we have here, Finn? I see Blast logo. You ready to read this one? Yeah. Let's go, let's go. Dear players, welcome to Kronborg. Right this, this beautiful one right here. 
Today's first task will take place at this magnificent castle. You will both be challenged in a historical duel that will put your skill set to a test. Oh no. You will be doing a one versus one duel in fencing. Good luck and may the best man win. That sounds serious, bro. I know my moves already. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, start with the salute. Up, up, under the chin, and then out to the side. On guard, play, allez. Match. On guard, play, allez. On guard, play, allez. What? Touche, what? Defensive tactic working. On guard, play, allez. What? Touche, what? On guard, play, allez. What? Touche, what? Come on, Dupree. On guard. Play. Allez. Halt. Nice shot. Good is not best of 10. On guard. Play. Allez. Halt. Two, four. Now, Dupree, remember, if Kerrigan gets his last point, he wins the whole duel. So, clutch your kick, Dupree. On guard. Play. Allez. Halt. Two, four. Excuse me. <laughs> That's unfair. Replay. Oh, Replay. Sorry, Please man. Go wrong. Please go wrong. <laughs> Let's go, Phil. <laughs> Sit down. I'm coming for you. Tradition states that when it's 4 4, you give a small salute to the opponent. But whoever gets the next point wins the round. You only live once. On guard. Hey. Ali. Nice. 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 And he's absolutely right there, Anders. If they do win the pistol, they can recover this deficit. We've seen it so many times in CS2. Uh, MR12 is a cruel mistress sometimes. Even if you yes. have these massive leads, an 8-4 scoreline can disintegrate before your very eyes. Win the pistol, win the follow-up conversions, that's potentially 8-7. So he's dead on there. So it's nice to get that insight. They're still believing. And uh, even with a map down and an 8-4 deficit, they can definitely still do this on the T side here on Ancient. Yeah, I believe as well. Let's see if they can actually manifest this one because if they lose the pistol, they are really far behind. They are setting up for a bit of a B attack. They have double smoke, Molotov as well. They have everything they need. Right. You're dead on. Should be the B exchange, the crisscross smokes, but a very oh. strong smoke in response from the CT side. That makes things extra complicated now. Do you really want to commit behind this one? I think they have to. Molotov's being yeah. deployed. Flashbangs as well. Hot wave with first contact. Dooley's in the corner, but it's Jay. Oh my god! He's found the kill on Perfecto as well. It's so quick. And now he's picked up the Dooley's and he's having a good time sending bullets for the smoke. The bomb is being planted. It's a strong start for Navi and they absolutely needed it. It's Alexi to pick up the next one. And now it's a five versus two. Electronic and Axile back here and they're getting shut down hard. Although Axile, he's trying to find back. The bomb is just now planted, so maybe a little bit too quick to go on the hunt. You want to be careful. There's Axile again, looking for the ace in the pistol and can't find another headshot. Alexi saves them and Navi will win the pistol. Yeah, they absolutely will. It comes down to an exciting finish, though. Axile showing some rare form there. Beautiful shot to the USP, but not quite enough. It would have had to be the ace at that point. The round felt like it was done after this JL entry. Absolutely smashes the defenses down with the Glock. Great execution here. Axile makes things interesting. Interesting at the very least, but uh, unable to find that penultimate frag that would have maybe given him a chance to defuse there. You can see Hobbit's had enough. Unlucky there. They, it looked like they, with the smoke going down on the CT side, I, I thought with those jewelies in position, they would have a great chance of defending that one, but uh, completely rocked by JL. And that here is the must win pistol for Navi. And like I said, if they can find that 3 0 start, 
all of a sudden it's eight seven anders and they've got open runway here for the second because yes. of full eco a Zeus from boomage yeah this is actually a prime position to use it like actually gets a kill more often than not but it looks like jl is aware of the prospect at the very least he's certainly worried about it but you're right if you overlook it even just slightly yeah you could get tased yeah this is like out of all the positions we see it attempted this is the one that's the most effective throwing all the grenades bit on the other side with a couple of mac 10 kills no way boom it he's actually done it <laughs> <laughs> i told you it's something about that position. Always seems to work out for them after they threw every bit of utility. A Molotov, the grenade, a bit of spam as well. It's the only kill they find, presumably, but still, uh, it was quite a bit of fun. Perfecto has the bomb. He's got the bomb. Yeah, maybe he can do something with it, but uh, it's going to be Na'Vi with a comfortable second round. A bit of boomage. Uh, Insanity so, there as well with the zoo, so like that. I heard it on the grapevine that it's the next counter-strike patch coming up where the CTs can pick up the bomb if it's dropped and they can just run away with it. Yeah, just take it back into what there's a set spawn. Yeah, like, Hide it somewhere. Yeah, I think like an early source, you could like shoot the bomb. You could like, oh. use, because of the physics we're on, you yeah. could like really do something strange of it. Like that was uh, some dark days. But here we go, Anders. A bit of a bonus round now for Na'Vi. Galil, some Mac 10s If they can win this round, like I said, the 8-7 comes through. All of a sudden, yeah. It was an XCB that said if they win the pistol, they can still win this game. So far, so good. 2-0. 8-6 overall. First interaction coming in towards A main, and it's a fumbled spray from Axel again, Anders. Like, that is, by his standards, that is, that's yeah. pretty tragic. I agree. And Jail was in a bit of a panic mode because he kind of missed exactly, the first Exactly, right? So you've got, you've got the advantage in the fight, and you, yeah, you could have, have not have connected the shot. That's interesting. Electronic. Probably could have taken that fight, but he was switching out to the knife instead, so he got out dual by wonderful. Four versus three. Important for Navi to just keep going. Now that they have a little bit of an upper hand here, they, they just have to power on through. Defense oh from Perfecto, that's ridiculous at range. He gets the double spray down, and wonderful trying to see if he can land a kill here, but yo, he will against Hobbit. Okay, back into a two versus two. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's all been reset. Smoke's starting to dissipate, though, as the plant will be attempted. Got to go for it while the smoke is still up. And they'll get it down here. In terms of a kit, I don't see one. Yes, Boomage has got one here. They've got the advantage in terms of the HP. Wonderful. Playing behind the big box right now. They're going to step up once again. This is a huge round for them. They're going to continue the streak. The AI prediction, you can see it's favoring Na'Vi more and more as the frags come through. And it will be perfecto. Nothing to do here now. And it's wonderful. They've done enough. With very, very low health. In the, I thought that Perfecto double spray would have been it, but instead it's a triple. Not even with the AWP. A Perfecto very low, looking for an exit just as a, you know, a parting gift, but it's not going to make a difference. The bomb will claim him as well. Nice triple. For wonderful. Oh, absolutely. Just what they needed, Anders. Once again, making himself the wonder fuel in the Navi engine. Oh, yes. That, that's what we need, isn't it? More of those sort of puns. And, uh, yeah, even with the Perfecto, big spray down here. You thought this might be enough, but uh, it was wonderful. Managing to clamber his way out of the donor position. Down to 18 points of health. Managing to play on the front foot, though, with the bomb down. And there it is. There's the 8-7. There's that 3-0 conversion we spoke of. So they're right back in this. Blink and you miss it. And then down to the partial buy on the CT side as well. So presumably, we're going 8-8. Yeah, this is a very open game right now. Electronic, that's close range. He's going to get traded. Alexi, nice recovery. Turning around, ready for Boomich. He was trying to hunt him down. So yeah. Double for him. Got to love it when the, an in-game leader is a connoisseur of the MAC-10. Uh, yeah, the, we've got a few of those. Carrigan, right? Snappy, Carrigan, yeah. Hooksy. Like, it's the, a sign that they really understand the... The economy of Counter-Strike. They know that they can throw themselves in first with little risk. Crack things open against these players with no helmets. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice way to tie things up here. Presumably, they get it over the line. But it's uh, looking pretty good. They lose Emma on roots. But uh, here comes Wonderful. Gaining control of middle. JL just confirming that no CTs have pushed out in towards those B lanes. And uh, a B finish is looking likely here. But there is a bit of presence here. Quite a strong one. Every single player of a Cloud9 is on this side of the map. Lexi B doesn't want to be fooled once again. It's the Mac 10. Doesn't find the opening kill, but that's what it's designed to do. Axel would have to show something incredible 
He gets the first headshot, but that's all he's good for. And it will be 8-8. Eight, eight. And as we're all tied up, 4-0. Yeah, this game is wide open at the moment. Navi showing that they have some uh, something still to say on Ancient, which is good. We heard the little, the little uh, Team Speak clip coming into it, saying, you know, if we win the pistol, we're, we're good to go. We can make it back here. And they certainly are at the moment. Money looking... A little bit better in this round for Cloud9. It's about time. They don't have the AWP, so that's unfortunate. Don't get to see Boomage with it. No yeah. Boomage Orb yet, but I guess that's why they pick Ancient. You don't really need it. The run boost. Wow. Up towards the ledge. You don't see that too often, ladies and gents. And it actually works out for the man advantage as well. Alexi B trying to take matters into his own hands, and well, he certainly succeeded, at least with the first frag there. Trying to take a bit of space towards the A bomb site. Finds Electronic on route, brings it back to a three versus three. Needs to deal with Perfecto, though. It's actually Hobbit that will sneak out of the Donut Smoke first wow. and actually find a very, very important kill. That is such a high-level exchange between both Hobbit and Alexi. Alexi to realize that the bomb site was going to be empty to sure. push in to take the spot, and then Hobbit to push with the smoke. It's like, that that's something you do when you know how the other player plays, and you just have that in the back of your mind. What a sick little exchange there. Bomb is being planted, but... Perfecto gets the kill on bit and it leaves Jail alone. One versus three is good for the first one. Oh, got the bomb ticking behind him. So if he can reposition, he's just around the corner. This is really interesting now. The bomb planted, not in the greatest position, but he can make it work here. Just checking it out. He steps into the line of fire and it's Boomish to go down next. Grenade around the corner. Perfecto gets tagged by a JL in the one versus three and he'll pick it up. What a clutch. Excellent work from JL. That's more like it. We didn't see much from him on the first map. A sigh of relief. He knows that's an absolutely <laughs> massive round for him to pick up there. Working very effectively in the 1v3 clutch, managing to shut them down one by one, isolating the kills. Beautiful HE as well, just to buy him a little bit of space there towards this final frag. This is the moment he knows he's going to win. HE goes down, provides a small veil of cover. There's a bit of damage as well, enabling that third frag, and the streak continues for Na'Vi. Five rounds in a row. They are officially on fire, and it's another partial buy here, even with the maximum loss bonus. Cloud9 can only scrape together four pistols and a perfecto smg can they do anything with it it doesn't look likely alexi b will find the first frag they're burning away here a bombardment of bullets towards the b lane here and perfecto is not done just yet swings out of the jaguar room it's a three on three but they've taken so much damage on rue here trying to upgrade to a couple of rifles if possible and it's gonna be bits rotating for t-spawn trying to connect with his teammates here they've got the kills but they, they haven't picked up any other rifles really and they're all leaning towards this B side of the map. Look at Hobbit's position. Are they going to be ready for it? He is going to fall back, and so will everyone else. I kind of wish they would have kept going. Boomage going to get caught here. He did do some damage on the Immer, but the bomb is outside of B. Still, there's about a minute on the clock. So very hard for the rest of Cloud9, I feel like, in this moment to know exactly where that bomb is going. Oh, absolutely. They've got no intel whatsoever. That helps. The fact that it wasn't an instant kill, now they can just throw in Perfecto and hope the Hobbit can do some work here. He's got the AK-47. He's got the Kevlar. A bit of vision granted as well, but he can't deny the plant. That will go down no problem. Now, bear in mind, they won't have a kit. or any further utility in Hobbit's 5 and 15. So the chance of them winning this one is not looking good. It would all start with a nice double kill from this AK, but they might just be better off saving it now after receiving so much damage from the HE. Yeah, unfortunately, it would have been fun to see, but I kind of agree. Oh, actually, Vecto, get back and pick up that AK. Yeah, make a run for it if you can. Navi, they're getting back into the swing. Oh, yeah, it's more ten. than that. That's six in a row. That's unbelievable. What <laughs> way to get started in the second half. I am flabbergasted. Bear in mind, if you are just joining us, this is the debut for both organizations, the new lineups here. Yes. Um... New being an interesting word for Cloud9 because they replaced their star sniper with uh, a legendary in-game leader of the region. Don't get me wrong, but now they don't have a sniper. But um, it looked like things were going very smoothly for them. Anubis was a pretty comfortable victory, but after going up 8-4 to four in the first half of their map pick, they are yet to win a single round on their CT campaign, Anders. The wheels are falling off rapidly here, and uh, that third map, of Inferno is looking incredibly likely. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. Like every single round, every opportunity, every clutch is falling apart for them. And it's Na'Vi standing tall, Blade standing proud as uh, he can feel this game swinging back in their favor. The 8-4 deficit 
They knew if they just won the pistol, they'd be right back into it. And they were correct in thinking so. Now posting six rounds in a row, taking the lead and uh, presumably taking us to a third map. Let's tune in and see what the team speaks saying. Our fucking time to win one nice on three. Nice joystick. Nice Fuck yes. We can win one v three as well. Yes. We can win <laughs> one v twos as That's well. That's some good comedy. They certainly can. Yeah. Nice to see. Good spirits are high. Well, to get in the Navi side here, and they should be. They've won six in a row to get us back into a 10-8 scoreline in their own favor. They are three rounds away from getting us to a third map. It's another compromised setup as well. Boomage, though, with his signature weapon, I suppose. The MP9. We'll see whether that's going to be enough here. He's had a couple of impressive clutches today. It's Axile, though. Not going to kind of prove himself, honestly. Some of these sprays that's have sick. got out of control, but that one hits the mark, no problem. Takes down in-game leader of Na'Vi. They've got the opening frag in their favor. Cloud9 looking for their first CT round. That was Hobbit throwing a smoke and then an HE immediately on top. Sure. So the smoke pops and it's gone in, in the next second. I just don't think Alexi was ready for that. That actually looked really sick. I wonder if we could see that in the replay, but four versus five here. Emma sneaking into the middle Hobbit. He's well aware that could be happening and Oof. he could have been the fight a little bit labored, but he got the job done. Five versus yeah. three. The Cloud9 should not be losing this round. Yeah, bear in mind, Hobbit's like five and 15. That's a really important kill. Not only for his confidence, but to try and close out this first round on their CT side. They've lost Boomage on Rude, though. This is going to be a lot of pressure now for Vecto, and oh he God. looks away at the worst possible time. Bit absolutely destroys him on the challenge. And now they're smoked off for a good 15 seconds. This is all down to Axel. He needs to do the heavy lifting here. He's half HP. His teammates can do nothing. Not the smoke on JL. So no he way. can just re-smoke that position once again. And there it th is. they're going to be left wondering. Now they have to come through. They just have to run. Electronic thinking, oh, I've got no choice. I have to be the hero or we're going to lose this round. And they might anyway. Wonderful. Going to pick up the kill there. Axel, the longest flag oh. of all time. I'm not gonna lie, that kill from Bit onto Perfecto was so ridiculous. Like, you're right, he looked away, but Bit was also so crisp on that shot that they just stood no chance. Wow, there's no, I mean, there's nothing they could do. That's a five on three, Henry, that they, they just lose like it was nothing. I can't believe it. What a brutal headshot from Wonderful as well to try and close things out there. Yeah. That absolutely sealed the deal. Cloud9 can't get anything done. They had all the opening kills you could ask for. It all started here. Axel getting the opening frag on Alexi V. The second kill from Hobbit. We think, right, we're done. We're cooking. All of a sudden, though, one by one, Bit just starts to dismantle the B bomb site, and their woes continue here on Ancient. Their map pick, and it's all starting to fall apart, and the money's okay. We're going to have an AWP in the hands of Hobbit. Now, this is where things start to become a little bit questionable, this whole arrangement here. Because who is the AWP at this stage, you know? <laughs> I give Hobbits is picking it up. I, it's fine, but yeah, it is, it's not not sustainable system. If but you're going to be mixing it up every single time it's available. He did say on some maps. On so some maps, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah fair enough. He did say he's given himself the, the room. Yeah, fair know? enough. Maybe it's an ancient Hobbit is the AWP, I suppose. But uh, how sick is this? Like you said, it's the first debut for both lineups. Cloud9 play really well on the first map. Now we're getting a chance to see what Navi could be all about with Jail, Alexi, and Wonderful all playing very well at the moment. This actually looks really intimidating. We'll see if they can continue here. Hobbit, he's in the right position. Not impressed by Alexi's hips. Trying to see if he could make them lie and sneak out the kill, but instead he walks into the shot. It's a four versus three this time. With the bomb a little bit late onto the bomb site. So yeah, they have the bomb site control, but it's gonna be another five, maybe ten seconds before the bomb is even attempted here. Here we go. Another chance of a round here. It's Axel starting to show some form. Going blow for blow here with Navi. He's keeping up. They've got another huge advantage. They lose this one. Call the game done. But it uh, looks like they've done enough here. As it's just going to be JL. Good finish. Cloud9 finally arriving their CT side. A hollow victory considering it's their first round picked up after an 8-4 lead was guarded in the first half. Um, yeah, the CT side has been underwhelming, but apparently the, the Hobbit AWP was the remedy to their issues here, Anders. He gets a couple of kills and they find their first round. Yeah. Take a time out. A chance to catch their breath. It will be Na'Vi with their second timeout so far. Chance of Blade to chime in. Yeah, I mean, now's the time for it, right? You you just need to close out the game before Cloud9 wake up on the second half because they really haven't 
They haven't even really put their feet on the ground yet on the CT side, but they have a bit of a bit of a chance now. Maybe to talk things over. What a game it's been, Anders. This is uh, one of the most interesting matchups we have today. Yes, and it's delivered sure. on all fronts, right? Like we've got the debut of two new snipers. Um, if you want to call it that, with Wonderful and Boomage <laughs> coming through. And uh, yeah, it's been as close as you like. We've had some heart-stopping sort of clutches coming through. We've had some amazing 1v1 duels as well. Players turning up left, right, and center. And it's JL trying his luck in towards that B ramp as the incendiary does land towards the double doors. It's absolutely fine for now. Boomage, this is uh, an old school play of his leaping forward with the MP9. It works out for one, but the trade certainly favors Na'Vi. Yeah, the Molotov making sure that he was going to die in there, but that is a Boomage clash. It really, <laughs> it really is. is. Like, it's the old Boomage special. Like, normally on Inferno, which is the next map if it comes through, um, just swinging towards those hay bales towards the top of Banana with yeah. the MP9. That's, like, so stubborn with it. We do it almost every round. Oh, here we go. Are they going to push through? The flash is over. The flashbang actually works, but they still get the kill on Electronic somehow. What a sick setup otherwise. Axel oh, no. gets a bullet to the face, and now Perfecto trying to push through. I don't understand how they're losing these fights. It seems like every time Cloud9 should have had the advantage, and still somehow it's Na'Vi hitting the shots either flashed or even when they were turned around, they're still able to spin around and get the kills. It's on Hobbit to try and clutch this one. See if he can find this next one on Wonderful, but he gets the bullet straight to the face instead. And it will be another round here coming through on the Na'Vi side. They are looking good. What a strange series of events, Anders. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Another huge advantage squandered by Cloud9 there. They had everything they could possibly ask for. It was looking so good. The four versus three in their favor, like, that was the moment they went for that aggressive maneuver. Now, I don't hate the setup, but it just didn't work out for them. I'm sure it's uh, a maneuver they will live to regret there because, yeah, I guess if you don't laugh, you'll cry. I think that's one of those moments. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, you had the four on three, whoever made the call. Let's push the smoke that's flashing through. Now it just seems so unnecessary. It's like, well, okay, we just fed them a couple of kills there. That's not really ideal. It was Boomage that tried his luck with the MP9 before. This time operating with the FAMAS. It's match point, or map point, I should say. We move on to Inferno next. It's Na'Vi with the resurgence from hell. 8-4 down in the first half. Look at the close things out in style as Emma will make the first incision towards middle. Oh, we'd be blessed to get a third map right here. We're, we want to see more from both these teams, and it looks like we will. Emma making absolutely sure of it. Taking down Axile, opening up the A bomb site, and a five versus three to ensure here. The bomb is, uh, you know, it's a little bit slowed down, but it doesn't really matter. They should have enough to still get a, a decent bomb plant in. They're controlling Donut, so they know they can plant on that side. Wonderful with the shot to take down Hobbit. They are ready to close the book on Cloud9. I think we might be all said and done here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always careful when I say that these days. Anything can and will happen, but uh, Perfecto would do well to win a five versus one with no kit and no time, no space available. It's Na'Vi with a reverse sweep. Down eight to four in that first half, but it all goes wrong for Cloud9. We're going to Inferno, baby. I didn't think we stood a chance, but it's wonderful. Top fragging once again, Anders. What a debut he's having as he keeps the dream alive and takes us all the goddamn way. Holy hell, they bring the comeback together. And God, if we did not see that one coming, what a change of narrative throughout this map here. Na'Vi not ready to let go, not ready to give up. They push us to map number three, and I'm just gonna jump straight into this. How the hell? How the hell did that happen? Well, it was uh, facilitated with a beautiful T side coming out of Navi. We gotta say it, obviously, coming back from an 8 4 deficit in the first half, I thought it was over. I thought it was done. Because Navi had plenty of opportunities in the first half to get more than the four rounds they got. Coming into the second one, it, it felt like they were a little bit deflated, felt like they lost the opportunity, lost the chance. They won the pistol, they converted, and as you can see right here in front of you, they went on a streak right to you, where they dominated the T side. Yes. A lot of the rounds, sure, they could have been played different by Cloud9. There were a couple of clutches, a couple of 5e3s, etc. But overall, it felt like Navi were in control. They were taking the charge of this game on the T side. Yeah, we see the first half. I mean, overall, this is a story of defenses struggling yeah. on both sides. Defenses struggling massively. Clutch is happening. You say that's a key word. And I think we have to jump straight into some of these crazy examples that we've had, Jacob, because in the first half, it was Cloud9 who was on the giving hand. It was. They, they kept on clutching. They kept on winning rounds they weren't necessarily supposed to win. This is a great example. A 1v3. Perfecto, we know him to be very efficient in clutches, and he's 
playing this to perfection. Isolating every single dune. You can argue Bit got a bit ahead of himself right here, but Perfecto is not making a single mistake. Now moving on, Boomage does the exact <laughs> same thing. I know, and it's not supposed to be the candidate, right? You tell me we have 1v3 from Perfecto, I'll feel you. But Boomage is actually the one pulling that one out of the hat. Quick rotations as well from B to A, and then a whole lot of movement right there, always making sure he changes position from one kill to the other, and then he's got that white swing onto Imi. The problem for Cloud9 is that the story doesn't end here. When we switch the side, same happens, but this time it's JL. This time it's JL, and this is a beautiful clutch from JL, pushing up front right here, not afraid of taking the duels. Again, trying to isolate duel after duel, and he's successful with it. No trade fight coming in right here from Perfecto. Maybe a little bit of a misplate, but JL does the exact same thing as we saw with Boomich. He wins a very important 1v3, and he laid down the foundation for this great seaside. Well, this clutch in itself was absolutely meaningful, instrumental, whatever word you want to put, and we have a mic up moment for this right here. I'm gonna give. That's a long day. I'm planting. Take long. Plant my okay. I'm taking a short. Oh, long, long, long. Bomb planted. Down for three. Our nice. time to win one of three. Nice you stick. Yes. We can win one with as well. Yes. Of course, hugely impactful clutch coming out of JL, 8-8. Eight eight. There's, there's no other way to describe it as a turning point in this game. But now I want to somber up the tone just a little bit and let's talk about mistakes. Let's talk about mess ups that happens because if you're watching this game and you're a Cloud9 fan, you have multiple reasons to be angry about this second half. Multiple moments where Cloud9 was in control, they had the number advantage. And what is it after that? Is it a lack of patience? Is it a lack of confidence in how to close rounds? I mean, we see Electronic being flashed out of a smoke in a four versus three being completely fallen apart. What was happening in Cloud9? Were they impatient to close? Yeah, I would, I would argue. Uh, I think they, they got a little bit impatient and, and they were trying to force the issue a bit too much. I think after losing the pistol and after losing the 1v3 versus JL, they had a feeling that, oh, this game is slipping out of our hands. And at that point, again, we went back to the old Cloud9 where it feels like every single individual is trying to take charge of the game. We know Electronic is going to do it. It's in his DNA to be that difference maker on the server. We saw it with Hobbit as well. Didn't have a great game. A couple of rounds where he got ahead of himself. They had two 5v3 scenarios. They couldn't convert. So it's not like the opportunities weren't there for Cloud9, they just couldn't right. capitalize. There's one thing that I was missing though, and that's some of the things we brought up coming into the game, the CT side or presence from Shiro that we're so used to see. I think his average rating CT side ancient was up 150, 160. That was missing in this game right here. At no point were a certain part of the map shut down, at no point were Navi having to be scared of an AWP because it wasn't in play whatsoever for Cloud9. And I think that's gonna be an issue. If they can find a way to work around that, then the CT sides could very much struggle. Yeah, I agree with you. We saw Hobbit even bringing up the AWP yeah. Couple of times in, in cave, but it does feel like a, not a panic button being hit, but mm. they're just trying to plug holes uh, that in the raft rather than have straight solutions. Another problem that I saw was the disconnect between Electronic and Axel on the A side. Like it, it felt very much all in, in the sense of yeah. they're going to send Electronic to battle because he loves to do it, but it's all going to come down to this duel. If Electronic wins the duel towards mid, it's fine. If he falls down, it feels like the position of Axile relative to Electronic is very much disconnected and it's just one kill into the other. When we move on to map three, that cannot be the, the, the case, right? No, it, it cannot be the case. And it's an interesting pair, right? Because player profile-wise, they're completely different. And if Electronic can set up Axile to get the reflex and, and put him in a favorable position, then I would do that. But as you said, it can't be disjointed. It can't be disconnected. There has to be a plan with sending Electronic in to fight or die. At that point, someone's got to follow up. And if Axile is not going to do it, then someone else will have to. So yes, that marker, uh, sorry, that, that pair of of players yes. right there. They have to, to mark each other better. They have to follow up better. And that wasn't the case in Ancient. Right, and now before we go to map three, I think we would be remiss not to praise Navi for the resilience as well. Because just as much as Cloud9 maybe squandered a couple of opportunities, you have a Navi who was backs against the wall, very much in, in, in the defensive position, in the passive position, actually able to come back. This new roster, we're still trying to get a temperature check out of them. What did you feel mentally that they were able to put on the second map? I think resilience. I think we saw it a bit on Anubis as well. We heard one of the, the mic'd up clip in the middle of the game where Alexi B said, come on guys, we can still get it to overtime. The team still felt energized coming into the second map. They get off to, uh, you know, let's call it a, a strong start in the sense with the pistol rounds and everything, and then it falls apart. And then the T side comeback, it shows that they believe in the system, shows they believe in Alexi B, 
shows they believe in the players, and I think they played a beautiful Seaside on Engine. Well, Na'Vi was very much able to bounce back from map one. They were able to bounce back during map two. They've showed us resilience, and now the question is, can Cloud9 do just the same? Map number three is coming right after this. We take a three-minute breather, get some water, hydrate yourself, homies. We'll be right back. Map number three on the way here at the Blast Fall Final. We are kicking things off for these teams in Group A. Off the bat, Jacob, I want to ask you, map number three, we have both teams, or not, rather, neither team have certainties. Like both teams yeah. eat off of roster changes. What team do you think is more equipped to deal with map three? The specificity of this one map, it's all in, everything is on the line. Who's more equipped for that? I still will side with Cloud9, okay. just a, a little bit right here. I think the player material they have to work with on a map like Inferno, where the AWP is not going to be that dominating, I'd argue, is, is going to look good for them. I think Na'Vi have shown more than I expected coming into this game. I think Cloud9 have shown the, the brilliance they could pull off on Anubis and also the, the lackluster CT side without an AWP on Anubis, so, or sorry, on, on Ancient. So I feel like I haven't been surprised so far, but, but you said it pretty well. We're, we're going into a game where there's no certainties. There's no guarantees mm. for anything to happen right here. So for the viewers out there, a complete open game. Still. I'll get your point about the AWP. I think it's one that we can ride into this Inferno. Do you think this is going to be as much as a factor, a limitating factor for Cloud9, that is? We could see on Ancient, they desperately needed, they missed that very strong AWP being able to give you that 5v4 on the CT side. I would argue it can be less damaging on Inferno. Do you agree or do you think it's going to be equally problematic for them? 100% agree. I, I think that's one of the main points for me coming into this third map, why, why Cloud9 is in a better position than they were in Ancient. The CT side up, yes, he can make the difference, especially if you call Shiro. We've seen that time and time again. He's no longer here, though. He's part of the party. 
us. So we got to focus on what is in front of us. And I think you can play Fire Rifles or you can allow yourself to have an AWP who not necessarily dictates the game on the CT side, even more so the T side of Inferno. I think that's one of the few maps where you can actually argue that having Fire Rifles, we see it with Saivu once in a while in Vitality as well, not picking up the AWP. Device has a habit of not doing it for Astralis as well. So the Fire Rifling setup on T side Inferno, I think that's when Cloud9 comes into play. Okay, I, I agree with you. I can see where you're going with this. So if you're Navi, what is it that you're targeting against Cloud9? Where do you think could be a potential weakness? What is it that you hope to put in your bag, in your pocket, moving into this map of Inferno? We know Exile has always been a guarantee for good CT holes in that pit position. He's, he's arguably and have been one of the best in that position, but he is struggling a little bit right now. And it's one of those positions, if you're not getting the first kill, if you're not laser sharp, you will be swarmed, you will be oversaturated. And I think that's why I want to focus on if I'm Navi right now. Okay. Test Exile, see if he's there still, see if he can hold that position like he used to. If not, then that could be a couple of free rounds and then you can dive your way into the game. I see where you're going with this one. I have to be honest, we are not, We I don't know what they're saying. I don't understand the language. I can sure. only observe the team as they behave right. I do feel like Cloud9, in, in, in context of losses, are dissolving just a little bit as a team, as a unit. Mm -hmm. It feels like it gets more individualistic. It feels like I'm looking at the way they talk to each other, they look at each other. It worries me just a tad. I, I don't really know if it, it, they still have this core, this unity that is needed as a team to kind of come back from a deficit position, to do what Navi was able to do on map number two, being back against the wall, come back into the game and grab it again. Am I, do you think I'm having, I'm exaggerating on oh. that or, or is that, could that be an issue for Cloud9? I think it, it has been an issue. I think that's been a proven fact for a long time that it is a team that, that seems to crumble a little bit mentally when they, they can't get it done, so to speak. We've seen it at the majors, we've seen it at the major qualifiers for that matter as well. Some of that old DNA is still within the team in Hobbit. Uh, I would even argue, you know, that, that Groove as well plays a part in that one as well. I think for Boomich to come in and change that narrative, that's going to take some time. Right. We need to see it happen more and more and more and, and Boomich right now, right here, is probably learning something, right? He's probably looking to his right, looking to his left, thinking, well, okay, so this is what they were speaking about. This is the issue. So he's learning, they're learning. I don't think you're over-exaggerating, but I think it's too early for them to fix the issue. We see here smiles on the camp of Navi. Of course, they have all the reasons. Uh, we're moving on to Inferno. I have just been told by production, Cloud9 is going to be starting on a CT side. Mm. So Alexi B is going to be leading the charge on the offense. I think he did a pretty good job on that ancient, yes. he definitely could kind of single out the issues, the possibilities. What do you make of his leadership so far and what you've seen from Navi in, in a very small sample size? I know we're just, we're making conclusions based on a whole lot of little here. I'm getting exactly what I expected from Alexi B. I think his quality, I know he's been under a lot of criticism from the community, from certain aspects of this world, but I think Alexi B is a quality in-game leader. I think what he's done with Navi, given the circumstances, what he's done with Navi in this game has been okay, it's been passed. Now, can he do it on Inferno? I'm not sure sure about it. I would like to see Bit being set up, I would like to see Emma mm. being set up, and I would like to see fast pace coming out of Navi. Otherwise, I think Cloud9 is going to run away with it. Yeah, two captains with a definitely serious pedigree here, going at each other with teams that aren't necessarily finished product. We know there is still a lot to be improved, there's a lot to be developed, but this is what we are working with. These are the pieces that we have for this final map. And the last piece of the puzzle that we need is an amazing duo, and Anders Henry, I hand it to you. Thank you so much, Maniac. Very kind of him. An amazing duo, not pathetic casters as we usually refer to. <laughs> um, we are going to have the third and final map, ladies and gentlemen, in this excellent series between Cloud9 and Na'Vi. It's delivered on all fronts. Cloud9 fumbling the bag, though I have to say they couldn't really get going on their CT side. We move to the deciding map of Inferno, where it's going to be another scramble, I reckon, Anders. I think come right down to the wire. We're going to see all the rounds here. It's unclear who will be taking this third and final map, and I'm excited to see who will be stepping up and uh, who will be giving away the most clutches as well. There's been a lot of them today. Yeah, you're right. There has been. I wanted to be a scramble. I wanted to be fiery on this one. I'm so glad that we got a third map here because it's been really entertaining. We're learning a lot about these two new rosters and a third map is exactly what we deserve. So we'll see. Axile was brought up as a potential point of weakness. We'll see if that's going to be true on the third map. I still want to believe. I still want to hold out some hope here that Same, he right? can make a recovery. Yeah, I'd like to see him have some uh, high-impact moments, but uh, here we go. Na'Vi managing to somehow get themselves here on Inferno, taking down Cloud9 and Ancient in quite a convincing manner after losing an 8-4 first half. Flashbang towards middle here. It's Hobbit. Challenging with the USP. No real damage inflicted as of yet. In terms of utility, we still have two smokes, two flashes, and a Molotov on this T side. I just want to point this out, if it ever happens. I 
they're trusting so much in that electronic smoke over at the B bomb side. I just never do that on the pistol rounds. I feel like smoking off this B lane in pistol rounds is so inefficient, but uh, might not be a factor in this one. I just wanted to point it out before it actually happens. T-Smokes, on the other hand, are a different matter. You can definitely use those to try and dodge the USPs, get out into the middle. They're going to set up one more smoke that's towards Little Pit, I believe. And here we go, Axel with the first kill on Inferno. Not a bad start, necessarily. Molotov will put Hobbit in a little bit of an uncomfortable position, but it's not going to be that big of a difference. Emma looking for the headshot. He couldn't quite find it. Boomich and Axel to close out the round. So Axel with a good start. Very good start. And under a lot of pressure there as well towards that pit position, the Molotovs, the flashes, uh, but uh, couldn't break through the defense. Very decent crossfires set up towards that pit and bombsite position. They had plenty of time and space to find the kills required. Let's have a look at the replay here. It was a beautiful first shot. And sitting in towards that Molotov, managed to get himself down to about 10 points of help and still find impact here. Double kill from the pit position. And we will find Cloud9 with a pistol under their belt. No bomb planted, Anders. So we are going to have the, the full kills you might expect. The electronic just hunting for of information spots one towards the underpass and there's a missed ct smoke i'm afraid that's designed to go towards the top of the t-steps not a big deal in this sort of round and uh, they'll probably get the intel they missed it just by jumping over so that's something at least they know for future reference something to correct yeah why not you really can throw them everywhere now <clears throat> you're going to see some very interesting evolution of the meta what becomes a standard smoke so we're seeing we just saw an ancient for example you can throw that cave smoke from T-Spawn, every single team is throwing that. It becomes a meta smoke uh, just by virtue of those open skyboxes that allowing you to throw smokes pretty much anywhere across the map. CTs confirming control of Banana, but it has cost them three smokes. And that's all this round is really designed to do for Na'Vi. Bleed out some utility, find a couple of kills. If you get the bomb down, that would be miraculous, really, considering you're operating with next to nothing. A couple of upgraded pistols, no Kevlar. And some mid control potentially here. They've done enough to bait out the initial utility. They've got some basic control of the map here. Another incendiary at $600 removed. So this is actually going all right. It's not the most exciting narrative, but uh, they're taking utility away. Yeah, it all it all does all count. You yeah. know, they're not doing it for nothing. They're not just you know a little bit tired or sleepy. They are waiting it out with the purpose in mind. Duelies have come out. It's electronic still just you know getting the kills, finding a fourth one on this. He's been playing very well all throughout these uh, two first maps. We've seen into the third one, looking like he's off to another good start. 2-0, but uh, like we said, getting a couple of frags, baiting other utility, that's not too bad considering you're buying up in the next round. It all has a knock-on effect as uh, the CT's now have to reinvest with all his grenades. Pretty, pretty uh, pedestrian round in terms of defense, but uh, like I said, a couple of kills coming through. P250 of bits had some impact there as we get into the first real gun round here. AK's pretty much across the board. We'll see if we can fix these smokes down towards middle. Well, you mentioned it even on the second map that Boomich is well known on this map for the MP9. Yeah, that's, what, he, that's what he's known for. He wanted to like, go for it's it. It's so nuts. He's still doing that. That's <laughs> <laughs> his like, trademark move. Get the SMG out. We knew run before the map the banana was even And just die at the start of the round. Like... I have commentated hundreds of those rounds. Like, it's good to see that some things never change. Oh my god, what a what a peak from Axel. Oh, not even a peak, he just wall banged him down. He knew that if he overextended, that bit would be ready for it. That's pretty sick, but they couldn't escape. Emma is still able to shoot him in the back. The fact they've got the, the double nade through it as well. It's like, well, he's probably going to do this. Like, we all know it. They just double nade him at the top. Uh, there we go. It's going to be to perfecto now. Huge task ahead of him. And unfortunately for Electronic, a nice idea to try and lock them in towards B, but with the man advantage, it can justify having Immer patrolling the extremities. The execution to close things out should be absolutely fine. The smoke makes things uncomfortable, I suppose, but uh, they can wait it out. They've still got plenty of time here. Another smoke available for spawn as they rotate everyone over. There's just going to be perfect, though. Now, it's not impossible that he wins this round and it's, it's very improbable but if he gets a double kill survives and there's, there's a world there is a world but it's not a good start is it deagles out it nice headshot keep it going get one more 14 seconds on the clock here and wonderful will take him down in spite of the double kill they are going to be fine just faking it out in case hobbit's right on the other side but the bomb will be planted here and hobbit very, very difficult. He does have the kit, so maybe flashing his way through. 
Trying to see if he could find a kill on anyone in the background here, but not seeing anyone at the moment. A lot of ground to cover for him right now. Standing still for a minute here. It can really, really come back to haunt him in the end. Yeah, he spotted wonderful, but he's realized it's not going to be worth it. Picks up the AK, makes a run for it instead. I think that was the only real choice here. Yeah, like we said, uh, the Fapid Factor makes that round competitive. He set Hobbit up for at least a, a viable retake at that point, but it uh, wasn't quite enough, I'm afraid. They play it very well. They give Hobbit nothing to work with, and it will be the first round for Na'Vi. Two to one as uh, they find their first here on Inferno. A bit of aggression here from the CT side as well. Let's relax. <laughs> it's day one. <laughs> and uh, it is going to be perfecto. A beautiful little deagle headshot. You thought maybe there's a chance for another one, but uh, like we said, two was pretty much the top end. Still wasn't quite enough. As uh, Na'Vi now will be fending off an interesting buy from Cloud9. It's going to be Boomage once again with that MP9. Now, Anders, he can't do it again. Like that, that, that would be a problem. If he, just, like, if he just starts dying at the top of B at the start of every round, like I'm going to have, going to have some words. All right, it's a bit more relaxed. It's a bit more relaxed. He's just so giddy to be back, you know. He's yeah. like, ah, I, like you know. it's this. This is the only player I kind of like see do this time and time again. This super hyper aggressive play. It's not <laughs> working out. You can see why he does it. He's not done yet either. Oh, it's it's so much, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Now it's time. Rain him back in. Now, what a grenade that lands on Alexi. 52 damage and he's down 26 health. But yeah, the aggressive Mac 10. What an absolutely annoying thing to be up against. And here we go. They're sending Perfecto out this time. Rubich has a USP somewhere. It's Hobbit to go down, in fact. And that little play might have cost him quite a bit. Four versus three now. Still 50 seconds on the clock. Navi looking to take this round. And I do like this rotation, but... I wish Boomich had something else than a USB. Why has he only got a... Where's his MP9 gone? I think he threw it over to Perfecto, who's given up on it now. Oh, I see. All right, well... <laughs> it's going to be the USB after getting the opening kill. What a kill that is, though. It's going to be electronic. Keeping the dream alive. Get back to a three on three. Perfecto making that AK-47 work as well. We're going to tie things up on Alfie, but uh, this is not looking great. 20 seconds remaining. The USP strikes in the back lines, and it will be Boomich leading them to two rounds in a row here. It's the MP9 at the start, and there's the jumping potential behind that half wall, this time making it work. That's a smile from Electronic as well. They're happy with this one. So, yeah, you can't poke many holes in it when it works. I'll say that much. Bit is going to be so frustrated. Oh, yeah. Um, he lost the fight, uh, you know, the previous round. Yeah, true. Getting spammed down, and this time in a slightly different manner, but still probably very frustrating. Oh, he's so back. <laughs> he's under their skin already. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, M4 this time, and Hobbit still got his foot on the gas. Up against these pistols, he knows he's got a guaranteed frag there. A full eco. Yeah. Shooting galleries being set up across the map here. Electronic will... On a slice of the action as well. JL burning in towards the underpass here. Tucks himself in the corner. I don't think he's long for this world. Just a couple of bullets will apparently take down Axile. Oh, this oh. is getting expensive. This is getting strange. It was the full eco, the five on three, and all of a sudden, the conversation begins. Can Cloud9 actually give this round away? Answer, potentially yes. It's, it's certainly got closer than you would really want to see here. Good timing to show up for Electronic, but he's a little bit overworked. Be careful now. Wonderful. In a one versus three. Good oh. headshot. Nearly landed another one. He's close to it. Backup is coming in from the middle, but wonderful. He has to get the kill right now, and he can't quite do it. It's Electronic with another quad kill to try and bring it back, but that is way too expensive. That's way too scary. Yeah, absolutely. A wake-up call at the very least, and The fact you got a five on three against a full eco and yeah. it actually gets a bit uncomfortable there. Wonderful has a chance to win it. Yeah, that's not good. They know it as well. Uh, maybe a chance for a tactical timeout. Let's just reel it in a bit, boys. Like, it was nice to have an aggressive stance, kick things off. The fact it was so close, like, should never have come down to this. Uh, a really labored finish there. It's wonderful they can't connect the penultimate headshot, but still made things very dangerous. Cloud9, 4-1, to one, and the aggression continues here. Electronics had enough, wants to assert his dominance down at the T-step. This time the slow connects, and so does JL. But wait for Electronic. He's got a real chance to shut down this B Assault. He's at the bottom of the middle. He's got two players in front of him. He's got too many to pick from. As the bomb goes down, it's a three versus two. Immer low on health and Bit finding Franks towards the apartments. 
<laughs> what a round! The bomb is in the middle still, so Electronic can actually make this work quite a lot. Boomich got a kill on the other side with the AK. He was a uh, top banana. Now he's rotated all the way back towards the arch position. This is a roller coaster of a round. I have no idea who's going to come out on top of this one. Emma is low on health, sure, but it, it's probably down to timing about who's yeah. facing what way. And here we go, the sneak through from Boomich. Emma not ready for it, a bit on his own. Let's bring in the AI. I've got no idea at this point. We need <laughs> yeah, some computer assistance need. to work out who's going to win this one. As bit is left in the two versus one. Got a chance at his first kill, but not going to be connecting. A boomage, absolutely loving it. The aggression, it's a bit chaotic. It looks like it could be hit or miss sometimes, but that's uh, a roaring success for Cloud9. They're continuing to be very frustrating to play against there. Just tucking themselves into the bottom of the middle. Smokes down at the T steps. You see Electronic, an absolute nuisance here. They've got no idea and uh, too many targets to choose from. As uh, Boomage, beautiful positioning there towards middle as well. Next one to close things out. Nice spray with the M4 as the streak continues here. Navi can't get online. They managed to recover a deficit on the second map, bear in mind. But for now, they're operating on another eco. A partial buy, I suppose, with Deagles and Kevlar. But round seven looks to be another difficult one for Navi. He's always just been such a frustrating opponent, Boomich. Especially when he's when he's sort of paired up with more... Oh, okay, there we go. All right. I was going to say, when he's paired up with more conservative players, you get like a weird mix of... of sort of the erratic play style that he has, and then every once in a while you're up against someone who's just sort of holding an angle like a Perfecto or an Electronic, and... Uh-oh. Oh, this is not great. Hobbit needs some backup. He's got a couple of bullets still left, but... um. They're not really coming for him at the moment. Instead, they're focusing on Electronic. So, Electronic, what have you got for us? A Masterclass and an A Defense, or only a single frag? It's going to be Bit who keeps things very uncomfortable for the CT side. Navi looking good for the second now. They've got themselves a two versus one. Perfecto on the retake here with no utility. AK-47 in hand. The bomb just planted. He's up against JL and Bit. And they've got all the opportunity in the world to close this round out. It's looking very advantageous for them. They've got the perfect setup. A beautiful crossfire, and it's down to Perfecto to find the first kill and bring it back to a one versus one, but it just doesn't look possible. It really doesn't. Three kills on him. Bit in the pit, looking fit for a headshot. He's going to get it. Quad kill in the round, Henry. All of them headshots. Yeah, that's exactly what they needed. Yeah, he looked a bit frustrated in those previous rounds, but uh, finally he's online, and so are Navi as well. That's just what the doctor ordered here. Definitely an impressive sequence from the likes of Bit getting it done with the Desert Eagle. Frag after frag, connecting headshot after headshot oh as he absolutely runs away with the round. Beautiful last shot to take down Perfecto as well. Five to two as we continue here on Inferno. Navi back in the conversation as well. That's an absolutely massive round for them to win. It's in-game leader Boomich is purchasing the Hero AWP Anders. Taking matters into his own hands, an executive decision. <laughs> It's certainly a decision of sorts. Oh, and he gets the shot on JL! Oh, I was making light of it. We've been... He doesn't even get Kevlar. Like, it's a glass cannon hero AWP. Doesn't need it. He doesn't even need it. That's a real man's man for you there. In the thick of it. Find an opening frag. Doesn't even take any damage. It's been a bit of a meme from the start when they said that he was going to be the primary opera on a bunch of different maps, and it's like... Really? The MP9 run and gun is going to be your primary AWPer, but that's a good kill. Let's he's see if he can do it well. again. He's going to get tested a lot more. This time a smoker's up. He's actually just playing in front of it. He's got no fear whatsoever. He's fully committed. He gets a shot on Emma, and they're still hunting him. He's got no Kevlar, so he's very, very soft at the moment, and he maybe <laughs> had a chance to get one more there. Yeah, you're right. You're very squishy about the Kevlar. A couple of bullets, even if their wall bangs will take you down. Uh, but he set them up at least for a chance in this retake. You can see the, the prediction not looking good. 96% plays four uh, with no kits, no utility. I think the operation would just be trying to get that AWP if possible. Make this thing around as expensive as possible. This kill might turn the tides of battle, but it looks like it's Na'Vi confirming the round after technically being in a five on three. It was Boomage getting those initial couple of picks, but when he went down, there was no one there to pick up the pieces, unfortunately. So uh, good attempt. But that means more of the MP9, I suppose, for Boomage going forward. Because that was a, a heroic attempt. Admirable, to say the least, with two kills. But uh, just swarmed, and his teammates didn't have the resources to really capitalize upon the advantage. A bizarre combination of skill sets if you're able to 
you know, like, you, you buy the MP9 in most rounds, and you can force up the AWP if you need to, into, like, random rounds. Like, you, they, it does kind of complement each other. Like, you're making a lot of money with the MP9s. You can, you can buy the orb when you need to. I guess there's some sort of method of the madness here. Although, in this round, it is just going to be the P250, unfortunately. Just perfect it with the MP9 instead. Five to three, the scoreline. It's a very open game. Nothing's really been decided yet. Let's see what Navi are going to be able to manufacture in this one. But yeah, I'm starting to, I think, feel more comfortable about that B defense or trying to attack it, Navi, that is. And in a round like this one, there's not that many needs to slow them down either. It's Absal, though, again, bit losing the fight over on that hallway. Yeah. His woes continue on that side of the map. Huge opening kill. Bear in mind as well, it's Boomage operating with us, that P250. If he can upgrade here, that would be fantastic, but he's over towards B. Of course he is. And they're going to go for the smoke by the looks of things here. It's Boomage to take first contact. We have got a boosted Perfecto. We're a familiar weapon for Boomage at least. The MP9 up high. 40 seconds as they commit towards the site itself. Hobbit has one flashbang, but yeah, they are going to try and come through this one. 30 seconds. Boost up on the one side. Boomich getting blown up. Axel not really ready for the boost then. Perfecto with the double kill. They charge through. Hobbit gets a kill on Ima and leaves JL. 22 seconds. One versus three. The bomb is not even on his back. It's really out towards Banana still, so he's in a lot of trouble. He's just out swinging with the AK. He wants to at least try and make it a one versus two before he even thinks about it. And I think he's run out of time. He yeah. needed that kill to Towards the uh, the truck right away, yeah, it gets that one, but the round is done. It'll be a sixth one for Cloud9. Nothing he can do. You could see when he was in the three versus one, had to avert his gaze, look at the clock at the top of his screen, notice he had 12 seconds and there's just no way to win it. Uh, just had to hopefully save the weapon at that stage, which he does do to be fair. So, smiles all round here. Cloud9, looking quite comfortable, Anders, I have to say. Uh, it's been some exciting rounds. We've had that um, impressive moment with the Desert Eagle coming in, but uh, that's about it for Na'Vi. They need to start posting a few more rounds here. Uh, a bit of a resurgence, um, but still it's Cloud9 who seem to be in the driving seat, all led by this man in the screen here, Boomich. His debut on land for Cloud9, and uh, interesting game to say the very least. We've had some yeah. wild moments. He's had a massive clutch. Um, he's had some influential war picks. He's had a couple of MP9 interactions and a pretty decent showing overall. Cloud9, I have to say, like, they do look like a bit revitalized from a tactical point of view. Like. They do. And they, just, and from a, I've, I think from an overall, just the atmosphere in the team is looking really good. Like, he's yeah. really bringing them up. Like, he's shouting. They look animated. Um, they're really enjoying the wins when they get them. So I think, you know, that, that can go a long way. Not that it's the only thing that he's bringing to the server at the moment, but um, it can feel a bit flat playing Counter-Strike if you're just, you know, sat in silence, sort of angry that you're losing rounds. Like, nobody wants to be playing like that. It makes a difference having somebody who's who's hyping the team up when you need to. So we've got back-to-back -back timeouts here. Okay. Burning them to try and get things under control. I think we went from a tactical into a tactical. Ah, so fair enough. Just to... Uh, that is allowed. That is uh, that is certainly allowed. So yeah, you can't talk through the technical, but you can chat through the tactical, of course. It will be Navi to call this one as we're getting to the closing stages of this first half of the third map. Bear in mind, it's in the upper bracket. Day one here at Blast Premier Full Finals 2023. Coming to the closing stages of this year, Anders, where did all the time go? Feels like there's been so many events in the last month at the very least that the years has flown by. It really has, hasn't it? Um, we were all waiting in anticipation wildly for, for CS2 to, to, to sort of finally come out. And, here and it I is. must say, I mean, like, uh, the updates are happening so quickly as well that it's kind of, you know, it's like the only. It's hard like, to keep let's up. be real. The only real problem we have right now is the lack of anti cheat. I would say that's the headline issue. Yes. That's, that, that's missing right now. Other than that, um, if, you, if you don't watch Counter Strike or play it every single day, you would tune in today and just think this is just Counter-Strike as usual, right? You wouldn't think this is a different video game. This is so different. God on a limb here. Again, I really don't know. Like, this is how it works. Nobody knows what Valve are doing beyond Valve, so sure. I don't have any special inside information. I think it would be crazy to imagine that there won't be an anti-cheat because of how the matchmaking system works. Like, it, 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 I, there's no world in which Valve are just saying, oh, we'll I just agree. keep on doing it. There's absolutely no way. It's, so, it's just frustrating for now. It's it just, is frustrating. It's just one of those things for new players but, to experience, and it's just getting a reputation now, whether the, the stats are even true. But we'll get back into the action here. It's wonderful. Ring in true with that AWP 
Hobbit taking matters into his own hands, reacting aggressively, pushing towards the apartments and getting towards the T side. He's behind enemy lines. So it's a nice reaction here, but you can see Bits on a high alert. He's aware of this prospect. Knows the moves of Hobbit, but he's one step ahead of him. Brings it back to a 4 and 4 and gets the hell out of there. Okay. I think you're right. I think Bit had the inkling that something was yeah. up, but it's one of those things where like you have the idea in your mind, but you're not, you know, your senses aren't fully lined up for it. Didn't quite react in time, unfortunately. So they give up uh, the early lead that they had in this one. And it's back into a four versus four. A minute on the clock. And look at the rotation. There's no way they're going to keep this, surely. They're rotating Boomage back. There's nobody on the B-bomb side. They've just completely evacuated that side. What a crazy call. There's, they're keeping this for a while. You have to assume eventually they're going to have to give up on it. I think now Electronic sort of looked into middle. Oh, the timing is awful, though. I think they were so sure that this yeah. is going to be a B execute because they got that mid information. They're rotating on over. And Emma sneaks in the kill. Although Electronic looks like he's going to take it back very cleanly. And he might get a feeling that no one else is here. Yeah, it's down to the boss himself. Boomage. He can sense the B attack coming through, rotates towards the coffins, it's a full execution. He's trying to get in front of the smoke if possible, or find a kill through them. Good for one, but JL will respond here. Down to the two versus two, the bomb, I don't think it's denied, but Perfecto, a wild swing through the smoke. Brings us down to the one versus one, wonderful. Looking to prove his worth once again, his debut on LAN as well. Electronic up against him, who's sneaking through CT spawn, already made it past the choke point. All of the pressure on Electronic here. Very tricky. That smoke makes a difference, though. He's got a kit as well. Wonderful. Setting up on the other side. You've got to make a decision right now. That's a missed shot. The Glock is out instead. And Electronic ice cold inside. The full defuse. He knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, it's unfortunate. you got two options there. You go for the no-scope handers or you bring the knife out and uh, yeah. try and get a few stabs in. I think the latter might have been the better option of the two, but uh, it's just unfortunate. You you see you're up against Wonderful, of course, he's going to have the AWP. If he has, like, I don't know, a Tech 9 to go with it, even a P250, maybe he's got a chance at the spam, but he had one shot, the five seconds, blink and you miss it. And it's Wonderful with a great attempt here, but that was his only real effort. If he goes to the knife, who knows? Because you get the sound cue with a couple of slashes, you can work out where they are. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't work out from Electronic. Steals the round away, it's going to be 7-3. Final round of, oh no, I beg your pardon, round number 11. Still getting used to it, Anders. It's all fine. I'm surprised we haven't screwed up, uh, you know, a lot more. I, that's, that was my one big fear coming into it yeah. with, with MR15 to MR12. I thought, oh no. An ultimate round. I'm gonna... We're allowed one mistake a day, so that's mine. Gone. I feel like that's reasonable, Burnt. Yeah. yeah. We should be allowed at least one a day. As humans, yeah, I think it's, I think it's okay. Just doing our best out here. And so are Na'Vi in this difficult situation. They've got the AWP in hand. Pistols otherwise. Wonderful. If you're Maui, you should be free of there. Oh, God. Okay. There's a kill. That's an impressive kill as well. It's all by design. They smoke off towards the arch. They find a little bit of wiggle room towards middle. And he gets a great pick in towards the pits. But bear in mind, takes a lot of damage on route. Down to 20 points of health here. Hoping... A reactionary play from the CT side, and they'll offer up yet another frag to Wonderful. Time is of the essence, though, Anders. 30 seconds. And they're not biting. They're not giving anything away. Yeah, they're really not. I think smartly so. They recognize what's coming. Flash on through, but the pistol or the AK on the other side. And Perfecto on the crossfire. Just way too much to handle here. AWP's up there, and it's finding more kills, but it just might be too late here. I think so. Like, now you, you might be considering the AWP, like, Ten what's that going to do well. once he goes down? Like, can you even do anything with this round? Good position, wonderful. Certainly seems to think so. His money was pretty decent regardless. I think he had, like, $3,500. So, a bit of buy into the last round now as uh, Cloud9 posts yet another pretty comfortable finish there. It was Na'Vi in the mid-stages. It looked like they could bring this first half back to life, but uh, so far... Not so good. Only three on the board. As, uh, like we said, like, this is a perfect hole. You've got 25 seconds to smoke down towards the apartments. You just have to push through. You just don't have no time. Otherwise, it was the opening pick <laughs> from RV, like electronic with uh, a maniacal laughter. I like that. <laughs> I was gonna That's say. quite evil. <laughs> That's great. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> Why was it so loud? I don't know. It's, <laughs> this is very unnerving, isn't it? <laughs> 
All right, now we are into the final round of this first half, ladies and gentlemen. Wonderful stuff, that's the AWP. What the helmet as well. He loves going down at the top of banana, bro. It's his favorite maneuver. At, like, some things will never change. At no point during any of that was there any... There's no necessity <laughs> for him to do that. It wasn't required. <laughs> Nobody asked him to do it. Oh, it's the so Molotov sick. landed it's in front of him, and he's like, I'll push through it anyway. I love it. Like, I'm so here for it. It might have unironically set them up in an insane position, but there's still three people behind here. It might be really hard for Navi. I wish Navi would just push through to be like, okay, he died. It's a five versus two at worst in this bomb site. We'll take it. It looks like Navi, though. I think, you know, Alexi keeping his sanity for the minute here. Yeah, it's an interesting round, isn't it? Because Cloud9 are just hoping they will just take that advantage, collapsing towards the B bomb site, but that is keeping Jay on this side of the map, listening out for rotations. Six. Out some smokes. Six strategy where you sacrifice yourself to hide the fact that there's a three-man stack behind you. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe that that was the intention, but uh, it looks like it's all in vain, Anders. It's going to be a five versus two now. It's Boomage and his aggressive efforts towards the top of B that give away that opening frag, and Na'Vi will at least be posting four rounds here in the third and final map of this series. Cloud9 versus Na'Vi. Hell of a fixture. Bear in mind, the action continues as well. We've got uh, plenty more to come after this. We've got Vitality and Heroic, both in new lineups as well, Anders. Mezzi joining the ranks. That, that game is going to be really, really interesting. I really look forward to that. And also Astralis Complexity uh, towards the end of the day. Both those games are covered by Scrawny and Launders in the commentary. So, but I really look forward to it. I'm going to, be, I'm going to be following along with those games. And for now, we take a halftime break. And we'll be back with the conclusion of Inferno.
Kijk naar de Long, copy. Bebe. Dat is shot. Hij smokt Piet. Hij is only one shot. Hij is Kool Long clear. Okay. Holding gaps. I, I have everything. Can be short. Under, long now. Under cave. Picking long now. Don't long out. Nice! 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 Thank you, thank you. Nice boys. Well, there we go. It's a bit of uh, form from Bit there with the Desert Eagle. Some insight to the comms as well. It was a rough first half there for Navi. It has to be said. 8 4 down, but uh, like we said, on Ancient Anders. This scoreline is recoverable. All they need is a pistol victory. They're right back into it. We saw it converted in the second map. Can they do it again? Time will tell. That's the banana flashbang being set up here. So presumably some control coming towards that side of the map. Bits having none of it though. Full send down the banana and it's a couple. Make it triple kill for Cloud9 as Alexi B has got a lot on his way right now and he'll be spammed down as well. What a start. Axar with three kills. We've been... Asking for him to get involved a little bit more. True. He did do pretty good in the first half pistol, and I guess he's back at it now again. He's up to 11 kills behind that triple, so not too shabby at the moment. It's not, he's not completely invisible. It's just that, you know, comparing himself to his his, his own sort of all-time high. Sure. We definitely still want more, but I like it. It's a beginning. JL has decided there's nothing much to fight for on this one. One versus five, so just uh, try and get some more kills, perhaps. Yeah, that's about one. all you can ask for. Uh, Axel, though, will get the quad kill. Okay. Nice round. CT's trying to get aggressive there. Got a lot more than they bargained for. Trying to flash back, offer up a couple of headshots, but it was Axel mowing them down there. Uh, Selexi B maybe could have got something done behind the, the barrels, but unfortunately spammed down as well at this moment. That's when Axel picked up his triple and then took down GL to close things out as well. Uh, that was the round that they, they kind of needed, not going to lie to you, oh, as uh, they're unlikely to force by in the second, so that's going to be 10 to 4 already uh, for Cloud9 here, unless something devastating happens here in round number 14. I was hoping for an electronic evil laugh, but... Yeah. You know, I've kind of... I kind of missed that now. <laughs> <laughs> We've got here the we old go. um, Fnatic stack. Four it players is classic. Back. Yeah, it, it, it can be annoying to deal with. If you just go for a straight of contact plane towards B, like, you get a couple of kills from this. But unfortunately, Cloud9 with a different approach. They've actually gone for the contact play up short. Meaning the A-bomb site has to be defended by Bits <laughs> with a USB towards library. He's now got no HP to speak of. As the bomb site's wide open, they'll send the MAC-10 in first. And uh, yeah, that's round over. Yes, it is. I can't argue. No, it's not enough. I'll concede this one, Henry. You win. Even the AI agrees. Even the AI. It still says 99%, I suppose. So, Bayesian agent, Henry. Yeah. So it's not, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not completely convinced ever. Um, so that 1%. Oh. Thanks. So, a little bit of a wild spray looking for the ace. The Galil ace. It's a rare sight, but he got it. Yeah, the Galil's super popular right now. Seems to be doing a lot more work in CS2 it. than it did in, in Go, to be honest with you. Uh, that's why those second round force buys seem so potent on the T side. But uh, no force buy for Na'Vi here. That was the full eco, bringing out rifles in the third. Lose this round, I'm afraid it's GG that they won't be coming back from this one. So must win. Certainly possible they can pick this one up, but concessions have to be made. Uh, JL's down to the MP9 and FAMAS for XCB, just so they have a fighting chance, a bit of utility to speak of. As Cloud9, a bit of a bonus round for them as well. Galil's Mac 10s. In terms of helmets, you can see Navi have at least got a few of those. Only Wonderful and Lexi B go about. I don't know how you break this one back. Navi need this first round to go really, really well, but they're going to run out of grenades probably a lot sooner than they want here. Yeah, this is the problem. As we've got smokes down towards the arch and the library right now, it's going to be the apps pop. From Navi, uh, from Cloud9, I should say. You can see they're setting themselves up. Rotations are happening towards B. They haven't read the round at all. And here comes the flashbang and the final commitment in towards A. Oh, this is so scary. <laughs> Bit getting overwhelmed. That's one of the two defenders at the site. Immer in the middle. Maybe he can find Boomich, but that almost doesn't even really matter here. He spotted him out. They knew that he was back there because he was firing shots and jumping towards the half wall over Banana, like he's always been doing. 
Emma goes down, bomb is planted, and the round is done. Yeah, you can't really ask for much more than that, Anders. You, you've suggested a B attack coming through. You, you said one player over there. They've took the bait hook, line, and sinker. With the MAC-10. With the MAC-10 as well. And uh, they just had to take a gamble. They lost the opening frag. They were hoping it'd be a B-side finish, but anything but. Uh, it's really unfortunate timing as well. It was bits given the responsibility of holding the pit, and unfortunately for him, uh, he gets nothing caught on the timing, and they're going to go on the hunt as well, and why not? They've got Mac 10s here. There's going to be a couple of frags found. They want to take every single Na'Vi player down with them, as Alexi B cowering away in towards the temple, saying his prayers, but Perfecto closes things out, and Electronics absolutely bloody loving it. Yeah, I haven't seen him this fired up in a yep. really long time. But again, that the original, the, the, the sort of the Cloud9 project with this, with the core of the lineup, it just never worked the way that you wanted. So it must have been really frustrating. The fact that they're doing something now and it's, you know, it's early days, the energy's back in the in the room. It yeah, and there's some, some really nice calls here. That's got part of the ground. Like, yeah. And you've taken all five players down with you as well. Like, really uh, calculated calls. And at this stage, I think it has to be the half by Looking down the barrel of series points as well. Desert Eagles pretty much across the board. It's possible they win this round, Navi, that is. But uh, need a bit of a miracle now. It all starts here. The Desert Eagle doesn't quite connect. And it's going to be bit to be dropped first. Maybe worth giving a big shout out to Perfecto. He's 16 and 8. And he had a really dreadful start to the series himself. Sure. So it's good to see him recovering just a tiny bit. Electronic obviously running over the show overall. Surely going to be the MVP for this match, the way that he's been playing. God damn. Very assertive calls. Like, you can see that yeah. that was pitch perfect once again. They got the advantage. They knew there'd be a window of opportunity to slip the net, make their way up towards short. No CT presence suggests it was the, the idyllic uh, solution to the problem they had there. So it is going to be a five on three round confirmed series point in the bag. Cloud nine looking very good here today. Bad news for the creamy bears, Anders. To be honest with you, our prediction game is falling apart right now. We had Navi in this one. Yeah. We chose true. NIP in the first map as well. Well, the first match, I should say. I like giving, and we've the, got other, heroic I like well. giving the other teams a head start. We've you know? picked Heroic in the next matchup. So. What were we thinking, Henry? I'm not sure. <laughs> it was, uh, I changed it the last minute as well. Yeah. I went into the, the spreadsheet like Literally 10 minutes before minute. the submission and said, yo, I'm changing everything here. I've got a feeling. <laughs> and it's all gone wrong. Yeah, but you know what? It's uh, it's early days. We can make we can make up for it. We're gonna we'll speed run the tournament. We're gonna be knocked out in like the second day. We're gonna lose all our lives. <laughs> like, we're gonna lose like four lives today. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, Boomage wants to make sure they close this one out in style. Doesn't want it to get close. Doesn't want it to be uncomfortable. They've had the dream run here on Inferno. Second half haven't given up a single round yet. They're up four and zero. One more will do it. It's going to take something unbelievable now from Na'Vi. Eight rounds in a row required. They're on the CT side of Inferno. There was a half by in the previous. The debut of Wonderful. It's been a great showing for him individually. Like, he top frag both maps. 25 on Anubis to kick things off. 20 plus on Ancient, the map they managed to bring right back. What the fuck the going on, boys? It's time for Let's a camera. Let's trying, guys. What was that? <laughs> just some banter. Bit of banter. Yeah. Um, wow, Blade is getting a, a lot of talking done here. They are in so much trouble. I, I can't believe it. I mean, there's not really much you can say at this point, apart from, right, lads, round by round. Um, we, we know the setup. We, we don't have much to work with here. This is obviously must win from here on out. Try and keep it together. And uh, let's try and make this as competitive as possible. You're down in the dumps. It's uh, no two ways about it. Yeah, they really have. Uh, they've, they've, they've run a lock on this particular map. 12 to 4. They need such a long row to come back here. Eight rounds in a row to try and get this one into overtime is what they're looking for. They're on the CT side, and they do finally have the AW on Wonderful as well. So it's not impossible, but my God, it's a long ways off. Alexi, careful. That's like a, a classic CSGO kind of spray, but now in, in, in CS2, sitting down and just spraying through the smoke would be very, very dangerous if the, C, if the T's blow it up. Sure. You're, just, you're already spraying, you're just in the middle of nowhere. Might not be worth it anymore. Jail is lucky to be alive, but they did get a kill on Exile, so... Opening frag has been found. Has to be a perfect game from here on out. Finding these... closing round victories, though, can be very difficult. 
kind of shifts your play style somewhat. You just want to be running defaults and keeping things quite cagey while the other team are presenting a lot of aggression and throwing caution to the wind. So that opening maneuver has yielded at least the opening kill for Na'Vi. A minute left. So a lot of work to do here. They've got three players remaining at the A site, one of which is wonderful with the AWP close towards the quad side. And once again, the app's pop is coming through. Bits, he's in a defensive position. It's fine to hold them at bay, but I don't think we'll be finding many kills here. There's the first. Okay, it's something to work with. Jiggling around, trying to dance here. Running out of bullets as well. Hard to find a reload in the middle of all of the chaos here. Molotov burning wonderful. He's not necessarily loving life at that moment, but overall, it's looking fine. He's going to get the kill in the end. That's a hard position to play. I mean, if he overextends just a little bit, he could get shut down, but um, good job in general. Just a, a nice shutdown, good defense. Absolutely true. Well, there we have it. Na'Vi finally posting their first round. Uh, arguably too little too late at this stage, but uh, that's all they can do. Take it round by round. They got the opening frag, solid crossfire, pushing back Cloud9 here. And uh, we'll now need seven rounds in a row as we get into it. It's going to be another buy available for Cloud9. Looking to close things down, of course. Right here, right now, it's Boomage. Dropping the initial utility. Smoke down to remove the vision. Molotov to push them back towards the car. Good grenade. Ouch. Yeah, electronic. Really feeling that. Some spam coming on over, but grenades are thrown in return. And <laughs> they put Boomage down very Off low. Off he goes. Yeah, that's his round. Pretty much done. Eight points of health. That's wonderful. Confirmed. They've got banana control here. Oh, it's costing them a lot here. Cloud9 don't really have any control and given up most of their utility. They're going to boost behind the smoke, though. Never know. It's an interesting idea. I don't think it's enough to spot wonderful, though. Now what do they have left? Just uh, a single smoke, a couple of flashes. B is not really an option with that sort of setup. They can, what, smoke spawn? Flash over, Molotov towards coffins, I suppose, but wonderful. Presumably finds at least one and will call for the rotation, but it's certainly a gamble, Anders. So if he goes down with nothing here, there is no backup whatsoever. Yeah, I was going to say that's how it has to work out, but he's really swift on this one. Throws down the grenade, ready in case they want to come on through. Well, that's why they're so confident with him holding that position alone, because if he does get that opening frag, incendiary's down, round should be secured. 25 seconds. Flashbang will push him back to a different line. Good smoke being dropped as well, and uh, he's got the backup he needs at this point. Should be enough to win the round. Yeah, they're really rotating in. That's for the smoke. Jail picking up the kill. And we're down to 10 seconds. Nobody knows what's actually happening inside of the smoke any longer. Axel just waiting. <laughs> Eventually, he's going to go down. Okay, well, that's it. Perfecto running away with the bomb on his back. We'll be able to save the AK into the next round. But, yeah, I mean, I... It's a little bit nervous, you know, you see that sole AWP player, but it's not completely uncommon to play it like that. No, it's absolutely not. not. Uh, you just uh, you just have to hope he hits his shot, which he, he definitely does. He's been brought in to fill some big shoes, of course, replacing Simple. And, uh, yeah, you should be able to patrol the B-bomb site with that anchored AWP. Hits the shot. Even if you missed the shot, Anders, you can have the same result. You can actually just drop the same incendiary and drop off. Yeah. It would have been fine regardless. The fact he had the incendiary is why they can afford to enable that setup. Um, but still, the money's time to be drained. There's one more buy potentially for Cloud9 if they give this one up. And then now it's just six rounds in a row. I say just still quite the uphill struggle, but uh, they're chopping this one down to size at the very least. I mean, yeah, but, uh, we've seen these kind of comebacks happen before, and not all of the rounds, like you mentioned, are going to be buy rounds coming out from the, from the Cloud9 side. So you never know. Electronic. Looking to open this up. Last time he got grenaded. This time... It feels a bit safer. See if he's going to get flashed in or if he just wants to take the peek. Going to set up for himself. Smoke on one side, Molotov on the other. So clearing a lot out, but the Molotov doesn't go deep enough. They're still going to get the trade, but Alexi and Imra on the other side. So they get rid of the AWP, but they still are down a man. Oh, this is a very strong setup now. Navi, looking like they might be able to pull this one off. A comprehensive victory here as we enter the four versus two. We need to close the round out, of course, but it looks like they are completely locked out on the Cloud9 side of things. Hoping a CT will offer themselves up. Time is ticking away. They do have a smoke for Moto. They've got to get past Bit first. He's playing a lovely position here. 
guaranteeing himself at least one kill. There's a smoke down. Like I said, this position, I just don't think they flush him out, but the flashbang is very impressive. The fact they even have the presence of mind to be aware of that spot, that's beautiful stuff. And now they actually have a fighting chance here in the three versus two. Can they close things out here? It'd be a bit of a shock if it works out. Yeah, two versus four. Now into a two versus three. There's the first engagement in the afterplot. A lot of damage. Onto JL. They're really soft on that Navi side. Trying to go for the retake here. It's JL with a good shot. All on Perfecto. Oh, 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 and he nearly oh, oh, oh. could have had the multi spray down. That's a lot closer than it seems, but it's Navi still fighting, still clawing their way back into the game. The bomb plan, though, going a long way to help out Cloud9. Uh, definitely, because the money was starting to run low. They were averaging, what, $2,000 per player. Now they've yeah. got some loss bonus. They've got at least one more full buy. That's a good point. Uh, wonderful, only good for one there, but he certainly took enough aggro away for his CTs to join him from the offside position. Uh, a really complicated retake as well. There's a chance for Fecta gets a double kill there, but they keep the dream alive. Unable to close things out just yet. Sigh of frustration there from Boomage. They can almost taste the victory. They're so close. It will be a tactical timeout though for Cloud9. Things starting to get a little bit uncomfortable out there now. Five rounds in a row required from Na'Vi to take us to overtime as they posed a couple in a row now. Looking quite good. They just needed to get, come online with the, the full buy. The AWP in the hands of Wonderful. Their mid setups are looking very good. Yeah. They're fending off the banana area beautifully. And maybe, just maybe, they can bring this one back to life. The eight round recovery. We, it, right when CS2 sort of came out, we didn't see almost any Inferno play. It's starting to get, you know, a little bit more into the mix. But something that I, even when we see Inferno, I don't see a lot of B splits I happening think anymore. There were so many two zeros in the early days of CS2 as well. The events have been so unpredictable with like every time we sure. turn up. Yeah, that's true. That there's like a plethora of new lineups, like and different teams and debuts of rosters. I, I think we're still getting information each and every event. Um, this one is no different. Uh, like we said, this is a debut uh, of two new rosters here. We've got yeah. eight teams at the event, five of which are here with new squads. So uh, we're still finding our footing in CS2. Every map, get a bit more information. And for now, it's Cloud9, as we said, that loss bonus accumulating. Bomb planted in the previous round has given them another full buy. But this will be the last of it. Snarvi, slowly but surely. Grappling their way back into this one. Another buy coming out here. And also, you know, the, the round loss bonus for Cloud9 is starting to sort of pick up a little bit more. So I guess if they can keep finding bomb plants, they can, they can the make thing. this more interesting. I, that's that's a good point. But uh, I think at this stage, this full buy, that they're hoping they can really just close things out right yes. now. This is... They're not thinking about the loss bonus. They just want to find that opening kill that gives them the advantage. This time it's going to be wonderful position towards the art. He's completely smoked off. Oh, it's a bit more pressure towards him up. Patrolling that quad side now. You can't get Molotov in this position. Here comes a flash as well. He dodges it nicely. Electronic, they're waiting for him. Smoke on the other side once again. Wonderful. Kind of put out a position. Ima, he's sticking around and he's going to get the shot. Oh, it's beautiful. Good double headshot. And Bid swings in for it. He nearly had a double of his own. I can't believe he didn't get that kill on Perfecto. 18 seconds on the clock here. And Axile and Perfecto left on the Cloud9 side, trying to see if they can find their way through. It's just Perfecto left. He's got 10 seconds. Is that plant? Yeah, the bomb plant, at the very least, you know, just get a little extra bit of extra cash on the board. But winning the round, very, very difficult at this point in time. Gonna smoke off behind him just to try and keep the focus here. Now they're running him down and they should be able to land a bullet oh. on him indeed. The headshot there, but JL will get him in return. It's another really, really close round. Yes, with the bomb being planted as well, as you mentioned, that loss bonus racking up at this stage. It should yield another buy coming through, tantalizingly close once again. But as you mentioned, Perfected just didn't have the, the firepower really, just 13 points of health painted into a corner. He does find the penultimate kill, but the damage is already done. Probably the best sequence we've seen from Immer. Uh, this entire series, to be honest with you, two and a half kills, uh, enabling Bit to have a nice spray down and leaving Perfecto in a pretty much impossible scenario as JL closes things out there. Uh, could be another tactical timeout, as uh, you can feel this one not necessarily slipping away from Cloud9, but uh, it's a very different situation now. We're four rounds in a row for Na'Vi. Uh, we've been a match point for some time now. There is a buy, but you can see it's uh, bare bones. Galil's and fast pace up towards middle. Boomer just called for a bit of a Hail Mary. I do
do like it. Oh, and Hobbit actually gets the kill. I was going to say, they, they only halfway follow through. It was only Electronic that really wanted to follow through on that one. The spray down for Emmer. It's even better than last time. Three kills. And Alexi will close it out now. The fist bumps are coming out here on the Navi side. Their start of the field, this comeback is really on. Oh, it absolutely is. And Emma, he's turning up the heat towards that quad side position on Inferno as he manages to get another beautiful spray down. This time with the silence, M4 doing absolute work as uh, he lines them all up, mows them all down, and that's round confirmed here, 12 to nine. This time though, Bomb Plan Anders has to be the partial buy. Could this be double digits for Na'Vi? It feels like that. We're really, we're heading in that direction, are we? Smoke is down and Na'Vi Looking to see if they can make a quick work of this one. Alexi, hello. Oh, oh, it's uncomfortable. Jail, the next one up. You got to be real careful. If you go down, this could be the map and the series over. Oh, it's not looking good at all. The CTs need to hold on here, and Jail will be dropped as well. Not like this. The Tech Nine rush of Banana it could be enough to topple Navi as we go into a five versus two. They're incredibly low, and now Bit he launches himself in towards the ruins. I don't think it's enough, and there's as wonderful is left with the AK-47. All on his own, already getting tacked up through the smoke. I can't believe this is what it took. Cloud9, they try to rush A the previous round. This time they go B, and it works. The flashbang around the corner. Alexi couldn't see anything. And JL couldn't make up for it either. Now, wonderful. You already know what's coming. There's nothing to salvage this one. They know that he's out here. And with the bomb planted already, it's a matter of time here. It's perfecto to get the last one. And it's Cloud9 to take the victory over Na'Vi. Oh, what a great series it was. And it comes crashing down for Na'Vi. They were en route for overtime there. It was always going to be an uphill battle with eight rounds in a row required. They make it tantalizingly close, Anders. It's a debut for both Rosses here. And I think both teams can leave the server with their heads held high. It was a great game, a fantastic series. We'll throw it over to the desk to break it down. Holy hell, this got way too close. This got way too sweaty. But you know what, Jacob? Just as in life, sometimes the solution is just a B-Rush. The B-Rush, huh? Out of all the strats that Cloud9 tried to throw at Na'Vi, <laughs> Na'Vi doing a great comeback. Emma coming alive in the last stage of this game. You know, Na'Vi really seemed like a force to be reckoned with, but the B-Rush, as you said, too much to handle. Hobbit coming in, Electronic coming in with the Mac 10 and that was apparently enough for Cloud9 to win. But the foundation of the victory was laid in the first half. I know, but tell me, look me in the eye and tell me you did not see the scenario that happened on Ancient happen again here on Inferno. We're talking about a Cloud9 in a commanding position and then some Suddenly, things get a little bit less smooth. It feels mm -hmm. like Navi are waking up. Players are having multi-kills left, right and center. Felt like Cloud9 were running a little bit out of steam. And if that wasn't for this great call, the MAC-10 catch and Alexi B off guard flashed as well. I think we could have looked at an overtime here. Yeah, maybe, maybe. We don't know. We're never going to find out, Matthew. But, but you're right, Navi again, showing a bit of resilience, showing a bit of mental fortitude, able to fight back. Good to see him having a, a couple of good moments. Wonderful as well over the entire series. Did well for himself. So not too bad by Navi, despite taking the L right here. Well, we definitely sweated watching this game. Now it's time to hear how the players felt. We have Hobbit standing by with James Banks. Things were certainly looking good here for the Cloud9 side. And your debut here on LAM with this roster coming together, very nice. But I want to touch, right, when we come into to map two, it didn't go your way despite it being your pick. What do you feel went wrong when it came to that? Because it, it looked so great when it was on Anubis to start off with. Yeah, I mean, the ancient... On the map, everything was good. And the calls, T side was awesome. But CT side, just something happened. We just lost like three, uh, 5v3. Yeah. 4v2, I guess, all the clash situations, and uh, it's hard to say that the Makar game was bad, but uh, I think we just um, didn't play like for 100%, okay. and that's it. But you definitely did coming into this map, though towards the end, you did in the first half all the work you needed to do. It looked like this was going to be a very clear win. Were you starting to feel like, okay, maybe this is slipping away? Did you need to refocus a bit? Uh, I think on Team Stick, every everyone w were was calm and everyone was confident that we're gonna win and the score was pretty good for us and you know it's uh, still CS2 is um, no city sided and uh, we knew that we're gonna win and that's why we didn't show some stuff okay. yeah so of course if you're leading uh, with such a big score like with it, uh, you, you, you need to try to save something. <laughs> you can hold back just a little bit. I respect that. That's fair enough. Now, for you, Hobbit, right? Yeah. As this Cloud9 has been changing, yeah. you went from having to IGL, now you're not anymore. Yeah. How do you feel? You you more comfortable now? You're back to normal? Yeah, I mean, 
of course, uh, uh, I'm a team player and what team wants, of course, I'm gonna accept it and I'm gonna support it. And yeah, Thunder Peak was la last my tournament at SIGL and now Boom and I'm, I'm enjoying to play with him, to be honest. Uh, I never played with him before, yeah. uh, even in faces matches or something. And he seems like a very cool guy. <laughs> well, it's definitely working out so far. Thank you very much, Robert. Okay, we're keeping a little bit more in the pocket, in the mm. bag. Hobbit says here they had enough of a lead. We have the scoreboard right there, 13 to 9. It is true, Cloud9 were in control at the end of that game. They remained calm, they remained serene, and they close it nice and easy now. Jacob, we have this bracket right over here. And I'm going to put you on the spot. NIP versus Navi, Alex CB versus NIP. This could get a little spicier than expected. Yeah, that's a fun game, you know, a bit of a grudge match potentially for Alex CB. I also do think Navi are coming into that game as the favorites. I think they showed us more today than what we saw from NIP and then of course Cloud9 taking on face that's gonna be hey, the first yeah. real big test for Cloud9 on land in this setting so that's gonna be a great one as well yeah this is gonna be hard to stop this creep from uh, face clan yeah. honestly even though Cloud9 did show some signs of greatness here but the counter-strike is far from being over uh, finishing up the day closing up the day is going to be Astralis versus complexity but what is waiting for you guys at home and what I'm gonna be watching from my hotel room is going to be heroic versus vitality that is a banger of a game and for that we'll give you Freya and Maui Snake, that's coming up right after the break. I don't think I had any idols, but I had a lot of things that I wanted to be as a kid. I wanted to be a baker, like pastries, also an actor, because I was really good at acting as a, as a kid. I knew how to cry on command, like uh, I used that a lot. When I was studying, I maybe wanted to be an astronomer one day. I really love space and that stuff, so. No, I didn't have any ideas at all. Like, my friends were like, oh, I want to be a like, firework girl or something like that. So a policeman, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was watching a lot of uh, tennis and my idol was Novak Djokovic, but now I'm an even bigger fan what he's achieving so far. And uh, I think not just inspiring me, but I think everyone around the world who is competing in something. When I was in kindergarten, I wanted to be a basketball player. Yeah, I played basketball for like eight months, and then I gave up. When I was a kid, uh, what I wanted to be kind of when I grew up, I always loved working with uh, with animals. I always wanted to look into maybe becoming like a veterinarian or something like that, but that's a lot of work. You know, I got to go to university and put a lot of time into that. I've shifted. Now I'm playing video games. <laughs> My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch differs a lot, honestly, but uh, if I had to pick one, I would pick Sai Wu at the moment. He's so capable of doing everything, pistol, AK, M4. He's like an all-round really strong player and also a clutch shot. Back in the days, uh, yeah, I was I was looking for device because he was close to my play style. Div actually, it's pretty biased. He can not touch the game for three weeks and still be good. I'd have to say like someone like Robs. We have the same initials, we look similar, and we have the same roles, and we play the same res. It's someone definitely I look up to as Robs. My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch would be Flusher. He's always Extremely annoying. I don't really know like who is my favorite Counter-Strike player to watch right now, but like before it was Fallen. When I started becoming an Auber, he was like the Auber to look at. He's like had longevity in his career. He's been doing a lot for Brazil, and I just think he is a really good role model. My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch, especially when I was growing up, uh, I originally was playing Counter-Strike Source. Shocked was a player that his play style really inspired me, uh, and I really wanted to be that player that could play everything, every role. He's always been having like a mixed playstyle. He could always uh, play with the AWP and the rifle. I would answer simple because he's like an uh, unexpected guy. You like cannot predict him. It's like you never lose hope in him in like a 1v3, 1v4 situation. You're like, oh, he can win. Feeling great. I think uh, obviously you'd always want more time. I think every player wants more time, but uh, now I'm feeling confident. Practice has been going well. Feeling, I think the the teams made me feel like really comfortable coming into the team as well. So yeah, everything's good. 
we've had quite limited practice. I think we played together for like maybe one week, eight, nine days. So I mean, it's been very limited, but we've had a good time and we've just been trying to focus on going here, having some fun, uh, doing our best, both as a team, but also as individuals and just see how far we can go. I don't think that anyone like expects anything from us, but as a Dane, you know, it's always great to come here and, and get a chance to play in the arena. So we also have something to fight for. So we're going to do our best, of course. Well, once the big bad boys of Denmark, talking about them lifting the trophy this time last year in this very arena, now they're coming in with quite the change of face. We're talking about Kadian, one last rodeo with the heroic jersey. Stan, Yabby, they are out of the equation, and Maui Snake, so many questions on the tip of my tongue for this squad. Yeah, if I have to sum up what heroic is right now, to me, they are a hot mess. I actually think that this team has a little bit of upset potential within them. They've got, in many ways, the best in-game leader at this tournament in Cadian. But like Dupree said, they haven't had that much time. And we know that the roster is going to be changing as well. I think a hot mess is a very polite way of putting it, Maui. Thank you for uh, tempering your emotions there. Because, uh, yeah, for Cadian, uh, this is a very emotional moment. Of course, we're talking about him, you know, potentially going on. There's been loads of teams rumored to be scouting him out, potentially picking him up in the future. And for him as well, if we're looking in the context of CS2, we haven't seen him play an official just yet. So so many questions of just how exactly it's going to be working with the new pieces of the puzzle. We got Dupree until the end of the year, Zyphon uh, as well coming to stand in. That's an incredibly salient point, Freya, the fact that we haven't seen Kadian actually play CS2 yet. And with how many people have talked about the fact that the AWP is not as relevant in this game, no one is going to go out on a limb and say that Kadian has been the sickest rifler throughout his career. So he has more or less relied on that weapon. For other players, like you mentioned, like Zyphon, this is to him an audition. It's a chance for him to show on a tier one stage that he can have the potential to do some damage against some of the best teams in the world. Vitality is going to be a stiff task and I think that when it comes to even some of the other players for this heroic roster, you're looking at them and wondering who's going to be able to step up because the system is not there. And that's sort of the thing that's been kind of the MO with heroic in the past. Yeah. It's been a system team and now it's going to really come down to the individuals. I want to do some, you know, method acting right now. Zyphon coming in. Why do you think that heroic, if you were the heroic management, uh, have picked him up, you know, on a temporary basis? What is he going to be bringing to the squad? Well, Zyphon himself has been in many ways sort of one of those rising stars throughout the Danish space. When he was playing back with Copenhagen Flames, many were wondering, is it going to be him or is it going to be Yabby that's going to rise from this team and do more than what Copenhagen Flames have accomplished? And Zyphon hasn't really had that opportunity just yet. He's been playing with Sprout for some time. He's shown incredible mechanical prowess, but with a couple of role changes and with playing with Sprout in some of the star positions, I think this is finally his chance where he's able to break through that glass ceiling and show to the world World, why he was so frequently talked about amongst himself and Yabby. There's so many layers to this game. I feel like I'm eating a good old British trifle because we move over to talk about Dupree and obviously standing in until the end of the year for Heroic, going up against his former team in Vitality. What emotions do you think he's going to be feeling right now, Maui? <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a bit of a grudge match, isn't it, Freya? I mean, Dupree, right, playing against the team that benched him in Vitality. He has been phenomenal online. In the matches that he's played with Heroic, he's at a 1.25 rating against online competition and those are teams you can't really prepare for that easily so look at this a marked improvement in Dupree's individual performance and I like what I've been seeing when I went back when I looked through Dupree's demos I saw a player that was taking care of his own life playing to still try to win and take down the objectives but he's not hindered as much by a system that's making him play so selflessly and finally it feels like we're, got, we're getting to see Dupree play a little bit selfishly and it's actually netting them victory it's winning Counter-Strike when Dupree's playing like this well let's hear from the man himself who got a Dupree with a few words about playing up against his former team in Vitality. It's kind of poetic though, right, that we get your first game and it's going to be against Vitality. Does that hold any meaning to you? Does it really matter to you as much? I mean, of course, it's it's always uh, different and going to be exciting to play your old team, but at the same time, the team is a little bit different from what I left. Yeah. Um, I mean, my, my good friends from Magic's Constantic is not along the, the team anymore, and I think it would have meant more to me and it would have been like more uh, like maybe like trying to seek revenge or whatever it could be if they were still there. I mean, they also made like a roster change. They changed the whole coaching part as well. So for me, it's also kind of facing a different team. And, you know, I still love the guys on Vitality. It's not, there's, there's no grudge between us or anything. So for me, it's just going there, seeing it as any other game and just play out the game. And then, yeah, see how things unfold.
Yeah, I'm looking forward to this from so many different angles, not least the emotional one. But then we flip to talk about the side of vitality. And of course, they're coming in with a few changes as well. We see X-Taz returning to that coaching role. Uh, but interestingly, we get to see the British boy himself, Mezzi, taking on vitality. And I am so excited to see how he's integrating. How do you feel he's going to be doing? Ooh, Freya, I know that you and many of the Brits are going to be ecstatic about the fact that the best British player is now on one of the best teams in the world, Hell but he yeah. has some enormous shoes to fill. Majisk yes. was a star anchor. You would consider him in rarefied air with people like Rops for some of the best anchors in the world. And so Mezzi, he is an excellent player. He is an above average tier one pro but he wasn't Majisk. He wasn't playing it as frequently against tier one opposition. And so even though the numbers on your screen are gonna show that Mezzi has better stats, it's oftentimes against sometimes weaker opponents in the space. Yeah, I think that is a very good point. And, uh, you know, having to fill the shoes of Majisk, uh, no easy task for basically anybody uh, in the space. But what are you expecting in terms of uh, the specific positions? If we're looking at the maps uh, that we're gonna be diving into, Nuke obviously coming up first, where do you feel like, uh, are there gonna be any changes in where Mezzi's playing? I think that this has to be a one for one. If Vitality, actually are going to use Mezzi here. Mezzi didn't play ramp before, but I think that's exactly what they need him to do because Flames was so settled on that A site. I am very excited to see how this one is going to be going down. I know two more gentlemen who cannot wait to see the big British legend enter the server. Isn't that right, Lord? Doesn't score any. <laughs> Yeah, Freya, I'm We're so, happy for you. so stoked, so incredibly stoked to see Mezzi. Happy for the Brits. Uh, big shoes to fill. I do agree with Maui Snake. Obviously, Magisk was really coming into his form as of late, and everything was great. But you know what? Mezzi didn't have back on Fnatic teammates as good as he has now. So maybe Mezzi slots right into this Vitality project and hits the ground running. Feels like that is the hope. You know, we're talking about a team that was winning majors. Well winning major, singular, and would love to get back to said winning ways. Can they do it with Mezzi? They've got a very wounded heroic in front of them to start their endeavor in Copenhagen. Yeah, they do. It's, it could be a prosperous time for Mezzi. It could be an opportunity here for X-Taz to kind of prove himself because he's had a, a pretty rough journey in terms of just, you know, his luck with teams, whether it's been getting replaced on a team that, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't say anything about it. It was on it coming in, or it was this TSM situation, which got really ugly. But a chance now uh, where Zonic is not going to come back, where he's got a roster that just came off their major win. He's got Zywoo to work with still. And I think Mezzi is a great place to start. Jack of all, all trades before he started playing in the tier one. And I think Fnatic was a really great place to start. But I think just like Flamesy, it was time to level up. It was. You know who I'm hoping levels up a little bit, Mohan? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, well, the man on screen. Zyborg. Zywoo. Uh, we've seen, you know, I am Sydney from Vitality. I thought of all the players who, who obviously we've seen kind of struggle maybe through the start of CS2. And, and then there was a conversation around opping with CS2. And now the way that flick shots work differently with your bullet firing off when you click and not where the crosshair lands. I thought Zywoo was one of the guys that looked like he was kind of uncomfortable. And just because of the small sample size of CS2 that we've had from Vitality, I'm really, really, really crossing my fingers that we're going to get an outlandish Zywoo performance to just remind us that this guy is inhuman because back at Sydney, he looked like a, you know, he looked like a mortal amongst the rest well, of us. Well, he was the best player in the CSGO year of 2023. And now that we come into CS2, his stats were fine, but you're right that beyond the stats, he maybe wasn't exactly who he was in the months prior. So with the couple of remaining events left in the year, this one will be very important for him as an individual. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, of all the names that we have on screen and someone I didn't expect to see, but pleasant surprise because this is an awkward moment at the moment for Heroic, we get Zyphon, yeah. the Copenhagen Flamer that we didn't really get an extra run from. You know, everybody benefited from the Copenhagen Flames run back in Antwerp, kind of barring Zyphon. He was the piece that got left behind in comparison to the rest of that lineup. Yeah. Well, here's your chance. Play for that Danish arena, play for the Danish crowd. Play for a little glory. They'll do the rest for you once you get in. Mm -hmm. You just gotta get there. So that's why these first two days matter so much. Let's kick it off on Nuke. Heroic to the T side. Saiwu smoked out. A little bit of pressure going over towards the ramp, but it's Spinks to pick up the first one and drop off. Loses his teammate, but gets two kills. You know, Magisk and Spinks alongside Zywoo. That was the winning formula for Vitality. And obviously without him, more of that pressure falls on Sphinx. Clean two kills to kick it off. Man advantage, Vitality. Kadian slips out through the squeaky door and then just sulks back in. They group up and try to hit Hut instead. 
Flames traded out. Dupree's got himself a double. And Dupree, in this position within Heroic, the stand-in, you know, getting cut from Vitality after the major, he's looked solid. We get a Spinks versus Cadian clutch to kick off the map. <gasps> oh, almost. While changing guns. And uh, Cadian knew he dropped downstairs, so that was Spinks' chance to get a really easy kill. But still, being by the vent means it's tricky for Spinks. He might be assuming that Cadian goes heaven in this spot. And uh, meanwhile, Cadian has decided not to overthink it. He's dropped lower already out of the ramp, and Spinks will chill. Good situation for Cadian. Yeah, at least Spinks does have the vent control, so it's an easy drop down. He has question to do is, it silent. Does he jump up and play clock, or does he go back to dark? Or does he go all the way to ramp? This could be a huge call out from Katie, and this will be very hard to read for Spinks. Didn't catch him. Doors swing a little late. Katie and tucked in. Will he peek before the tap? Doesn't need to. And he might know it's a no kit situation. He's calling it out. Yeah, first one's a fake. Kadian doesn't bite. Cool as ice comes back at it. Spink's going to have to desperately stick this all the way from 10. Kadian knows still four seconds to spare. Wait, oh he'll my get God. tapped okay, out. Yeah, yeah but nice shot. Woo. We'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Kadian plays it so patiently. Nobody wants to take a duel versus Spinks. Three kills in the round, but not the clutch. Yeah, they won't grab that. That was a, actually a perfect setup from Vitality because they doubled up on ramp and upper, and we had Heroic decide to go for an, outer, an upper fake into a ramp hit. So Vitality had people in all the right spots, and they got the kills they needed, that even though two were spotted in the ramp, they weren't going to get punished for it later. But as we can see, there was a kid involved. Spinks only needed one bullet to be able to pull out that 1v1 in the end. A nice attempt, but great pistol here for Heroic. Right into the tech pause. And uh, Nuke is a, such a good map for both of these teams to go head to head on, of course. Key maps for them this year. Very weird to think about what Heroic are going to be able to do because obviously Dupree knows Vitality's Nuke. Plus, he is very good on it. Plus, he's now playing with Heroic, who had their own version of Nuke. They probably actually spent time learning from each other and now are exchanging notes. So that could create some fireworks for sure. I actually hadn't thought about that angle. This, this is Dupree versus Vitality. I always think about the one guy who got to leave with the playbook, right? as opposed to the team that gets to play against him. You get the game plan against one guy. He gets to take your game plan and use it against all the rest of you. Yeah, and you know I'm selling it to the highest bidder. Exactly. Heroic opening match versus Vitality for the Fall Finals. We are talking about the reigning champions of the Blast Fall Finals. Or at least three of the five. Single M4A1S for Sphinx. Interesting buy coming out from Vitality. They kick it off with three kills, and the M4 hasn't even been unraveled. Kadian thinks he can slip out through Squeaky again. Will catch him on the reload. Spinks kind of offering that one up. Cadian's trying to recover, and he's doing so nicely. Flamesy low health, but gets away from the nade. Cadian peeks out, and Zaiwu, hidden in the vending machine's shadows, has total possession of the bomb. Ah, Cadian nearly saved that entire situation by himself, even with Flamesy being as close as he can now. Zaiwu is thinking about Tess as Tess's pre-aim a little bit too Ooh. wide. Oh my god! Dink. He survives. Nine health. And instantly into walking again, not knowing exactly where Famesy could be playing from. And with 5 HP, you know that they're both terrified. Damn. Okay. So one bullet, folks, will decide this one. Things are confirmed here. Mm-hmm. And I think I like Flamesy's position, how he's playing it. And I think he just got audio. Oh, but it gives the timing back. Maybe. SS could slip through. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't get audio. Flamesy's still flirting with it. Smoke grenade goes ahead. Tessess. Oh, he's making sound. But Flamesy has the element of surprise. Tessess gets back in through vent oh down to B, God. putting as much distance as possible between him and Flamesy. And with that Molotov, the chase cannot come through. He's got to wait it out. Now, again, comes down to a bullet, but still no kit, just like in the pistol. And Tessas plays it one step safer. Still doesn't know that Flamesy was there inside a lobby. Yeah, but he had that, he had that hunch, right? All the utility usage. Ooh, 
But still, Tessas has escaped. Now, the door's never open, so he couldn't have gone back through the control side. He's either back site or all the way ramp or here in dark. And Flamesy knows there's those three options. He clears back site first. Now he's honing in on dark. Oh! oh. It gets weird with the shadows, but Flamesy picks up the kill with enough time to boot and Vitality bounce back after it, pistol. It's a bit of an awkward play here for Tessas because the bomb is planted back site, and as you just pointed out, he had the door open. Control side wasn't heard open. There's nowhere else for him to hide, and he could have made it back. He wouldn't have played in the ramp with the bomb planted there, right? Compared to Cadian's play, sure. where he planted the front of the site and walked all the way out, he could have been anywhere. So didn't leave options out for himself and didn't have enough HP to just tuck unless he was going to hit that shot right away. Oof. So the only sort of position that he could have caught Flamesy out from was playing up on clock if he had yep. jumped up and Flames cleared it. So... Wow, crazy close rounds to kick things off, but now it broke Katie or broke heroic, excuse me, in total to come into round three. Flames keeps the AK. No purchase back here from heroic, barring a couple of desert eagles. That nade touching four of the heroic members. You know, my expectation coming into this match is that it wasn't going to be too competitive. Unfortunately, I just think that, you know, too many moving pieces with this heroic situation. I'm not sure what you assess them as coming into the event, but you know, just I don't like really see teams outside of phase and complexity making finals. That's sort of just that's mm. all I've got to work with in terms of data. And sure. yeah, like you're saying, with all the roster changes, it's hard to predict almost anything else. But you know, there is going to be a story that we don't anticipate yeah. to happen. Like that's without a doubt, there is going to be some miracle run that happens or some magic way in which the chemistry just lines up perfectly That's on the debut. Yeah. yeah. You know, dead rosters are dangerous ones. We've yeah. learned that time and time again. Oh, it doesn't quite get there. So it's the one Deagle kill from Cadian, and if I'm not mistaken, a Spinks ace. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Rack them up while you can. You'd think we'd get less aces in CS2 being MR12, but it feels like there's been more on average per tournament. Yeah, but it's these SMGs, man. They're just so damn strong. That's true, yeah. Making that moolah. Oh, Mezzi's a thief. Never mind. He got the fifth one. Mezzi is someone who's also like Nuke. I think as uh, Maui brought up, he's going to be replacing Majisk in the, in the ramp, which is not the position he normally played. But... Um, Again, I think actually the versatility of Mezzi and the willingness. I think he's got that mm. sort of floppy angle about him where he, he'll try anything that you sure. want him to. Yep. Ex-teammates as well, those two. Mezzi and floppy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough. Everyone's back, including Henry. The Colossus was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. I still want to see those salaries. <laughs> All right. No contact outer cross from Tess Pop on Zywu finds its mark. Also saw the players crossing, but can't stop them. Ooh, but the bomb did get dropped. Cadian dropped it. Oh, that makes things so weird. They've got a smoke grenade on Dupree, but it's not enough to actually fully cross. Now you know there's a player on the rooftop of T-side as well. So Spinks is able to lock in. Zywu still has his angle from outer. Mezzi supporting from hell. They can't use their one smoke to get this nah. bomb back. They need that for lower. So they, they're in a very tough spot where they're barely just thinking about, can we even survive this round? Man. Let alone win it. Uh. Go and try to grab it, but... Uh. Yeah. Felt like someone was going to have to pay the piper. Did the bomb? Okay, no, it got picked up. Excuse me. The outline of the bomb just fell through the map as it got picked up. So, no smoke now left over. Two players coming downstairs. Could it be more obvious? Can yeah. they still find a way in? Ah, oh, man. Poor Heroic, right? They're out on their yacht. They've, they're catamarans. They've set sail, and then it's just... It comes to a grinding halt dead in the water it's, once that bomb got dropped. They did not have the tools to recover it fast enough. Then they lose their timing as we see Apex tucked in. We're actually seeing people use a lot more utility early on in CS2 because of the nades and because of the smokes, especially when default in CSGO were essentially three smokes outside into cross, into 
uh, mollies as counters to displace his folks. Now you can just use HEs on certain timings to spot the cross, and uh, that actually incentivizes what we saw just now, which is not using smokes at all, to not elicit a reaction, to take open fights outside, but then it leaves you open to ops, which means you might see ops start hell more often, you might see ops do interesting things like even start mini, where they can start seek, uh, squeaky, but then punish people outside. So we don't know what's going to happen, but I, I can only feel like the meta outside on Nuke is going to drastically change in the next year. But it's nice because we're not going to get the default, like try to link most all almost half, over half of your smokes in the first 20 seconds yeah. just because they work and there's no way to counter them. Um, and now people have to come up with new ways to use them. Also, just less smoke spamming in general. I think that's one of the changes that I'm still super happy with. Either A, giving away your tracers and positioning. It's so much easier to fire back through smoke, but... No. Vertigo. Maybe it does have a chance. The smoke spam's also an angle dominance privilege, right? If you're spamming from far away, then you're fine. Like, you don't have to worry about the people who are inside the smoke, but... If you're close up, it's way more risky. Oof, what about inside the flames? Getting torn apart within hut. Kadian's got a team kill in the middle of it all. This one just, again, falls flat, but not equipped really for a chance. They just try to pick up a tempo in upper. Everybody's ready to hold this one back. So Vitality, so far so good. Mm -hmm. Sort of a tough veto to have to pick Nuke or feel like this is your best chance mm -hmm. when you're going up against Vitality. Feels like Cadian's got his tie on, but not sure everybody's on the same page right now. The rest of them have those wooden bow ties. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend. No. Molly exchange towards ramp. Heroic not following through just yet, toying forward, Flash comes down. Messi's not going to take a risk, and neither will Zywoo. Straight up into heaven, let them have it. Let's Messi lock into lower sight, Flames to support, but... They're trying to juggernaut into these positions early, but they're always losing material along the way. We're not coming out with Heroic 5v4 plus map control. Mm. Only the latter. 4v5 and a few nades. Cadian's full belt now starting to get chucked out. Mezzi has lost his support over towards single door. It's a fast rotation from Flames to double instead. Great to draw attention away from Mezzi, but no way. Siphon's double kill with Tess on a single frag. This starts to bring it back. Where's Apex? They're going to hear the rotation back, but there's no CTs up here to stop him. No, instead, we've got both of Vitality's players over towards Secret. Out of audio range, but Dupree's already posted on main, so beautiful little rotation there from Kadian, calling it back from ramp through lobby. We didn't get to see the Zyphon double, but damn, is that ever instrumental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice from a 4v5 position. Interesting with Zyphon, Tessas, and Dupree, and Kadian, the amount of potential entry potential you have. Mm. Department of Redundancy Department and associates. Looking to punish the escape, but they're going to go save it in secret instead. And there we have it. Heroic second round on the board in this T side. I remember I remember being in a, it was a bus to the after party from some event with all the Copenhagen Flames players. And I was like, Jabby's got the best aim on your team. And everyone in unison said, no, it's Siphon. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Who says sprays are broken? Mm. Clean double kill coming out of the door. Apex frustrated, probably because he died to the bomb. But we'll get there. You know, we'll, 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 we'll get there. It is still very egregious here on Nuke. I don't know what they're packing that bomb with. So... I much prefer seeing these two smokes instead of three by default on the cross, long cross. There's less options, obviously, but you're just less wasteful. Ooh, Zyphon early damage to the util. 
but that goes both ways. Flames is picking up frags. We've still got Sphinx back sight. Flames oh. triple doing everything. Sphinx is here to offer a helping hand, but Squeaky Door is shut. And the young gun shuts them out of the A site. No chance. Try again next round. Yeah, no problem there. That was great. I mean, as long as someone back sight shows presence, like we saw that, extinguishing the molly, it takes some attention away from Tetris, where Flames he's playing from. Sets up nicely the flash off. So on Zyphon, we don't know if that's a, a counter from the CT side or if he's running out with his teammates, but that helped. We got the hype coming in from X-Taz. The clean one from Vitality. The quick upper hit falls. And now we're on a low util buy for Heroic. Low, low guns, low util. Oh, Zy was not having any of that. Op is indeed outside of main. Deep frag and a smoke. Mezzi's going to have his hands full. It's majority pistols. Ooh, but they get through. Dupree and Shush. All you need's that one. AK-47, double headshot off the play. It's the Israeli duo versus the three heroic players as they just bombard into the B site, and Sphinx is met by a molly, so he has to hold off. But they're going to double up on double doors. Dupree's still limited. Three health at a Desert Eagle. No more util here for Heroic either. But the counter-terrorist looking to block off oh, one side. That... Oh, oh, Flames a second through the door. That one bullet needed to drop Dupree's enough. And it comes down to Tess He lost his last clutch versus one. This time, it's against two. Sees a sliver of Sphinx. And Flames is back on the ball. Oh, oh it could have been. It could have been the lineup. But instead, it's the retake. That was the such... two V3. That was such a classy flash out of Flamesy. You see it lands on the opposite side of the door. So he can swing all the way through without having to turn or worrying about it. What? Whatsoever, and that's because the T's try to set up one of those good post plants where they have the control door open and they're playing on both sides of it just to try to maximize the fact that they've got one guy on a pistol, one guy on a rifle. Look at that. No chance for Shush to fight back. I think he closed the door with the flash. Yes, he did. Insane. Insane stuff. Yep. Yeah. Zaiwu stamp of approval. Very sick indeed. Sphinx, 12 frags. Flamesy, 11 frags. That's the kind of creativity that they wanted Flamesy for, 100%. <laughs> oh, and the door wall bank, just, you know, the cherry on top. Mm -hmm. Through the box, 26 damage. And a warning. They're going to try to pick up that pace. Only Shush gets ahead of it. There was a chance. Single bullet rings out, but... Off the mark, Apex smoked. <laughs> wait, wait, there's somebody in decon yes, at the there moment. Yes, there is. Yes. Oh, Apex, you let him by already. He should have known. Definitely saw him. Gets a little weird. Mezzi sliding down to double doors, catching oh, Tess Texas. as he tries to push around to smoke. Two gaps in awareness. Didn't know that the doors were open at all, but should have. Late lurk from Zyphon outdoors confirms that Flames is still upstairs. Retakes on. As he's got positioning, Bomb nears the halfway point. And as every second passes by, the odds swing to the favor of Heroic, but that damage is big. Shush is barely standing. Still, he's able to take down Zywu. Dupree offers up a frag. Mezzi's going to have to close, and it's oh, Shush oh. from the back of the site. Instrumental. One, punishing Apex yeah. as he kind of haphazardly walks around the site, and then two kills from his anchor in the back of the bomb site to close out the post plant. Yeah, we'll call that a small mistake from Apex, and a, a weird one just because he saw that Shush, you know, got let through. And then also... Took a spray battle with these guys behind the smoke, but, you know, I'm sure he had an inventory of somebody that was going around the other side. So opened himself up to a little bit of trouble, got punished for it, and then Shush closes the round as his nemesis. So at least allows the half to get interesting. Ooh, it's a vent drop. At least that's the intended target, but Tess isn't going to get anywhere. Dupree's stuck behind the vent as well. Whoa! Whoa. Managed he, he to get called down. It. He, he called it, I think. It's the bomb, at least. And oh. Kadian just caught Zywu, so things get a little more interesting. I think Mezzi has to be pretty careful here. If he plays a rotator spot, they're definitely going lower. That, he missed a chance maybe to get into a really cozy spot in the back of the site. Otherwise, you know, he's going to get the molly and smoke on both sides of the ramp, and then he won't be able to fight. Could be a chance if Heroic figure this out, but...
No tells just yet. And the bomb's just lower by itself. No one's dropped down, and the bomb gets dropped. I think Dupree was going to head back into the vent. Nobody was there to help him. No, I really felt like Heroic wanted ramp first, but then that's just left Dupree on an island on his own for as long as it did. Yeah, it's quite a perilous journey to be over there when ramp hadn't even been established. Situations like that happen. But now it's full control for Vitality yeah. as he back turned to all those dangerous spots. Remember, you know, he was the one with the bomb as well, so poor Heroic. It's a recovery mission that's not going to happen. Mezzi at Apex pinch on the two ramp players. Ramp is all for naught, and Kadian saves the op. So it is Vitality right back to winning ways. Three times on this map, we've had Heroic win a round to just be instantly answered by Vitality. Mm -hmm. Total control of the CT half. Mm -hmm. No, no, we see the, the entry and aim power out of Heroic to sort of blister their way into a quick round win, but... Overall, it's looking much more healthy and sustainable from Vitality on these big rounds. Win. We're getting close to rounding up the half, and you want to hold your breath for half number two. But it's been a good start for Spinks at 14 kills already. Everybody getting caught walking around. I spun 250 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Kadian and Dupree both on the Launder show season one yeah. and they both put up times on the leaderboard and both just wanted to know what the other one got oh that's all they cared about different episodes Ooh. the only thing they cared about was beating each other man the inter Denmark rivalries are real yeah it's the incestuous revolving door of Denmark and it just keeps getting more and more dramatic you know and exciting yeah yeah gotta love Counter-Strike for the roster <laughs> roster moves and drama it's so good it doesn't end yeah, most sitcoms usually fall off, but ours just keeps on giving. Nade for outer. Yeah. Finds its mark in Tessess. So has been putting himself in good spot. Oh, Apex goes down. What? Jump up, I think. Yeah, I think he was up on the... Wait. Yeah, yeah, I think he was jumped up. Looks like a smoke frag, but... All right. Knowing Apex, he was probably yelling at them outside. <laughs> Shoot me, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Sphinx's challenge. Ooh, ahead of the flash. Sorry, boys, main's closed. That's Kadian with an off, dropping off of main <laughs> to try and go close combat. That's the one weapon that they were looking to bank on barring pistols. Uh, ambitious, to say the least. Zaiwu makes sure to be the second stepping stone in the attack onto that A play. It's Sphinx with a double, Zaiwu with a double, and Heroic with another round loss. Yeah, they're, they're getting shut down everywhere they want to try to go. And I mean, I guess there, there is a, a massive element to this where it's not, it's not Heroic with everyone who knows all the plans. So they have to probably simplify some stuff. They're trying to keep the same chaos, obviously, but with an interim roster. So... With the simplicity comes Vitality's experience shining through and just very stable on all their setups where these kills just look too easy. Did you know that Zaiwu has been practicing with the follow recoil crosshair? He must have learned that from Steel. Must he's have. been using that. Apparently it's good. If Zaiwu becomes a world-class rifler... If he wasn't already... Then you know why, but uh, no crosshairs needed with the big green. Very impactful kills from Zaiwu this half, like yes. all the openings outside. Just won this round with one hand. Oh, Nade getting thrown. Oh, they're coming out. Oh, Luckily, Sphinx can handle his own. Gonna get burned out from the vent, but just the remnants of round 12. Final round of the half heroic, they want that fourth one, but it's a two versus five, so, you know, a flash in the pan three times and heroic get burnt in response each of those three times. 
their map pick, but like we started this match by saying, you know, feel so pinned against the wall if you're taking vitality to nuke. So, Cadian's gonna try to hope to get something done towards ramp. They're giving him a lot of space to do so. His teammate gets caught out. I've seen a Cadian 1v5. But I don't know about with 25 seconds. Apex at bat. It's going to close the show for the first half. It is a 9-3 scoreline for Vitality. Starting off the fall finals with ease. Let's go. Are you ready? Nice, nice. I have actually dedicated uh, around 5,000 hours in Counter-Strike. Well, whenever you are ready, we can go competitive. Let's go. Let's go. I'm actually really good. I have reached uh, DMG as a as a rank in in the competitive uh, Counter Strike. But also, I uh, work in uh, Mask as a conversion rate optimization manager. My name is Nizi Hoza Nice. 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 Oh, Guys, go together. Go together now. Reading the game is very similar to what we do at at work. So you need to read your opponents and your team performance, and then find the synergies to actually bypass all the obstacles. My passion for gaming is uh, very high. It's not only about fun and having a nice time, but also strengthen the relationship with your friends. I think it started around 2013 or 2014, when uh, one of us actually opened his own uh, gaming net cafe uh, in Jordan. I'm actually from Syria, but I have never been to Syria. Uh, I was born in Iraq and I was only three years old when we moved uh, to Jordan and I spent most of my life in Jordan. I moved to Copenhagen in uh, September 2022. So uh, uh, being fast in terms of decision making is crucial in both gaming and work. Leads and registrations and how can we reach to the best uh, performing uh, experiment. The faster you are taking decisions in the right direction, the more value you can gain. So for example, this game aims when someone wins 13 rounds and then if you're losing five rounds and taking decision to change or flip the coin is better than doing that decision when you have lost 10 rounds. I played a lot with my wife and to be honest she's better than me in Counter-Strike. <laughs> we have two kids. I really love spending time with them. Sometimes I do gaming with my son. My daughter is not that much interested in gaming but we do actually we do some other activities. <laughs> yeah, take one. It's, it's all the good things that connects you to gaming is the things that drives you back to it. So for me, having a good relationship with friends and uh, in my case, they are in totally different countries. So we are utilizing gaming as one of the way, uh, ways to connect. It's something I want to keep doing. And Flamesy having a field day in the first 12 rounds of this matchup versus Heroic. We're talking 32 kills between the two of them. 19 for Sphinx at the top of the board, wasting no time on their journey to the potential stage games. And unfortunately for Heroic, a couple rounds here and there, but no momentum, no real chance, never any dominance. Hell, even one of those rounds by way of 4v5. So this has just been Vitality proving that Mezzi is Magisk. <laughs> That they didn't need him anyways. Hell, they don't even need Zywu today. Or at least they haven't yet. A T-side pistol to try and follow through. It's an ambitious outer to hell wrap, which Zyphon, Shush, and Kadian shut down quick with a kill apiece. Sphinx and Mezzi. Make it just Sphinx. Nothing at all. This is heroic with a chance early on. Kick off your CT side with the pistol and conversion. You really couldn't cast that one fast enough. Every time someone dies, Every someone else dies. Yeah. <laughs> it's over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Like a snake, basically. And that was an equally good setup from heroic, as we saw from Vitality in the first, uh, in the first round of the game. So they tried to do something tricky, too. Like in the first round, it was a combination of hut and ramp. And this one, it was a combination of secret and hell at the same time but because they were watching it and they were listening they were ready for both 
and we see two players from Heroic in both choke points ready to stop the rush. We'll see if it matters here. And Heroic can build some momentum off this. Maybe CT side is going to be a little bit easier for them, for sure. I'm curious to find out, you know, because we talk about heroic and like CT side aggression and we touched on, you touched on it super lightly in the first half, yeah. you know, like trying to, to tap into that. Like it's not going to be easier for guys like Zyphon and Dupree who haven't thrived and grown. Think about how long it took Jabby to kind of slot into Cadian system. It took like four or five months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it worked in the end, but it doesn't yeah. come easily, which makes sense because there's no other sparring partners you could have had. Yep. It's like, uh, yeah. You know, CT side may be you're easier. To, you're trying to find practice partners to, you know, fight against Leota Machida back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not everybody's a black belt in karate. Exactly. Or John Jones or something. Who's throwing that many elbows? And so that's heroic. But they have heard about him. SS leaning back, and this one's going to go down nice and smooth. We do get the vent dive from the bomb carrier. Oh! Oh, who put, who that, put there? that there? Who, why? Was that there? You don't need that. One less support beam. Valve. Unlucky. I. We're going to find out it was there. The whole time. No, the whole time. Yeah. You know, he could have just also not jumped. Is that there? Yes, I think it's always been there. <laughs> <laughs> and timing. I know someone is opening CSGO right now to find out for sure. <laughs> I know someone is checking for us. That happened and to will me tweet it at us. the other day. I was playing Overpass. I'm in Connector, and at the bottom of the stairs, there's like a big spool in the corner. Yeah. And I swear that was not there. I swear it was new. I keep I keep gaslighting spool myself. Spool a con? Yeah. But you would get that's how you get on the pipes normally. No, but CSGO. over in the bottom left corner. The bottom not left. the one by the pipes. Oh, okay. All You'll right. see what I mean. Come opening kill Zaiwu. He's nine and nine, but we had opening outdoor kills yeah. with the op. Washed throughout CT. <laughs> so the opping's back already. That's the question you had. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen. Yeah. There was just like some uncharacteristic missed shots mm -hmm. uh, back at Sydney. It was the flicks that looked weird, and you know we find out that there is a you know new mechanic for exactly that. Turns out it is a different game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And turns out he's getting better at it already. Yeah, I've heard a lot of offers say they're just in a better, better place right yeah. now. Much better place. Halzerk's loving it. Halzerk's loving it, yeah. Torzy's loving it. Oh. Shiro's not loving it, I don't think. Maybe he should have stuck around, actually. We would have seen... Uh, Kadian loving it? Not exactly sure. No, not Flamesy round. is. Flamesy is. He's happy to be an upcoming rifler in CS2. That's two down for Heroic. As Vitality looked to touch 10... This is where it gets scary and Sphinx just keeps mowing them down. It's just so controlled. Wow. Two players downstairs. Nice wide swing. Deletes Cadian. Pause. You know, this is this is Vitality not sweating in the middle of it. Knowing Heroic are going to get aggressive somewhere. Reading Heroic as they have faced off versus the core of this team so many times. Sphinx Apex is, just, is in Cadian's head. Apex in Cadian's head. Sphinx is just developing. I think agnostic of the game itself, he's just becoming so good over every single month you know since there was a period early 20 or late 2022 he came on he was good then he dropped off yeah and Zai was alone again and then we had iem rio in the spring of 23 and from there the for the few months around before the major and during the major sphinx was right there Zai was right hand man stats leader owning becoming a better lurker not going too slowly all this stuff and from there has just been <sighs> continuously getting better and better okay has that always been there? The ground? The ground, yeah. yeah it's I didn't even know you could die from that height, actually. <laughs> he slipped off the building. He didn't touch it. Mm. Oh. Yeah. That's why you don't climb slab. True. Might break your nose. Nicely done. Controlled state of affairs here for Sphinx. Ah! <laughs> it's funny how, like, uh... That can bring you together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, it's because your teammates are all thinking, glad it's not me. Yeah, true. You know? We get two players leaning back into the garage. Gun rounds are going to be uh, few and far between here for Heroic if they don't win this one. As is the length of this nuke opening map. This actually... Oh. 
Oh, wow. I was going to say, Heroic aren't really doing anything about these smokes, but they are shooting. Yeah, you take those. Apex will get the trade, but a ton of damage. So nice output here from Shush. That's a big win with a tempo because Apex gets the kill, makes it 4v4, and takes Secret at the same time. Would have been denied completely otherwise with the smokes coming up. I feel like also you've lost control of outside if you're Heroic, that far back lane. So now what do these two Garage players do? Sit here for the rest of the round? Exactly. There was a lot dependent on that setup, the only guys really watching. It's hard to rotate out, especially if someone's top silo or on mini. Like Flames is. Yeah. So if Flames doesn't move, he locks two in. They can smoke out mini and take upstairs, and Flames just has to babysit saw his the angle. Feet. He certainly saw the feet of Tessas as he crossed around the garage. Oh, there's one escaping, but... Okay. He can actually transition into being part of the attack. That's fine. Oh, that's a nice deep smoke, actually. Oh! Apex. Catching him off with the position. He now he becomes left. a possibility if the Heaven player can stop something. Oh. But it is Sphinx oh. not missing. Headshots after hedge. 24 kills. Oh, he's on a steamer. Bro, we're 16 rounds into this map. 24 and 6. Like, it was a comparable Sphinx and Flames performance at one point, and, and Sphinx is just not stopped. No. Wow. That was dirty. That was a great attack overall from Vitality. Identifying all the pieces in place, taking the right site, and even the deep mini smoke that allowed Flamesy to drop in without being even smoke blind for a second, that was nice. You know, you could just uh, throw one that's plump and covers a choke point, he drops in, but just to make sure, to give him extra space, they did that. Covered his back and everything. I don't know about this one, Heroic. It's... Vitality just looks so nice. Yes. Uh, and I mean, you know, there's kind of a question around Vitality with losing Magisk, losing Zonic. We think to ourselves, like, you know, uh, sure, they're going to come in and still play some good Counter-Strike, but can they be finals contenders? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that boils down to the, the level of CS they put up versus their opening two games. And honestly, Dispatch of Heroic, like, this, to me, it's just the nature of these T rounds. They look so collected, mm -hmm. not stressed. Obviously, with Spinks being 24 and 6, I wouldn't be stressed if I was his teammate either. But it's just the tempo of the rounds. There's no rush. All the protocols that they've been establishing over the months of playing together clearly still just intact and doing fine. And it's going to take more than a ragtag gang of Danes to upset this Vitality hype train. Apex insta-kill outer. Kadian's going to move that M4 back. Hope maybe he can put it in position to stop something elsewhere, but it's Vitality with... Good map control already, and more of the same. That patience looks good on them. I don't know how they blow this one right now. We've got everybody waiting outside for some kind of late wrap, or... I don't know. Ready to follow kills, but... As far as Vitality are concerned... They can see if Heroic want to make any more mistakes, and then they've got a 5v4 versus what they know is mostly just USPs. So finally, a little bit of movement. And the organization from Vitality right now should start taking place at the same time, so they'll move up into Squeaky. There's a chance maybe for a flank, but three players may be going up towards Heaven. They're hoping it's still upstairs in this case. They were spotting outside. They see some moving pieces. But it's really about that M4. Dupree's going to shave one off the back of the play. Big scalp as well and Spinks down. Then the two in the pocket. Still Kadian right where he needs to be. Ooh. But Mezzi gets away with 11 health and can comfortably plant because there's no challenge to come through main. Dupree does get his hands on a rifle, the one he earned back in lobby. I got canceled. They can push a little bit. Mauling the doorway just keeps Dupree at bay. Zyphon naded down to 17 health. That gets cleaned up by Zywu, and all is good here for Vitality. Yes, Dupree finds a nice timing on the lobby kill. Yes, Kadian's in the right position to try and hold it back, but it's still just too many weapons from Vitality and in the hands of some pretty sharp riflemen at the moment. Yeah, they hung on to some clues there. At least they maybe knew that unless they were going for some kind of vent drop and there was no noise at ramp. Okay, they haven't crossed upstairs. Ups outside, they're going to try to take upstairs. As he's a dead man. Dupree can go run away and keep the fruits of his labor. Two alive for Vitality. Seven map points. And not a stress in the world. 
I wonder if Kadian yells on this roster. Can you yell at stand-ins? Is that allowed? With, yeah. I mean, not at his teammates. I oh. mean, yells at his opponent. Oh, okay. Yeah. My question stands. I've never seen him yell at his teammates, though, or, like, even... Have you? No, but if it's a stand-in, maybe it's easier. Maybe it's easier. You know? Mm. I only yell at people I understand. That's fair. I only yell at pimp. I actually have a photo of you guys watching a video together and laughing that I'm going to use. What? Because you guys always pretend to hate each other, but I know you're great friends. That'll be on Twitter shortly. I don't think that's real. Come on, heroic. No op on Cadian, but at least there's rifles in everybody's hands and grenades in abundance. Zaiwu, 10 and 10. Spinks is stalled out at 24 kills. He is the tip of the spear towards that ramp room. It's Apex and Zywu to trade outside. Again, we're getting this, you know, unannounced cross or at least the challenge. No smokes up. Secret players coming to look for a piece of the action, but they do pull back. This is making ramp room a little more liable, and Zyphon's going to have to be cautious. Nade goes a little deep, doesn't pop the smoke. Spinks just waiting for his chance to gun him down. So as the smoke fades, that challenge looking likely. But the outer fight also fizzles out. And so we get Heroic moving back more so into the A site. Comfortably on top of the silos and the hut. Cadian towards Secret is helping Tessa, so it is still Zyphon on his own. And we hit 40 seconds. Vitality grouped up in lobby looking and rearing their heads to go. But where and when? Let's see it, Zyphon. Has a flash and an M4. Pops up, dives down. That was a good disengage. He's got to get out of there. And this slows down Vitality in a massive way. They have 25 seconds, so they literally have to take lower. So this is a very awkward situation for them. I mean, unless there was some kind of fake, but yeah, perfect rotations from Heroic. Let's see it. Oh, Zyphon just playing on Astralis, holding off for now. 10 seconds to the clock. Smokes come up at the perfect time. Kadian gets his one. Oh. Now the trades start to trickle in. Five to the clock. Dupree's double should be enough. No chance on this one. They get their pieces in the right position, and Vitality feeling like they had to commit to the original plan never stood a chance. Yeah, Vitality were too slow. So they, I think they were too slow, and that was very good from Zyphon. He knew they were too slow, I think, before the fight happens. 30 plus seconds he knows that if they're coming here i just need to tell my team if if they kill me 4v5 and they get down okay now oh, look at the damage i'm way more frag yeah, than yeah, you yeah. <laughs> that's crazy i'm moving you think uh, i wish that it was safe. only the, the only the the damage not uh, the frags <laughs> it's just comparing numbers that's what apex is all about these <laughs> yeah. days yeah Kills don't count, guys. It's the damage. Ooh, that's a nade frag plus an upper lurk. Oh, Spinks! So Laser clean. beams! Oh, he just <gasps> slices through the defense. Makes it look easy. To win the game. Oh, dude. Shreds him like deli meat. Just like that. Spinks has decided enough's enough. And with that surplus of utility, there's no chance here. I mean, Apex has another smoke if needed. I love that Tessas tries to blow it open, commits to the spray and catches Sphinx, but it is nothing but desperation now. Nine health felt like a matter of time, and it didn't take much time to get here. Vitality open up this series with an attempted knife to close. Bad manners on full display. It's nice to see that Mezzi slots right into this Vitality team. It's nice to see the individual level coming out of Sphinx. Flamesy not far off, and Zaiwu is there if you need him. Maybe not needed in this series. We'll see what Heroic have up their sleeves. It is Vitality's map pick of Inferno up next.
Vitality starting off strong and stable here in Copenhagen. We're talking about Spinks firing on all cylinders, Flamesy following up to the charge. And for Heroic on the other side of the coin, Maui, um, looking pretty unstable, pretty disjointed. I, I don't know exactly what we're expecting with this roster coming into things, but great signs from Vitality to start off this tournament. This was an unfortunate look for Heroic because even when they were playing with a couple of Mao's NXT stand-ins, I actually felt like their coordination was even better. I will say though that Vitality did a great job in terms of disruption, constantly making things a little bit awkward for the side of Heroic. And I think that Vitality were the more clearly well-drilled team here. I know that they talked about it before that they wish they had a little bit more practice, but I think their practice has already paid off and it is especially paid off for Sphinx. This guy was such a beast in this one. Absolutely. Absolutely insane. What was it like round three? He was already on 10 kills or something yeah. absolutely ridiculous. He's uh, looking super hot coming into this. And it's great to see, obviously, coming off of that uh, weak boot camp period, obviously integrating Mezzi into things. Uh, just a quick note on that. He's playing exactly where you expect it, right? On that CT side. Yes, yes. Mezzi has been just slotting in one to one for the positions of Magisk in this game. So, in terms of the question marks there, I, I think that they might switch things up on a couple different maps. But as it stands on Nuke, this was a one for one and it made things look very smooth for Vitality. And I'm loving seeing this confident form coming out of Sphinx, particularly as a, you know, we're gonna put a caveat to it, but the start to CS2 for Vitality, um, it wasn't great back in Sydney. We saw them playing two series, getting pretty blown out there. Obviously they've had that time to be looking at what went wrong and integrating the new name into their lineup and x standing behind them. Yes, yes. When they played the Sydney thing though, on top of the fact that they had some roster changes that were afoot, they didn't have Zonic behind them at that point. They didn't have x behind them. And it does seem like with the extra added support staff that Vitality are used to. I think they usually have nine people that travel with them to these events. I know at Sydney, it was just six. Like they just had, it wasn't even their assistant coach. It was someone else that was behind them. So they're looking like a much more formidable opponent and one that people are going to have to worry about in the latter stages of this tournament. We do have to look on, you know, the more unfortunate side of the coin with this one though. Obviously this was Heroic's pick of Nuke uh, coming into things. And we go back to the final round uh, of the first half. And this kind of exemplifies the disjointed nature, I guess, of Heroic. Yeah, you can just see in this one that every single death on the side of Heroic is just solo plays being made. You see none of the positions that the Heroic players are in are tradable by any means. They're just going for these little non-starter plays. There isn't even really nade set up for any of those kinds of openers for Heroic, and that's very disappointing because they obviously picked into this map. You would have expected that they had a couple strats to work with, and I will say some of the, some of the rounds looked a little bit better than that, but I think that one really essentialized the fact that Heroic were just kind of relying off the back of individual efforts for them to have any chance in some of those rounds. And you look at the round distribution as well, basically unable to string any rounds apart from uh, winning the pistol in that second half back to back. It was Vitality really fully in control. And that's great to see if you're a Vitality fan and wanting to see them getting off to a good start here with that new roster. They definitely were able to pick up on the fact that there was some discomfort from the side of Heroic players. I think there were a couple of role swaps too. Like they gave Xyphon the ramp position, for example, where Tessus used to play that before. So Tessus looked really uncomfortable towards outside. And you could see that it's almost, I mean, Heroic have always just been good because of their teamwork before. It wasn't really the individuals that were popping off the page in terms of just monster performances. It was the whole unit. And you can see that when even one or two of those pieces are missing now, as we're we're seeing Dupree and Xyphon standing in for Stown and Yabby. Well, yeah, it's just not the same beast by any means. And that's why, you know, I was kind of uh, nervous when you were talking about the focus on that individual form coming into this game for Heroic, because we always used to talk about them as, yeah, such a well-oiled, well-drilled, synergized uh, machine. And it's, uh, it's a shame that, you know, we're seeing them in this situation, right? They've got to work with the pieces that they have for now. But uh, of course, this isn't going to be the, uh, the Heroic we're going to be seeing going forward, right? Right, right. You know, this is this is heroic. I even would have liked it more if in some of those online cups before, instead of playing with those Malice NXT players, if they had Kadian, if they had Xyphon, I would have had a little bit more faith for this. And, you know, after Nuke, I just don't know if it's going to get that much better. Yeah, a lot of question marks, but we do have one answer of Inferno coming up after this break. Obviously, the pick of Vitality coming into things. They had a great win streak going back to CSGO. CS2 uh, hasn't been looking too hot for them. So let's see if they can redeem themselves after this.
Nej, 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 well, I'm uh, glad that Cadian could find a uh, silver lining, uh, I guess, in that first map, because that wasn't pretty, that wasn't cute for the side of Iraq, but potentially a chance to redeem themselves coming into Inferno. But uh, if we're looking at CSGO history for this map, uh, for the team of Vitality, an eight-map win streak was how they rounded out CSGO. But, uh, Maui, I'd argue that uh, Inferno is a map that we've seen more changes on than some of the others in the pool. So how do you feel like Vitality are going to be tackling this uh, new-look Inferno now? I think that Vitality should be fine on this one. I have liked the way that this map has in some ways become a little bit more dynamic, the way that people fight for bracket control, for example, when they're smoking one side of mid or the T's are. There's so many fun ways for the CTs to play back, and I expect that Vitality's really gonna try to get in the grill and try to be disruptors as they were on Nuke. So where do you think Mezzi is gonna be ending up? If we're looking at the CT side, where's his position gonna be? So Majisk was the pit player before, and you're kind of maybe think about, okay, is Flames the better person for that position, or is it going to be Mezzi? Because Mezzi on Fnatic was a B player, but I think that Mezzi definitely has what it takes to be a pit player, and just based off of skill set alone, I wouldn't really imagine that Flames is really, he doesn't really strike me as that kind of like lockdown anchor mm. position player in pit. Sure, he could do it, but I think he's much more comfortable in an active position like uh, B. And just looking at, you know, Inferno lineups gone by for Vitality, they haven't been afraid to be changing around the positions on this map when we're looking at things, and it really paid off for them. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see exactly how that one does play out. But for Heroic, on the other hand, um, this is just going to get extra complicated when we're looking at the lineup they're bringing in, right? How, do, do you see any hope in Heroic able to even push us to a third in this occasion? Ooh, I was never really even going to say to you that even in, when it comes to CSGO, that Inferno was one of the hallmark maps of Heroic and Cadian's calling style. I mean, sure, they could have some nice wins against top tier opposition, but they definitely relied more on maps like Nuke, which we saw them easily uh, just upended on by Vitality in the last one. So I do think that the series does end here, Freya. I do think that Vitality is going to be closing it out in two. I think that in some ways, Heroic just need to play a little bit more together. I, I want to see that they are able to show a better face in officials with this five-man lineup that they're going to trade off of each other at the very least. Not something like round 12 where it was just a scattered death in a million different directions. Yeah, you'd hope that would be something that they're improving on uh, coming into the second map of this best of three series. I, I want to just pick your brains about the orping side of the equation because I know you've had some takes about you know the most recent update there was a lot of criticism prior to that in terms of the uh, legitimacy of using the AWP obviously we saw Zyru still picking it up uh, on the ground of nuke so uh, yeah how kind of impactful do you think it is after this most recent update I do think that the op has actually gotten significantly better with the latest update. I know someone showed just the way that the time scale works, that it was kind of like your bullet would come out in a first frame moment versus a last frame. And so it felt like flicking with the op before was a little bit weird. And it's almost like your crosshair had to be on the person for a little bit longer. That being said, I mean, when it comes down to these two oppers, Kadian didn't really have the best game for himself there. And Zaiwu more or less has unfortunately felt a little bit more pedestrian so far in CS2. That last map was just the spin show entirely yeah. and on top of that i mean they're going to be going into inferno which i think people famously remember when they brought nevera into the lineup with zaiwu he actually was opping on inferno so zaiwu doesn't always love to pick up the weapon on this map and that might actually be to his benefit yeah definitely uh you mentioned spinks we've got to talk about him coming into the second map considering uh how on fire he was in that first round of nuke where do you see spinks you know typically having impact uh, on, on inferno well i do think that when they're playing against a team like heroic one of the ways that spinks was able to take advantage of them in the last one is purely he was just the better aimer okay like every single like 50 50 gun duel he was just winning it because his mechanics were on point on top of that i mean that disruption what he was doing in the last map what he's going to be doing on this one the way that especially that you get to play back it into bracket with those nades to blow open the smokes i do want to see if vitality is going to throw that into the equation in their defenses here because Spinks can be such a nuisance already when he's pushed back into the bomb site but i expect that he's going to try to even push more now that things have changed a bit. So it's kind of sounding like, you know, Apex is the IGL of the squad. Uh, doesn't really need to change up too much of the game plan. Obviously, it depends on where Mezzi is going to be sitting uh, in terms of positioning on this map. But I, I feel like this is a very confident pick for Vitality coming into things. It's not like Mezzi, you know, it wasn't like this was a permaban of Fnatic or anything. No. He's used to playing this map. Definitely, definitely. I, I do think that Pit's going to be a little bit difficult for him if he's forced into the position. Because I think we have thrown so much praise at some of the best Pit anchors in the world repeatedly because 
it is such a tall task when there are nades flying at you, mollies, the way you use your counter utility, the way you have to get that one kill and try to stay alive. And simply put, because Messi was a B player before for Fnatic, he has to change up his style drastically. Just playing those anchor spots, it requires just a completely different skill set as opposed to before where he got to be active. Maybe he's going to retake Banana. Maybe he's going to just fight for Banana Control in the beginning. Now he's going to be on his heels a little bit more. And Majisk was always, you know, close to, if not top of the list for some of those uh, tier list of oh, the yeah. pit players, oh, right? Yeah. Like he was just so versatile and so reliable uh, in that position. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Any shining lights for the side of Heroic? Is there anything that you're saying, hey, if they can get this together, there's a chance of this going to a third or is it all coming up for Vitality? I'm just going to say this. What I'm really interested in with Heroic in this one is not as much now the team coming out. I want to see if Zyphon can hold his own. I'm not exactly sure what position he's going to be playing on this map, given the fact that they're seemingly changing a lot with this Heroic team. Like, I thought I thought he was going to maybe play outside. Well, they made Zyphon actually take Tessus' spot. So I think they're actually trying to give Zyphon some of his positions so that okay. he can use this as a bit more of an audition. Yeah, uh, and that's the thing. I feel like for Heroic, right, we're obviously going to live in the reality if this isn't the roster they're going to be going with going forward, but uh, that isn't a reason for these players not to be putting in their all, right? They've got to be showing like, hey, I I'm a versatile enough player. I still have the skills to maybe be picked up in uh, when we come into the end of the season, right? Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think it's actually time to get this one underway. I think it is indeed, Maui. So uh, Launder Scrawny, we're going with the Vitality Train. How are you guys feeling about Inferno? Ah, uh, picking the easy way out, are you? <sighs> you know what their team name is, Mohan, for the blast predictions? Freya and Mal. It is the Spears of Newark. The Spearheads. Spearheads. The Spearheads. Oh, okay. You know, at the front of the charge oh. are Maui, Snake, and Freya. So, thank you for your service. Welcome back, everybody. We got map two about to begin. Are you concerned if Mezzi plays Pit? that he won't match up to matches? I don't think it's gonna matter enough. Mm. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get to pit sometimes, so. Well, then I know who you're picking for this one. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good for sure about Vitality because they showed lots of strength on Nuke and I think you have to kill a certain amount of players before you get to Mezzi on this map right now. So, uh, and we also, I guess we'll see what happens on CT to kick things off. It won't even be him in pit until half number two. And it looks like Zyphon is solo B at the moment. <laughs> Poor guy. But may not be a problem. Right now we get the grouping of Vitality in alt. It's a very quiet bracket control. Looks like they're trying to give him a false tell by fighting down. But actually, this is a very common heroic setup. They fight down mid and then they flank the B play. But they're getting out called, ah. actually, it looks like, because they walk down and die. And this can tell you that there's four heroic players here. It's actually a very common thing that they do. Will they be able to find anybody else? Flames just made the audio drop. Shush is trying to hide it. Follow it. Shush, very careful about the wall he's standing on. And you can see that Flames was just touching his hair in real life, so wasn't super worried about this. And Shush now gets caught. Yeah, no escape on that one. He just wanted to take a glance. Maybe he'd find somebody to fire off towards, and instead he gets pinched in the apartment's room. No chance at escape, and we do indeed get that vitality rotate back towards Banana. Well, this is the max difficulty fight, because they killed two at A. Now they're going to two inside of B. Chance here for Heroic, I think. They praise Zyphon's aim. Apex able to start sprinting. Tess takes the head off. 20 seconds. Oh, it's a second one from Tess Flames on the recovery. He's got a teammate to cover him. Dual oh. Berettas. Zyphon comes back with them and will get nothing done. It's a safe plant for Flames, and it could very well be a pistol here for Vitality. Double up con is so strong. Tough one for Dupree. We got the jump spot to get info. Dupree's hoping somebody gets really egregious with yeah. it, and yeah, he will. And it's his old best friend. God damn, Zywoo puts one in his head. Vitality come away with a quick one, and... We saw one late organization round on Nuke that made it feel like Vitality also still have some stuff to get comfortable with, but then we remember it's only one new player for them. Mm -hmm. It's one new player, and I mean, just, I'm not trying to take anything away from Magisk. I think that his form was excellent coming in towards his tail end, uh, you know, of his service at Vitality. But you've still got Spinks, bro. You've still got Zywoo. You've still got Flamesy. Yeah, yeah, he was not, he was the third most important player on the yeah. roster in terms of, yeah. But when, you know, when it comes to winning a major, he was critical. Yes. When it comes to winning a game where they're favored, maybe not quite as much. It's gonna take a few matches to see where Mezzi 
slots in and sizes up in comparison. But Matt just was that guy where I told him this once where I was looking through some of his games because his stats were only pretty good. Uh, vitality on Vitality. But I remember looking at kill matrixes and I always noticed that Magisk was out fragging the best players on the other teams mm. way more consistently than anybody else in some of their big games that mm. I looked at. And I was like, that's why the impact feels so high compared to the sheer frag count. Yeah, he's, he's a big game hunter. Yeah. You know, he's, he's going for the drafts, not the rats. No pride in Ecos. No. We lose Apex here in round two. That's a death towards top banana. Three players spotted for Vitality on that half of the map, but Tess Essel wastes no time trying to run it back. Dupree gets caught on the side of the truck. 30 to spare and despair for Heroic as they have lost that A site. Tess S connects with the Deagle. And there's more where that one came from, but the smoke grenades are going to give just enough time to Vitality so that they can plant this bomb and be on their merry way. Mezzi. In the little pit, gets oh, bested. Shush. More Deagle frags coming out. And Shush is inside of the bomb site on top of the bomb. Sphinx looking for the 1v4 is halfway there. Pistols trying to surround him. Kadian catches the kill. And what was done to them back on Nuke, they get back on Vitality. A robbery after the pistol. That should have been so easy. It was the mini player that had problems. They came through on the side of the Vespa and no frag for the guy in mini. He's supposed to get two versus that. You know, full plump smoke sitting there inside a moto and can't make it happen. Six shot out of Tessus. Great shot and play from Shush to push into the site. And even Shush, Tessus just staying alive for that long. Made that ugly. So, wow. Nice catch in the outfield here from Heroic to steal away some momentum. Vitality buy right back, though. Double AK, Tech 9 Deagles. It looks like we've got Zaiwu spearheading a rifle play up alt. I don't know how fast they're going to go, but this isn't going to be some kind of full default. This might be one of those continuation flash executes through uh, boiler or and, and lane instead of trying to even go through. Yeah, they don't have the smokes to go arch. I think that's almost certainly what's going to happen. It's a weird timing for them, though, because bottom B was smoked, so... You have to go make sure that it was clean. But Tessas has the jiggle on the corner, holding off on half wall. Oh, they get him back. Now they can go for the same play they wanted to earlier on. But it's a 2-3 for Heroic. They're chilling. Not panicking with the utility just yet, but the smoke does indeed go down. I think that smoke is actually nice for them to see. You never want to smoke out an eco, so that does mean they're actually worried about it. They've lost bracket controls in the meanwhile. Kadian leaning back in the wine bar. Missed chance versus the Deagle. Utility here to block off Arch, so trying to get into this fight versus Kadian, who decides to take it to them as the short players pick up a frag apiece. Flashbang finds its mark. Zywu's still alive and kicking. Only players so far to get anything going until Apex has to trade him out for, at the very least, a bomb plant. The 1v3, though, seems like a what? tall order, and they thought it was back sight. More damage on Zyphon made that one a little sketchy. <laughs> Kadian shooting at ghosts. <laughs> oh. oh, my. Oh, maybe he had no audio. Is that thing plugged in? I think if you have no audio, you don't play more aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first player to put their earbuds in backwards. Can't hear anything. Just start shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so I started blasting. <laughs> nice. This is, yeah, the, the Dupree shush cone fire is where it kind of starts and ends. At least they get their first two kills. So as ugly as it gets, a bomb plan is sort of what they were prepared to deal with. And one more AK for the road. It's on Zywu. Raid boss of this one. Sphinx is the backup plan with Kevlar, if he needs to be. Heroic aren't going to let this one go for free. Already top banana control theirs. They're going to leave Tess S on his own and move pieces towards A. 
Looking to get ahead of what they expect to be the pistol push, but will they fall victim to this single AK? No. Shush. Makes sure that that hits the ground quick. Sphinx picks it back up. So again, that second set of Kevlar coming into use. This is protocols for Vitality, but it's not opening picks. Dupree doesn't skate all the way back, feeling comfortable with Kadian on this off angle. Wow. Sure enough. There's the peek out from short side. Dupree <laughs> mows nice. him down. And that goes swimmingly here for Heroic. Clean there from Dupree. So look at these men already making the Donkey Kong noises. That's how you know they're having a good time. What does Exist think about all this? You know, he's somebody that's never, never get a comment that's from Exist. True, right? I'd love to know. Maybe he doesn't care. I'm not sure if he's noticed. He's like, I could... <laughs> just five players, right? Yeah. What do you mean they're different people? What does that mean exactly? Yeah. Aren't they just molding figurines? You can make into whatever you'd like. Wait, where's Fafleren? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ouch. Damn, on a gun round, too. Eat that, Zywu. They say robots don't need to eat, but the Zyborg just chewed on that one. Smoke for the half wall, gonna keep him back. And the banana control falls into the hands of Heroic, allowing for that rotation away. Kadian's gonna be the guy to leave, as he has been. Pretty quick on those B to A moves in the last couple of rounds. That's the beauty of Inferno. Moving pieces. I mean, if Heroic could somehow even win a map with the, you know, with Cadian coming back into this crazy haphazard situation of, you know, or a lazy Susan of roster moves and, you know, a lot of turmoil, that would just speak volumes about him, honestly. Like. Ooh, one ahead of the pack, but. Mezzi will get nothing. Tess primed for a multi-frag. A little bit delayed because of the Molotov, and they expect that he has fallen off. Tess will give up the angle. Bomb's looking to go down. All right, they're recovering a bad position. You can fall into the back of the bomb site, but you've lost Church already. You've lost the CT cross. Tess is mowing down bodies. And so you are lucky that that bomb ever went down because outside of it, Heroic dominate round five. Mm. Oh, looked very comfortable from Heroic. They, every situation was chaotic, but they were all in good spots. Easy kills coming their way. And even a smile on Siphon's face. I think Tessas really just took charge there. You could say IGLing for that half of the map. Usually on CT side, there's IG. I mean, you have an IGL for the whole game, but it's usually the IGL for the entire T side. And then on CT side, you have like a communication leader at least on each side of the map. Um, because as good of an IGL as you are on, on CT side, you just you're missing so much info for like half of the entire round. One AK comes up again. Four rounds straight for Heroic. One non-diffuse. Ooh, Apex likes his timing here. Yeah, ahead of the smoke, but Shush gets a line on it. Uh, I thought he did something there, but unlike when they fought last time into bracket, they always had a chance to recycle the AK. Here now, he took a risk and they lose it totally. They could still try to follow through, but we already get that Cadian rotate on Arch. More smokes block off mid. And it's feeling suffocating if you are Vitality in this position. Mezzi still without a kill on map two. It's because he's IGLing when Apex is dead. Mm. No, I would like him to just not IGL for once, you know? I want... Ooh! Oh! Okay. Like it, maybe you can call and frag. Okay, okay. That's a lead. That's a lead. And but they aren't ready for this. No. Zyphon and Emo. Oh, when they had someone spotting banana, this should be a sequence for Zyphon. Okay. For a second, looks scary, but he collects two kills on the bomb site. They're going to be pissed that he was back there. Just hiding in the corner. I thought Heroic got rid of their rats. So. Cre incredibly unlikely position to find him after someone was jump spotting the half wall. I think he was maybe there setting up a flash, didn't get to use it, but was in the perfect spot in case they tried to jump on that kill. 
That's like a Homer Simpson, you know, hedge gif. Yeah, when you're all fading back. Yeah, it just kind of yeah. hides into dark. Like oh, maybe they won't, and sure enough, they don't. What is this, Fruit Ninja? Fruit Ninja. Packs it in, packs it up for the day. Let me see this Sphinx Deeg. Mm, the Mezzi one? Yeah. Nice shot, but again, Siphon just back at the bomb site. It was all a ruse. Yeah. False sense of confidence. They thought they were getting the plant. They thought they had enough room to go take church control. But you don't clear your corners. They got taken to church. Yes, sir. I'm praying for an answer because we are seven rounds deep. Vitality stalled out on one. Ever since the pistol, it's been nothing but heroic. Oh boy. Zaiwu catches Tessus on a timing. Thought he had a bit more space to be throwing nades. This time Siphon's not in the back of the bomb site. So he'll just have to bank on his smoke grenade deterring the follow through. Vitality, it's so early in the round. They've got plenty of time to work. No rush. I think they felt 90% confidence that, that that kill could have been the round, but they want to probably be careful after what they just saw. So, but it doesn't change the undeniable fact that they've got a 5v4 with lots of time left over. So they'll hang out. I think they move pretty well in these slow paced rounds. One or two times, it could have gone a little faster. I mean, this round being one of them, right? They didn't follow through with the kill on B. It's afforded a time for Kadian to put the op on Coffin. And if he peels the front of the playoff, maybe Zyphon from Orange can put up something too. Deep nade. Ooh, smokes oh, to the no. face though. Zywu's gonna come through with the entry frag and Kadian, well, he just bails out into church. Yeah, there was no, no other play there for Zyphon. I think in his mind, if he gets one, but that's just a very easy hard clear from, from Zaiwu. There's no flash deterrence. There's no other resistance. There's basically him versus Zaiwu, you know, clean 1v1, which is exactly what Zaiwu's happy to see. Sphinx, all that damage uh, through the stone wall, crazy. It does feel like wall banging is like a touch stronger in certain places for sure. A shot. Racking up the costs here. No. Okay. Well, not this time. We do get Vitality second round. So a kill towards top banana early in the round. I don't actually like the smoke from my perspective if I'm holding one when someone runs through. Mm. The smoke cloud around him. Right, yes. I think it's a nice effect, but I don't feel at an advantage when someone comes through with that going around them. Just... If that makes sense. Like, I'd always wa I want to assume if someone's running out of smoke, I should be at an advantage. Mm-hmm. But um, you have any strong opinions about that? Not really. When you're holding the smoke, don't no. care. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I mean, I think it looks a little goofy. Okay, I was you thinking know, it looks cool, but it's just like a big. It's just so round. Yeah. You know, if it was like a, like if it was like a trail of smoke, right. I would like that more. But it's the fact that there's smoke in front of them. Yeah. That makes no sense. I feel like I'm playing Naruto or something. Hadouken. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Kamehameha. Okay. All right. You watched Demon Hunter like <laughs> three months ago. So. Okay. You're just being an ignoramus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, that's a go. <laughs> 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 that was so. Oh, that didn't feel. That didn't feel good. <laughs> uh, now you sound like a pervert. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Ooh, he's in boiler. Oh, everyone's dying. Yeah, it's a 3v5, but Shush looks to bring it back. And he's got a chance to bail out. Zyphon, if he'd been able to get a kill, and he almost did versus Mezzi, we'd be right back to the 3v3. Zyphon tries to press out. Nade nearly finds him. What a warning sign of things to come. You know, you think you're getting tricky. And then you get red like that. He goes oh. on to Boomich. And Zywu, he'll take that instant headshot. But it's the damage that could really still... Push this back into the hands of Dupree and Shush if they end up at the right bomb site. Mm -hmm. Right now, gambling in the wrong direction. Siphon's just been sort of—it's not—it's not that he hasn't played tier one, but like some of the angles, I feel like he's 
the way that he's taking these fights, he's thinking it's a free first one, then I can work on the second. But it's like Zai Wu knows where he is, yeah. free 50-50. He's happy to take him a duel with him in that position. And it's it's going to become too too late quickly to reinvent yourself in this one half. But luckily, Heroic already have the five rounds so far. Shush has granted them an extra chance at this round as well by getting a kill inside a boiler. Uh, but at the moment, they're about to find out B is open completely. Yeah, this would be one, you know, watching the POV from either Zaiwu or Zyphon's perspective in this half. You're really going to learn a thing or two about what angles you want to hold. But Zaiwu's entry game has been very good. Stellar, yep. both Nuke and here. Two things he's been doing more of, playing with rifles, and again, playing with follow, recoil, crosshair. Well, I think in CSGO 2023, Zaiwu was 60% rifles anyway, right? Yep. Something it's either 60 or 40. Can't remember. <laughs> either way, it's a lot compared to any other top offer. Yeah, 60 or 40, you know, 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Flip a coin, 60-40. What do you like? <laughs> He was the best player with every single gun that he used this year. Yeah. Every single weapon. Well, give him the R8. Let's see how he holds up. Yeah. He never beat snacks out in the R8 department. No, Strong start from Heroic. Starting to feel a bit of resistance. Ooh, peach juice. Zywu juice. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just from his fingernails. Oh, goddamn. <laughs> it's a sustainable way to make more. When do you think Zywu is going to get in on that whole bathwater trend? Yeah, I wonder. I'm not going to say anything. Before, <laughs> yeah, <actually. that's>, yeah, <laughs> yeah, gonna... yeah. Flash for the mid fight. That half st stunning them out. I mean, off that flash, they could have taken a peek, could have taken a spray, decided not to. Dupree's going to go blind around the corner, slide some bullets into flames. And Shush now has control of mid brackets with a smoke for the push. Mezzi returns the favor. Frag to Cadian. Still test S in the corner of Banana, but that is Mezzi working. Oh, I was going to say on his own. I think take this back to B again. Surely. Uh, you know, take out Cadian. That's one big guy who rotates very quickly. And then you know it's a 2v2. Siphon's had some trouble being comfortable. I think you just go right back to fighting Ooh. and preying on the sort of like, oh, Siphon's going to go for the push. It looks like the. Oh, sorry. I thought oh, he's taking the nades over towards the A site. Just a pack mule. Yeah, this is an interesting gamble. I mean, like from my perspective, I, I'd go B if I was Vitality from Heroics. It looks like they're trying to ho hope it's not going to be the B site. Oh, oh man, an Apex runs it. right into Tess has smoke down. He sees he playing rotation as well and doesn't have to think more about it. Apex. Think less, do more. Just yeah. slams him. There wasn't a single tick of Molotov damage there, and I wonder if that kind of serves as the trigger for Apex to go. Like, you know, the audio cue's given up. Yeah. He just decides, screw it, I'm swinging. He said he lit a fire under my ass, literally. <laughs> yeah. I'm going. And when Apex decides to do something, I don't know if anyone can stop him. No. You know? People talk about IGLs not being able to stop guys like Simple from doing things that he wants. Yeah. Well, who's what? here to keep Apex in check? What if that What if that guy is your IGL? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, great idea. Yep. Well done. Tessa's still recovering from throwing the utility as well, so... Easy kill towards the B site. I'm looking forward to the... Th what the hell? It's the shrine. Wow. I did not know that was there. I missed that. Um, I'm looking forward to the thought that may, if Vitality power up enough, 
with Mezzi, who's, you know, he's not just coming in just for now. He's coming in. Like Heroic, we don't know what the future holds for them. Uh, but Vitality are, every time they practice, they're trying to put a brick in place that's going to stay there for a long time with Mezzi. So with that sort of deliberate thought in mind, I mean, them versus FaZe in a tournament like this after a few matches where they're exponentially getting better by the day. Yeah. That could be very exciting. Well, I mean, they've been they've been one of the more inactive teams during CS2, to yeah. be honest, right? They played Sydney, and now they're here. But, they like, there's been a bunch of online... What? Oh, Through that mid-smoke. That's a CT mid-smoke oh. that they love to rely on, and Cadian has paid the piper with his life. Shush, double. Not bad. Right back. Hell of a recovery, but on his retreat, making a ton of sound with an empty magazine. So he has to go for the reload, but he's at least smoked off apps, and Sphinx has hurt him every step of the way. Tess takes a chance on Banana. Oh, rotation's so slow. They're not even going to think about it. There was no punishment from Vitality right away. Oh, they're coming through the smoke. This is a chance <gasps> for Heroic. Oh! oh. Two smokes. Two smokes. And the, and the T-side smoke ends up fading first. Now Zyphon is pinned in the corner. Again, it is Mezzi on low health, I, just like the round prior. He gets his banana pick, but at a bunch of HP. I feel like they're going to... Go back, eh? I think so. I think oh. so. I, I feel like they're, you can count on Shush to make that rotation. Yeah, they give the bomb away. But, long but last time they went B. Yeah, because because Zyphon and Tessas were there. Oh. Apex. Calling it well. Zyphon tucked into top banana. He's got a full belt of utility. Do they go for the push? They want to confirm what's here, and they will find Mezzi at the very least. This is yeah. going to express the A play from Vitality. They're still concerned about Pit. This is going to buy some time for Heroic to go for the faster rotate. The rumblings of the commitment now come through. And we already have Heroic barreling up middle, wasting no time. But maybe you should have waited a little longer. Zyphon didn't even have his gun out. It's a missed op shot from Zywu, but no problem for Sphinx. He collects the two kills, and damn, did they go fast. I think when I was looking at the map, it was based on the new players and what they were doing, because they have less authority, I think, to rotate in ways. And, and seeing Shush move from A site to B site, that in my, side, in my head made a lot of sense for the gamble. And I feel like that's all the oh, vitality wow. we're thinking about. Where it's worked out well for Heroic is trying to shove their way into mid in brackets. Dupree and uh, Shush have done a great job early round getting that kill in bracket, in boiler, whatever it is. But without that, it's been uh, Struggle City. And they're the mayors. Mm. Looks like Heroic have given up on that mid smoke they were throwing. CT spawn to halfway up mid. Features of a couple rounds in a row, but... Tessus, what have you got up your sleeve? Oh, okay, I don't think so, bro. Settle down. Tessus hanging on to the half wall with 48 HP. Can't escape yet. Starting to burn. He'll get away. It's all good. But they see an MP9 holding top banana. They know low utility is going to be there as well. So, and th this demands that heroic, you know, overreact. And I think they just aren't willing to do that right now. Oh, but actually, we've got Vitality actually bringing the bomb back towards a site. There's still eyes on bracket right now, but 30 seconds. This is ambitious. You've got the majority of Heroic to try and get through. Cadian Zop nails the first. He'll be smoked off from Library, so he doesn't play it. He's looking to Colonel up on the bomb site. There's nobody in pit. It is three inside of the site, and Cadian doesn't pull the trigger. They're going to the top rope, so concerned with pit that they That's still smoke. don't know about these numbers. Five seconds left. Seven to the clock, and no they way. clear it just in time. Four frags in a row. Talk about down to the wire. And the little bits of health on these three means Tessas could still queue up this clutch. All the smoke coming in on oh. Arch as well. And Tessas will have to walk away from this 1v3. They all have the same amount of HP. All four guys left. Just a couple bullets away from death. And it looks like this AK is the only thing that Tessas can take with him out of the rounds. I guess maybe a kill as well, which is nice. That's rough. By the skin of their teeth. Mm. Ah, uh, that's rough. That was actually 
the one situation out of the last three where Vitality didn't pick the better site to go to. Uh, they, they didn't have that much time. And they needed every kill on the second. And they got it. Happened so fast. Here's Spinks coming through. Any of these kills would have yeah. stopped that entirely. Yeah. And that smoke was uh, was really rough, too. They jumped up over top of it. They weren't ready for the site, guys. Kadian's rotation into the site was good. Opening kill with the op. What more could you ask for? That Sphinx headshot on the pillar player. Nasty. Opens it up. You know if Mezzi doesn't get that kill on the player on the box, he's spraying down the bomb plant in the one position it's going down on. Mm -hmm. But uh, long live the king. You know, this is a real social experiment. We're trying to mend the gap between French and English Counter-Strike. Mm, okay. You know? I mean, that goes for the, the French and anyone, though, right? I mean, I get along with them. Mm, okay. Wonder why? Because they literally own you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Last round of the half. Heroic looking to just tie this bad boy up at six. It's a peek off banana that Zywu is going to shut down. Sorry, Tessas. Not this time. And he's been rearing for the fight at top banana. Mm -hmm. Saw him with the MP9 pin behind the half wall. Apex hasn't had a chance to wide swing CT in a couple of rounds, so he's got that bloodlust lined up here for round 12. It's going to have to be Kadian and Zyphon on the B site again, trying to draw them into the AWP. Ooh, there is no AWP. Excuse me. Oh, Apex. That's what he wanted. A piece of the B site gets himself the double kill, goes real deep, and it's this boiler anchor from Spinks wow. to close out the half. A 7-5. The next Taz, excited about Apex, putting up a double to close out the first 12. Wants to go no. All right. Look at the blind fire battle that's coming up. That means monitors are no more. Excuse me? You can't see what you're shooting at. Now, I'm but not going to lie, do you do? Maniac, for some of these players, that might not make a big difference, but... Is it just about intuition? It's just about intuition. Other senses? Scrawny might be better with no monitor. This there, might be where there's a case to be he's made. playing at home. We're leveling the playing field. Out of memory, you can kind of say, okay, I need to go to my right-hand side, then I can get to middle. But see, Jason is trying... I think Jason is trying a strategy. What is Jason doing? What is Moses doing? He's trying to play with another monitor. Is he just trying to relocate him? Oh my God, he's cracked the code. The man is a genius. Jason has just... Well, you're looking at yourself, buddy, now. I don't think that's going to help you. Maybe genius was too swift. All right. Oh my God, he's done it. He's moving in the I right think he's direction. cracked the code. Now, it seems to be lagging a little bit. I'm guessing the wireless connection is just, you know, you can see it slipping in and out, but it doesn't matter. He's got the vision. If you're he's playing got all the, the answers. Oh, my oh is he down 50 HP? If he loses while cheating, Wait, what happened? is he doing now? What is he doing? Is that WWE? Why is he moved away? He's got the bomb back. Oh my God, no. James is trying to stop him. The other coach is in the No, he's trying to play the bomb. We got all that. Oh my God, it's a ball. Battling each other, both in and out of the server. Has what happened? The way. He's, he's, he's right made there. it. He's planted it. Yes. They can't ever find it. He's looking for it. Come on, Jason. Oh, is this what American exceptionalism has become? <laughs> Jason has found a way to play around the system, Wait. and it's it's working for him. He got a bullet? Now. No, he's got three more bullets. Yeah, but that bomb is going to do everything to try to find it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them are walking around like headless chickens, but... Londoners just been on B this whole time. How can he be so bad when he's the only one with a monitor? There we go. <laughs> Second kill. And the oh, bomb is going to go up and consume probably the, half the team at this point. <laughs> you got to give it up. <sighs> That's what they mean when they say, don't work harder, work smarter.
Apex barreling down Banana into that B site a couple of rounds in that half. He wanted a piece of the action, and Vitality are piecing up Heroic in this series. It's an easy first map win and a pretty solid T side on Inferno as well. 7-5 at the end of the half. Now a CT side ahead of them, but we jump into the team speak. Uh, guys, before we start the CT side, can we win a pistol? Nope, because we are nope. winning, so fuck it. And we won a pistol. And we won a pistol. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> you <don't>... Okay. <laughs> we all look up to these pros, but yeah. they're just like us. Y'all thought Zaiwu was serious? Nope. Yes, this, yes. Is this here? One flash, C slips off. I would. I would. I would. It's still in China. It, it's still I think he's running to A. I think he's running to A. Let's leave. Let's leave. Let's leave. Let's leave. Yeah, pushing it. Uh, One mid, smoking small pit. Abs as well. Good luck. That's not us casting. One would be long, guys. Yeah. But it is now. As this bomb gets planted on the back of the site, Heroic takes pit control. And there's Apex and Mezzi down. Uh, a post. Plant retake that you might try, but I don't know. They're looking in alt to see if there's any kind of flank because, of course, it's heroic. And yet they're going to walk away from this, not even an attempt on it. And I think because of also the nature of MR12, you're going to try these retakes more often, you know? Like even though saving's important, risking it on an eco and also going for more re retakes is probably <laughs> just as key to be able to do, which is great. I feel like you'll risk more rounds when you've got a few guns or so, but like the thought of the follow-up after a pistol round specifically when you know you're going to force by anyways. Now you've got that extra thousand because you kept your Kevlar. Yeah. Yeah. If I go down 4v5 in a pistol, I'm saving from now on. Hmm. And I'm going to tell myself if Zaiwu can do it, then so can all of us. Four players, Banana, to kick it off. They lost one on the wall, and Apex just couldn't do it all on his own inside of A. So, look at this buy. Double Fomus, double MP9. Apex with all the nades he needs. Now, this one's interesting. I feel like the Lils are too strong that this is, like, a, quite a serious advantage here. It's like Galil's plus T-side economy is just... Bananas. Mezzi's MP9. Oh, he deads Tess Spots two. Compromised spot, though, for Sphinx. I mean, you've got two coming up short side and the two inside of apartments. Yeah. He was done for. Never stood a damn chance. And so it is a very clean split from Heroic into the A play to convert from pistol to tie this game at seven. If you want overwhelming control on CT side, you got to have the utility... As well as, the, your guns actually don't matter as much on Inferno, right? Like MP9s, shotguns, and, and Fomuses are all fun. There's lots of close angles on both map, on both sides of the map, but utility is what really is the glue and the relationship between the two sides that allows you to delay and rotate and play those close spots effectively. I have a balancing suggestion for the Galil. Yeah, go for it. I think in order to bring it uh, kind of in line with the Fomus, they should both have 25 bullet magazines. What if... We just made Fomus is better instead of making everything as bad as the Fomus. Well, I mean, we could. First of all, I think the Fomus is better in CS2. It is better in okay. CS2. And secondly, I think it's not... I think... Don't touch the Galil's stats, but 10 less bullets. Okay, 35 I, bullets in a rifle is crazy. I don't think you're wrong, but you're close. Let's make them both 30 bullets. <laughs> okay, all right, sure. <laughs> all right, we'll work in multiples of five for now. Because five is the best number. Double Deagles, MP9. Everything's going to see all right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it 50 <fitty> fifth. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mess with Custers. <laughs> Katie, oh, not going to happen, buddy. Those Deagles set the trap and spring it, but he tries to go back in for second servings. And greed is a sin. Flames makes it back into the bomb site. However, not unscathed. 20 HP to his name. It's man advantage nonetheless.
on his own, though. Just hoping Shush doesn't come hunting, but, you know, Shush has also got the smoke for the CT cross, but the bomb is on Zyphon towards A. Ooh, this one could get weird in multiple directions. Reading into Flames' position. They get more spread out. Gets critical here. Shush can die as well, trying to fight into it. Maybe he doesn't know. Oh, nicely Fine. done from Shush. Yeah. And then write it off. One rotation out. The bomb probably wants to come back. And now it should be calm for Heroic. Slight delay, though, because of the bomb's long journey. Gives Zywu just enough time to get over towards Coffin. And because they refurbished the smoke on Cross, there's still no smoke for Coffins. Last smoke's on Dupree. And He's gone ahead and thrown oh. that out. It will land where it needs to, and Zaiwu gets his fight before it pops, but is unsuccessful. So the pistol's going to fall to the wayside here. It's very nicely done from Shush. Good presence of mind. Didn't skip any protocols. Didn't forget about top orange. And by killing Flames, he reopened the B site for Heroic to take a lead. Yeah, that's, that's a real lead here, T side. We don't have any idea as, as how... You know, as to how well they're going to play right now. The map pick for Heroic was Nuke. They wouldn't play Inferno if they had a choice, but but we don't we don't know. They could have precipitated Inferno in the veto, so everything will be learned live, I think, for both squads right now. But this round's won by Shush. This is scary from Zyphon. That bomb could have dropped forward with 10 seconds if that deagle kill went down, so quite quite a scary moment, but we don't see what happens in that circumstance. And now the full buy comes in from Vitality. There was significant pressure on that round, but no win. And let's see, because their CT protocols over on Nuke were um, immaculate. Impeccable. Splendid. Superb. But I mean, listen, Vitality said it in the TeamSpeak segment themselves, right? We don't need a pistol. <laughs> We're winning. Well, that's one thing about FaZe is they lost so many pistols <laughs> in, in their era right yeah, now. Yeah, look at them go. Yeah. So I would look at the cheese over the smoke, but it's a bit too tall. Hanging on to some utility, but also burning others at the minute mark. It's flames facing forward. Apex tries to rotate back around to the CT cross. Five members of Heroic ready to rock top banana. A flashbang to try and set up Flamesy. Oh, it's pretty calm here. See the molly comes in. It blinded them for sure, and he's able to catch Tess on the climb up. Oh, Dupree. Able to hang on for now. Apex comes through, rattling off shots, looking for the damage at the very least. Oh, the damage is huge. Massive amounts. It's going to leave them limping here, Heroic. They'll try to get back to Banana. Zywu spams onto Zyphon. Sphinx is here already, and that headshot connects with ease. Mezzi also railguns through. Everybody's dying through smoke. It felt like Heroic in that post plant didn't even get an aim duel. No, no, they got, they got murked before the smoke even... Boomed, really. Everyone was being lined up. That was so easy for Vitality. And I think they actually missed a Molotov. I think. Because it it sounded like one popped behind second oranges, but Flames was totally fine aiming. That and the flash was perfect here. And he could just tuck and there was no problem. So, not exactly sure, but maybe. And you, you saw that like when Zyphon died, like when he played oranges or something, that was like the round. It can, right. It's going to come down to that on the exact. If someone's playing within smokes, in second oranges, or at quad, or in fountain, if that guy dies, you can lose the whole round. Like That's how important it is for you to get yours on CT. So Flamesy does just that. And very, very good support out of Apex. Means that now we're in a tie game. Let's see if Heroic can deny any spillover. They also had entry potential on Nuke. Ooh, that's such an invitation to the B site. Apex through the smoke. Flames, whole pack of players well, coming right at him, and it's a nice clean double kill from Zyphon. Hell yeah. A favor for Heroic. Him getting two headshots just like that, answering immediately to Vitality's first CT round win.
The pistol, the conversions, all heroic to establish this lead. Sure, you lose as Vitality pick up guns, but Zyphon answers with two clean headshots. Lickety split into the B site. Vitality, save your weapons and hope to God that you don't get hard reset in the next. Because yeah. Heroic are making a run on this T side. Already looks like it could be more comfortable now. Those are such clean entries. It's extremely dangerous, though, to play car, especially with CS2 smokes at the moment, because, well, you shoot through them, you know where you're getting shot from. You don't even need just audio anymore. Um, plus, nades can blow the smoke open. It's just harder to be cheeky now, basically, up there. It was already dangerous in CSGO. You were going to get spammed. Now it's even worse, so probably just a not even a not a great idea to, to try that, but as you can see, he he literally paid for trying to put that spam damage down through it. Zyphon out of jeopardy entirely. Apex thinking he got unlucky, but I mean looking back on that, really, I don't know. Sure. Just a bit of geometry. Xtaz behind Vitality. Yeah, it's been a while. Ever since they were a fully French roster, I believe, at the Blast World Finals 2021. The Navera era. Yep. I miss Navera, CS. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was good, man. He was very good. I thought it was all about Masuda. I will not speak. RPK? Remember those days? Yeah. He's back. Is he? Yeah, I Good think for him. he did a tweet, right? I With thought that tank. was tongue in cheek. Oh, okay. I mean, I I hope I didn't just write that off as a joke. I think okay, yeah, I thought that was serious. <laughs> uh, okay, welcome back. Zeus next. You still think it's a joke? <laughs> I like this position, oh, Sphinx. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah he caught okay. Dupree with that, and he gets out. And I mean, we saw Heroic throwing that smoke as well on their CT side, or one similar too. So nice to see that Sphinx actually has a you know vision over top of it. Little gimmick, little trick. Here's a chance number two on the hold between Flamesy and Apex. I I would they're not it. even coming, yeah. Well, we might get to show off maybe what Mezzi can do then. Holding over towards the A site. They've got... Um, an enclosed hold, hoping that they can catch a lurk. Rotation's a little bit scary through the arch now. Pushing down through banana means you get some info back. Uh, the T's are coming. It's a good call out of Cadian. 45 seconds. Oh, they're scrambling. Sphinx is blind, but they didn't clear the corner. Shush didn't look deep, and so it's an easy hold. Zywoo's found one through the smoke grenade as well. It is a total collapse of the hit. I am shocked that they didn't check the corner. It looked like it looked like Shush was looking at mini pit, not worried about cold at all. Maybe they were just so hyper focused on Mezzi plays pit, Mezzi's playing pit, Mezzi's playing pit. Where's matches? Where's matches? Where's matches? <laughs> yeah. So a bit of a freebie, but man, yeah. with some proper clears right here, they they could have had an easy site. No pit players with two on site. That's sometimes a dream for the T's attacking by a lane. No one on balcony, no one in halls. And now they still have that option open. All right, well, critical response from Vitality. With the majority saved the round prior. Yeah, Heroic rack up a ninth round. Vitality needed a nice, clean, convincing, five alive situation to get this CT side back under wraps. An element of comfort that lets Flamesy get a little more ambitious on Banana. We haven't really seen Vitality go beyond Banana. But with that deep smoke, they're eyeing it up. Corralling Heroic into the apartments instead, justifying this Vitality three-man A setup. And yet no eyes on Bracket. Let's go back and forth. And that's an invitation here, as far as Cadian is concerned. But 
the smoke stops things towards B. 30 seconds to the clock. 5v5. They got one extra player. It looks like Mezzi might be up to the oh. plate again, which will be interesting to watch. That smoke, though. I mean, that's huge. Right in the front of it. Siphon's going to have a lot to try and press through. So much damage. Four members up short. Here they come. You know they're going to check that corner this time, but they don't really have time to check much. And there's nobody within it. We've got Vitality just holding off to the smallest positions, looking to maybe stop Bomb. Shush connects. Sphinx and Apex a kill apiece. And Sphinx, well, he's swinging to stop that plant. So sure enough, with the kill, it's enough. Yeah, no way to put it down. Even though they're up material, they're down a round. That's 10 now for Vitality and a chance to do some real damage. I mean, they could close this out 2-0 at this point. That's a rough loss out of Heroic. They were stopped in their tracks almost, it seemed like, because they couldn't even get one flash out when they were trying to scale mm -hmm. and wanted to make sure they did that before they tried. They actually were able to decapitate Mezzi. This is the guy they were looking for who was in cold last round. They found him now in his usual position, but it was now with help. Yeah. It was with Sphinx getting 81 damage and 30 on another player before the attack came in. Tessa's had a chance to cover that bomb plant, but it wasn't an instant headshot on Sphinx. And if you don't kill him fast enough, you see the impact. Denies plant and lets Flamesy just walk it over the line with ease. Vitality back in the lead. That banana control out of Apex and Flames, that's what burnt off so much time. Kadian tried to lead a charge back to Banana. She didn't have enough wiggle room. And they don't really have enough money either. It's a dire straight here for Heroic. Tail end of map two. Oh, Tessa, he's, he's gonna burn. Oh my god, it's still going. On the outside of that smoke, that is brutal. Immense. 120 some odd damage off of the Molotov. That takes the wind out of their sails. They were gonna go fast behind that, it looked like. And they get no damage in return. Yeah. Trek back to the A site. Out this, this could be a, a total failure out of Mezzi. Once again, some pressure on him. There's not great guns coming his way, but his impact will be critical. Only other player right now, Zaiwu, could be on the outside of a Moto Smoke with the attack coming towards the A site. They're going oh, but Sphinx is looking for his opportunity to slide in. Yeah, big pack of players right there. Oh, team kill, not ideal at this point in the map. And Zaiwu just locking down the arch side. Kadian's gonna try to swing oh. it, double out of Zaiwu. Slams him against the wall and leaves Zyphon 1v4. 50 seconds, no bomb, no gun, no damn chance. He'll duel versus Mezzi, the only fight Mezzi gets from the pit and the only one he needs to close to give Vitality 11. Yeah, 11 up. Cleanest of the last few here for Vitality and also the worst guns of the last few her, her, for Heroic. Sphinx just so clean on the timing. I mean, he was like milliseconds off making that even worse. Yes. Where, you know, he probably gets three on the lineup, but of course Shush gets a team kill in the middle of his spray down. Sacrifices must be made. I'm going to keep... A little under $2,000 here for Heroic only, Cadian. Could maybe be the jackknife of round 21, but it's an instant couple of kills. Sure, Tess will get an answer. And an AK. With Bomb back under wraps. Fair play, I don't think you could see much there. No. Grab what you can. There goes Cadian's last nade, so no flashes to get into brackets. But at least an armored AK. This is indeed doable. Feels like it's also going to bank on a missed shot maybe from Zaiwu. He's preoccupied with Balcony. It's Sphinx in the pit. Fine by me. But they have managed to get dangerously close. And Sphinx doesn't want to overcommit to the swing. Sure, Kadian does find his headshot, but he's going to need another. And as he tries to chase yeah. down Sphinx, who just does a great job of serving up a distraction, forcing Kadian to come off of the bomb site and into the open lines of the rotates, it is indeed Vitality to that 12. Everyone needs a ROPS right now for Vitality. That's Sphinx. It's a Mr. Reliable. Yeah, I feel like when we when we get cloning, you know, really, when we smooth out the kinks in cloning, uh, ROPS is going to be in high demand. <laughs> You think those signed mouse pads sell for a lot now? <laughs> Just wait till they rob you of his DNA. 
Might actually drive the prices down. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, shoot for that. I can get one for myself. Well, a three round lead for Vitality and what feels like a win here up on a silver platter. One chance more to buy potentially for Heroic. No op in play as you might, might, might not need one. That's a cool setup, my god. Opping through the legs. Wow. Mezzi better be playing hand off the keyboard. This is the Eiffel Tower here, Mezzi's legs. <laughs> this is CS2, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the trade's there. Okay. Uh, you lose Mezzi, but it's siphoned out of this one. So I always said, I know a cool play if you want to try this. Dupree was like, how does this help me again? <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside. Off the flash. We got some action. No! Oh! Oh! That is flamesy, baby. Yeah, free haircuts. Yeah, that second fadeaway headshot is just sick. A just quick reminder that, yeah, he may be 8-13 and 13 here on map 2, but the kid's got something special. And Shush with 15 health is his next victim. It is a 13-9 on map 2 for Vitality to close this series. Their first outing at the fall final over the reigning fall final grand champs or at least the majority of said roster. And nine rounds is nothing to scoff at if you are indeed heroic. This is a limping heroic looking for something to be proud of in Copenhagen. Not today though, boys. Vitality looking good. Competitive affair than that of Nuke, but B still does indeed stand for victory. Inferno wrapping up for Vitality 13 to 9. We're seeing Spink still firing on all cylinders. It wasn't easy at some moments, Maui, when we're looking at Vitality on this very map, but a great bounce back from a hot start from Heroic, arguably on both sides of this Inferno. I've got to look back at some of the earlier games that have been played today, but to me, Sphinx has really stolen the show today at the Fall Finals. I, I'd be I'd be hard pressed to imagine that anyone from Series One or Two had a better rating than what Sphinx did in this one. He was a monster in terms of performance. You could see that there are still some growing pains in the way of vitality and maybe the setups, the way that people are playing off of each other. But it was definitely enough to get the job done handily. Yeah, incredible stuff from Sphinx. Really, uh, you know, pulling vitality over the line in some of those crucial rounds. I do want to talk a little bit about Mezzi's positioning again. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. He was indeed uh, playing that pit position. Didn't get to see too, too much action from him, but, uh, you know, as a little, uh, as a little taste test, how do you think Mezzi fared in that position? I, I would say that I, I like that we saw from Mezzi that he tried a couple different looks. We saw in that last round that he was in the halls playing a little setup with Zaiwu. We saw that he was playing in sight alongside Sphinx. We saw that he tried pit a couple times. He didn't really actually have the best time with the position. I do find that Mezzi's skill set that lends him to being a slightly more active player instead of just wanting to pick a spot and try to do his best in it. But I think that is going to be a natural growing pain for him as he recognizes what are all of his options in certain kinds of rounds like that, or even what are his favorite sorts of angles to hold. Yeah, it's not an easy position to be filling and not easy shoes to be filling either. Of course, uh, Magis departing that particular uh, position when he departed the Vitality squad. But uh, if we're looking at the uh, shining lights from Vitality, are you putting it just down to Sphinx as the reason that Vitality kind of, you know, pulled this one over the line or were there some other good things you saw at the tail end of that inferno? Oh, I just want to say, I, I think... As Apex himself was such an X factor in this game. Sometimes he just seemingly threw the rule book out the window for his play, for his strategy. In some early moments in this game, it looked a little bit silly. Yes. Jumping through smoke <laughs> with no really support. But then sometimes he's pushing a Molotov and finding an entry frag onto a bomb site. And so he knew that he needed to probably change things up a little bit just to catch Heroic off guard. And he did just that. That last round that he set up Flames as well with that flash. Flames getting those two kills at the top of Banana right there. I think that Apex has really at this point shown to me that he is doing everything that he can to get this team up to speed as quickly as possible. Well, I think we've certainly crowned uh, Sphinx as the MVP of this series. So, uh, yeah, I think we should go ahead and check. We're going to hold that one, actually. Banks isn't ready. He's getting Sphinx, so, so uh, hold the cards for that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think your your point about Apex is very apt because, uh, yeah, Sacrificial Lamb, I think sometimes we saw him, uh, particularly on the T side, just kind of running in through smokes at mid. Hated to see that. But sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, and it's just how the cookie crumbles with Apex. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. But I think as we just shine the spotlight back on Sphinx here for a minute, I, I, this guy, in terms of just mechanical deliveries that he was, he was finding, 
peeking. I, I like that there were some tricks, like we saw that smoke halfway down mid that he was mm. peeking on over. We saw Heroic in the first half throwing that same smoke. They weren't really finding much mileage out of it, but Spinks, on the other hand, did a great job to just kind of change up the formula regularly, and we see that he actually found kills from a variety of positions in these rounds. Sometimes he's pushed up pretty deep, sometimes he was back on those bombsite defenses with Mezzi, and he was frequently the one that was either inflicting massive amounts of damage or just flat out getting the kills. Well, we do have one member of Vitality here to give us some winning words. We've got Zai Wu, courtesy of Banks. I've got Zaiwu with me here, and Zaiwu, the first outing with Mezzi. Okay, it gets a win for you, but it's uh, against a heroic that can't be considered really prepared and ready. But how did the first going feel for you guys? I think for us right now, we, obviously we didn't really prepare a week because we have a lot of problems also inside. Yeah. So we don't want to only watch on this threat and only based on that. So we just play our game, and like always, we're not other thing because it's a new game as well and also amazing and your coach so there's also a lot of thing in our side so we just try our new thing on the on the, on the new game so actually we just play on our, on our feeling so we not never we didn't think about every week what they're gonna do what's what we need to expect from them or whatever we just play our game to see if it's working or not on the sure. Now you're talking about good feelings coming in there. X has now back and we've got him obviously working with Apex, but how much has this changed within the system and, and what Vitality looks like as we know it? Uh, I think it's going to be almost the same. I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to say it's, it's going to be different, obviously, because we have new coach and new player, but I think we will try to, to put them inside our system. But obviously, something will change. We cannot be the same Vitality like we was with uh, Magisk and Zonic and Dupree. But most likely, we try to... 90% of, of, of us will not change because we know it's working, we know like what we couple of, uh, about individually also, but also technically. But I think we, we keep our same thing, we're just playing our game and I think it's going to be that, yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing it throughout the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much, mate. I like that we get to hear a few words from Zaru because uh, although it's a small sample size, Maui, I, I am going to be putting the spotlight on Zaru a little bit because it's not like we've seen the same uh, superstar form that we saw at the end of Go, right? No, if we just decided to end the entire year right when the switch from CSGO to CS2 happened, Zaiwu was clearly the best player in the world, in the game. And with CS2, I don't even think I'd put him in the top 10 right now. Uh, it's It's been only now three series that he's played, the two at Sydney, this one here, yeah. and he's been solid. Like, he's definitely been a good piece for Vitality, but by no means is he a world beater superstar just yet. We saw in this series, he had a couple of little moments, some multi-frags here and there, but it wasn't that safe pair of hands where you just expect him to win every single clutch, to hit every single easy shot. Sometimes we, I actually just saw straight up whiffs, and that's a bit concerning because he also apparently switch mice between Sydney and here also. Yeah. I don't want him to have any doubts. I want him to just get comfortable again because it's nice to witness greatness for everybody. Yeah, uncharacteristic of Zaiwu, but uh, hopefully he can warm himself up coming into the tournament. And we can take a look at the bracket to see the Group B side of the equations. Of course, Vitality progressing. That means just one more W, Maui, and maybe we see Vitality making it straight into the arena. But next game, final game of the day, we've got Complexity versus Astralis. I'm very excited for this one indeed, uh, because we saw a lot of Complexity in Sydney, right? They were looking really, really good. Astralis, so we've got some question marks about, right, Maui? Right. There have been numerous reports regarding Astralis and the future of their roster. We know that it's fairly likely that they will be sticking with Blame F and Device, but I would say that the future of the other three is much less certain, given that Astralis has been targeting Yabby and Stown, poaching them in some ways from Heroic, throwing that team into turmoil. And so, in some ways, this is going to be a big, big audition for the other members. We have got so much to be dissecting coming into the final series of the day, but not before we head to a quick break. When we're back, it's time to find Vitality and opponent in that upper bracket semi-final. It's going to be either Astralis or Complexity. We'll find out after this.
Buzz, coming into Fall of Finals in the Royal Arena, your first time playing here. What does it mean for you just as a Dane and also representing Astralis? Has it got special meaning? Uh, for sure, it does. Um, I mean, it's pretty special to play on home cr with a home crowd. Uh, we know we have a, a lot of fans here in Denmark, of course. Um, and yeah, we're uh, we really excited. Hopefully we get to play in front of them. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to make that happen. And in terms of that, right, looking at this event, looking at this venue and looking at the team of Astralis right now, are you feeling extra pressure? Uh, of course, there's some extra pressure, uh, but it's something that we work a lot with. Uh, I keep focusing on what's going on inside the team and yeah, just focusing on the, on the match and, and hopefully to win. Hopefully to win. I think it's a little bit more than hopefully when it comes to this, but I will say this for you, Buzz, right? I remember the first event you came to with Astralis and first thing you come in, your development as a player has been quite impressive. But I want to see, how do you view your development? Uh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, of course, I feel like um, I developed a lot, uh, learning a lot from all the experienced players uh, I played with. Um, and yeah, just keep trying to get better. Uh, I feel like as long as there's like a, a progress, you're doing something right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, I, I am better now. Um, I also feel more confident. Uh, also playing in the tier one, so, yeah. Astralis versus Complexity. The latter putting themselves on the CS2 map after a valiant performance at the first ever CS2 event in Sydney, making it all the way to the Grand Finals. A great game versus FaZe to really put their name in the spotlight. But then we go on the flip side, Maui. We talk about Astralis, and this is where things get so damn interesting because we know there's two hot names waiting on the sidelines. The question is, who's going to be the names departing from this current Astralis lineup? The jury is still out for me, Freya. There are many reasons to believe that you would probably be moving away from Borup due to his poor performance. Mm. But between Buzz and Stare, these numbers aren't that much different for me. And in terms of potential, you would probably, even looking at the age right there, imagine that they've got a lot more to give. They haven't even yeah. really played too much on the tier one circuit too much. And so for both of them, this is one of, if not the final audition for this roster and the five people that are on it. I want full bias here, Maui. Who should stay? If you were part Ooh. of the Astralis Org, who are you picking to be going alongside and forward in this new Astralis roster? Okay, okay. I'd say just purely eye test. I'm, in, I'm gonna lightly, lightly lean buzz. I'm glad okay. I'm not the one that has to make that decision <laughs> right now. And I think that if the decision came down to me, it probably is just who has better comms. Yeah, Eve, I mean, even after Stair's performance at CAC, he was looking pretty good, right? Did that maybe make it a bit closer for your mind? That's exactly why. If that performance hadn't happened, I think I would lean a little bit heavier towards Buzz. Okay, let's talk a bit about complexity because we've obviously been praising them uh, for, you know, Elise coming into the team and really, uh, you know, breathing new life uh, into the roster, particularly with Floppy. Like, the complete 180 we saw in terms of his consistency in Sydney, I absolutely love to see that. Complexity have made their way from plucky underdog and moved into playoff contender for every tournament that they now attend. The new look for this team with Elige is night and day. The nerves on these players have seemingly vanished. In previous series, previous games, if Complexity had a bad loss in a round, say an anti-eco that they just fumbled here or there, they would lose momentum. They would, a, a string of rounds would go into the other team's favor. That is not the Complexity I see anymore. The professionalism that Elige has brought into this roster has not only changed how they look when they're sitting outside the server, but their play in it as well. Is that the reason why you were so uh, confident picking complexity in this series? We're obviously teamed up this time for predictions and uh, you made the final call on that one. Was that, a, was that the reason? I did. I did. But be beyond that, I really think that tactically speaking, Astralis have kind of been just sort of resting on their laurels, doing a couple little things here and there, but complexity just seemed to have such a deep bag. Okay, so Team Spearhead, I guess, as we're branding ourselves, we're going with complexity. Londa Scrawny, who did you guys side with in this one? Well, Freya, if we're talking about team names, you guys are spearheads. We're the CS2, and we, too, like you, took complexity. That was my decision. But the joke, I mean, here's the, this is what nobody knows, Mohan, all right? And I'm, I'm going to spill the beans. Go for it. I've been doing your prediction for years. Wanders <laughs> yeah, doesn't open Excel sheets to do his own predictions. He just <laughs> says, yo, Scrawn, you got that, Bo? Also, why wouldn't I want a fantasy expert to do my predictions? Yeah makes our both of our lives easier no? so 
Yeah, but I would have picked uh, complexity as well. In All this. those OG picks? It was actually me. <laughs> yeah, okay, can't take credit for those, but <laughs> those are a little too crazy to make sense, okay? <laughs> but uh, this in this game, yeah, the only thing... First of all, this is, astrologers look awesome, by the way. It's like the new blue or something. I'm, I'm moving. It's actually closer to the complexity blue. Hmm. Questions that we don't have answers to. Okay, complexity versus Astralis. Last time they played fall groups. No CS2 history head to head. Astralis mm -hmm. have the crowd to look forward to. Mm -hmm. We know what this means to Astralis. Screw being Danish more than any other team, period. Okay. This is uh, the, the tournament that Astralis wants to go the farthest in every single time, period. So uh, I think that is one thing that fight, no matter how much they're going to be down, which will matter. And you brought up a point about complexity where they've been winning a lot, but... But they do occasionally just get completely stomped on certain maps, right? Like even just go back to their most recent game versus Mouse. Uh, yeah, it's online, but you know, complexity, good for you. You're taking a map off top opposition, ranked two in the world, Mouse that is. And then the other two maps in that series are like 13-3, 13-2. So, you know, it's a best of three, thank goodness. But that's but a crumbling. That's a crumbling, that's it's a, crumbling. a collapse. Yeah. It is a systemic failure. Yeah. Not a Yatoro, more of a collapse. But here comes JT, who I have to say has had a huge uptick in performance. JT is always one of those guys that like goes under the radar. He's an IGL who can frag. He's got the best He's desert the eagle in North America. He's the of America. Exactly. Of Africa. Uh, yeah. And uh, well, let's see if he can bring it to the table. Okay, he gets it. He gets it. That was a kill. It works. It counts. Device in with the double. An advantage to Astralis, despite the initial 5v4 being that of complexity. Ratty angle device. Uh-oh. And the P250 gets away from him this but he time. he saw two. And the hit is on. Here comes the hold from Floppy. Oh, they both tried to jump, and he just plucks Borup out of the sky. Oh. Shuts down Blame F. And we're talking about a new and improved Floppy. This is somebody who has looked better than ever with a leash on his team. <laughs> And Buzz's 3 HP will not be enough. It's a solo hold from Floppy on the B site, who has to be Elysia's right-hand man as of late. That was individuals right there, right? That was Astralis in great positions, but better individuals. Floppy killed both players trying to entry. Third guy is just hoping to have a free plant with teammates covering other angles. And then over on the A site, Device has a great place to hold from, right? That pocket to hold an A push should usually get you a kill easily, and he couldn't do it that time, even though he got two in mid. They needed a bit more, they couldn't get it. Now you're stuck with Glocks. We played laser tag with Halzerk yesterday. <laughs> I've got a great picture of Halzerk <laughs> that I'll I'll put up after the video <laughs> comes up, I guess. <laughs> that was very it was a good day. JT. He was sniping. He was sniping. He was sniping. Yeah. He, was doing, he hit me with a couple flicks. And he's been feeling it in CS2 as well. Sitting outside of the ramp. Stralis just burning off the clock. You know, on the ride back from Laser Tag as well, he was talking about how much Elige and Floppy has been sending to the CS2 devs, you know, making sure that they give them input and whatnot. And I like Halzerk's attitude as well. He said, I'll let them fix the game. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'll just let like. them fix the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, Halzerk has nothing to complain about. All is good as far as he's concerned. Yeah. You know, but gets, a, gets a, a little upset sometimes mid game. And I used to be a big critic for that because I thought he'd be, you know, banging desks and kind of spoiling the atmosphere. But I think actually he's improved a lot in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, he's cooled off. But uh, I think compared to complexity then to now, I think that's one of the best parts is like. You know, Elyse brings like probably a little bit of toxicity, but then also a little bit more will to win. And I feel like Complexity needed that badly because mm -hmm. it just felt like they would just be dead without someone getting angry about them losing. And Halzer yeah. would get yeah. mad, but not in a way that Elyse would fire you up to figure out the path to victory. And I think Elyse really brings that. The experience, they can believe in it. And uh, 
Yeah, one of his first interviews, once he joined Complexity, Elise straight up and came and said, like, you know, getting to the major just isn't enough for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not here to just make it to the major, which was kind of Complexity's whole shtick. Wow, has he ever elevated them. To the bottom of the ramp they go, and Stairs gonna gun down JT. Floppies trade their blind, and Stairs able to recover that second, but pressure still continued to be output. Through the cave comes a liege. MP9 just oh, the one. Oh, that smoke isn't good enough. Man advantage held onto for Astralis. That helps Device and Astralis so massively. Look at the bomb, it would have been dropped. I mean, actually, he wouldn't have been able to get the trade, I think is the big thing here. So the re-aggro on B. What happens here for Hauser? Ooh, that kill means it's gonna be the A site, but Grim gets it. Oh. Back in the game where complexity. I like Hauser's rotation because now he puts himself closer to the middle. Yep. But there's still time for this lurk to take place. This actually might be a nice counterplay from Blame F. Yeah, you know, knowing Blame. that Grim's got to go back to his site. Man, he just thrives in these kinds of moments, and Blame F taking his sweet time to come and wrap around the A site, looking to split onto Grim with device. A, a jump spot, right? Something just to bait. And, oh, wow, perfect. it's perfect. Yeah, perfect timing. That's sick mid round. Beautifully orchestrated. There is still time to stop the plant. Oh, oh no. It's... Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I got excited. Halzer jumping oh. up, spotted by device, who's now just got this cover to work with. And Halzer concerned about the second T. No chance. Beauty of a 2K coming between Device and Blame F. And if you've got two Astralis players in a clutch, those are the two I'd Those pick. are the two you'd want, yeah. You know, no offense, Bore up, Stare, Buzz, but it's hard to compete with Device and Blame F. They cast a big shadow. That's mm -hmm. for sure. I, 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 I thought this was a very high level round from both parties. It was interesting how a lot of it came down to this one smoke that allowed uh, Elise to get traded out from Device here. And that was a misplay from, I guess, a CT smoke, I'm not sure exactly who threw it for sure. You could tell now, I guess, looking at the smokes, but I couldn't tell in that moment. Am I crazy, or? I mean, for unrelated reasons, yeah, I think you're a little Well, crazy. the colors on the smokes, right? Mm. They're, they're slightly different now, right? Yeah, they're so supposed to be, but I swear sometimes my CT smokes turn out to be, you know, yellow. Yeah. I don't know. So I've been talking about this idea that now, like in the elbow smoke, you can nade it open, but you know, before you could flash through a smoke and run through. Mm -hmm. Now you can blow open a smoke, check it, and then push through as if it was a totally safe push completely, which is something you just couldn't do in CSGO no matter what. You could disrespect a smoke in CSGO, but you'd always be running a risk. Now you're literally not. It's very po powerful counterplay, especially to what was an imposing and overwhelming elbow smoke for map control from CT side on this map. A push got caught just now. That ever-present lurk from Blame F to give man advantage before the pack of Astralis players commit into B. And this bomb's gonna go down no contest. Nothing floppy can do about it with smokes up on the lane. Obviously, we talked about the heroic lineup and the fact that yeah, it's a little bit of a tryout. You know, you're trying to look good if you're a guy like Xyphon. You know your time is limited. These players on Astral is kind of looking over their shoulder as well. We'll see if anybody puts up a big performance on the road to the Royal Arena, but it's a fall off of the B site. Four standing for the Danes. All is good. Yeah, I mean, if you know this is going to be your last tournament, you're going to just, you know, I mean, you're going to enjoy it, I think. Like, regardless, it's it might not even be personal. It's just you're on a, a team that's going to make roster moves. All other things aside, uh, this team in and of itself has had promising results. I actually think, you know, if no roster changes were happening, I think it all honestly comes down to the opportunity. There are some players that may be on the market in a moment that Astralis can't look past. Mm -hmm. Or for whatever reason, it's lined up that they could get them. Okay. Um, you put the politics... Uh, away for a second or just look at the, the lineup before that opportunity. I think they would have just stayed together happily um, and tried to make this work for a little bit longer uh, because... They're making progress. They're making progress for sure. And Blames, not a new IGL, but trying again and doing a pretty good job, I would say, for sure.
Grim's looking to press through this. A player gets caught and a ton of damage versus Halzerk with no trade frag as well. So suddenly Grim's aggression seems far riskier. Couple shots pinging on the cement above his head. And he's not having any of that. Leans back into Donut. Astralis, plenty of time to piece this one together. With the comfort of a 5v4 and a 21 health Halzerk, who looks to get aggressive. Mid control becomes a question. Halzerk presses down the ramp. Those pushes are so powerful right now. They were using them a bit a couple months ago, but now you think in CS2 on Ancient, you want to basically spam it. A site could get taken over, but playing from Donut is totally fine for the moment. Let's see. Two going to push out slightly. If there's a mistake from Grimm and they don't make any noise, mm -hmm. then it'll become too late. Hauser's watching his back. They haven't gone back to take up mid. Grimm, was he? Oh, a little unawares and definitely loses it. And there goes the round completely. Oy. Feels like that smoke grenade out towards middle. Midside donut got blocked off like 10 seconds sooner. He was worried someone's behind it. They're a little bit slow on protocols though, right? Because they had Grim and Donut, which means they have vision on mid, but they have Halzerk watching his flank from the uh, B site because they're worried about a mid lurk. Why? Well, Donut got smoked off. Donut got smoked off yep. earlier, but then he needs to come back to reclaim it, right? They need to they need to go deal yeah, with he, that problem, just, and then they can have movement on the map, but Astralis throw their smoke down donut, and then they have, they can do anything. I think if they looked at the map from complexity, be like, wow, they were just sitting there scared. Scared CS. And then Grim gets caught checking mid after the smoke comes up, yep. shot in the side. They just had the minimal amount of information, but not actually that much pressure from Astralis, right? Buzz coming through with that killer instinct. So Astralis, look at speedy, look at quick, look at sharp. Swinging out of the gate in response to the pistol and conversion out of complexity. Three in a row. And also kind of scared. Remember Grim, he was out in elbow last round. With the M4, decides to kind of crawl away. There was no playmaking outside of these A pushes. That's two rounds in a row. Complexity have lost a player on the A push. They've headed elsewhere. JT tucked into Polly's pocket. They know about him now, so it's going to have to be floppy to try and pull off some pressure. Maybe get him out of this with that support from ramp. Nice forward aggression coming out of complexity. But What's Halzerg watching right now? Uh, I, nothing. Oh, okay. He's just uh, at the, the ultra passive line. Yeah, yeah I didn't even realize he had a line there. Okay. Minimap's not lined up perfectly. Looks like he's staring at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my damn keystone? Yeah. <laughs> Halzer, do you have A? No, just CT spawn. The rest of the camp holding off. I mean, hey, complexity, they know they're down They held us late. This is a perfect setup from complexity. Forces Astralis to have to somehow unravel this, and maybe they bank on trade frags, but they've got Elise ready to swing the cave. They're so ready for they this. They got Floppy on the counter flash. JT, smoked off, floppy with the triple, and JT the last two. Damn. Now that is not scared CS. That's that it. is proactive setups from complexity, and look at the reward they reap. Why was that, that, why was that read so hard? Why did they know exactly what was going to happen late into the round? Well, there was no one pushing out of A. They had Grim with full mid control and a late elbow smoke. Nice. Floppy had his back to mid because they had Grim watching it. And Astral, maybe it's a pocket play from Astralis, but that's, I feel like that's just, um, that's good anti-strat out of complexity. They mm -hmm. were totally ready for that exact maneuver. Two rounds of pushing A and losing a player into a complete adaptation, lane control wrapped up with protocols in place that Astralis still didn't see. They didn't know if Elysia standing on the doorway. Now with that smoke that came out to the left, they might have precipitated the, uh, some kind of setup for complexity. Sure. And there's a chance that Floppy gets ISO'd and dies on the right, which actually means maybe they could have still won. So there's always also the off chance that Astralis knew what they were walking into, but had an idea for what to do to go to the next level. Well, Floppy has been stepping up in recent months and six rounds into this map versus Astralis, he's there again. 
Huge multi-kill in the gun round. Stare gets ahead of the Molotovs, already on the brink of the B site. And look at the pack of players right behind him. Floppy has no line of vision. JT's looking lonely. Oh, he's stuck back here, but... Oh, if he just peeked. The molly doesn't spread. And they're gonna fall victim to this, but he loses his support. Floppy goes down first. Double headshot out of G JT. Needed. This is his version, isn't it? And Alige makes sure that nobody else actually comes over the top of the ramp, but it's not like last round where you've got deep cave control, deep mid control, deep ramp control. This is complexity leaning back and giving Astralis free reign of the map. Still Util on the Opper for the defense. And Hulzerk with Grim next to him. They want the mid play. Oh, the oh timing! Oh my god. At least he trades, but it does cost Grim his life. He holds it steady. Again, we go into the 2v2. Again, it is Device and Blame F, but this time, Alige within the mix. Blame's got the bomb. Blame's got to be looking for Hauser, right? Surely. Does, does he walk this way? But Hauser no, playing no. outside of Temple, and Alige playing deep inside of Cave, knows that his back is compromised. So does Alige just do a lap here? Because it can't be late mid anymore at this timing. I think this is just a great move from Alige. But Blame F should be able to get this bomb down. Depends if he does it versus Banana or he might smoke this out. So we'll see. Smoke oh, an interesting ramp. plant. Plays cave. Or does he? He Dude. clears it and then looks at his own smoke oh, instead. But where can he go from here? This is such a <sighs> potentially good play from Blame F, but he's got to find that first kill. And he's got to find it before Halzerk shows up. Minimize the trade potential. A leash comes through, and it's a huge amount of cover. Yeah, ah! for Blame, no way! Oh. The headshot deep, read like a book, and burned like one too. Damn, take it easy, Blame F. That was nicely done. A leash gave him that one chance that he needed to. Did not have to push the smoke, but that's the play Blame needed to win early. They could have waited this out. But they had no idea where he was. Smoked. God, I wonder. I wonder if you you look at that. If you look at that again, is there any way to not justify being patient so early into the bomb? That smoke coming out before the plant even began. So we're talking about five seconds left on that smoke, probably. Yep. Uh, Alish had pushed through. Knows that it wasn't uh, a cave play. Probably thought that blame was going cave in the post plan. Sure. So. And he almost did. He almost did. But uh, sometimes they're right there, right under your nose. God, blame F loves to play in a clutch. Thrives in the spotlight. His fourth and fifth frag posts Astralis fourth round. And it answers complexity off of that convincing lane setup. They will try to go right back to it. This is a copied situation from two rounds prior. Alige, oh, double kill into the elbow. He's mad. Yeah, he's pissed. He's looking to start up the war machine for Cole and with a 3v5 at hand, Buzz has gotten through the defense. He's already passed the line. MP9 gets damage in. Buzz on a single point of HP gets cleaned up by Grim, but that does unravel the mid setup. We've got a device and stair 2v4. Oh, missed shot from Device. Now bomb in possession for complexity. We're going to go back and forth, and this could be, honestly, a real sign of things to come throughout this entire series. Two top 10 teams at the moment in CS2. Complexity looking for another Grand Finals after their IEM Sydney run. Astralis looking for home turf in front of a very Danish crowd. Dares first in Donut, doubles back to A main, and with Liege leaning in the bomb site, there is a very small chance that Floppy gets bested. No, sir. Mm. Floppy off the angle, and again, it's what worked for their one other gun round. Liege quickly up onto lane, secures outer B, and in this instance has to turn back to elbow, but not even a contest. Two players before they even see him.
I don't know. It's with that uh, smoke getting blown open. On T-side, we'll see Elysian on the other side of it playing elbow. Um, as he was in, in CSGO, still doing the same thing in CS2. But now he has more options to do to to play with. And he can also have he also has more expected reactions from T opponents. People are gonna be not just respecting that elbow smoke anymore, boosting over top of it and waiting. They're going to be actively playing through it, constantly making you turn around if possible, but Elige is ready. A little awkward out of spawn. People changing directions here. Borup is going to head elbow instead. Early nade damage is very nice. Mid control as well. Again, the climb up falls to the favor of complexity. And Floppy is pulling off players already. Device is single Galil. Oh. JT tries to go for the flank, and that's two kills, but the bomb delayed a liege, killing Blame F. And I think that's a result of that weird fumbling Why of the bomb. Why is the bomb delayed? That's the thing is we saw Borup running towards B, but then instead he takes elbow. I think bomb gets changed hands then. Mm. We would have had to see a replay of the map at the start, but they awkwardly left spawn. And I think that this is a result of that. Okay. And a shame because Device just picks up that kill. Could have been a bomb plant inside a B. Could yeah. have forced the retake attempt. But uh, Devil's in the details. And complexity dancing on Astralis' graves here in this one. It's all the action outside of B that's working out. Or sort of yet the frag right now. One kill. To kick off T side, but. We'll see how much that means when we switch over. Now an even more dire spot. And they move Halzerk with the AWP over to the B site, so Floppy changes bomb sites, but he's about to get a handful. He's got Grim to help him. Here's it coming. Look at it jump over the angles. Very desperate round for Astralis. It's just going to get mopped up. Mm. Four kills for Floppy. He says, thanks, Halzerk, for the Ecos. Easy does it. Just no problem. Hell of a half already for Floppy, despite how much parity there's been. Denmark, the country that starts Christmas three months in advance, folks, if you want to come by. And you like Glog. It's also the country that uh, burns the most candles per capita in the entire world. Well, Astralis might be burning the candle at both ends right now. Yeah, this one's almost wrapped up. The first half down to the final two rounds. And Halzerk, this A push has been punished almost every time they've tried it. For once, it'll give them the 5v4. That was the door left open for Astralis early on this T-side, was the kill inside of A-Main, and Elyse taking a bunch of damage, but still getting the better of Blame F, leaving all that's left of Astralis to try and slam into the B-play, but... Oh, that's gonna get covered. Slight rotation on the smoke. No, oh, he gets it! Wow, perfect lineup out of Floppy. Fire on his feet didn't make Device's life any easier. Now it's almost too hard to get this bomb plant down. So much damage done. Bore up. Well, Grim uh, will we'll kill his last remaining teammate. And now in a one-on-five situation, first kill up. And oh, oh, he's starting to clap him. No way, right? Surely not. Seven HP off of the Molotov. And okay. Halzerk shutting him down. More kills in this round for Borup than the rest of the map thus far. But they're clean. They're clean. He's getting excited about it, but... Uh... <laughs> Would have been a good opening to maybe plant that bomb, but how, how good would it have felt in a 1v1 instead? So this is a slight mistake here from Blame F. Elyse, Elyse actually plays very carefully on the approach, but doesn't spot Blame F. Still gets the kill. Complexity come up with another round. We've got three MAC-10s and an Eagle coming in to round 12 here for Astralis. Okay, two back. Blame F. Making the most of his teammates' efforts. And this is a wise call, obviously, for Blame. Comes forward with the Lurk. He actually doesn't press all the way through. I love it. Gets Starin AK, upgrades his MAC-10 into a full-fledged rifle as well. 
And because of that threat of the potential red room push, Halzerk has to give up Temple. He's got no angle from deep CT. So just, just Blame F's sheer presence is enough to get him off of that original A hold. Now there is no gun for Buzz at the moment, but that frees him up to get a little curious. Oh. Miss shot out of Halzerk. A threat from Buzz up close. There's going to be a very critical duel that comes down between Grim and Stare inside of Donut. And if he dies in Donut, then Blame F on the bomb site is compromised. But Buzz bests the off, and Stare gets one back as well. This was all Blame F, and he's the closer. The closer of the half. As Astralis nab a fifth off of the back of the double Mac 10. strike ready to rejoice as Copenhagen's coveted crown ready to be claimed. The return of the Royal Arena and a chance for a new monarch to now be occupying the throne. He sees the fee, it's three! Ice Cold Rops! Kadian, does he realize he's close? Oh! Kadian! In front of the home crowd! Show match is underway. Oh, but what's that? The savior! It's Nicholas Bentner! Simple, he's taking down Kade as well. Dupree keeps going, the time has run out! Tonight, a Dane will win in this Royal Arena. Wow, what a matchup this could truly be. History is going to be made. Come new Copenhagen! Let's get rowdy! And it's rain inside the corner. The stoic giant of phase denied. Oh. Give it up for your fall finals champion, Heroic! Here be it. They know we're out of swings now. Yeah. I'll tell you, I just saw his shadow again. Sun, sun double sun. I'm right through this. One more. One more, one more. Nice! nice. Nice indeed. That was the adaptation that got Complexity's CT side truly up and running. Screw the A push. Just bank on Floppy. What an anchor he is at the base of the ramp. Munched up some easy anti ecos as well, switching sights. But uh, it was kind of that aggressive CT setup down middle, climbing up lane that I think really got Astralis, or excuse me, got Complexity rolling. Mm -hmm. So two rounds, the advantage after their CT half of Ancient. Astralis' map pick, and they will now look to cruise on the CT half. Three sets of dual Berettas. Some people are struggling CT Ancient right now. It's hard to say if there's objective map biases or if it's preferential um 
It's still early days, of course. So I wonder how they're feeling about their five and seven rounds at the moment. JT trying to show shadow. Clears it and goes for utility. Does Buzz swing? Mm, yes, he does. Oh, but if there's no actual fake commitment behind this, this is going to be really bad for complexity. So JT has to swing out, but nothing else is spotted. And now the attack has to come in fast. Oh, and Bora, it does. He can't handle with the dual Berettas, and Elise gets the headshot. Challenge out of cave. Device will pick up one. Bomb Planter comes off of it as Alish gets himself a second kill in this pistol. But as the Molly burns out, Alish has three players ahead of him. Look at this lineup. Look at this potential oh, ace from Alish. He's got him running. Blame F sprinting for the hills as Alish does all the heavy lifting. Oh, he's excited about this. And there's actually still a chance that he grabs the ace. Blame will shoot a bit. Alish coming up from behind but ends up dying. But still, he's won the round. That's eight rounds here for Complexity. They are in a good way at the moment. We know how important pistols can be, of course. So map side, map biases uh, aside, it's a two-round lead coming out of the first half. A pistol to kick off the second. And a real perfect attack. I mean, no. the thing is that Buzz could see that no one was hitting the A site. So he got info as fast as possible. But that just speaks to how well organized they were when it came to attacking at that moment also, over on the B side. You know, beautiful Molotov deep lane as well, right? Just cancels out any rotator. Easy mow down for Ali. He oh, goes Jesus. eight frags in two rounds. And just like that, he is tied with Floppy at the top of the board. Complexity making mincemeat of the mid push. Yeah, that perfect timing and angle right there in the spray down. Eight kills in two rounds. Honestly, eat up because... Lots of key kills in that first half from Elise. 2Ks and 3Ks on rifles. I feel like Floppy's so stoked to get to play next to Elise, right? 18 kills apiece. He was the star of the show first half. Happy to have some help. Most decorated American... Oh, no. CS go Wait, player. hold on. Warp's gonna die. He's the only one here. Oh. Again, they're coming in from cave. Oh, that's awkward. Warp, what happened right there? I don't know, man. I mean, damage on JT and Floppy, but it's that two was kills a and a bomb plant a Careless, right? That, that was a bit careless right there. There was almost no reason to not expect they could be ready for a push like that. Very standard setup, uh, but not the risk they can afford to take at the moment. The best way to deal with device and blame F is to not fight them at all. And right now, it has just been the B-side on repeat these last two rounds. Complexity coming through with that killer instinct. Wasting no time in this T-side. Looking to keep four alive in what was a gun round as well. Did they throw some kind of fake or any, maybe they threw some utility, I don't know, uh, over towards A. And it could have also been a miscom. But uh, that's two positions where he needs to get his or at least stay alive. And there's not even a way for him to fall back. Look at how big this site is. It's like a parking lot. There's barely any cover for him to get to. He's like, yeah, rush B against Borup. No contingency plan. And it just leaves Device on the M4. So, I mean, I mean that round right there, that's Astralis' best chance at putting up a CT half. Yeah, that's just so, so important. Wow. This is their map pick. Oh, my God, oh. the zoning. Second aid doesn't kill him, though. Stair stays alive. Hanging on for dear life. Don't even know how he survived both those grenades. Not even armor to his name. Finally, he'll die. Yeah, no chance at escape there. Too many sets of prying eyes from complexity. It has to be device, it seems, with that M4. Currently tucked in cave, which does look like the point of contact complexity want for what is, again, another B hit. Can Borup draw them into him? Nah, they molly him out. Perfect utility so far, but he still survives. <laughs> Honestly, Gun goes no. dry. Halzert gets a double. 
and looks to lead the charge with Bomb into B versus Blame, leaning back on a Deagle and Kevlar. But this complexity are just chewing through Astralis here on Ancient. It's pure tragedy. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. Like, this couldn't... It's the nightmare half from Astralis. Every single setup fails. Every risk is called out. Barely get a chance to find, fight back right now, and their key rifle rounds have looked like the weakest of all, so... Complexity just have to find a way to lose this game, basically, at this point. And they can. <laughs> call these call these guys Sherlock because yeah. they might they might find a way. They might sniff out a few clues. Yeah, no, when it's phase on the other side, I understand. Yeah. When it's Mouse, yeah, that can Well with Mouse it was like stomps, with phase it was comebacks. Mm -hmm. Phase been come back coming back versus everybody. You lose focus for one second. Phase has been coming back for nine months, bro. Yeah, that's true. They are so bad. That flame is bigger than ever. Yeah. The center flame on the molly, massive. They stuck a little napalm in those molotovs. Yeah. Yep, we are very sick at Ancient. <laughs> Another gun round coming out of Astralis. Second gun round of the CT side. Trailing by six with complexity two off of the map one win. It's gotta be now, and sure enough, JT just creeps into Device's scope. He's looking for a second, but oh, a no. shot! Oh, but he recovers wow. versus Grim in the background. Elise is the third victim, as show. Device says, enough's enough. No. But still, there's a chance, because the B site has a bit of an opening. Blame F, deep on long, sprays for the double. It's a full house between the two brightest stars of Astralis. It's enough, it's a chance, it's not too late. That was cool. That was cool out of advice. I mean, the first shot being missed only made that more spectacular. So. Mm. Couldn't get anything back. Bag them, tag them. Took them out to pasture. They said, let's go back to mid. Let's give it another try, JT. No one's smoking out cave. It's almost suspicious. Stare. Take it a small risk playing out here in front of it. Whoa, oh, and he gets boy. spotted, but he doesn't get the kill. How long is he going to hang out? You run out of the bullet, Stare. Ooh, and he ooh. finds it. Ramp push denied by Floppy, but Stare is able to just get that little bit of health left. So nicely recovered from Stare. But that causes a bit of a panic rotate out of Astralis who go into red room. That was A4 privilege right there. Yes, sir. Wow. There's been a lot of A1S action as well, but... Stare making the most of the A4. Halzerk and Grim. I don't know what Stare got up to after he traded those out. For all they know, he's fallen back down through oh, a cave, but he decides to push it. We've got some roaming going on. And yep. Oh, wow. Four. Here we go. Jesus. Doubles his kills in one round. I thought bro was dead after the first few bullets getting missed outside a cave, but that's why it's me talking about him. Yeah. It's a nice one. The device again being a nuisance with the op outside of Donut. You know, and luckily for Stare, I mean, if Complexity come through that doorway, a second sooner, he's clearing that close pocket. Both teams getting active. Stare comes out with the better timing, and we have Complexity again looking to slam into middle. Devices off has been on Donut, but this time it is Buzz point blank. And Blame F able to tuck into Cubby. I'm not going to lie, this is sort of a, a silly reason for not making a play like that, but right now... Running through a smoke, that can cost you a few frames. Okay. That can actually just make it harder to get that kill. Mm. Oh, the Floppy. smoke nade interaction, I should say. Wow, there. Just the one. Grim gets past as Op is on cycle. Oh, and Halzerk instant headshot. But luckily, the cave player, he got one. JT quick on the 
Flank into cave gives Halzerk just enough space to get in with the plant. It's Blame F in another clutch, working with Buzz. Coming in on both ends of the bomb site and each with a kill apiece. It is all good for Astralis. Again, we said that that, that one gun round that they come back after Borup dies on B site, that one goes down quickly. They had to make the comeback start uh -huh. then and there, and they have. This is a streak of round wins now for Astralis. Closing that gap to only three. Yeah, that's very nice. And I mean, I I, I like the style that uh, Complexity win when they're up rounds to try to make plays like this. But the fact that Astralis can deny them means there's not going to be any momentum built in. It starts off 4v5. And in the 2v2 retake, while they walk in, comfy as ever. And find two easy fights, so... I think after... After having a lead, I think you also, in general, do want to keep pace and try to speed up uh, your strats and slow down if things don't go wrong after that. I think sometimes if you, you keep a lead and then you go slow, super slow in the next rounds, then it becomes obvious if you start losing and you want to throw in something very quick. You also do it when the economy is at its worst for your opponents. So... But now that Astralis have survived that, it sort of resets the situation. I think they can see now that uh, this is not going to be an easy win for Complexity. Even though they're close, there's actually a great chance for the CT comeback to take place. Minimal utility here for Complexity. And look how little attention is going over towards the A site. Not a single player here early into the round establishing on elbow. Pushing down B early on. That's what everybody's doing at the moment. Uh, leaning back into A in time. T's working with three smokes, no flashes. I think there's a part of complexity like, oh, let's get this round over with and go A. But they know exactly what the default is right now. And so it sort of forces your hand to play a bit slower and think more carefully. But it just shows that they're in this to try to squeeze the most possible juice they can out of this, even if they've only got pistols. Red Room smoke first, but there is no real potential for the mid-split, and Stair knows that. Being deep out cave for the second, but it's at least enough to draw them back, so they've unraveled the forward B setup of Astralis just by throwing out the Red Room smoke. They've gotten Util back out of the A defense, and Blame F's leaning over here. If Floppy and JT can go barreling into the B site, you are indeed up against the two weaker players of Astralis at the moment. Oh, this is a really good creep, though. The, the jump spot doesn't see this. JT, well, he'll die. Okay, because Stair's got this covered. Yeah, they were hoping something would go well there. Luckily, he wasn't pushed forward in cave or anything at that moment. We get this three-man cohort up through lane into the cave. Stair confirms it, still worried about ramp, but he draws them out into Borup, who cleans up an easy couple kills. Device there to help, and it is still Astralis closing this distance ever closer to a tied game. Yeah, now you could lose it at any moment, so it's still scary playing these CT rounds, but um, promising all the same. I... I think a, a more default round of that complexity want to be able to try to win is a, is a late take on mid. I don't know if spawns will change that at all, but I think trying to win mid after it's maybe given up in the same way that Astralis tried to take it from them before is a thought. But here is a pure default coming in. The first attention from JT on cave is a very common occurrence here on complexity these days. And Stare getting busy, jumping up, and will he get this spot actually? Ooh, That's yes, pretty massive. <gasps> Chance at the mid recovery. Alige feeling like he has to do it all. They took Him and mid floppy. Late. They've lost that B lane, but they've confirmed at least one deep ramp. They've gotten Buzz to burn his smoke. It's little utility already for Astralis at a minute 15. Single smoke on blame. That's it. If I'm complexity, I'm happy to take the 4v4. I think, you know, Stair almost got that material advantage and got away. Now Device. Goes up for the high ground peak. Might find that opportunity. Oh. No, it's Halzerk this time. 4v3. Looking to secure the 12th. Looking and to guarantee OT. It's been slightly tragic over and over again. Borup over on the B site by himself. 7 and 20. They need a lot from him. Without stare. 
who at least has had an uptick in the second half of this map. It was a real struggle between him and Bora, but things have started to change. Blame F, can he cut off what could potentially be the Elyse Red Room split? Does Buzz find timing in mid? Because Elyse is about to get an attack from the backside. We've got a flash going over. Elyse gets the entry. Borup's also down. And sure enough, the B site now belongs to Complexity. Perfect timing. The perfect timing. squeeze. And it was a critical Halzerk duel versus device that makes this one possible. No kidding. And like Halzerk has not had the chance really to play with his op so far. We've seen him get shot on the side or when it's a trade too late or something like that. But here's the, the one that makes the world of difference. The one that makes up for all the rest of them. 12 rounds off this, off of a proper default, the late mid control into trading out Stair, who was tormenting them earlier on with their with these cave pushes. That was dealt with. I think this in complexity's mind is the exact kind of round you want to be able to say you win. Moving into the next. You still haven't won the game. You know that Astralis are getting close, but now you've shown Astralis that when you play it slow and methodically and thorough, you can outdo them. This is a bit scary for Astralis to try to copy and paste their same default again. Man, Elish is such a closer. Yeah. He's such a closer. Dude, that timing, was, that timing was immaculate. I mean, if he comes in any late, any more late, it's selfish, actually. And instead, it, it, it takes out Blame F and completely wins the round by displacing Borup. Even if Borup looks this way and gets the kill on Elish, it's already too late. Sight's being taken over. So whether or not Borup got that kill, I think it was done. Puts an end to the Astralis CT reign of terror. One round short of getting on fire. Elish surpassing Floppy in the kill department off that last round as well. So crucial. Again, Halzerk, that op headshot onto device, cracked open the rotation, got all those players climbing up lane into the B site. Borup needed help and it never arrived because Elise just cuts it all off. Three attempts to close out Ancient, the map pick of Astralis. Complexity right into the ramp boost. Already posted up to try and get device again. Two rounds in a row, maybe miss shot. No. JT goes up the ramp, balls are turned. He just stops there from coming out cave and getting anything. And the B site, the victim again. Complexity know what they want, they get what they want. And they will have to now bank on Blame F and Buzz. Oh. All that remains for Astralis on Ancient is this two versus four. The utility is suffocating as Blame F's position has been found out. He is stuck behind the box and dealt with swiftly. Buzz presses out through the smoke and dies to Grim. And it is indeed the North Americans continuing with form in CS2 for the 12-9 close on Ancient. An attempt at the comeback. Solid rounds from Blame F. Clutches as well for the Danes, but not enough to stop Cole this time. And we go map two, overpass next. Yeah, the Astralis comeback ultimately just cosmetic. It's complexity to be sealing up Ancient. And we've got to talk about the hot start from Floppy. He ends this map with 24 kills, just shy of 100 ADR. What a start. That's what you want to see from Ricky. This is the floppy we have been getting ever since Elise joined the roster. So much more solid as a piece can just focus on his crosshair. The thing is that when you're playing alongside Elise, you know one of your angles is covered. He's taking more space, he's holding his angles better, and in all in all, this is the complexity that we wanted to see if they wanted to continue and build off of the Sydney performance. And of course, this was Astralis' map pick, and you know, I am gonna put some attention to the kill feed uh, on the side of Astralis, because we see Device, we see Blame F, uh, but everybody else kind of struggling to really get any impact, particularly when we're coming onto that second half. Um, yeah, it was an uphill battle from the beginning. That has more or less been the story for Astralis in recent memory. The fact that it really has been the two-man show, Device and Blame App. You'll get the occasional contributions from a couple of the other players, but I think once again, this has kind of been the, the same tale where there is a, there's a very obvious reason that Astralis are going to the lengths that they have been to try to poach and just dismantle Heroic because they need some more firepower, they need some more help, and it's not coming in the players that they have at present. Yeah, that's why all those rumors out there, they're circulating. But I'll tell you what's not circulating, or maybe what was, was full 
Colby's impact during that game. We already talked about it, but let's run some highlights because I know you're a North American. You want to be <laughs> indulging uh, in this moment as well because, uh, yeah, we've been waiting for this kind of consistency coming out of Floppy for quite a long time. And we're talking about, you know, Unleash, uh, Elise rather, unlocking that potential coming out of Floppy. Right. And with, with Floppy and just how fantastic he's been lately, it I really does make such a big difference in terms of the cultural change that Elise has bestowed upon him and the fact that he now can just focus so much more on his game because before in the previous iteration of complexity with Fang, so oftentimes we had to see some some kind of gamble plays coming out of him. Something didn't go according to plan. Maybe Fang would die in a certain position, and then Floppy has to overextend. He tries has, has to try to play outside of himself. But when Floppy is able to just center himself on the game that's in front of him, when he really only has to focus on one angle at a time, he said it in a pregame interview. He said it in one of those reels we had before the game even started. He idolizes people like Rops, and Rops is one of those masters of just focusing on an angle, winning the duel. And something that I've never had to worry about with Floppy, mechanics. When he does just have to focus on a 50-50 fight, he is so sharp in them. We also get to see him smiling as well, which is something that we love to see out of Floppy. Uh, I want to touch upon Elise, too, because we talk about, you know, may maybe the uh, unseen impact that Elise has brought with so much tenure, so much experience. Then we go into the second half of this game. He gets a 4K in the uh, second pistol, then the round after, another 4K. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, ignited Elise in this map. Beyond these two rounds, I mean, in the first half, Elise was doing some, some great work, but I really, love where Elige thrives is in the mid round for this team. He's great at openers, don't get me wrong, but it's where the second stage of the round is underway and he finds the perfect time to strike. He knows exactly what he needs to do in order to create a win condition for the team. He's one of the players that Complexity needed so desperately. One that can play outside of the system at times, sometimes just find that one gap in the defense and then finds the perfect opportune time to strike. Well, we've been talking so much about, you know, the experience that Elige has been bringing to the server for the side of complexity. So I want to hear from Floppy himself exactly how Elige has been changing the game for the complexity camp. Now, since adding Elige, we've seen improvements to complexity. We've seen what I would say is a better looking mood for you guys in and out of the server. Specifically, your performance has also improved on the server as well. So what do you put that down to? What is it that Elige is adding? What are the differences? Give me some details on this, please, mate. Yeah, so I think John brings a lot to the table in terms of our micro. We talk, we talk about a lot of the little things, which add up to, you know, one round at a time that can cost us like entire games. So I think John is really good at uh, talking about our micro. And obviously you can have like arguments about stuff like that, but he makes it really easy to talk about stuff so people don't get like upset over things. So I think uh, in that regard, it's, it's really chill to just talk about our mistakes and what we could do different with them. Would you say it's a lot easier to improve right now with this team? I'd say so, yeah. If, if you can get along outside the server, it's really important to get along uh, inside the server as well. So I think it's really important. Love that little phrase from Floppy, one round at a time, because that's what I feel like complexity maybe we're a little bit guilty of before Elise came in, right? You just see him get ahead of themselves, maybe get the mental not in the right place. Great to have such an experienced player come and, you know, reset that mentality for them. The fact that they're able to learn from their mistakes so much easier be the, because the conversations are easier to have with a veteran presence like Elige. Elige has lifted huge trophies in the past and complexity were sorely lacking anybody that was able to do that. He knows when there's a good time to strike, he knows to pounce on these opportunities. Right, okay, so if you're a Stralis, you've come into that second half, you've been absolutely deleted by Elige two rounds in a row with uh, eight frags total. Then we come into round 15 and things don't get any easier for them, do they? No, and this is why we sometimes just point the finger when it comes to Astralis. I mean, this round is not going badly by any means, but there's kind of an overstep right here that you'll see on this B-bomb site. And then Complexity, they aren't even really having to enact any kind of plan. They just recognize that there's a player out of position on the bomb site, and then they just swarm. They're already in good positions, but you don't you don't even have to see them using their utility that much. And it does seem like there might be some kind of disconnects there on the Astralis side, un unnecessary in terms of peeking off of that B-bomb site. And then we just get Complexity not even having to show their whole hand, because that's another great thing about being complexity in this kind of situation, it was a gift. That round was a gift for them. And it gives them such a leg up when we're looking at the round distribution as well, right? Four rounds off the bat coming into that second half. And uh, just to phrase this correctly, that was Astralis's pick. Of course, we're going to be going into the pick of complexity. That's going to be overpass, and we're going to be chatting a bit more about it after this break.
The pick of complexity in Overpass coming up next, which uh, by the numbers, Maui is favoring them pretty heavily. When we're looking at coming uh, into CS2, we've seen complexity playing it four times, winning four times, zero losses on their cards. But uh, when we're looking at Astralis, there's a certain bomb site that we can't really underestimate when the Danes get on the server. Which site is that? Uh, it depends how you want to frame that, actually, yeah. Freya, because the A defense is impressive for Astralis. You've got Blame F, you've got Device. That should be one of the best one-two punches in the world for defending it. But when it comes to the B site, you have the rest of the gang. And we kind of have already been telling the story of what it comes to be when Astralis are playing and focusing on that trio. And I do think that for many reasons, that is probably why Complexity picked this map. Okay. They see that trio of bore up, stare, buzz on that B site. And if they're just going to play how they've always been playing, I think Complexity are seeing an open bomb side. Yeah, because we're seeing Astralis, you know, starting on that CT side. So what I'm hearing you're saying is Complexity are going to be uh, favoring attacking towards the B bomb side, right? I would be shocked if Complexity in like in good faith actually attack A more than three times. Honestly, <laughs> honestly. I don't want, I wouldn't want to mess with Blame F. I wouldn't want to mess with Device. Fair and, enough. And trust me, if it's, if it's Borup, stare and buzz, I want all the smoke. Give it, give it all. <laughs> I want to see Complexity just charging in there, throwing all the variety of executes. Obviously, you know, push back the defenders on A a little bit. Don't make it so obvious every single round. But I think the game plan is quite clear for Complexity here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've talked about the strengths and weaknesses kind of in one shot for the side of Astralis. So speaking of the T side of Complexity, um, where do you think is uh, kind of the, the biggest punch in their wheelhouse at the moment? If you were going to fixate on a, one particular aspect of that offensive side for Complexity. Well, I, I want to... I I do want to say that if you do give, if you do just have a one dimensional game plan, if they are just going to be going towards B repeatedly and just trying to hammer it over and over again, you open up yourself to the pot potential and possibility of being flanked from connector. I think Blame F is probably going to be working towards that area quite a bit in this one. Even Device will probably send the off there at times. And uh, if you're it, like, what you're trying to do for complexity is just keep Astralis' defense honest. Like, mm. you can't actually simply just rush it every single time because, I mean, we saw we saw moments from people on Astralis, even if they didn't have a great, great kill counts, people like Borup even had like a really flashy 3K. And if you just present him those types of fights, that's when his mechanics can do some, some damage, but it's just that you have to throw a little bit of confusion their way. Yeah, and we're talking about two teams that have, you know, a very deep understanding of this map. We've seen Astralis, you know, not afraid to be picking into this or leaving it uh, as a third decider map when we go to uh, a series gone by. But if we're looking at individuals from complexity, because we've been praising, you know, Floppy, Elige, rightly so, so much coming up with Ancient. Um, what kind of impact do you see them having uh, overall on the map of Overpass? Well, I do think that this is another map where we just saw a great performance from Floppy and has another great opportunity. He's been doing a lot of great lurk work on this map. And I do want to see with the pack, with people like JT, with Halzerk, if they can just also make sure they take space safely away from Astralis, because Again, I'm, I'm really focusing on that B attack, but if the pack mm -hmm. of players for complexity can just end up taking some map control and just making things a little bit awkward for Astralis, I think this is a c closed case. I love that you mentioned JT. We get the man himself uh, on screen because back in Sydney, um, it was the T-size that really impressed me. He was being so proactive with the cooling, some great mid rounds coming in. So particularly when we're coming on to overpass and having to be, you know, super adaptable when we're talking about, uh, you know, one bomb site being a little bit more bolstered than the other. I'm interested to see tactically how he's going to be approaching this. Right. And I do think that with, with JT and and for complexity as a whole. One thing is that even though for quite some time they were kind of scraping around the, the 12th to 15th rank range, I would say that Overpass even then was one of their maps that they were very methodical about. They took map control very well, even when they were playing with Fang. They gave a lot of the top teams in the world a run for their money in 2022. I remember they took this map from FaZe mm. and that was a, a big, big scalp to take because it showed the diversity of openers that this team has. And it's not like when they've added a liege, they've suddenly lost those. And so they can they can have explosive plays towards short water if they want to do something towards long A, like a run boost for Halzerk. The world is their oyster on this map. It is a map that they have so frequently picked in the past. I thought in this veto, though, they could have gone a couple different directions. Mm. I'm glad that they kind of roll it back to this one, even though, like we've mentioned, Astralis do sometimes pick this map, but I just think the game planning is where it's going to be key for complexity. There's one name that we haven't really mentioned on the side of complexity. Um, that's Grim. Where's his impact going to be uh, on this map of Overpass, 
expect him to be uh, maybe bolstering up a few more flashy plays. It's not like he was playing badly, obviously, back on Ancient, but uh, I'd like to see some more some more style coming out of this kid. Right, and for, for Grimm, I, I think that in some ways, since Elyse has joined this team, he's he, it's not that he's necessarily fallen off, it's just that he's had to do less, and sometimes that's because the opening plan goes so well for Complexity that Grimm becoming in as a trade fragger in some of these situations, I mean, when JT's getting a couple of kills on the entries, or Elyse for that matter, there's only so much he can do, and Floppy's been such a good closer that it seems like Grimm has almost lost his star power in some ways, and I think that this is going to be a map where if he's defaulting it all towards connector, he's going to have to face one of the big guns of of Astralis, and uh, I would like to see that he turns it up a notch too. It's also young Grimothy's birthday today. Do you want to say happy oh, yeah. birthday, Maui? Oh yeah, happy birthday, Grim. Happy birthday, Grim. Uh, Scrawny Launders, what do you think Grim is going to be wishing for when he blows out his birthday candles tonight? Grim wish for what the I mean if you win versus Astralis today what else do you need the tournament I guess the oh, rest yeah. of the tournament yeah I would dream, dream big right with the wish why not yeah I would be I'd be dreaming HL for, TV number one or something I don't know maybe just a trophy lifter Tro one trophy again yeah they gotta win I don't know Freya I don't know the guy new set of teeth brand new chompers yeah, fresh diamond grill. Yeah, exactly. I could see Grim with a fresh. No, oh, I can't. that's what I meant. A grill. He doesn't need teeth. <laughs> Just a handful of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All of my opponent's teeth. <laughs> yeah, it is indeed his birthday. You know who else is? You know who else shares a birthday with Grim? It's me. Happy birthday to me. It's Heku. 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 What the Heku? Happy birthday to Heku as well. Happy birthday to Heku. Out there somewhere on the internet in the ether watching Counter Strike, no doubt. Um, and that's that's and and T Connors as well. Shout out T Connors PC, one baby. time. One time, baby. Uh, but that's an NA Counter Strike ordeal. So all you Euro nerds, don't worry about it. Okay. Today is about us, and by us, I mean complexity. Not that I'm a part of them, but CS2 has looked good on this squad. It has looked very good on Floppy uh, and Elige. I think instrumental in that last map. Some of those winning moments, winning rounds, definitely comes down to just him and his desire to be back at the top. He's so impactful. Yes. It's. He was like top of the leader, like the scoreboard, but besides that, you know, you could watch it and see every time he made a push, it was on time, it was early, it was perfect. It was just, he's playing, he's playing CS in a way that like only a very few players can. And they, they really changed the game for their team. So, and I think that complexity winning is, it's great right now. This this matchup actually has some potential. I feel like like Imperial and them had with their vetoes because okay. they play on Ancient, which can be a good map for Astralis, but Complexity can win and overpass a map they both love. So let's see what happens. Oh, the Beretta Sing for one. Halzerk, immediate trade frag, still floating around the top of Connector as Bomb looks to go back down and join up with Floppy and JT on the monster split. Seems simple. See if Buzz can throw a wrench in the works. Hanging around for the pillar wrap, and sure enough, Grim's dead. Nobody cares that it's your birthday, as far as Astralis is concerned. Borup now living inside of the smoke grenades. We've got so many CTs in this bomb site, So much smoke that no one can see Jack. But those smokes soon to fade, and then the gunfight's gonna continue. As Borup climbs up onto the site again. Heaven player, looking for that deep angle. Three down in the water. A's completely clear, but they're very much locked in, so hit a headshot. The, T the CTs will keep having to fight out, but they are going to yeah. fight out successfully, so that's all that matters for them. But they have to keep peeking because of the, yeah, there, there is a chance that the A play comes back, but obviously that's not Complexity's goal right now. Bomb reconfirmed. Borup gives right. them the jiggle, and the Heaven player now coming back in stare, making sure that nothing can get too weird. JT. If you ever analyze this round, it'd be one of the worst, most boring. I wish I could forget could, this round. Yeah, this I is really not the best. Yeah, I um seen better CS. It um, but maybe we should just replay it. You thought the winner was going to be Astralis, ended up being Astralis, and lots of ammo was used. Man, there's something. About, I feel like pistols are more difficult than CS too. Oh yeah. You know, I feel like we're seeing more P two thousands because the USP I, just doesn't. Just I get feels that. a little wonky. I use a P two thousand as well. Yeah, for sure. Recent change, or have you always been a P two K man? Oh, well, someone tipped me off on like day one of CS two, ah, and okay. they were really early, but they were so right. Now, like everyone used it. And yet, shout I out think, to Darius for that one. I think the Glock is better than ever for some reason. 
Yeah, the Glock is. The Glock is crazy. It's crazy, yeah. Goes hard. Let's see if five of them can manage to finagle something down on this B site. Stairs gonna rack up two kills. It is an anti eco, so we'll all relax. 2 0 start for the Danes. Mm -hmm. So, Complexity are completely undefeated on Overpass in CS2. Mm, how many maps is that? Three. Okay. But one of them is Phase. That surely counts as two. That counts as two, so that's four maps. Yep, I'm keeping track. And then if you want to look at their other wins, which are also not ones to scoff at, yep. I'm not just delaying for time. Mouse. That counts as one and a half. One and a half. So, so that's four and a half four wins. Four and a half. M80 is the other. Oh, that only counts as half. That brings them down to four. Yep, there we go. That's still... Oh, sorry, there's one more. Yeah. Monty. Just one, I think. Just a straight up one, right? 1.25. 1.25. So 5.25 yeah. wins. wins in a row on overpass by complexity. We've so done far. the math, folks, so you nice don't have Strahlis. to. Strahls have a chance to try to stop him. Nice push out of Buzz. Flashed nicely by Borup. And just getting Floppy, who I think is going to be very much operating in his own world down towards that B site more often than not. So he gets cleared out of the corner. Utility flushes him out. Like an insect. Oh. And Blaine. Oh. Ah. Big guy. Wait, what? Okay. A little Those are sketchy. impenetrable. You can shoot through stone and concrete, but not through some cardboard boxes. The real final boss. So they get their connector control, get Grim into it, and double the bomb back around towards Monster. Poor Elyse, though. Didn't get that blame F kill fast enough. Ends up costing him more than half his health. It's actually an early Molotov. It's kind of nice for them to come out now. Done. Oh, no. Elyse survives that. Grim just takes it for him. 42 damage on JT, excuse me. Grim looking to get the ball rolling, but it's the monster players that come out with the first frag. Ooh, there's Grim second. This reopens the possibility, but no. Dropping the bomb from heaven is device. Grim can't get it back in time, just has to run in. <laughs> Absolutely desperate. Poor guy's hand is forced, and so it's Astralis with another. Yes. Pistols are important. They actually, well, are they? Um, historic 40% uh, historic win rate on pistols for complexity, despite it being their best map. CSGO or CS2. But the thing is that they crush on CT side. Oh, yes? Yeah, so that's the big difference. Give me the numbers. 64% to 47 on T side. Mm -mm -mm. And that'll be the last number I talk about for the rest of this game. Yeah, numbers are overrated. Okay. Ooh, the Tech Nines and the Deagles Wait. are doing something. They're on doing the, something. The A site? Things are happening, and it's not the way that Astralis want this one to unfold. Stair and Borup. Ooh, risky play from yep. Stair. He can make... Oh, we could actually lose this round, and it does. Oh, Lord. He, he felt like he had to do something. He was probably right. But at that moment, it wasn't the play that he needed to make. And now Borup is just looking for a place to call home. That it's one started saving. slipping so fast that I, I lost track of all the kills. You know, one died ah. front bathrooms. I see a yeah. death inside connector. Yeah. So somebody playing alone in connector versus pistols. When will they learn? Fair enough. Stay out of there. Stay out, stay out of there. Oh, it's the top of the stairs. He tried to run. Never try to run from pistols, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When will they learn? An interesting turn of events then. Complexity winning one it is. in a round they have no business picking up. Now, this is a, you know, Astralis and Heroic are two teams that have been in grand finals at fall finals in the past. Yes. But they have not had rosters that were in under, under this much duress in history. Well, they have at different points in history, but not in the last couple of years at the fall finals. It's not always in worked recent out, history. Not in recent history. It's always worked out very well for them. But I think, don't they play each other if they... If Complexity wins this game, yeah. Astralis and Heroic will eliminate one will another. Will eliminate one another, so. Mm -hmm. It's a Dane eat Dane world. Mm -hmm. 
Kerrigan's like, yes. <laughs> okay. I am the chosen one. <laughs> this Batman rises from the stage once again. It's my crowd. And he's not wrong. No. Although FaZe have yet to secure their place in the arena, so let's not count our chickens before they hatch. Yeah, Kerrigan, stop getting so excited. Two players pushing short side B. Check this out. Buzz is getting a peek into the tunnels. And sure enough, shaves JT off the push. Gets both kills. Okay. No trade out of floppy. Let's go. Uh, Halzer comes out like, all right, well, what happened here? But there ain't nobody to see. Everybody's peeled back to their bases. And this is about to be one long minute. Device. Of course, you know, Sango's going to get walked into, probably. This is like a no chance round. Like, no chance ever. No, no chance at all. No chance at all, no. Mm. Won't happen. Can't happen. I concur. It's exactly what Astralis need to. A little... A little excitement out of buzz pushing into the short water like that. Flame is very active in con these days. Um, watching some of their overpass games recently. Okay. That's the uh, interesting part about the duo here right now with him and Device. Device is playing support with an op basically in, inside of bathrooms. He's taking all the usual angles, but he's way less aggressive. Like almost never going for a deep mid peak. And it's uh, Blame F who's actually pushing a lot on CT side, which is nice. I think for him to be used like that. So he's either in con a lot or pushing fountain or whatever the case may be. But it's very rifle centric with the op in the back more, I think, than it has been in, in CSGO for, for Astralis right now in overpass. Wow, almost cost him. Floppy just can't get out fast enough. Dude. Bro. Bro. Dude, they're pushing connector. <laughs> I feel like that's extra frustrating because you saw how awkward of a fight that was even for Blame F. You know, that wasn't clean. Grim knows he could have had that. Mm -hmm. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Well, this definitely is going to be uh, about how much of a lead Astralis can have now. Yes. And then how many how many rounds can a complexity get now? Okay. Because the CT side is what they're both either scared of or excited for. So good start for Astralis. They'll need more than four rounds, but good start. Going back for it. Ooh, the boost. Ton of damage here versus Floppy. It's going to make his round all the more difficult. Oh, make it. Now over, Stairs Nade finds its home. Bore up on barrels with the teammates. Flash almost gets caught out by Elyse. Oh, They're gonna use that as a chance to pull back. So nearly a wicked find. Now they actually use a lot of utility trying to, to scare the CTs here, but this is very nice for the CTs to have re-smoked B and uh, take control out of already. Like This is exactly what they needed to do. They have all the info now. Got this bomb site stacked, bro. Four players deep here, Astralis, and they're not gonna waste any time. They oh. try to go hunting, and Halzerk from inside connector door catches device on short B. Yeah, was that the necessary play? I but mean, that's a free frag for Halzerk. Thing is, it could just still lead them right into this stair. Borub double up on monster. Oh no! Oh, but Borub, Borub dies with nothing. Stair catches the first one off, gets himself the second kill. But as the gun goes empty, we are left two versus one with Halzerk still very much anchoring connector, joining forces with Grim, and setting their sights on the B site while Buzz is nowhere to be found. Damn, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I didn't like the way that Borup was playing on the angle. It felt like he was going to get caught off somehow. But um, if I'm device there, that setup is excellent because he's there. But when he's dead, I, I mean, it's only pretty good. And I think the protocols moving into that position was awesome. But can also hand some credit to Halzerk there for just like waiting in the right position. But in my opinion, like... That's like a pretty safe bet for Hauser, right? He's in con after they retook B. If they do push short water, that's the easiest mistake I could punish. You know, no one's going to kill me sitting here waiting. So 
can't say I was super excited to see that push coming out of device in that situation. And I think that just put too much, uh, like, listen, it's like at the end of the day, it's a device and it's blame F and almost no one else is consistently reliable on Astralis. So yeah, you want those two players to be like a little bit more careful than everybody else. Because I can't even remember a scoreboard in the last year where they haven't been number one and two on that scoreboard every single time. I am Cologne when Buzz had that ridiculous ancient map. Oh, and then Device hugged him at the end. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. the one. Fair enough. That's the one. Well, it is winter now, so maybe winter. In the <laughs> winter, I, I can't remember. And with that map, Buzz secured six more months. Maybe more. Maybe more. Maybe more. Device on a different angle, not pushing, but playing passive, right? You just had a spiel about his passiveness, and Blame F is tucked beneath. A liege is oh, crawling by here? him. Ooh, hot mama. They're going to smoke and go in front oh. of it. Oh. Yeah. That's sour. I feel like when you get that cross, you I, know, facing front bathrooms is almost the more predictable play. I agree. Yeah, right? What if a liege crawls around the half wall? You got the back of Device. You got the A site prime for the taking, but... Hindsight 2020. Bore up 2023. Okay, well. Found out by Floppy. Trade frag out of the water player in Buzz. And because of the connector control from Blame F, it's an extra member on short side. They do, however, push past. Grim has been doing a good job of helping out and getting space on site, but this attempt oh. from Blame F is all that they need. 1v1. Can he do it? 35 to the clock. Oh, wait. Oh, that was short already dead. No, a DC. We've got a player out of the server. Oh, it's blame, I guess. Bro. Well. I was like, how did Grim through short wall get the yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, luckily Astralis won right there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, actually, yep. that's how it should be. But it was Flame's presence that's yeah, the reason yeah, that Grim was so looking funny. at short, because he didn't know either. Yeah, Blame gets two kills short side, just yeet. Halzerk missed an easy yeah. trade, man. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that was a, that was a, should have been a guaranteed trade. Blame F, my work here is done. <laughs> that's how you stay big, you don't burn any extra calories. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Could have been an even better clip, but still two kills on the short side. Smothered complexity as they thought getting that barrel frag would be enough, but I mean, I'm not surprised that Blame F is slitting up short inside connector. Mm -hmm. There was no presence from complexity in there the entire time. T side turning out to be more difficult than complexity we're hoping for off of the back of winning Astralis's first map. Undefeated in CS2 on overpass. Can Denmark do damage tonight? They're kind of the one of two teams right now. I mean, like, Mao's, Mao's had that Pro League victory, but, like, coming into CS2, we're primed to be able to take some finals, but... So it's this phase of sucked up all the air in the room right mm -hmm. now, like where Complexity and Mouse are just in CS2 look like a team. They look like two teams, kind of like Heroic and Cloud9 did coming out of 2021 that, well, we'll see what they can do on land because the finals are not looking that good. Uh, we should be looking at Cl Complexity as this really pretty terrifying team right now, and I think we have respect for them, but they've still got some proving to do. And I think the, you know, that doubt that is still cast upon complexity, at least in my eyes, still comes by way of those blowout maps that I brought up earlier. Like, you can't just be winning series more often than not, but then just getting smashed on certain maps. It's just, it's, it, it just screams it's, inconsistency. It's some respectable losses, too. It delegitimizes 
some of your wins in the eyes of pundits and critics. You know, it gives fuel for haters to hate. Never help those haters out. You know, even if FaZe lose games, not that they have because they're the kings of comeback at the moment, but even the day that they lose a CS2 match, I bet you it's going to be close. You know, FaZe aren't getting blown out of the water anytime soon. Sure. Rops ain't having any of that. Mm -mm. Twists, no chance. Mm -mm. Rain, uh uh. Mm -mm. Brokey, uh. That's all he has to offer. <laughs> Into a timeout. Yeah, tack off the tech. I think in their heads they're looking for four. Just four, huh? Just four, I think. That's how good their CT side is at the moment. It sounds like so little though, but you know, it is. I CS2. think they're looking for four on a bad day. Oh, back to tech. Tech, tack, tech, 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 tech. Your move. Toes. <laughs> what is tic tac toe? Like, what is what is that? I don't know. A waste of time. Yeah, it is really a waste of time. They put a game that, like, if you even have, like, a rudimentary understanding of tic-tac-toe, you can't lose. Bro, it's like Monopoly. It's, also a waste, enormous just, waste of time. You know, listen, it's a vintage board game, all right? It played a crucial role in board game culture. We all grew up playing a game of Monopoly, but it's fundamentally flawed. Yeah. And... Through the progression no one even knows of how to modern end the game. board games. God, there's so much better games. When someone says, you want to play Monopoly? I say, absolutely not. You, you don't play board games. It's like Risk. Just not yeah. anymore. Yeah, okay. Risk is just too long. It's yeah. 2023. I'll just rather watch Lord of the Rings or something. Probably. So that's how I'd spend three hours. Let's play some Gloomhaven, shall we? A little nemesis, anyone? Okay. Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> Some real board games, baby. <laughs> boggle. Boggle. <laughs> Do love Boggle. It's a great game. Some Scrabble. Mm. Oh, flick shots, perhaps. How about CS2, the best damn game of all? Blame that. Yeah, easy does it. Elise just runs right into the crosshair. He's going to gobble up a second. Hungry for the third. Just leaves. Put on the retreat. And they're going to give him a chase. Just enough time for the reload with support in the background if Device wants to help. It's a big if because he's low health. So oh. Blame F's like, don't worry, brother. Sit back, relax. I got this. And every step of the way, Blame F continues to tear him up. Device will add another to the tally, but we waited through how many pauses for that? Mm -hmm. And complexity just get mowed down again. Yeah, they're an excellent one, too. And I mean, this is the same as CSGO in terms of, like, how oppers play with riflers. It's just, um, you never see Device in front, and uh, you, you always see Blame pushed. We've got no real, like, just sort of passive a site setups, mm. which I think has been really good to watch. So maybe Complexity's undefeated god streak on Overpass ends today. Or maybe that CT side really is world class. Oh yeah. But uh, that util damage inside of Playground, Elyse ain't having any fun. Two and six, soon to be two and seven. Only one of the two rounds they won was on a pistol, just like this. So not much of substance out of Complexity so far. This is that re that weird struggle we're talking about with Cole. You know, it looked fantastic on Ancient. World class Elyse, floppy hard carry, 20 some odd plus kills each of them. Uh huh. And then we get onto Overpass, and it's like, are, are is this the same team? Yeah, sure. You know, and maybe I'm speaking too soon because that coveted CT site is up next. Mm -hmm. But like, we're not even getting a a glimpse of it. Come on, boys, pull back the curtain. Show maybe, a little skin. Maybe they have. Blame F. 12 and 4, however, looking excellent inside of the bathrooms yet again. I mean, he really is the immovable object of this defense up on A, inside Con.
constantly an issue for complexity. Can't blame him for getting ecos when they run at him. Nah, not his fault. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Or the other players. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to up the comms on like just across the board. We know what it sounds like to uh, to win like these types of games. We need to fucking up it. There's already been three to four rounds that I can already say about us not comming enough, not saying what we're gonna do. We need to up it. That's how we're gonna win the shit. That's what the fuck is up, oh, come, come on. Come on. That you'd love to hear that. I mean that's uh. beautiful. Like in the middle of a game, it actually doesn't have to be more complicated than that. That's exactly yes. the words you need to hear. He is so right. Just clear the brain fog. He doesn't love, want to go to map three for yeah. no reason. Oh! oh, oh. Yeah, up the comms. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys stop talking so much? <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> uh, into the B site they'll try and met by device on arrival. Uh huh? Uh -huh. Miss shot, but stairs here to help. His third on the round. Buzz comes through. Suck on that. Extremely active on both sides of the map right now. Always short water pushes, reclaiming monster. I mean, really good setups. <laughs> I I think that actually it's scarier than ever on the T side approach on on Con, and that's why this is not figured out yet, and why teams like Plexi are struggling, because now that you can open up the smokes inside of the doorway. It used to be the case in late stage CSGO where you, you would smoke the end of Khan, then try to walk up, mm. and then get up to the stairs and fight. But now you can nade it open at any moment on the CT side. It's terrifying. Oh. On top of the fact that they're just swinging on Khan. Yeah, I didn't. Whether it's device or blame F. Yeah. Astralis got that va va voom at the moment. Can't stop him. 8 2 up. I bet you their comms are electric. And they have been since the start of this second map. That's what Elijah's saying. It's always easy to calm when you're winning. Yeah. Lining them up on Monster. Four open Buzz and Buzz again. A mow down as it is Astralis on fire at the tail end of this half. Racking up the rounds. This B site looks impenetrable. They played one round where I was like, oh, that could have been better. Other than that, it's been like lights out. And away we go. Uh, lots of movement for Astralis. You can see the energy is great, obviously, and this is it. It's a nice confidence win maybe coming up. We'll see. Yes, sir. One final chance for Complexity to put their name into this game. And again, they've got one rifle, one eco round win so far this half. Yeah, this is an angle. That's a thing. Ooh. See ya. Yeah. That's why I wear helmets when I go to the playground. Never know when you're gonna fall off a slide. Eesh, JT! Not able to get this one going either, so he's 4 and 12. Elysia's 3 and 10. Floppy's 4 and 12. At the end of this half, every single player on complexity has been shut out. We get a little bit of life out of Grimm, but. A tough clutch to try and close out this half with at least a third. Blame F's going to creep up from the water like an alligator and take a piece out of complexity. Ten rounds on the defense, and we expect a lot from the CT side of the North Americans. But is this too much to ask? Thank you, and have a good day. Great to see you. Bye bye. What do you think it is? I don't know. It's interesting. Oh. Dear players, me and you, Mr. Dupre. Denmark is known as one of the gastronomy capital of the world. With attention to detail, today's second task will be a cooking competition. Both will be tested in who can make the best looking meal. Let's see who can stay focused and take the win. May the best chef win. Good luck. Thank you. You too. And look at this beautiful scenery. We are going in to cook some amazing food. Hey, welcome to Restaurant Fjordkron. We will make Danish smørbrød. I'm gonna take a step back and visualize and Wait, see what you're doing. And see what I'm doing? Yeah. Well, just stop looking at me. Okay, well, I'm supposed to look to the water. First of all, let's take a look at these beauties. All right, I'll start with the hard one. So what are you thinking you want to do? 
I am gonna do the the ligustin. Ligustin, yes. Gonna do a tower. Let's see if they can stand. I'm trying to make the potato here. See how things can work out for me. Yes. Nobody's gonna move my plate, right? It's not going as expected. It's the wind. Are you cooking a lot at home? Depends if my wife is watching right now. Um, so just to be sure, not at all. <laughs> uh, I, th I think I cook uh, quite a lot at home actually. Actually, trying to experiment with all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, so like, I'm just trying to make make new stuff all the time. We need this special flour, the onion flour, the onion flour. Holy, that looks. How did you do that? What do you mean? It's cut. It's easy. Gonna do the potato now. So Peter, being good at Counter Strike, does that correlate with uh, you staying here and cooking? Since I'm on the bench, yes. That means we have more time now. You see? That's actually unfair. He's bench, he has time to cook. I don't have time. I have practice in two hours. The guest is gonna be mad when you're yeah. that slow. But I was told it's not about time. Yeah. I'm trying to do a smiley now. And you don't want to use the fried eggs you made? I think that's a hint. I think on the side here, so a guest has an X option oh, to, yes. to eat it, and if they feel like that's, that's how it looks, because it looks so beautiful yeah. now. Putting outside the bread is also fine. It's part of the look, right? Yes, that's us. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the potato over here could be like a children that make it. <laughs> I'm done. You're done. Nice, Finn. So now I want to taste them and see how it tastes. Ooh, yeah. Fit. We have Peter's here. Looks uh, beautiful. And here I think you have get some help from a child that was here late. <laughs> and now we will taste this. That's not fair. That's not how it looked in the beginning. <laughs> it's going to be a hell of a hill to climb if you are complexity here on map two. A win on Ancient made it feel like maybe they really were coming in and uh, speed running their way to a matchup versus Vitality. But now, well, now it's a tough road. 10-2 on the half. If Astralis win Pistol, I say this one's cooked. Yeah, that's fair enough. Two pistols, that can be enough to end it. And uh, Complexity can be looking forward to CT side, but I mean, a lead like this, you got to respect it. You got to respect it. It's the nature of the rounds as well. I feel like Astralis just, I mean, they, once they knew they were dominating. That would be the better team one for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, they threw caution to the wind, but Astralis able to push out through Monster, but it's the short control here for Complexity. And Borup's getting flanked. Is he going to get spotted? Oh, he's hanging on. He's got at least a leash. Oh. JT's trade frag could be big. 3v3. Beretta's on Grim. Two players on short. You can hear them all running away. But Bomb planted. Are they going to boost? It doesn't look like it's for Heaven. That map makes it look like it's tucked behind wood. Or is it on top? No. Okay, it is indeed in the open. And with stairs, double kill, just like that, it feels like any chance at a comeback, any chance at the pistol round win may have just slipped through their fingers. Oof, you'll get the fade away towards Buzz, but this is Astralis just keeping it simple. Slamming monster with numbers and following through. Well, if they'd like to one day beat FaZe, then they have to win games like this. Because FaZe would beat them in a game like this. No chance. No chance. Unless. 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 It just scares me, again, the inconsistencies of complexity. Just another reminder that the potential's there. So are the problems. It's not really a setup here in round 14 that inspires the thought that we're going to get a force by win, stack down towards the B site. Halzerk with a FAMAS one-man army. <clears throat> and Astralis taking their sweet time. Enough smokes to go into the... Sorry. 
enough smokes to go into the... Yeah, I just... Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I just finished my pack of Mach 10. <laughs> Cigarettes with no filters like a real man. Keep going, you're going to be smoking them through your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Sterile get cleared out. Maybe too much pause. The straw is just sat back and waiting, but blame F double trade. He'll sacrifice Stare for the greater good. A or may, may or may not be the good place to go to, but Astralis are too wise to fall into that trap. So they'll jump out Split and now, me. yeah. Floppy along the walls, got Monster to also worry about, but at least he gets Buzz and then tries to come back. Borups trades fast, 5-7, nothing. And it is Astralis with their heads on a swivel. Between A and B, they play. Snapshot down from a liege, Deagle's in hand. But he's going to need that Galil in armor in the next one. If there's any chance, it's something here for Cole. So Yeah, you know an MF or hit rock bottom when they're saving a Galil, but that's yeah. what this case is right now. Yeah. Astralis on to 12 rounds. Complexity, not a single potential full rifle here on CT side. I have a hunch that the communication didn't get any better after Elige mentioned it. You know, because the, yeah. the situation only got worse. Yeah. And I mean, you know that, that, that that's what just drains the life out well, of you. Well, the thing is, it's like, you know, you don't deserve me at my best if you can't have me at my worst. Right. You know, it's like, even if the communication doesn't help you, you have to do it every round because it's just something you have to do. Mm -hmm. It's only, you know, it's maybe one third of the reason why you win a round. But without it, then you'll definitely lose. So I think it was a, a good... Uh, Good reminder, and yeah, it's 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 so easy to calm when everyone when you're winning. Like ever, energy's always good when the economy's You'll up. Be high you know too. You might wanna go for this. That's I'm sorry. Is Blame F true. giving shit to someone for saving? <laughs> he acts like butter just, doesn't melt in his mouth now. Yeah, I'm just uh. uh That looked cool. I'm really hungry and would appreciate if we could close this. <laughs> but, I mean, why is he hungry, man? He's feasting on complexity at the moment. Stare slides by. Oh, Elysia's pissed that he's going to die to this. <laughs> 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 yeah, Counter-Strike. You love it. You hate it. You wear it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Stare is looking sharp too. Dude, nicely done by Stare. 18 and 4 on this map. I mean, that, that double wall bang headshot down on the B site, stuffing a lot of the faster rounds out of complexity when they tried to split him. He's just shown a marked improvement from Ancient to this second map of the series, and they needed that. So we've got three CTs left to deal with, one of which is Grim alone on A, but he will best blame F. Okay. Low health for two of the three remaining. Maybe complexity now is your chance. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe you just need to believe. Not only in yourself, but in those around you. Device. Oh my god. Sick kill on Floppy. Grim is there to close it. Bro. They get through with at least a little more. I hate that fight. That was crazy. May the games begin. Let's begin the games. Open the gates. Unleash the Kraken. You talked about close losses, so this would be a bit, this would be really telling. See what uh, complexity are made of because they actually just earned their chance to go on to full buys now. So yeah, they got to play perfect, but these games are shorter now. The comebacks are even more possible. Bends that don't break. That's a great positive attitude, Launders. You should bottle that and sell it. Hal Zerk, more like Hal Mark. <laughs> if Elise gets shot in the back one more time, I think he's going to blow his gasket. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna... Hey, he's not shying away from the fight. And it works. But, oh, oh well, Hauser okay. saved him, but he was right on him. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what the hell? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the right call, man. Don't let them envelop the map and then go slow in a situation where you've got to come back all these rounds. 
And it's that CT activity that got Astralis that dominating commandeering first half. Bomb's got to get picked up, though. Someone's got to double back. That's going to mess with the timings and the potential for Borup to get traded. You know, they've got time for it. The noob tube. Oh. He saw it. Device knows it, so he'll just group up with his teammates. Grim's getting active, though. <gasps> Gotta be careful. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Oh, maybe they had to be careful. Easy. Two kills and 35 damage on Buzz. 15 seconds to the clock, and he knows that the element of surprise has just been lost. Die before time expires, my friend. Dice player is going to hang on, but he'll force the fight. Oh, Halzerk. <laughs> hey, after time, after time. Hey, oh. man. Take what you can get. Maximize your chances. Round by round, kill by kill. Complexity. Keep on fighting. Uh, did Buzz have anything left? That was a bit pricey. Mm -hmm. No. That was a buy, so yeah. Oh, that sets him back. 450 schmucks. Count them up. Nine round lead here for Astralis. They've... They don't have anything to be worried about. We've just seen that other teams have showed that they can come back in this new format and that, that that's the reason that they've been undefeated, won tournaments. It's possible. And Complexity are one of the teams that are in that category, that tier. Yep. Now a nice uh, early chance as well to rack up some easy rounds. Three AKs, so the economy is going to grow. They can afford player losses. Remember, Grim comes through with a 1v1 clutch to keep Astralis off that 13th. Mm -hmm. They lost pistol. They lost the first conversion. Alish saves a Galil. Blame F talks smack. And now complexities start winning. Should be a stenographer. I just recounted the events perfectly right there. <laughs> Oh, this would be... Yeah, yeah at least I mean, you can smell him. The amount of money that could be made here. Oh, and he gets spotted. Well, that spoils the fun. Yeah, but his teammates now know exactly what's up. Astral is going to decide to just pedal to the metal. And Grim mows him down towards short side. So there's a fifth. Seven more to go. Seven more to go. Now, I think the cool part about CS2 is moments like these, they just, it feels like they're precious, even if... Uh, you're you're on the precipice of actually closing the game out. It doesn't feel like it's just it's never going to be handed to you, and just as quickly as you got that lead, it can it can vanish. It takes a lot of focus. Even when I'm playing, I've noticed that. Like, it feels like there were just so many rounds in CS:GO I just forgot about because it was just so yeah. some games would be so long. A lead would feel like yeah, eventually we'll get it, whether it's uh, luck or, or otherwise. But right now, the the focus definitely has has been raised. I mean, everybody's been there. Anybody who's played Counter-Strike knows you're up 10-0. You end up losing three, four of those last rounds every time. You just want to start your second half. Yeah. You, know, you can't afford that in CS2 at all. MR12 just makes such a world of difference. Mm -hmm. No laps in focus. Especially here and now for complexity. So we've got a... Wow, Buzz, because he had no money, will come into this round with a Deagle. Not They've a got deal. extremely low utility. I mean, I don't like this round at all from Astralis T side on a map of this size. It can just feel like miles across if you don't have enough to work with. Now, there's still obviously chances for complexity to make mistakes, but they're taking one major concession and Buzz on the Deagle, plus they don't have much to scale with. They've got to keep this just simple as hell. Hope their entries are perfect. Man. Come in low telegraph. And the CTs, to be fair, have not taken that much space back. They finally will go forward with this protocol, but it's on the other side of the map right now. Yeah, Elysia's delayed as well. 
They're taking bathrooms control. Lee's they, now they starting to come down. down. 25 to the clock. JT's going to have to do something here. He will mow down Borup. Floppy instantly gets one as well. Device, though, trade frag back. And it's JT to hold the Full line. Control. Beautiful headshots coming out of JT as the comeback continues slowly but surely. Still six rounds away. We're not getting excited yet. No, we aren't. But that did deplete the bank accounts for Astralis. That is around following one where, you know, Buzz's money was terrible. Mm -hmm. Might have influenced the reason they purchased, yes. but it does put us now two rounds away from another full buy with utility. Complexity are constructing the framework of a comeback. And the way that JT plays these angles, obviously, super. Super. But just as well, it could all end on pistols exactly, and $700 right. investments come forward. Mm -hmm. Stupid bush. It's the hardest bush ever. I don't know. I think George goes pretty hard. <laughs> One peek from Buzz to unravel the B play. One player over faces. Takes a deke to the forehead. I mean, Elise is kind of <laughs> getting left on an island. That was nasty. Flash with it. Are you going to see that? No. Elise could end up offering an AK over. Grim's also trying to press out close bathrooms, but he's got device to worry about soon enough. It does feel like they're like somehow missing a lot of information, but it goes both ways. Like. Good setup here. Unleashes Grim to trade out a liege, and sure enough, he gets the double headshot. Still one long, still one connector. Yo! Second Desert Eagle kill. Bore up in an interesting spot. Keeping complexity on their toes, but Halzerk knows that he is top con. He holds on and takes half his health as damage. Flash to support him on the fallback, Hold but the on. long player Borup starting is... to come around. Borup's been able to find the spacing, and Astralis off of only Deagles with no Kevlar really for the bunch. Wait, what? Have almost gotten onto the site. Opt for Borup, taken back. Time is of the essence. Five seconds to spare. Buzz, it's a double Deagle demanded of him. Three to the clock, and he just can't manage. JT the round prior down towards the B site, and JT again this time to pick up that slack. Five straight now. Got to be careful with shots like the second one, Halzer. Like, it did get a little scary. But overall, Grim, the sanitation engineer, cleaned it up very quickly. And they had three inside of bathrooms with the rifles. What else do you need? Hopefully, this does come down to a full rifle versus a full rifle. Mm. And we'll get another chance to see if that's going to be the case. But five straight for complexity, five to go to bring it to overtime. And now the Augs come out. Oh, God. We've gotten to that point of the Which comeback. You should be spamming Augs on CS2, especially on Overpass. Filthy habit, buying Augs. Mm. And crazy how light they are over on the B site. Oh, yeah. Floppy just leaning back. And I will say, I think Complexity's prep is one thing that stands out the most to me. Like, they, they do believe in it. Yep. They are willing to come through with setups where you're like, wait, what do they know? But, you know, it offers up moments like this. You know, Floppy's got a lot to look for. And uh, if he dies, of course, things get very scary, but... Wow, not one nade either. They're waiting to push long, but there's no one here actually... You know, we cross a point in which, you know, the Astralis are going to try the long play. Oh, and Plus goes down. That's all Floppy had to offer. Leaning on the AK, needed the headshot, gets oh, oh, it clean. Oh, oh, oh. Now, he, he, Stair knows that the timing. setup is passive over here, but Grim finds a timing. Nasty. Able to go for that, and he controls the spray. Not for the one inside connector. Borup answers back. Nice flashbang. Wow, Perfectly the on the mark, dude. That's a that's a crazy bounce. I don't even know, but that's great. Yeah. Plus, Elise just ran back, so that gives Device the information that Elise is stuck upper bathrooms unless he comes back through his own smoke, which he just has, looking to help out with the bore up frag. So Get Device messy. knows there's nothing on long any longer, and he'll have to hang on to that AWP as Complexity put forth their sixth round in a row and close that gap to four. 
just yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot came down to Floppy, but Floppy was just making sure this one fight was dealt with. And if he loses that. If he loses that, it's it's pretty scary for sure. I mean, but that's like, Flexi are willing to take risks like that in the middle of a comeback where they lose any round. It's over. That's great. I think that's great because how else are you supposed to win? Playing standard every round and being obvious? No, of course not. Just because you're losing doesn't mean you should play like a loser. Yeah, I, that's that's just factos, bro. That's just factos. That's real. It sounds silly, but it's true. There's no difference between match point and the round before. It's just one more round you got to win. There's only good plays and bad plays, not aggressive and passive. Giving time for and, some of the others to warm up. We got a good the, shot. And no matter what you do, yeah. you're always exposed to risk. Remember that, Counter-Strike players. It's true. You leave your house in the morning, yeah. risk. But again, if it's going to end and Astralis get the map win, Will it be on a round like this? Not if JT has his way. That's a deep shot. All the way back. That was Hubble. That was Hubble. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, James Webb. <laughs> <laughs> JT in the deep field. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jump. Uh, did, he, did he see him? It feels like the vice is posted in a way that he like didn't notice. But Grim didn't do it again. Yeah, Grim didn't do it again. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, he knows better. So nice passive angle with the shadow advantage for Halzer. He will claim two kills. And they got a perfect setup. They still have long control here, so they have every right to peek from this side of the, the bathrooms. Halzer's job's basically done. I mean, they could choose to blow this round, but they've, they've really got good control of the map at the moment. Oh, there it is. Plus, he spotted stair front bathrooms with a deagle in hand, so he knows the second player's here. The wow. bomb has been delivered, and Halzerk is hitting shots. Four, as they try to approach with that solo op and get nothing for their efforts. Yeah, I'm saying, dude, 64%. I think CT side in the last few matches here in CS2, they were looking forward to this half. They would love to not be on death's doorstep every single time the round starts, but at the same time, the Strollers have to prove and unearth a way, a strategy in which they can beat complexity honestly because it doesn't look like it's going to happen on the Ecos and the full rifles are not looking any closer. Guns up now. Elise again. Upper bathrooms with the support of Halzerk on long with the op. So we've seen some pretty underplayed B sites at times. This is not the case. Three members there out of the gate. Flash though. Ooh, that makes it hard for Floppy. JT doesn't get killed despite having to react to the flash. But it does give up some information to blame F. Two outside B. Mm -hmm. yeah. Deep. You know, contrast that to the round that Buzz sees at B where he walks out all the way for free. Processing, processing. That's interesting. The jump spot and oh, the shot gets missed, but it's covered. They got yeah. a too long setup. And they think because complexity have played more active towards the B site with the push to the right side, they're not also on long. Right. They're wrong. Complexity wrong. have layers and levels. JT leveling up alongside Halzerk and Grim will hold Buzz at bay. Oh, wild blind. Wow. Just enough shots to get the better of Borup. And now Device and Blame F stuck outside of the B site. Support is inbound and Floppy holds it again. Complexity are taking this streak of round wins to double digits. That, the positioning from JT right there, he was open to the flash. So you could see the entire thing. If he was hugging the wood wall, he just would have eaten it and they would both died. And this round would actually maybe fall apart completely. And instead, he comes up with three frags. He dodges that flash for their opening attempt. They in school him over in the default on long. They get eight in the row, and we're not seeing TC smile. He's looking quite serious. There's actually a pretty big chance for this organization at this point in time in CS2 to prove that they can pull off a pretty big comeback. And for Astralis, well, they're about to stand in the face of stats and take down complexity, maybe even beat them on CT side. But at this point, I don't know. Complexity doing their absolute damnedest not to add to that stack of blowout losses. Oh, how it could have been. 
And while the loss is still on the table, they have fought tooth and nail to keep it this close. Round 23, Tech Nine's grouped up outside of Monster. They're going for it, and the nade meets them on up. the approach. Fantastic utility, but Stairs Deagle still claims one. Spray off of the barrels as the short player doubles back. They're out in the open, and it's in the open that they lock it down. We go the distance, and complexity, a single round left to push OT. Yeah, we got JT eating right now over on the B site. That setup is perfect. On the outside of the smoke, in case they split that way, it gives his teammates confidence to hunker down, wait for the monster hit to come in. The nade comes in the perfect timing and the spray down is easy. They can even afford to lose a couple of players and one final timeout, save for a rainy day. Here we are on round 24. A last chance for Astralis with a full buy to come in and try to close this game out in regulation. And if they don't, you better believe the odds swing drastically back into the favor of Complexity, who are clearly happy to be on CT side and have proved that they can get this far despite losing both pistols. And you can see that just that little bit of celebration starting to creep in. Smiles, but quick ones, because this last round is the one that actually only matters in the end to get us to OT. But how good is this complexity CT side? Well, not only nine rounds in a row right now, not one bomb plant for Astralis within those nine rounds. They can't even buy a plant. Total lockdown. And there have just been uh -oh. preemptive moves from complexity, changing positions, changing places, adapting, and not dying. This is massive information from Halzer. Does he want to approach? He knows that Borup didn't see him. Oh, he's caught. He got Whoa. stuck on the stairs. That could have been the end of Halzerk, but Borup doesn't confidently overswing. Yeah. They don't have this short push opened up. It feels like Halzerk is a little bit worried now with this position. Whoa. Doesn't die on his escape. And they slightly assist wow. him. That is a very rickety situation, but disaster averted. Yeah, talk about rickety. Look at a liege on top of the rock. What? Not leaning behind tree. Not having Halzerk's help, but on his own. Oh, and it's their own front bathroom. Smoke a liege can just fall back completely. 5v4. Able to retreat. Not only does Halzerk get out of connector, but a liege takes that much of an overt risk and isn't punished for it. Man advantage on their 10th round in a row. That's got to be the most impressive part about this CT half is the amount of options CT that Complexity have taken aggressively. Even though Astralis have done the same, they've done even more. Grim hears it close, oh. but Elyse dead. Perfectly timed peak, and it's a second. Grim trying to make the difference, but here you have it yet again. Device and Blame F in a clutch. No! shot. And round 24 makes a world of difference as all of a sudden Floppy tries to come back up from Dumpster. No one can stop this plant. It's safely tucked on truck. They go for the double nades on dice. Doesn't land. Floppy and JT from the depths of B into the A site retake. Wall bang off the mark. Device stoic on that plant. Has Blame just back behind him. And as JT comes up the stairs, he gets the better of the headshot. Blame F leaning back with two kills already. But it's planted truck. Oh, no way. He gets the kill. JT, it's a fake. Blame F doesn't bite. Ten rounds in a row, or a Astralis managed to end it, but he gets back on bomb, and we go OT! Oh my god, they've made it, JT, two fakes, could have stuck it, must have got a little nervous, but now, it's so easy. They Ten know, they got rounds. CT to look forward to, and a final chance, and the two best players you could ask for in the 2v2 on the very last round. The setup is crazy after a 5v4 and this flash, it misses and Hauserk still misses his shot. It felt like that's where all right. The regular disaster you normally see for complexity in this situation is about to take place again. To me, JT is one of these remarkable players who in the last three months, I mean, we talk about how Elyse has unlocked something else in Floppy. Yeah. I think Elyse has done the same thing to JT. Slowly but surely, he's having just stellar events. I mean, and stellar for his standards. No 0 0.8 offs anymore. But the job's not done. Yeah, watch that be a wake-up call. An yeah. early 5v4. So when we get to OT that the gloves come off. No more half buys, nothing but rifles coming out of Astralis. But Elysian Grim respond back with a kill apiece. Man advantage taken away from Astralis. 
and they are back into the device blame F 2VX. They decide to go deep. Elysia's flash from Connector stalls them for a second. It's a deep corner hold from Grim, and as he draws them into his crosshair, it pushes it down to blame. 78 health, a player up in heaven, and a chance to cross before Elish arrives. Smoke lets this bomb go down if he chooses. We hit him. Wait, he shot what? an op through the box for six damage. Wow. And now they'll approach slowly. Blame will come back to plant on B. Will they continuously push? It looks like the case is yes. And Blame could line him up looking to the wrong direction. Oh, they, he has no clue. That no, this no idea. Done. Wow. <laughs> I, I need to see that Hauser flick. Yeah, that was uh, just six damage. What are you shooting? A warding for? shot through the default box, but like the fat side of it. That's uh. Something he'll probably never learn of. But damn, but look at the pace. Like you said, a wake-up yeah. call for Astralis, the Borup way they came swinging. An opening here, and then it even looked like Buzz was feeling confident as the entry. But Complexity were just as alert. Uh, they were ready to hold that down, so... I mean, I like the energy from Astralis to just try a different tempo right out the gate in OT. But Complexity just are not scared of them right now. And this is the first lead in the game for complexity. Super deep control as well. Floppy's added to the mix of the long players. They got JT down in con, so a changing of the positions. And again, a changing of the pace. Astralis leaned back in contrast to the last round. Look at this A control for complexity. Astralis now fixating in on the long fight, but this deep corner from Floppy, it is good for the first. Stairs bested. Oh, and, and a smoke. Then on a liege peak to catch Blame F. And now they know B is so light. And they know that there's another player in playground because they heard that op ring out. But they're, they're still trying to figure out how to get some action here on the A side. The doors keep closing. The CTs keep peeling back. And Elish can stay here. We're passing the point in time in which they can even take long control. So Elish, look at this. He has the ability to flank in about 10 seconds. No There's way. There's no chance they go here. Dude, the brain juice is flowing. They have not made a wrong decision in the last 11, 12 rounds. It is just perfect timing, perfect place. And yet a response back for Astralis. Floppy locked into the dice box. Hulls are blinded. Doesn't matter. Another rifle multi-frag. A two-round lead. And only one more to rack up on this defense. You were right. The hype is real. This CT side, yeah. rock solid. The, the amount of value they're getting out of their long control setups. I don't think anyone else is doing it like them right now. That's, uh, that's nuts. That is nuts. Hard to expect Floppy to be there. The amount of time. Alige has persisted on pushing. Playing that rock over and over again. And just slightly little variations, right? Yeah. The smallest changes, but keeping Astralis on their toes and keeping Complexity one step ahead. Every time you figure out their new setup, you lose a player doing it. Fast play, slow plays, nothing's going right right not, now for Astralis. Not once has somebody from the CT side pushed the ladder until now. And look, it nets them an oh opening kill. God. This hasn't happened until now. Every round is something different, and Astralis are playing catch up. On a map they can't afford to lose. They picked Ancient, lost it. And it felt like they had overpass every day of the week. Oh. No chance for Device to go back into Connector. Imagine how Borup feels stranded now. And Elyse, at a moment's notice, could just go attack Blame F. And they know that flank is possible. Nice flashbang out of Borup, but blame it's a one and done. Floppy ready to trade. 1v4 demanded of him a flawless CT overtime half. And three chances to close this series. <laughs> TC. Yeah. Um, now, before we as North Americans get too excited about the potential oh, that right. <clears throat> complexity do something super cool here. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> the Straws, they cleaned up in that first half. They only need three rounds to tie up in this OT. They know their CT side is going to be strong. And in fact, Complexity probably can expect them to win two out of three rounds. Complexity only need one. But that one isn't going to be easy. These teams are both relying on CT.
we saw what Blame F and Device were doing on the A side uh, of the map. In the first half. Just a raw duel down monster. Yeah, that's uh, four up in the same position. JT playing the exact same way. He's 23 and 17. He's almost caught up to Grim. Wow. Like, JT is just putting it forward. Wow. Man advantage to try and close this. Freya asked, if we were Grim, what would we ask for our birthday? How about a 12-2 comeback to keep your undefeated overpass record in CS2 alive? No kidding. I mean, that's got to be that's got to be all of his year's luck used that, up. That's with a phase win and a mouse win. And an Astralis favorite here. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Who is this? What has he done? Between CSGO and CS2, JT is a beast. And while Stair has just as clean headshots in response, it's a bomb plant made possible by JT's early man advantage. Halzerk stranded. But again, Device and Blame F. The same two who could have closed this back in regulation, who lost out in a clutch versus JT, now need to try and get this moving forward. Missed flick out of Halzerk. Grim's there to help. And sure enough, from 12-2 to the 16-12 comeback by the looks of it. Device's pistol pushes out and nothing is left. Complexity, what a way to start their fall finals run. A chance versus Vitality to lock in semifinals to play on another big stage. Who had this in the cards? CS2 looks great on NA. A comeback of epic proportions. And I don't know about you, Maui, I am absolutely speechless. We're talking about complexity being down 12 to 2. We're talking about them requiring 14 rounds in a row to close this one out. I did not have that on my bingo card, but incredible form coming out of complexity. I don't know if we're ever going to see that for quite some time, Freya. I, I like winning 14 rounds in a row. You win it. You win with 13. OK, I just want to make that clear to everybody at home when you win 14 rounds in a row it feels like the game should have broken like you should you shouldn't be able to win that many in a row but complexity just did in order to win the series 2-0 that was a magnificent defense that they put up right there and it even felt like on that last round that they won an ot on that t side they were just gifted every kill jt was phenomenal the shots that he was hitting in that one to put himself at the not even just the 20 bomb i think it was like 24 by the end of all of that just such crazy stuff and sometimes with jt you get these pop-off performances and they come at the most important moments for this team. Yes, yeah, seizing the opportune moment and he almost catches up to Grim in terms of the fags he was able to put on the server. I mean, happy birthday to young Grimothy. That's exactly what he was wishing for, blowing out those candles. And we can just see the amount of rounds they managed to win in a row. I asked you, Maui, we came out here 12 to 5, the scoreline. You said 20% chance. You were believing way more than basically anybody else <laughs> <laughs> in this room. And for good reason, they just had such a lockdown on that CT side. It was insane. Oh, yeah, and it wasn't just, uh, there wasn't really even just a single force that was willing it. It was the B defense between Floppy and JT. Sometimes they were left on an island where the rotation wasn't even quite there yet for complexity, where they were playing a heavy A side lean on their defense, and then JT would come out of two kills with no for no seemingly no reason. Sometimes a liege would have a forward defense. There were times in that streak of rounds where complexity was putting together that run together that they were taking Fountain and holding Fountain from Astralis, where Astralis couldn't even get past the wishing well. They couldn't even cast a coin into that fountain to even make a wish because they, they had no hope in hell. It, it was absolutely insane. An incredible comeback from Complexity, of course, and nets them the W in this series and a matchup against Vitality. And I want to hear how Grim is feeling after that incredible comeback. Well, I'm sure Grim is feeling absolutely fantastic. The birthday boy just pulls off an insane comeback. 14 rounds in a row. What kind of conversation was going on inside that server? Because that was a real flip the switch for the CT side. Yeah, Lee was saying our comms should be better, which they should have. And JT in the half at halftime was like, yeah, I mean, we can come back if we just get our comms going, get some things going. And our comms are really good. And honestly, this is a great birthday present because Eddie gets the biggest comeback I've ever had <laughs> right now. This is an unreal comeback. Was this something you started to wish for or pray for in between the game, between the maps? 
I mean, yeah, we know overpass is a strong map for us. We just know we weren't playing our centers on our T side. And our CT is really good. We added a ton of new stuff. So I was just taking it round by round, and all of a sudden I checked the scoreboard. It's 11 12. I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> now we just need to not screw up this round. We're going overtime. So let's do it. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it, right? Round by round, and then go, oh, then we suddenly realize what's actually happening. Now, there was a moment, I don't know if you can even hear it, but Blame F said something at 12 2, I think it was, right? And it was like, I think Elise was saving or how it was working as he got the round. Did you hear him call out? Because it felt like he got some calm. Um, honestly, I didn't. I heard a yell from okay. over there, and most of the time it's blame my feeling, but I didn't hear what he said. I just like, <laughs> damn, like, yeah, I mean, he is on match point, you know, up 12 2, so of course it could be some yelling, but you don't want to yell too early or else uh, <laughs> comebacks might happen and it's going to bite you, so yeah. But we got to look at it, right? In the first half, there wasn't too much fight from you guys in there. What were you guys struggling with? You mentioned the communication side, we heard it on a bit of a mic top clip in there as well, but for a map that you're so confident on, why was it so difficult to get going, especially after a great first map? Yeah, sometimes um, they actually changed up their game plan, uh, we think, and it was catching us off. And when we were like executing, it was taking us a while sometimes to like get everything coordinated. And because of that, they were like rotating and stacking and stuff like that. So like when the comms are bad, even for like one second, it costs you against these top 10 teams. So uh, we just said that we need to get it up for sure. And when we play like that, that's how we make the finals at Sydney and almost win. So I mean, I'm glad that we could able to bring that form back today in the CT side. And you just mentioned right about top 10 teams. You guys now sit within that top 10 teams. You guys are showing a good force. How does this feel for you to be on a complexity right now that is looking better than we've ever seen? It feels honestly really good um, to be in the top 10. And, and when you're in the top 10, like uh, the other top teams are going to study you, right? Because they're not going to underestimate you. So it's a different change of pace from being like the top 30, for example, because now you need to like keep track of what you're doing and change some stuff slightly and stuff like that. You know, add a bunch of new strats because the teams are going to study you. So, um, but it's been really nice. We're playing really well and excited to see what we can do in uh, this boss event. I think we're all excited to see what happens in the future as well for you guys across this tournament. But I've got one final question for me. It's from our Blast TV viewers at home. They get to have a little say on a final question here. And it says, what is your favorite game day breakfast? Game day breakfast? I honestly love like a French toast with eggs and bacon, like uh, just like for breakfast. So you get the day going off. It's pretty basic, but you know, you can even add in some pancakes if you want. But if you already have French toast, it might be too much. But yeah, that's it for me. I like that. I'll try that tomorrow. Thank you very much, Grim. <laughs> French toast, pancakes, and clear comms. Apparently the key to victory for complexity and uh, to really unleash Grimm on this map of Overpass. Oh yeah, I mean, Grimm in that interview talked about the fact that JT was saying to up the comms. We heard live as we were patched into their comms that it was in fact a liege two that was saying they need to step it up in terms of just speaking. And you could see that in the second half, that was clear. It, it was obvious, a, a mark, marked difference in the way that they were playing off of each other, the way that they were taking space with really just sheer sheer force. I mean, Grim right there, you could see in that, that flank towards Connector, they were playing with so much more freedom, which is something that is allotted to you on the CT side of Overpass, no doubt. But it was also just the way that, they, it, on the first half, it, it did feel like so often, they just kind of got stopped before the round even got started. A lot, of, a lot of openers that were caught off, and Grim did talk about it. The fact that it did feel like in some ways, maybe Astralis changed their game plan going into this one, and Complexity probably have to go back to the drawing board themselves if it was so easy to counter so many of their openers. Yeah, it's something that Grim touched upon in that interview as well, right? And I think that was one uh, strong reason that we were coming into that second half and going, okay, Astralis had that CT side on lock. And at moments, it looked like they were reading complexity like a book, which is what makes this comeback from complexity all the more impressive, right? Because then we look at Astralis's T side. Um, how many openers did they get Maui on that T side? Is it a big fat zero? A big Freya? fat zero. Yeah. Oh, that ain't it. No, no. And neither team were really able to find any kind of footing there. I will say that there are quite a few options for the defenses on overpass. There's so many ways you can switch up your setup to make things so awkward. And there's so many angles that need to be cleared. And so that is by nature sometimes just how that map plays out. Mm -hmm. But usually you'll find at least one fair fight somewhere. Usually you'll get some opportunities. But I, I think that's just kind of what Grimm is talking about on this in this highest level. If you have any inkling, any type of feeling of what your opponents are going for early in those rounds. You can tailor make so many setups. And I actually saw in some of the setups in the very first half, I remember we were in the green room and it was just like, okay, this is the way that you would want to counter this kind of setup. Astralis are already in it. So they had a great understanding of each other. We get to see some pictures of elation coming out of complexity, obviously netting themselves that game versus vitality, but just preceding that, um, pictures of pure emotion coming out of Astralis because we've got to add the extra context upon this Maui. This is Copenhagen, you know, aside from the major, this is one of the most important events for these Danish organizations to be making it for the arena too, right? Because we see so many fans coming out to support them. And now, uh, unfortunately, Australia's just one best of three away from potentially being eliminated and not making it there. 
Yeah, I, I'm on, isn't it heroic on the other side too? It is. So it's gonna be one Danish team that has to move forward. So I think that's gonna be a really, really fun matchup when we get there. Where do you kind of see that playing out? Because a heroic are obviously coming in uh, limping, I think it's yeah. fair to say, but Astralis as well, we know there's roster changes rumored on both sides of the equation. I will say that of the two teams I watched today, and this will uh, this will undoubtedly curse the one I'm I'm favoring. <laughs> I, I would right. say that Astralis played overall better CS than Heroic, but I like I said, I mean, it seems like these teams just know each other so well in so many different ways that it's really tough to read just kind of based off of this sort of form. Because when they when they make these game plans for each other too, they're gonna switch so much stuff up. They're probably gonna have different vetoes on top of that. So it's kind of anyone's game. And who's gonna be representing Denmark? I guess we'll find out. I'm here and uh, the spearheads are picking heroic tomorrow because you just jinxed Astralis. So uh, yes. yeah, other teams, you <laughs> yeah. heard it here first. Yeah, unfortunately uh, for the side of Astralis, does mean an L in their first series here at the Blast Premier Four. Finals, but let's get a few words courtesy of Stair. Stair, this is obviously not the result you would want here, and especially with how important an event like this is in Copenhagen, the Danish fans and stuff for you guys. I just got to touch on it. In the first map, right, we've seen Ancient so much for you guys as be a, a solid map in there, but it did feel like at one point you guys kind of slowed down and, and missed the pacing. Did that feel like that in the game? Uh, lost the pace, yeah, kind of. I mean, it was more like we messed up in like some of the strats we, we agreed to do. Okay. Uh, which made the timings like a little worse, so we had to like take a chill and like get the, get a calm situation off it, right? And then it just got a little messy. It was the same on overpass, to be honest. Like this T side, uh, we got some messy A control, uh, me especially. Uh, I made a couple of mistakes in that, and uh, then it's easy for the CTs, right? Mm -hmm. when, when they have so good A players. Did it feel like you guys kind of took your feet off the gas a little bit? Because there was a moment, I think it was when you were 12 2 up, Blame F shouts out, it almost felt like it was a done deal. Did you notice you guys kind of let go too much then? Uh, not let go, we still did everything we, we agreed to, right? Just like I said, a little more messy. I mean, of course, it's easy to, to scream at the opponent when you're, yeah. when you're leading this match, right? And it gets uh, more intense when you start losing five rounds in a row. You're like, okay, guys, let's uh, find a solution. We take a tactical and then we chill out because if the fast pace doesn't work, we have to like, okay, let's play it chill, see what happens. But that didn't work either. It was more about doing the right thing and not just doing it slow or fast. Now the pressure really is on though, because the next game will be elimination time and you'll be facing Heroic. It obviously isn't the same Heroic, isn't the same kind of rivalry, but how important is that game for you guys? I mean, it's, uh, it's as important as any other Heroic game, right? It's only because it's Blast, it's more important for me at least, because it's in Denmark, right? Um, and it's also a very good lineup they have. I wouldn't underestimate them, even though that uh, they have some new players. Um, I also have played with Siphon before, I know he's an insanely skilled player, so... Uh, we should at least not underestimate them, that's for sure. They're very good. And I, I hope we can take it and make it to the arena. Yeah, we got a bit of a Danish derby on our hands coming up as we take a look at the Group B overview after the first day of the Blast Premier Fall Finals. And yeah, unfortunately, Maui, uh, one of those two teams will be eliminated as we move on into Group A as well, because that action was going down earlier on this morning where we're finding a NIP and Na'Vi, unfortunately, in that same predicament as well. Uh, how are you kind of imagining that this, uh, this group will be playing out? Uh, it goes without saying that FaZe was going to likely top it. Obviously, that has yet to be seen mm. as they have yet to play against Cloud9. But NIP coming into this, to me, were the biggest of underdogs. I felt like they had very, very low likelihood. Even though Navi is playing with a new roster technically also, given it's wonderful slotting in for the first time, I will say that NIP had a slew of problems before they even went for the IGL change too. And so they are really playing from behind right now. Well, Maui, I don't know about you. I don't really have some highlights from today. And they actually all come from the Group A side of the equation in our CS Money Play of the Day. Yes, that's right. You guys at home have the chance to have your say with our three potential players that we're going to be recapping in tomorrow's pre-show for you guys to be choosing from. First up, we're going to have a little bit of a twist action. I believe there's a there's a bottle flip in this somewhere. Oh, yeah. You love a good bottle flip, don't you? Um, ooh, hey, look at that got landing it. right there. You got it. <laughs> that's uh, that should be a TikTok. <laughs> then we got Boomage uh, with a nice clutch coming in. I love seeing Boomage coming back and coming back in style, man. Like he was dominating in some of these moments. I wanted Boomage on this roster for so long. <laughs> and now I finally get to gloat because he looked ownage today. This was awesome from Boomage. And I like that Electronic has talked about these interviews. The man's got Riz. The man's got some Riz. <laughs> he really has. Put some respect on that name. Third option that we've got for you guys is a little bit of bit coming from the side of Navi with some dirty deagle action. Oh, this is just pristine stuff. Vintage, you would say, from Bit. The headshot machine seems like he's back on a tear here. That is just beautiful stuff from him. Winning around from seemingly thin air. Okay, so you got the race, you got the bottle flip, and you've got, you know, rookie of the year, Bit. 
Where's your vote going, man? Ooh, ah, uh, poo. I'm going to take, I'm going to give it to Boomich. Yeah. I would give it to Boomich in that one just because it was an important round. They won the series and Big Boom back on the server. Back on land, baby. Well, uh, whilst we chew on that decision, I think it's time to check in with James Banks to see where our mask MVP has ended up after day one of competition. That's right, Freya. It's our mask MVP checking. And this is where I get to look at some of the brightest players we've seen throughout the opening day. Now, obviously, all of these things can change, but these are our top five players right now. Obviously, Elise having great work in that game we just saw. But the man we need to focus on right now is Spinks. This man is ranked three worldwide when it comes to playing competitively right now on terms of CS2. This guy has come back in lightning fast, not just with his team, just in all his spare time practice, dominating from start to finish. He is feeling the game, he is enjoying the game, and he's looking to make a statement. Now you can say it was only against Heroic here, for sure they don't have their full capable lineup right now, but Vitality are coming looking hot, and I really want to see a Vitality taking on FaZe. Now that could be fun. Rob Spinks, let's see how it goes. I would love that indeed as well, Banks. And uh, Maui, you were right. You said uh, Spinks has to be the highest rated player. Um, did you see the numbers on that man? What was it, 1.79 after day one? If he keeps that up for the whole tournament, the tournament's over. Like, just just call it right now. If Spinks was unplayable today versus Heroic, you could see in that, that highlight reel right there, sometimes that was two players from Heroic, and they couldn't even trade him because he would kill them so quickly. Dude was just decimating him today. I want to see more from that from Spinks. Right, we've had some winners on the server today, but I don't care about them. I care about the winners in our predictions after day one. Of course, we're going to be accumulating Ooh. the scores as we go forward, but uh, that's looking uh, it's looking pretty good for us down Ooh, there. Oh, you love to see it, don't you? The spearhead's on top right there. No question about it. Four right. And look at Creamy Bears. <laughs> what a horrible name, first of all, for Anders and Henry G. And you could not have picked worse. You could have probably blindly picked and done better than that. I, I'm disappointed in the creamy bears. Uh, I'm seeing there's, you know, a possibility for us to be stealing some points as well going oh. into tomorrow. So I think we need to, uh, you know, maybe have an apple juice after this and discuss our tactics going forward. But uh, as we look forward, we can take a look at the schedule for tomorrow as well, because uh, we've got four more best of threes coming our way. And we're going to be seeing some qualification games, obviously some elimination games going along with that as well, which we begin off with, with Na'Vi versus NIP, FaZe versus Cloud9. In the winner's matchup, Astralis versus Arena another elimination and then of course complexity versus vitality i'm very excited to see the first two teams that are going to be making it into royal arena tomorrow uh anybody that you're hedging your bets with uh maui who's your favorite for day two? Oh come on come on it's got to be phase yeah. right come on they're playing against a team with no opera I love Boomich, but he ain't really like that with the op. I love how you gave him the respect for the Riz and now you're just completely shutting him down again. Well, I mean, you know, you can be the Rizziest guy on the planet, but even the Rizzard Lizard Wizard of Boomich isn't going to get it done against FaZe just on a tear. They're unstoppable. They're untouchable. I think it's time to call it a night, Maui. Thank okay. you so much for joining me. And yeah, we're going to see how it goes down tomorrow. Same time, same place as we come back with four best of threes and find out the first two teams that are going to be making it into the semifinals. We'll see you tomorrow.